Welcome to number four, season two, the Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, hello, and Carl Pilkington. Right. Now, there's a lot of talk, Carl, that I bully you. Okay. You know, it's for your own good. I'm trying to train you, aren't I? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because, and no disrespect, okay, you are a, what I would call a stupid idiot. Well, can I just ask, because I've, there's been an awful lot of emails that have said, will you and Steve please uh, stop calling Kyle stupid? Now, right. they say, oh, he doesn't, just, doesn't justify calling him stupid. Now, I don't know what part of injecting a 76-year-old woman in the head so that she lives her life backwards well, couldn't be considered stupid. Okay, then listen, right, I'm gonna, I've found some things that I think will interest you, and I want your first thoughts on these, okay? Now, these are facts that I've sourced, mm. okay? What's the, what's the actual topic? Well, you love animals, don't you? You're interested in animal some facts. Some of them. I don't, I don't love them. They, they, some of them fascinate me and stuff, but a lot of them also get on my nerves. I don't know how an animal can get on your nerves. They just, they just do. Sometimes you sort of just think, what are they doing here? What, what are they offering anyone? Right. See, I'm worried that these facts will annoy you now, but they're meant to fascinate you, and... Okay. No, I, I think anything's good as long as it gets you thinking. It doesn't matter what opinion you have of something. Yeah. But as long as it gets a, a reaction. Okay, then. Here you go. Right. Um, there's a frog, Carl. Just a little frog, a poison arrow frog, that contains enough poison to kill over a thousand human beings. Why is it that annoyed? It's not annoyed. Well, why is it going about killing a thousand people? No, it has the potential to. It has enough poison, it has enough toxin in it that could kill a thousand human beings. But does it, it does it need that? Whereabouts is this? Where's it living? In the rainforest, I think. And does it need that sort of power? Is it in that much... Is it, is, is it getting threatened a lot, is what I mean? Well, no, because it's saying, don't come near me, and it shows it with its colours. It's got the colours that say it doesn't want to be eaten. It doesn't want people to chew a bit, right, and go, oh... I'm an idiot. It's saying, look at my colours, don't eat me. Don't You don't want to come near me. But then why give it bright colours? Because now it's standing out. Yeah, and it's going, don't eat me. Yeah, but make it a colour that fits in, like camouflage. Why why make it orange? Of course it's going to stand out, and then they'll attack it, and then it'll turn around and bite them and kill a thousand men or whatever. No, it doesn't bite. It's the fact that if you were to eat it, you would die. Yeah, but who's, I mean, who's going to eat it? Well, things that eat frogs. The French. <laughs> and they yeah. go, Sacre bleu! You have killed me and 999 <laughs> of my friends! But why... Why is everything, like, surviving like this, though? I thought it was all about survival of the fittest, not yeah. the one who looks the hardest. Well, but survival of the fittest is whether you're chosen or not by nature. No, but I I'd survive if I could go about killing a thousand men at one bite. It's not fair. It doesn't bite. It's well, whatever, it, if it licks you or whatever. But no, it it, not if it licks you, if you lick it. Well, I'm not going to lick it. It's not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> I don't, I will not be licking a frog. So it's, it's of no danger to me. So I could still kill it, and there's no chance, at no point am I going to lick a, a little frog's head. Not when it's alive or when it's dead. <laughs> I love the fact it's all about you. It's all about how it relates to you. And he's annoyed that they're, like, they're getting away with something. He doesn't, he doesn't like any sly animals. He doesn't like animals hiding. He, don't, he, do't, he wants them to hide. He doesn't want animals um, killing things. Then he wants them to kill things. He doesn't know what he wants. When they say survival of the fittest, they don't mean that, say, lions have been working out in a gym. It means, the fittest, it means the fittest gene pool. And the fittest gene pool is a gene pool that's still around. That's all it is. Yeah, if it's here, it worked. I was trying to explain to you the other day. A slug is as evolved as us. It's not, though, is it? It is. It's not. You think evolution is aiming towards Miles being away human? Miles we are. What? It's nowhere near what we're like. But but you're looking at it in terms of w like th this evolution has a will. It doesn't have a will. It's chosen or it's not chosen by nature. A slug uh, got it right. A slug has it got hasn't. it as right as... What do you mean it hasn't? Well, what was it like before it got it right? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but I think you think, Carl, that, that evolution is moving towards some kind of super being. Perhaps we're like the most advanced so far, but that one day we'll also have wings I agree with and that. Superman no, type powers. Some, no, but something can happen in nature. There could be something like there could be less light, there could be more light, there could be meteor storms. There, there could be a th there could be something that happen in nature, right? An external force, which means it. it, it the paradigm goes back to naught. So then something that very unlikely would be the last thing to survive. There could, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. I still don't think you've got the concept. It's one of the simplest concepts. It's one of the simplest models. This is why Darwin's a genius. But you think that everything, slugs, cats, are all somehow, they, their, their ambition is to be like us, to be human, or to, to have the but, attributes but, like us, that they can speak, they can talk, they can think, only, they can act. Only because... They don't. Yeah, but only, I only think that because when you see people with these pets, lizards, cats, whatever, they treat them like the humans. So I think if you do that enough times... They're going to start getting familiar with Again, certain... Planet of the Apes. No, yeah. I'm talking... Of planet say, like of the Apes. You, say like you with your cat, the way you talk to it, you give it a little cheeky massage and that when it's stressed out. And no, 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 you made that up that it's it was stressed cat. out. It's I'm just playing with my cat, right? If anything, the, the, the cat is to de-stress me. So you're talking to your cat, Rick. Is it answering back much? How are the conversations going with your cat? Well, it's, I have more intelligent conversations <laughs> with my cat than I do with yeah, him. Yeah, here's one, right? Me, we, when my gran died, right, um, she, she had this rubbish dog. Right, and that's all we got left. Uh, it's like this little poodle. <laughs> that was it was rubbish. Right. Right. Um, it's called Fluffy, and like my gran looked after it in a way that it was treated like a human. Do you know what I mean? Had a little coat on when it went out and all that. <laughs> um, anyway, so she died. We get left it. My dad's like, oh bloody hell, right? Uh, before you know it, it, only took about a month. It was a wreck. Because we, we weren't sort of bathing it the way she bathed it. We let it out if he wanted to go out. He got covered in oil. He used to go under the car and everything. So it's, it went from looking like this fluffy, you know, poodle to just being a bit of a wreck. He got it by a car. It ran sideways like a crab and all that. <laughs> in the now, course of how long? A month? Probably about two, two months or something. Yeah. Now, so it went from being over-treated to just being treated like a dog. Yeah. But a dog, dog isn't, uh, you know, is not a, a indigenous species anywhere. We sort of bred those from, you yeah, know, jackals it, all or, and I'm wolves. Saying is change it, take away the dog thing, give someone a frog, and they'll still overdo it. They'll be trying to treat it like if you had a frog. I mean, that lizard thing you've got, salamander. It's it's still sort of treated as part of the family, even though well, it it's not. As, I mean, how is it treated as part of the family? Just the way you know it's looked after that big area that it's got to itself. We, we stick it in a case and feed it a cricket now and again. It, it, how is that like one of the family? It doesn't matter because it's in your flat. It is in Carl's family. It's, <laughs> it's, it's in your flat, in it, and it's sat in that corner. I just mean, as time goes on, yeah. things, things get educated as they get older. How old's that lizard? You don't. How old is it? About 15 years old. Right. Now, it knows more now than it did when you got it, because it's been in those surroundings. It's had its eye on things. Well, no, it's what do you think it knows? What do you mean it knows more now? They act on instinct. What, 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 what does it learn? It knows when it hears the noise of a plastic case being unwrapped that yeah. a cricket's going to fall down any second. Yeah, That's well, all it, it knows. Yeah, but it didn't know that in the jungle. So it's already one up. What else has it learned? <laughs> well... I mean, it's know. 15, so presumably it listens to a lot of Linkin Park, <laughs> goes on the internet a lot. <laughs> no, but do, do, do you know what I mean? You've already proved your point. It's like that fella who kept hitting the dog on the head with a stick. Right. I Pavlov, at no point did he hit a dog on the head with a stick. But he kept doing it, and eventually the dog went, I'm sick of this, and wandered <laughs> off, <didn't laughs> Pavlov yeah. there. Brilliant. Why didn't you write up his experiments? Because he, he did it a little bit different to that. I, l I love that. Do you know what I'd like to do? A programme where you rewrite, you paraphrase someone's theory. So Pavlov's first. We could do uh, um, Freud. Give us, you know, what do you know about Sigmund Freud? The father of psychoanalysis. Right, come on in. I don't know anything on him. Well, look him up. Educating Carl. That's your next week, right? Let's do another podcast next week. Then they'll get an extra one free, the people who paid for it, right? Uh, we're going to hear about Sigmund Freud, okay? Mm. Here's an interesting fact. If the, the frog annoyed you, this might annoy you. A blind chameleon will still change colour to match its surroundings. You're aware that the chameleon can... Yeah, whatever it, whatever it sits on. Yeah. But then what, what happens when you put one of them on a mirror? <laughs>
No, do, does it get stressed out? Or what, what's, what's it copying? <laughs> well, it probably doesn't need to copy anything because it looks at itself and it goes, oh, look, looks like that. That's brilliant. God, that was fast. That's the fastest I've ever done that. That is brilliant. So they, they can go any colour. There's nothing. You can put them on anything. And they'll go to the thing. I, w- I, I don't want you to have a chameleon because you'd just be trying to see what it could and couldn't Try and do. Catch it out. I know, yeah. Pop it on some tartan. But yeah. again, say like, say like the frog thing, right? Pop it on the telly. Yeah. Couldn't do it fast enough. <laughs> Why does the chameleon need that skill of copying a colour? Because at the end of the day, that lizard, chameleon, whatever, that's that's mainly sticking in the, in the woods, isn't it? By trees, by grass. Right. Why can't it just stay green? That's all it needs. That, those colour changes are only for camouflage, aren't they? I don't know. Some of them are for attraction. Some of them to show moods, anger. No, but I, I just think we're encouraging them. You see, maybe this is evolution or whatever. But at the end of the day, because they can change colour, they're wandering out of their area. They can be wandering about, you know, through a car park and everything just because they'll go, well, I don't want to get seen, change to the colour of co- concrete. Yeah. Whereas, or into the colour of a Fiat Punto. But they should just stay green. Stay green, right? Stay in the woods and stay safe. <laughs> I love this public information <laughs> for chameleons. Words of advice for chameleons. <laughs> oh, God. Stay green, stay in the woods, <laughs> stay safe. Good night. Oh, God. Why are there blind chameleons around? I'm assuming that the blindness has no impact on the, the colour change, presumably is an automatic. It process. must be. But then that's not going to wander about much anyway, is it? If it's blind, it'll probably stay where it is. So it doesn't need to keep changing, if you know what I mean. I don't know what you mean, no. I never do, though. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, the only time a turkey whistles is when it panics. <laughs> Christmas time, then. Yeah. What do you think of that, Carl? It goes from one extreme to another, doesn't it? You've got a frog who's going mental. It's not going mental. Killing thousands of people. No, that's not. That's got that sort of power. Then you've got a turkey who's whistling for help. <laughs> <laughs> you think that you should redress the balance a little bit. You want to give... What would you do? Give the frog the ability to kill 500 and the turkey 500? Um, I don't think you should be killing... I reckon 10. 10, because... You've made your point with 10, haven't you? Do you well, think that he's got 1,000 in his lifetime, like he's got 1,000 to kill? I don't think you understand... I just think he doesn't it, really kill a thousand people. That 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 stat is about that if you were to boil up a frog, decant of the poison, there would be enough poison to split between a thousand people and kill them. It doesn't mean someone goes, frog, you have the power to kill one thousand people in your lifetime. Choose them wisely. <laughs> but I just think if it needs that sort of power, power. it should be fighting evil. Well, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's knocking about the wrong area, isn't it? If it's under that much danger, move. <laughs> <laughs> As ever, thanks very much indeed for all of your emails. Podcast at rickygervais.com. Uh, it's lovely to hear your feedback. Many of them obviously responding to the inanity that Carl has spouted over the various shows. Uh, and a lot of people just want your opinion on things. They just throw things at you. They just want to know what you make of them. Right. For instance, um, are you familiar with uh, multiple dimensions? The idea of multiple dimensions. Go on. Well, you know, there are theories which state that we are just in one of an infinite number of dimensions. And in all of those other dimensions, every possible variation that you could imagine exists. So there is a Carl in one of those other dimensions that's both man and woman. There is a Carl that's got hair. There is a Carl that's got a penis growing out of his face. (laughs) There is a Carl, there is every conceivable Carl. And this is a scientific theory, not science fiction. It's a scientific theory. Uh, is it a planet? No, it's a multiple dimension. It's another dimension that exists in parallel with the dimension we are living in now. So we're living in our dimension, and right next to us, intangible, unable to communicate with it or touch it or interact with it, so there I'm are multiple dimensions. So I'm still doing what I'm doing now, but I'd be sat here with a knob on me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly in one the same them, life. Exactly the same life but with the knob on the head. Now, because there's an infinite number of dimensions, there's another one where you're not doing this. You're, you're sat there with a the knob on your head, but you're talking French. Why is this happening? <laughs> there is one, Carl, and I, this is a fact, that you're talking French with a knob in your mouth. <laughs> exactly. And no one can make his head out of what you're saying. No, because it's, it's, it's pigeon French anyway. <laughs> exactly. But who came up with this? 
Well, it's because there are phenomena that happen at the subatomic level that people are explaining as being that, for instance, atoms or very, very small molecules are disappearing and reappearing. And people are saying... <laughs> the, the, the fact that we're trying to dissect this theory is you said very, very small molecules. <laughs> well, yeah, OK. <laughs> atoms, neutrons. And is there anything that we look at on this planet that we go, that's weird? But it would fit in normal in another dimension. It's just so I happens. think you. I think no, but say, say like the Elephant Man. Yeah. Was he all right, but he was just in the wrong dimension? <laughs> I love this. Well, it's an interesting thought. I mean, of course, there is one dimension that where, where you are the ruler of the world and yeah. everyone thinks you are a genius. Yeah. I'd hate that, though. <laughs> I, don't, I just don't understand why we're worrying about this, though. No, nor do I. Well, it's we're not worrying less. about it. Well, they are, because... Scientists and that sat in a room somewhere going, what's going on? What's, what's happening in the other dimension? Oh, but we can't get to it, can we? So well, that's why no, I don't it's worry about it. I, I agree with Carl. It's, it's, it's largely pointless. It's academic. It's, it, 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 it's, like, it's like when you, you, a person does um, philosophy and the first lecture he ever goes to, he comes out and uh, he goes in the student union and he goes up to uh, someone who's doing <laughs> English or science and goes, oh, you know, mate, that table's not there. I go, what? Yeah. I go, the table's not there. He goes, what? How do you know? They go, what? What are you talking about? The table's not there. I go, isn't it there? Can you feel that? Is it there or not? <laughs> and his beret falls off. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. It's not a big um, chat up line as well when you've got a little bit of philosophy and you try to spout off. Because of course I told you before, haven't I? When I was doing a school play, and uh, there was a girl, and I was trying to crack onto her. But I was going through my sort of you know fifth form phase of sort of reading Catherine the Ryan and all the rest of it, rebelling against the system. And uh, I thought, well, she's gonna she's gonna find me appealing if she realises how smart I am. Mm. So I. Can I just ask you one thing? Yeah. Is this before or after the phase when you thought a bow tie would sort you out? This was before the bow tie phase. <laughs> yeah. There was a phase, I should say, for new listeners where I, for about six months, wore a bow tie because I thought it made me look sort of like I was from a Jeeves and Worcester book. <laughs> and I thought that was very urbane and sophisticated. But, uh, yeah, we were doing the school play and... Uh, there was one point where everyone was hanging out in one of the rooms, music rooms, getting changed, joking, laughing, cracking onto each other, right? I was sat in the room next door, empty room, on my own, right? Reading Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, the uh, sort of kind of, you know, populist philosophy book from the 70s. Just sat reading that in the hope that she would uh, walk in the room see me, think, my God, he's obviously wise, and presumably, you know, get off with me. Um, must have sat there for about an hour and a half <laughs> before anyone came in. And uh, <laughs> she came in eventually, and uh, I thought, ding dong, this is it. She came in and said, have you seen Martin Wells? <laughs> I said, I think he might be next door. She disappeared again. I gave her another 15 minutes on the hope that she'd come back. She didn't. I went in the r next room. She was getting off with Martin Wells. Oh, no. Because he'd been dancing. <laughs> he'd been dancing around with no trousers on. <laughs> So, all I'll say is, there's a, a, less, a valuable lesson learned. Um, I think this was the same girl. I was at a party once, and I was, this girl, I was trying to impress her, and um, someone lit some joss sticks. Uh, you know, just going to give it a kind of hippie vibe, right? And I didn't know what joss sticks were. I thought they were some kind of drug, like cannabis. <laughs> so... So this joss sticks are like, and I, and I started, I started going because I thought we were all supposed to be getting high on these joss sticks. I started going, whoa, oh man, these joss sticks are, they're really doing me in, man. And, and everyone said, what do you mean? I went, oh, they're good stuff. This is good shit. And, and they, and they said, what do you mean, joss sticks? You're not. It's not, they're not drugs, they're just, there's an incense. And I went, yeah, I know, I'm just saying they're, they, I'm just saying they smell great, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Meanwhile, Martin Wells on the table, <laughs> trousers down, yeah. everyone just throwing in money. Yeah, exactly. Oh. I don't know if it was, I mean, there was another party where I, um, I don't think it was the same girl, but there's, never, there's inevitably a girl there that I'm trying to, you know, impress. And I went up to, it was a house party in someone's house, I didn't know anyone there really. I was only Steve, you've come people. without trousers. <laughs> well, it worked for bloody Martin Wells. <laughs> and I, um, I went up to the toilet, and I had to do, you know, number twos. Brilliant. And I did them. <laughs> there was no toilet paper. <laughs> oh, God. At the party. 
And, and I was like, and I was scrabbling around in this bathroom thinking, what can I use? There's nothing. And I was thinking, oh, God, what can I do? And um, as I recall, in the end, I, I couldn't make anyone hear. I didn't want to sort of go out in this, into the hall and stuff. So I had to shout out the window into the garden where everyone was. No. Yeah. And someone had to come and bring me some. And um, once again, it didn't... Well, I wish I'd fucking had Zen in the iron book because that then I could have ripped some fucking pages out and wiped my arse. Oh, Jim Pants is that. He's gone and written it down again. <laughs> That's the... Uh, the ever-changing jingle for Carl's Diary, excerpts of which we like to read each week. Suzanne said today can be my day because she has been a bit of a pain with her illness and that. <laughs> <laughs> so she said I can do what I want today. We went for a walk around Green Park. Loads of tourists were about looking at the Queen's house. She was in because the flag was up. I wouldn't want to live there. Why wouldn't you want to live there? Just because it's right in the centre of... Town. It's just not in a good place, is it? It's got a roundabout mm. side and that. Really it's busy. Yeah. It's pretty good. I went for a pee in the toilets. When I came out, a pigeon had shat on Suzanne's coat. She was in a bit of a mood about it. A bird shat on my ear once. I left it for about 10 to 15 minutes until I got home. I washed it off, and in that 10 to 15 minutes, it had corroded me ear. You know, he's had a lot of problem with ears. Um, he told me the other day, he, uh, he got up, um, washed, had a bath, had some breakfast, went to the shops, to get a newspaper and well, I had a chat with a woman in the corner shop, got home, pottering around, looked in the mirror, he had a cotton bud sticking out of his ear. <laughs> he went, what annoyed me was she didn't say anything. Like it's her responsibility. Yeah. No, but she knows me well enough to sort of, you know, <laughs> go, you know you've got a cotton bud in your ear. No, she knows you well enough to go, Carl's got a cotton bud in his ear, I've seen worse. <sighs> When, you're, when you've got a cotton bud in your ear, what interrupted I think, I think you? Suzanne called or my dad called or something, and then because I was running a little bit late because I'd been talking to them, the earbud was in, I just popped my coat on and went to the shop. Carl, you got a toothbrush in your mouth. Oh. Walked through Covent Garden. There were five of them mimes knocking about. <laughs> I don't understand why people take pictures of mimes. Everyone looks like a mime in a picture. <laughs> That's so true. That's really true. If the point is they're staying still, if that's their skill, a picture won't tell that story. That's that's absolutely true. <laughs> My dad took the cat to be put down today because it kept bumping into things since losing its sight. My mum said she's not going to get another one. She said the parrot is looking worried as it's seen the budgie and the cat go in the space of three months. <laughs> Your mum said the parrot's looking worried. What's the what, what what happened to the cat then? It, it it gets into a lot of fights. It lost one eye, and uh, then it got into another fight and lost another. Oh, and it was yeah. just walking around, bumping into stuff. The, I mean, the vet sort of said, oh, we can do stuff to keep it alive and all that, but it's a bit out of order, isn't it? Because it costs a fortune, they shouldn't tell you. But... Mum and Dad can't afford to have eyes put on it and stuff. No, you can't put, have eyes put on a cat anyway. No, but they said, oh, we, we can do something here. We can what? have its eyes sorted out. But it... W um. I don't think you should be allowed cats. Why? Not the Pilkington family. Why not? Well, they, they have good dying. lives. Yeah, I know, but they have good lives whilst they're still knocking about. It's just that we get through them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job you're not going to have kids. Oh, God almighty. I can't believe it. The cat that kept throwing up. So his mum shaved it. Unbelievable. Dry wipe cat. A mate sent me a story on email about a bloke in China who has this weird illness that means he can't have his picture taken. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not the, that's not the weird bit. If he tries, his body doesn't appear in the photo. Don't talk shit. He has had group pictures taken and everyone appeared apart from him. Don't talk shit. The that's story bollocks. had a picture next to it of a family photo and it said he was stood at the back but you couldn't see him. Right. He wasn't in the picture. He was in the picture. No, he wasn't in the picture. He's done loads of tests and stuff. No, there's don't, I haven't done loads of tests. This is bollocks. There's no way this is scientifically possible. What's what? his want? Yeah, now he's wanted. Just a white bit of paper up on the police wall. Have you seen this man? What man? If you see him, tell us. <laughs> You're talking shit. Suzanne watched the film You've Got Mail tonight for about the 14th time. I don't think you could properly fancy someone without seeing them, unless you're blind. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's odd when blind people have affairs. Why is that odd? 
Just because most stuff is is based on looks, isn't it? So you think once they found someone, they're happy with them, stick with them. But no, it's not true. Th no, but I think most things are based on looks. What I mean is, when you first first like meet someone and that. Well, then initially it's only looks because yeah. you don't know them. So that's what I'm saying. But that's, so a, that's a ridiculous thing to say, isn't it? Well, no, it's just what I think. I'm not saying that that's like fact or anything. I'm just thinking if you're blind. Why mess about? You're still basing on it if it's only looks that yeah. you, people find. What? Yeah, I'm just saying, so why is a blind person messing about having an affair? Because I'm saying that presumably that blind person isn't basing anything on looks. I, I just, all right, I mean, maybe that's not, uh, I mean more like... Do you want me to cross it out? Shall I cross it out? Well, it's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's just the same way, I think I put how, you know, people, uh, I read something in a Sunday paper once with some bloke who was going out with some woman... Uh, he ended up going out with a sister who was a twin. If you're going to have a change, have a change. <laughs> <laughs> Spoke to Ricky about trips to the moon. Oh. He was up for going just to see what the world looks like. I came up with the idea of a giant mirror on the moon that would reflect the world back. He had a few questions, but <laughs> but I had the answers. Yeah, he changed the subject, I won. Right, my first question was, how would you get it up there? He said bit by bit. <laughs> That'd be a good mirror then, wouldn't it? <laughs> I said, how big would it be? He went, you'd still need a telescope. I said, how would you get it on the right side of the moon, always facing the right? He went, what? He went, does the moon move then? I went, yes. <laughs> and if we don't like the mirror on the moon, we can always wallpaper over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Suzanne's birthday tomorrow, so I've got to get her something. I sometimes think it would be best if we didn't celebrate birthdays. I think people would live a bit longer if they didn't know how old they were. Age puts restrictions on things. She said something about wanting one of them posh badges to put on her coat. I will look for one later. I love the fact that around the time that you've got to buy Suzanne her birthday present, you think that birthday presents are a bad idea. Got up early at Suzanne's birthday, gave her the card and present. She was well happy with her posh badge. She wore it to work. It's quite nice, quite nice to hear a moment where she was actually happy for once in your company. They always say when you get someone a present, you should buy them something they wouldn't buy themselves. Daft rule. I want something I would buy myself if I had the money. When I was young, me Auntie Nora got me a present I wouldn't buy myself. It was a t-shirt with her face on. <laughs> <laughs> Looked at what's been going on in the world. Someone has found some people who live in an old town somewhere where they are so old-fashioned they still walk on all fours. There is a picture of them and they use shoes on their hands. That's not old-fashioned. Why is that old-fashioned? That's some kind of regressive evolution. Yeah, really old-fashioned. Yeah. Well, it's not true, is it? It is true. It's somewhere in... Uh... Well, I believe there are. they have found a group of people that are living and walking around on all fours, but yeah, I don't but believe they're wearing shoes on their hands. And I don't believe it's they haven't evolved <laughs> to standing <laughs> no. up. No, they just haven't seen other people walking on two feet. Don't talk shit all your life. That's all it's about, though, isn't it? You copy. When you're a baby, if you were stuck in a room, you'd wander about on all fours, because that's, that's the way, that's an easy way of getting about. So you only walk on two feet because you see everyone else doing it. Well, I don't believe that is the case, because as I understand it, some of the family are walking on two feet. So I don't know what the ins and outs of it are. I know there's a forthcoming documentary on the BBC, so maybe we should watch that and then we'll all know what's going on. Right. Instead of just leaping to conclusions because you read half of it on the internet and we, then I, skipped but, on to but something all else. All I'm saying is, though, you would wear shoes on your hands if you're roaming about like that. <laughs> so I mean, you just confessed there that you, 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 you leapt from fact to fiction, did you, in the space of I'm, one I'm, diary entry? It's just that I saw a little picture. And you assumed that they'd be wearing shoes on their feet? If they've got shoes on their feet, they might as well have them on their hands because their hands are doing the same as the feet. <laughs> If you're not going to wear them on your hands, don't put them on your feet, then. I'm beginning to think some monkey news was bollocks. <laughs> uh, treated Suzanne to her tea, went and got her a curry from the shop opposite. While I waited for the food, I read a story in the Metro newspaper about an alien gang oh. that kept appearing in someone's garden. Christ. The bloke moved, but when he used to pass the house at night, he would still see the aliens knocking about, hiding underneath his old shed. There was other alien stuff, but I had to go as the food was ready. Brilliant. Yeah, it's a bit annoying, that. Yeah, load of bollocks again. Well, good. More um, drivel from Carl's Diary next week. Right, Rockbusters, quick. Right then, so last week gave you some initials, again, of artist or a band. Quick. Cryptic clue and that. Yeah. Um, 
the first one I gave you. The initials were ND. Yeah. Uh, that Jamaican fella, uh, he doesn't want anything, right? So you got to think about the accent there. Yeah. Um, he doesn't want anything, so yeah. so he's not he's not, he's not sort of demanding anything. Okay. No no sort of demand nil demand. <laughs> Neil Diamond. So it's like Neil Diamond. They'd say Neil Diamond, please. No, Can no. I have some Neil Diamond. No, right. Neil, Neil Demand. But just now it was all to do with I've got no demands. Now it's a Jamaican person going in and asking for Neil Diamond in a Jamaican voice. Yeah, I know, but it's a cryptic clue, isn't it? Doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> the second one was uh, the initial was E. Uh, I asked them to pass me the ball by using the red. Uh, what do you do if you chuck someone a ball? They head it back. Edit back, yeah. They, so they so head it back. So you'd say uh, edit, editors, edit, editors. That's that's editors. What that's, is it? Is it? A, it's a band that. I've no, no, no. There's a band called the, the Editors, but there's no band called Editors. Editors. What's that? Is it great? Is it a Greek band? Again, cryptic. Just you got no, to think cryptic. Again, bollocks. Then the last one, uh, TR. With it, it was the initials. Yeah. The cryptic clue. He's got the woolly ones, but I've got the ones that run and charge at you. Go what, on. What I forgot? Don't know. Well, sheep, something to do with sheep. Right, something to do with sheep. They're, they're the woolly ones. Yeah. What are the ones that run and charge at you? Oh, they're woolly as well. No, no, but rams. Not, not as woolly. The rams, right. Yeah, they're there. The ram ones, right? If you write that down. No, you're not even write it down. It's a, that's, it's that's a... Ramones. The so, ram ones? The ram no, but it's how you say it, isn't it? It's not, because it's not... No, no, it sort of changes about a bit, just cryptic. <laughs> Part so of your understanding cryptic. of the word cryptic is yeah. it can be anything. What am I thinking? Cryptic. Cryptic clues in a crossword have a logic to them, that's why people are able so, to answer them. Well done to Neil Fennan, who's in uh, in Canada. He's well, I just don't know what that says about bollocks, Neil. Bollocks, this. Right, do the next week's one. Right, then. Just get it over with, we've got to stop this. Monkey News is coming back. No, it's not coming back, there's, there's nothing going on, we're not doing it. Right, SC are the initials of the artist of the band. Go on. SC. Uh, the cryptic clue. No, don't, just, stop, just stop saying cryptic because it's not. The, the clue is: I went into the restaurant on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and the fella making the food was there each time. Right? S C are the initials. I went into the restaurant on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want, yes. uh, the fella making the food, he, he was there each time. What's so he changed it? Uh, was S C. He there, was he there Saturday and Sunday or not? He can be if you want. I'm just saying he's there a lot. Oh, this Work is this is, this is like pulling teeth. I'm trying to hurry it up. And the second one, <sighs> go into that woman's store and rip her off, right? Right. That's C. Okay. C. Go into that woman's store and and rip her off. Okay. You know, if you're gonna do that. Oh, don't mumble <laughs> at the end of it. Go on. Just do the clue. And the last one, the initial E. Last one ever. You have had a go at laying down a track. But it ain't perfect, right? So you're sort of making a making a track. No, just do the clue. You're making a track. You right, don't give us the clue. Down, don't just talk perfect. around it. Right, the initial is E. E. What's the clue? You have had a go at laying down the track, but it ain't perfect. Fine. A music track. Yeah. Well, no, but no, 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 no. You can't. <laughs> no, there's, they, these people can't ask questions. Well, I can. Oh so God. Send them in podcast at rickygervais dot com. Right. That's the end of. Uh, Another Ricky Gervais show. Oh, thank God for that. Another one next week. We've got to give value for money because oh. this is shit. So we've got to. What we do is, because this is such dreadful bollocks, we're giving more of it. Yes, that's <laughs> lucky <you>. them. <laughs> yeah. So it's cheerio from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, Bye. and Carl Pilkington. Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. You're listening to Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Now, you uh, probably know me from such works as The Office and Extras, uh, uh, Stephen being my um, co-writer and co-director on those things. For those people who are not so aware of Carl Pilkington, um, he was our producer, sort of given to us when we first started on uh, XFM, um, and uh, you're thinking, well, why are we doing a podcast? Why are we doing a podcast for, for, for no money? Is um, there no money? No, 
It's free, isn't it? It's free download. But this, this is the, this, yeah, this is what I'm here to answer. Mm. It's because I like to be in a room with Carl Pilkington. Mm. You know, like some people go and help sort of chimps. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. Well, some they people, go to the, the you know, the, yeah, the, the jungles about, and things. And yeah. help out little sort of endangered Dian species. Dian Fossey or whatever. Exactly, You're yeah. very much the Dian Fossey of the, of the, 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 of the of Manchester of scene. Of the, of the uh, little bald mank world. <laughs> and Carl Pilkington is, is an ongoing experiment for me because I've seen him blossom from an idiot into an imbecile. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I, wa I want to see it too. Look at the way he's looking at us through the glass. Mm. Look at that. He's got a perfectly round head. Um, and that's why I'm doing this... Um, Podcast or bodcast, as I'm going to call it in um, his honour, little round-headed bod-type freak. If you're not familiar with bod, we can maybe put up a picture of bod, the popular cartoon kids character. Go to rickyjabates.com and you will see a picture of Carl and a picture of bod. And you draw your own conclusions as to the likeness. Carl, what do you think about all this? That's all right. Are you excited by this new technology? What podcasts? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's just, I mean, we are living in that sort of era now, aren't we? Like, you need to. Yeah, to listen to stuff on demand when you want it and stuff. I know yeah. you, you were, you're not a fan of the iPod in general, are you, or any of the MP3 things? You're concerned. Uh, it's, I'm warming to it, but... This is what's amazing about Carl. Even though he's talking about things like MP3 players, computers, uh, iPods, he sounds like he's he was found in a glacier and, and thawed out. <laughs> yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's sort of taught to yeah. speak. We're, we're a couple of high school guys who found him, and we're, take, <laughs> we're trying to ingratiate him in the uh, in the gang, trying yeah. to pass him off as someone from the modern day. No, oh, no. Yeah. But, but my thing with with iPods is now, do we need them? Do you know what I mean? We're, we're living in that era now where we have invented most of the stuff that we need <laughs> and now we're just messing about they said that in 1900 someone actually said everything that's to be invented has already been invented they what? said that in 1900 and how wrong were they no but what what came out what, at what point what was invented in that year where they went right that's it now well, what, what did they invent in 1900 that that made them go with we've, we've done it all now well just think think a little bit right the 20th century think what happened in the 20th century Go on. Well, cars, planes. Yeah, but is that a good thing? Planes and that. Do you need to? Do you need a plane really? Wouldn't it have been better if we all stuck where we should be, instead of travelling about? War. Why? War. Well, look, wars, wars happening, isn't it? Because everyone's saying, well, now we can fly. We'll go over there. So I'm, there were no that. wars prior to the invention of the aeroplane. Not like, not like there is today. Right. But what I'm saying is. The more the the world's got smaller on it, everyone's saying that, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, the way I was saying to you the other day, uh, you know, we, we now go to places where we shouldn't go. People go on holiday to places where you've got to have an injection before you go there. Yeah. Forget it then. That, <laughs> yeah. that, that's a warning. Don't well, go there. I'm with you on that. I, I, I don't want to enter a country where I have to have an injection to stop me from dying while I'm in that country. Right, I totally agree with you on that. So what yeah. happened is, so they invented the plane and it's like, oh, let's go on holiday. And then they go, oh, die now. Oh, well, you've got to invent something. Let's invent an injection. And then it's like, right, well, what, what else do we need to go to that place? There's a lot of faffing. <laughs> 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 so what I'm saying is... I'm, is that I'm, a place, a lot of faffing? What, what I'm saying is, you know, Steve's travelled more than I have. You've been to, like, dangerous places. I've been to places where you need injections, yep. Yeah. yeah, but why? Because it's fascinating, isn't it? You know, don't you not believe in that idea of uh, travel broadens the mind? You know, well, it makes you experience other ways of life, other ways of thinking. It just enriches you as a human being. That's the whole reason people go travelling. Well, since the invention of the telly, you don't have to go that far to You're see it. You're absolutely right. So uh, there you go, then. The telly was the 20th century, wasn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. So where would, you, good where would you stop, then? You'd stop making stuff now? Stop inventing stuff right now? Or do you well, think we could carry on for another five years, see what comes up, and then just draw a line under it all? Well, again, but, uh, we, we're just messing about. And but I there's still things to do, isn't there? I mean, I, I know, I could throw things up. You could always go, oh, that's great. But, you know, a cure for cancer, a cure for AIDS. Yeah, but d should we should we mess with that? What do you mean? Because there's too, there's too many people in the world as it is, isn't there? So that's a way of controlling it. So that, you know, like, look at London, right? It's overpopulated. Rent keeps going up because there's more and more people surviving, right? If you let them die, it's going to even itself out. See, I was saying to someone the other day about maybe we should look at... If we're going to invent something, right, forget, like, the traditional way of people having kids, right? The way they, you know, have it away in that. You know, the oh, what, do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? No, you know, like, the the way that, you know, we we have kids and stuff. If it'd be good if what happened was to to control it is if man and woman, right, 
they sort of they're born and that they enjoy their life they learn a lot they live to be about 78 i think by that point <laughs> so specific. Yeah, no 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 yeah. but seven, by 78 i reckon you've sort of got to that point where you go do you know what i've done everything i'm going to do if you haven't bungee jumped by the time you're 78 you're not going to do it no. you know what i mean so it's kind of like your hips you've, have come off you've, you've done it all now so I've had, I've had my innings yeah and then you die right so say if everyone had that they live to be 78 mm. but then just as you die they give you the bumps you get you, you have a little baby inside you and as you die, your life carries on. Sorry, how is this you, happening? Sorry, are you mental? No, no, but don't you think? I mean, what? I've never heard such drivel. You say you're saying that, but if 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 Newton said it, you'd go, hmm, interesting. <laughs> that's that's what annoys me. The point is, Carl, he never would. No, He'd what? never say it. That's the point. Like, I, if you I never don't, say it, if you never I say it, I don't understand what you're talking about there. What? How, how? How was it? How is there a little baby in a seventy-eight-year-old? No, what I'm saying is, it's like an apple where. <laughs> The apple grows and it's got its little baby pips in it, and and the apple goes and the seeds are planted and a new one's born. But what that's I, what happens. But that is what reproduction is. Yeah, but I'm saying babies aren't being born left, right, and centre. It's 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 controlled, so that as someone dies, someone's born. But Carl, stop. H whose responsibility is Look, this? If you don't want to do but it, we won't do it. But is I'm it just... supposed to be nature? Has nature got to, to develop <laughs> humans so that we act that way? We, we live that <laughs> way? Or I is like, this a scientific experiment? What I like, he said, he said to you then, he said, Look, if you don't want to do it, we don't need to do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you were up for it, <laughs> yeah. we'll sort it out. <laughs> yeah. We can do that. We'll have a whit round so, so we can do the research. I, I just think, at the end of the day, we've got to do something. And is anyone keeping an eye on this and, and looking at what we can do next to control the population thing? It does my head in that I've got to live in London for work and what have you. <laughs> and there's loads of people here. And, you know, forget going out on a Saturday night, it's too busy. And you can't move and they keep... I mean, what annoys me about London So is, your solution is that 78-year-old women have little babies inside them. And, and as they slip away into death, the yeah. little babies... And how is that baby then Who raised? Looks Who the looks baby? after the baby? Because it's a pretty good system, having a baby <laughs> while you're young enough to look after that baby and make sure it lives <laughs> yeah. to, uh, you know, reproductive age itself. I mean, that, one, it's, that's, that system's been working for years. Nature's sort of sorted it out. <laughs> Natural selection and evolution sort of makes that a, a good model. But wait a minute, Nature. Pop that on hold, because Carl Pilkington's got an idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just, it was just, it was, that's what it was, just an idea. Yeah, well, it was, you know, it was nonsense. But, but thank it you for it. The worst <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was the ramblings of, it was the ramblings of someone you'd find by themselves in a hospital eating flies. Yeah, this is the sort of thing you find when uh, if they find uh, maybe a, a pamphlet or a, a booklet written by a psychopath. <laughs> you know, someone just <laughs> yes. before they went on a rampage and then turned the gun on themselves, they yeah. go through their possessions and they find a book I and it's got weird drawings, women with knives in their face, yeah. and this kind of guy. In fact, I saw uh, I saw a similar sort of theory written out on a wall, but it was written in shit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, all I'm all I'm saying is I think it's you know when people die normally. Everyone's fed up about it, aren't they? And a bit down. But <laughs> if when you if if when you pass away, you go, oh, we're going to miss Gladys or whatever. But then there's this new life brought in. It's almost like a bad news. But, good but news. you're talking about it like someone could pick this idea up and run with it. Like you've given them enough information <laughs> yeah. to do it. How is this possible? Where does she get the baby from? How, 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 why does it grow? Why grow it in, a, in Gladys's belly? Why not have it in a drawer? <laughs> but what I'm saying ready is... to go, just add water. I, right. I mean... Who it's, looks it's, after it's, son of Gladys? Look, look. There is no theory here. There's no... Th it's the ramblings of a, a madman. What I'm saying is, though, the body's always changing, in it? From caveman to now, or whatever. In some changing. cases. And they're always finding out more and more. Like, I read the other day yeah. about how um, they're saying... Do you know how, like, they say people have six senses? Yeah. There's loads more than that. <laughs> <laughs> right, and there's this one... I say, show me that you've got one. No, right, and, and there's this one that's knocking about. Go on. That, uh, what it is, say if I'm, say if I'm in, a, in a pub, right, mm. and I'm, I'm just doing a crossword or whatever. Unlikely, but go on. And uh, there's some woman who's walked in, right, and she's staring at me. Yeah. I know she's looking at me, and I look up and I look round, she's looking at me. Right. And they're saying that's a new sense that, that they found out from, like, you know, doing tests and what have you. Yeah, it's rubbish. And they're uh, saying okay. that's been around well, it, since, but, since like, man and dinosaur was knocking about. But it could be, it could be, you know, peripheral vision. It could be a footstep stopped, and usually when someone's footstep stopped, they're, 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 they've stopped. No, they've explained I, I it. I think it's safe to assume that 
you know, that with your perfectly round head, people are always stopping and no, looking. No, but they explain I mean, it. You just know that there's probably going to be someone there if they, you look right. They said it's from the time when, like, caveman was, like, wandering about, and he'd go, hang on a minute. And he'd look round, there's a dinosaur there or whatever, and he'd, right, he'd leg it. This is, this is nonsense. One, one, not... I hate it when people use the term when caveman was wandering <laughs> round. Caveman and dinosaurs, oh, they used to live together, yeah. Oh, that's the same era. Yeah. What have you been watching? Raquel Welsh. What do you mean? Well, what do you mean caveman wandering, knocking around with a dinosaur? You know the Flintstones is only partly based on fact. <laughs> <laughs> dinosaurs and man did not coexist. The dinosaurs had long gone before man arrived. Extinct. Kaput. Hmm. You don't, what, you don't believe us? What, you don't believe us because you, you've seen... Because you saw that film where they took pictures of lizards and magnified them and put them next to men in films so they looked like they were fighting. <laughs> yeah. No, but why, why couldn't that have happened? What is the film with Raquel Welsh? Um, a Million Years B.C. Years, a Million Years B.C. or something. A yeah, Million yeah. Years B.C. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, but... She had a sort of woolly mammoth bikini. Fact. But why, why wasn't the dinosaurs back then just like how we have dogs now, in a way? He's watching the Flintstones. He's watching the Flintstones. He's thinking of the Flintstones. Yeah. That's what he's when thinking. When he puts out the saber-toothed tiger... Yeah, and yeah. And he, and he, and he mixes his concrete in a pelican. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, ju I just think that they, there must have been a crossover point. Why? Why do you say that? Why do you think there must have been there a crossover point? There must have been. Because if nothing was knocking about at any point, how did anything carry on? I know. I, exactly. Why, why, why didn't Hitler meet Nero? <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? There must have been a crossover. They must have met somewhere. <laughs> they must have met at a party somewhere. <laughs> they mixed in similar circles. Yeah. Well, I mean, are you are you telling me that Ken Dodd has never met Genghis Khan? <laughs> they must have bumped into... S I can't believe it. Yeah, forget it. <laughs> oh, you're listening to Ricky Gervais with Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Coming up after the ads, Monkey News. What ads? No ads, no? <laughs> no, we're not, there's nothing here, there's no records. Of, we just gotta keep on talking. Okay. Which is not. We could do our own ads. <laughs> okay. Bring tea for the tiller man, steak for the sun. Out now to own on DVD, Ricky Gervais's and Steve Merchant's award-winning extras. With Ross Kemp. Oh, zippy. With Les Dennis. Put your ass away, Les. I don't really know. And Kate Winslet. Oh, this nun outfit makes me talk dirty. Out now on DVD. Extras. Did you like Flannel Wars? <laughs> <laughs> the Ricky Gervais book for, for kids with pictures of made-up creatures in of different colours? Well, <laughs> if you did, there's, <laughs> there's more of them now in the more new book. More Wars, <laughs> Which is also by Ricky Gervais. Drawings by his mate. Out now. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. You're listening to Ricky Gervais with Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, now time for one of our regular features, Monkey News. Do the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that, Monkey News. Right, what, what we're doing here is, right, is uh, just giving you a bit of bit of monkey news that's that's gone on, right, where <laughs> a monkey's been involved in it. Good little story in that. Yeah. Uh, are you familiar with the one that went into space? The uh, first, the first sort of thing they ever sent up there before man did it and all that. You see, this is what annoyed me with it really. Armstrong gets all the, all the glory, but do you know who went up there before, before him? A monkey. Yeah. Yeah. Dog but, went up first. But what was the monkey called? I don't know. No, sure. Okay. So it's not the most informed news bulletin. The dog was called Laika. Was it? Yeah. They couldn't get it back there. They sent it up there. Did a few tests and stuff, and they couldn't get it back. They weren't they weren't prepared to bring the capsule back yet. Brilliant. We could all do that. So is that a, is that a you know is that a good mission? Well, I just think it was seeing what if it if if the mission itself killed it, but they didn't have the technology because of course it couldn't it couldn't fly the capsule back, which it has to be manned to bring right, it. Well, this this was this was the next one up then, right? So the dog must have gone first, and then they went right. We made an error there, right? Get the monkey in. And what happened is they taught it um, what buttons to hit at the time that it needed to hit them. And, and the way they did this was, like, give it bananas. It was like, hit the red button. And it hit the red button, they'd give it a banana. Right. And they go, right, reverse is the green one, hit the green one. And then they do that and go, there's a banana. And then they go, right, hit reverse, and it go, and get a banana. Right. Hit the red. So it was taking commands on, like, headphones. Right, but how were they giving it the banana? Is that how you learn to do radio? <laughs> how were they giving it the banana? What do you mean? 
No, oh. this is before it went. You, do, you oh. wouldn't just go and put a monkey in it and go, there you go, get on with it. They'd sort of put him in one of them capsules that you get. Yeah. And they were th on headphones. I, I don't believe this happened. Well, I'm telling you the story now, so the monkey I don't think they trained it to do anything. I think they sent it up there and he put electrodes coming out of it to no, see what... what it uh, wasn't any of that. They did a thing like they do. Like, right. Like they can with animals. If you give something, uh, you know, like a treat, you can teach it how to do it. It's just like a dog, isn't it? When it's you called Pavlovian conditioning. However... That was to see if it would salivate or go over to no, a particular it, corner, yeah. not if it could control a spacecraft. <laughs> next one up. It's the next one up. It, as far as the, the monkey's not sat there going, oh, I'm a bit under pressure here, it's a rocket. All that's knowing is I'm getting a banana if I hit that button. That's all the monkey's thinking about. Right? <laughs> they wouldn't, but <laughs> billions well, of space but dollars. But how can they be sure that it's going to press the button at the right moment? Because it's got headphones on. <laughs> They're telling it. It's not like just, you have now. It's not like willy nilly. It's not just like pop it in there and see that. Well, what's to stop it from just hitting it any old time? Because it's a monkey and it's, it's not a human. Because he's trained now. Oh, anyway, he's trained. So he's listen, fully trained. Yeah. Go so on. what happened is anyway. Oh, this is absolute rubbish. They pop the monkey in there. Yeah. It's got his headphones on. They're going right at the green one, and uh, I think there's something there that a little banana comes out to keep the same... <laughs> no, you're making this up. I'm not, it's the same... There's no way that they made uh, a, a right, spacecraft so, so can, that had a banana dispenser. <laughs> right, There's so, no way in this world that they made a spacecraft that could go into outer mm, space, right, so what, so manned you're, so by you're, a monkey mm, with a banana dispenser. So you're saying that it's easy to send something up to space but you don't believe there's a little banana machine? Right, okay, so in your world, in your world, uh, there's this, there's a monkey and it's been conditioned and there's so a little monkey dispenser, a uh, monkey dispenser, a, yeah, banana, a banana dispenser, dispenser yeah. right? So it comes to the launch day, monkeys, monkeys sat in there, uh, everyone's ready, bananas are stocked up and all the rest of it. They go, right, hit the green button. <laughs> Right, and the rocket goes off and what have you. No, they would not make the monkey launch the rocket. Carl, so, you, are, you are living in a, so, a cartoon world. So the rocket goes off, right? <laughs> this is absolute it's, bollocks! It's all going well. You are, you, I mean, I don't know it's what all, you're going to... It's, it's not going well. It's going There's well. no way a monkey launched it's a going, rocket. There's no way a monkey launched a rocket, so you idiot. it's all going on, so they're going, hit the left button, and, it's, and it goes a little the bit left. left button? Right, oh, so. well-known spacecraft command. This is Houston. Hit the left button. <laughs> oh, brilliant. This is what happened in Apollo 13. Hit the left button. So it, you it, are, oh, it you goes are. left. Yeah, it goes left. So it goes left, and it's, it's going away. Left! It's, it's it goes going left! Up. Yeah. No, the moon. You're so it going goes, right. It goes. It goes for the moon. Everything. Everything's going well. Right. Uh, they get up there. But it does whatever it does. It reverses. It comes back. <laughs> right. So then you are so, honestly, you are brain dead. So it's you are one of the most stupid people that I would rather have mm. the monkey drive right, listen, me home than you. So the thing is, so it lands back. It yeah. does a good job and everything. It gets out. Um, and this it's is, this sick is of bananas. this is where this is where it turns a bit sad because after it done that mission, yeah. right? <laughs> because it happened and it, and it was all safe and everything, the next one would have been to send man, right? So the monkey enjoyed it and it was like, well, I want to do it again, right? But they were like, so how did they know that? How did they know? Just, what just the way it looked and what have you. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> fuck off! <laughs> just the way it looked. So, you are a maniac. So the thing is, though, right? So after it had done that, it was on such a high, right? <laughs> yeah. It could it could never get that high again. Change there was drugs. nothing. There was nothing that it could do. Went on tour, did it? It did. It, it sort of ended up killing itself <laughs> because it could never never get that buzz that it right, got. Right. That was absolute bollocks. None of that is true. <laughs> except they sent a monkey into space, and I'll and I'll, mm. um, I'll check that. Absolute drivel. So, it, in your mind, it committed suicide. It, had a, it went on a crazy bender of drinking drugs and women. And like then, it, do, it does happen, you and hear it about it. It was found in a motel room. <laughs> <laughs> right, do you know, like, you don't believe in, like, scary stuff? Just like. You know, ghosts. No, I believe in scary stuff. I don't believe no, in things that are totally logical. That. Yeah, ghosts. Vampires? No. Anything made up by man. Well, there was, Anything... so, there was something in the paper the other day about a vampire. Oh, they found one. They dug something up. It was in the paper. And, oh, um, it's true then. It's definitely true. But it's we'll leave that. Then. But we'll leave that because you're just going to do that. So it doesn't matter. No, come on. Well, listen, come on, come on. quickly. Tell us about you. Found no, it's just that they found they found a body in a coffin yeah. with a, a bit weird. of wood through its heart and a knife in its mouth. <laughs> <laughs> 
But if you don't believe it, <laughs> it was then a vampire what's the point? pirate. Oh, it was a vampire pirate. But that's definitely proof of a vampire, then, of course, and not some grotesque murder. Yeah. That's definitely proof of if a vampire. If it was found, if it was found, if it wasn't, one, if it wasn't right, made hang up. On yeah. Two, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. As far as I'm aware, they, re, when you put the, the thing through their heart, they just turn into dust. As, and and also, all, the, all their victims get, get their own life back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's right, and here was the second bit. Yeah. Somebody had dug it up, yeah. got the heart, blended it, burnt it, pop it, popped it in some water, mm. drank it, and they're in prison now. Now, if it wasn't dodgy stuff, why are they in prison? Because they're, they're, they're mental, because they dug up a body, liquidised its heart, <laughs> burnt it and drank it. <laughs> That's, That's why, why they're in prison. prison. <laughs> <laughs> There's right. your answer. Right. <laughs> but anyway, that is what I'm talking about, right? But I met, I met uh, Derek Akora the other week. Oh, yeah. Right? Now, um, who's he? Which one's he? He's uh, is he is he a medium? He can contact the dead. Is that right? He just chats to him and that sure. passes messages on. Nice of him. So I said, oh, tell us something a bit weird and that. So mm. he said, what do you want to know? I said, just just something weird. <laughs> so he goes, all right then. He said, uh, here's one for you, mm. right? And he said, uh, there's this pub out in the country, and uh, he said, there's this mug. Do you know those old mugs that they have, where they used to they used to like leave their own cup knocking like about? A oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A tankard thing. Yeah. So, uh, so there was there was one of them mugs in there, right? And everybody tankard, like, let's use a tankard if we've established right, yeah. that. Tankard, yeah. Because yeah. you're the only mug in this story. Right. Right. Nice. Leaving it all. High five. <laughs> Great. So this tankard's knocking about, right? And everyone who's running the pub keeps going, oh, I wish they'd stop leaving this tankard about, right? Mm. And they pick it up. <laughs> it must be a pain. <laughs> Having a, a tiny, small tankard in a pub. That must be a real grind. So, so every t they sort of picked it up and went, we'll have to wash that, and they popped it on a different mm. sideboard. Next thing you know, that person who's touched it died, right? Sure. <laughs> So <laughs> they must have been getting through bar staff. So they got, so they kept getting a new staff and that. And they were like, oh, "What's the connection here? <laughs> <laughs> what's the connection here?" Oh God! So anyway, so call they, Australia. We've run out. So they, so they, they sort of someone notices and they go, "You know, it's a bit weird. It's it's that cup, right?" So they get tankered. A, they, they get, so it's that it's that tankard and that. So um, they get a vicar in. Of course they do. And they go, "Look, um, there's a lot of weird stuff going on here." This this tankard. Every time someone touches it, they die. So he said, "Leave it with me." He gets his um, special water out and what have you. He comes round, does a little prayer, sprinkles it. He goes, "Right, not a problem. Don't worry about it." He picks it up, chucks it in the bin. Guess what? <laughs> what? Dies in a crash on the way home because he picked it up. Well, but 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 Carl, you're telling me this like it's fact, and I meant to go. That's amazing. Go to he told me. <laughs> it's Carl, I have, I, have, I, have, I have no opinion of that story, other than I'm pretty sure there was absolutely no connection between touching the tankard and him dying. That's all I'm sure it's of. It's not just him, though, is it? I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to even um, uh, contest the, the chain of events. All I'm saying is there is no connection. There is no connection possible because I believe in logic and the laws of the universe. So you, you, when you're you, when you're telling me um, m miracles and strange things outside coincidence, you may as well be telling me about the tooth fairy and the Easter bunny because they're equal to me. That it's ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous. So what what would it take though for you to go? Oh, I, I, I'm actually a believer now. But but what you're saying is you're. you're I can't answer that question because I'd have to base. Um, my beliefs on some of your premises, which I can't do. Uh, it's like it's like you saying, but what if you found out that two and two equaled five? I, I, I can't. It's a necessary truth that it doesn't. I'd have to. I'd have to go back and fundamentally uh, uh, disagree with what I think twoism is, twoness and fiveness. And you, it, you've never been in a situation though where you've gone. This room feels a bit weird. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Could be something knocking about or. But th but that's 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 a different question. I I, I could go into a really rough looking pub and think, this this isn't good because it's 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 no, based like on a, induction then. Because I mean I mean like you know if you've been to Cornwall on holiday and stayed somewhere and you've gone, do you know what? I'm sure, so much died in here. I'm sure so much died everywhere. Yeah, but what I mean, you never pick up a vibe of like I I I've got a mate right who uh, is is living in this big stately home, right. And what it Why is, is he living there? He's, 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 he's paying £100 a month, right? And it's almost like he's being a security man. Oh, right. But he's not. He's not he, he doesn't sit out the door with that on and everything. He just goes about his life, but he bases most of his work in this stately home. 
So what is it like a, a like a, a housekeeper, like, like a, a house sitting? A, a little bit, yeah. I mean, it's mass. It's 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 bigger than Buckingham Palace. This place, right? So what is it? A billionaire that's gone away or something? I, th I think it's some sort of. Uh, I think he said something about a, a viscount or something. Right? right. He said it's he owns this place. He's living in America. This place he owns, but it's falling to bits. Wow. And he's worried that people are going to go in there and squat and what have you. So he said to me, mate. You know, there was an advert, advert in the paper, he doesn't know him, advert in the paper saying, do you want to live in a big house, 100 quid or whatever? And uh, he, he went and had a look, right? And, and he's living in there now, he pays £100 a month. There's about 80 rooms. Gee. And uh, it's this big stately house and what have you. And I went, I went down there, he said, oh, come down and have a look, right? And from outside, you go, oh, this is brilliant, it's like something out of, you know, like the Man of Bourne or something. You go, this is, this is impressive. But then when you get in, it's like, it's a wreck. Uh, it's right. just fallen apart because they can't afford... Well, it's just been left. No one's no one's doing any vacuuming up or anything. There's, like, rat poison everywhere. Um, like, windows are smashed. Doors kicked in. That's a real shame. Mm. Why, why is it... Is it is I don't think he's doing his job, is he? Is it because it, it would cost, like, millions to do up or well, something? Well, apparently it'd be like... I, I think they're going to have it done up, but it's, it's going to cost, like, 80 million, right? So, anyway, so... That's I'm, a big house. That's a big house. So, we, get, we go to the pub and what have you... I've got like a little torch, and um, we, we're wandering around looking in all these different rooms, right? And I'm asking him, "What's, what, why is, what, how's it got in this state? Do you know what I mean? If someone's had it, why, why, have, why have they let it get to this state?" And he was saying how, you know, it was like a, a mental home right. at one point, and um, it was like a drug thing as well. People who had had problems with drugs, they popped them out there because it's in the middle of nowhere. Do you know what I mean? If you if you needed drugs or anything, forget it. It's not going to happen. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> So, so that's straight away. Do you know, like, have you ever been in a, a hospital when it's been shut down or a school when there's no kids in it and there's that sort of bad atmosphere of, like, weirdness? Yeah. Right? For so, the sake of argument, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so we're wandering about and I say, oh, yeah, what's in this room, right? And, and we go in and all the floors are, like, a wreck and rotten and stuff. And I looked at the wall and there was, like, a little piece of paper stuck on the wall, Ooh. right? And I said, what's this here? So I wandered over, right? Got right up close to it, and somebody had wrote it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> somebody had wrote it. Oh, Some, somebody had wrote it. Imagine doing Jack and Hori. Okay, right, go. Yeah, go on. So, sorry, sorry. So there's, but... there's a little sign there, right? And I go up to it, and it says "flies," right, with an arrow. Flies like flies this way, yep. right? So I think that's that's a bit weird. <laughs> so I follow the arrow, right, which goes to this corner where there's a shelf about. 3,000 dead flies on it. Oh, my God. Condom stuck on the top. <laughs> <laughs> that's, right. that's weird, isn't that it? That is weird. That is that weird, is weird. Right? So I'm looking at that, and there's, there's loads of stuff on the floor and that bits of paper. Picked up this bit of paper, right? And it had, uh, like, in biro and that. It looked really old, like it'd been there years. And it had uh, uh, something like... Need nappies, dummy, right? Uh, blankets... Like, like, all this, like, all stuff for, like... And I turned it over, right, and it said, none of this now needed, baby dead. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> now, that's weird, isn't it? Now, that's what I'm talking about when you get a bad vibe. You go, that's... that's who's been in here? <laughs> so, um, I, I, I don't actually oh, understand God. what point you're trying to make, <sighs> Carl. Just because <sighs> it's... It, it, who's written that? Who's been in that room? Who's been in that state? And then straight away, your mind starts going, oh, I'm getting bad vibes in here. But, Carl, didn't you just tell us that it was once occupied by drug addicts and mentals, to yeah. use your word? Yeah. So don't, haven't you put two and two together and thought that was probably who wrote it? That doesn't mean it's paranormal or ghostly. You walk into a building, it's a big, terrifying, empty house. It's terrifying in as much as it's cold and dark and draughty and a little bit spooky in this sort of illustrative sense. And insecure. Yeah, you're a bit nervous because you... And, you know, it's got this sort of... It's got its bad vibe. It's just based on the fact that... Your mate's in charge. <laughs> yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so it's like saying, are we scared of the dark? Yes, it's, I understand why people are scared of the dark. I'm a little bit scared of the dark. You're walking along... Because you, you don't know what's in it. Yeah, you don't yeah. know what's in the darkness. That's why people get nervous. It doesn't mean you have to make the leap then that you've got some paranormal sense. Oh, my God, I'm Carl Pilkington, and hang on. Just like Derek Akora, I have sensed something strange and evil in this room. Wait a minute, there's some flies in a condom. <laughs> I was right all along. <laughs> that is weird. Flies and a Johnny equals badness. <laughs> the, the, the flies and the condom was weird. It's now. weird. I don't know. But, it's but but the note. The note. 
Yeah. I just think of his face when he saw that. I mean, it by torchlight. You must have been terrified. It's a bit, it's a bit odd, isn't it? Thank you very much indeed for listening. If you'd like to get in touch with us, either myself or Ricky, or you've got something to send to Carl, then you can email us at podcast at rickygervais.com. I'd just like to uh, say thank you to both The Guardian for sponsoring this and Positive Internet for hosting this uh, podcast. Both great. They, the guys at Positive Internet know exactly what they're doing. They're my kind of people, as is The Guardian. Can I just, sorry, I just, well, you, you weren't contractually obliged to say that, were you? It just sounded... No, it's, it's what I think, it's just what I think. Right. It's just I've not heard you mention either of them before in that way, it just sounded... A little oh, bit. you're joking. I, I both love The Guardian and Positive Internet. Great guys. OK, that's, that's just the way you feel, it's not... Yep. Yep. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. observed, law is order, and good law is good order. A seemingly simple concept, but the realities of making those good laws and enforcing them have troubled society since time immemorial. From community service to capital punishment, everyone has a view on how we protect the innocent and punish the guilty. Is one man's law another man's tyranny? Is justice available to all? Does prison work? Should we lock up lawbreakers and throw away the key, or does that fail to address the root causes of crime? To discuss these questions and more, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, award-winning writer and graduate of the University of Warwick. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. Look at that fucking head. Right. So, Carl, law and order. I'm not that interested in it, to be honest. What do you mean? I've got no interest in law and order whatsoever. It's not part of my life. That's the problem. You keep picking topics that don't buzz me. <laughs> <laughs> of course they do. They don't. Well, not let's interested. talk about this. Let's talk about this. You're, you're a man quite obsessed with law and order. Based on what? Well, law and order is basically to protect the innocent, isn't it? I mean, when we think of law and order, we usually think of crime and punishment, but it's all about protect our person. We have the right to walk the streets without getting mugged. When someone wrongs us, we want justice. It's fundamental. And you do. You were sitting in your old flat in London, phoning me every day that you wanted to go downstairs and smack their heads in for being late and shouting around and being drunk, and you could hear it. You wanted some justice. Yeah, but nothing would have happened if I called someone up and said there's people doing noise pollution. Even though there's a there's a law for noise pollution now, it's not really taken seriously, is it? Well, so it you are see, but you are you are concerned with law and order. No, you but wanted no your point. rights, and point you ended quiet. up moving. You've, he's moved here now. He's moved to lovely, sunny Hampstead, just down the road from us. So you're having a better life. Yeah, so but I shouldn't have to move because of some noisy people. No, you shouldn't. But I'm saying you were stressed. No one cares though. And you wanted justice, but you could, you thought you couldn't get justice, so you moved away. Yeah, so I is... dealt with it in my way. Yeah, I right. hated him. Because right. they didn't care about anyone else. Exactly. But the police wouldn't get involved. There's other people who live around there who had to put up with it. But no one cared. So what did it feel like every night when you were trying to watch telly and it's hot and you've got the window open or...? No, yeah, you could just hear stuff. And other, you know, it's, it's that thing of you get a lot of tourists in London, so they're talking. It's not even as if you can listen in to what they're saying and have a, have a view on their opinion because they're foreign. <laughs> that, would so that you be can't... entertaining for you? Well, yeah, because if you can hear what people are saying, you go, oh, yeah, that's a Switch good point. Switch the telly off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's oh, a good know, point. Some I don't want to hear anyone talking. I'll tell you what, I feel, really feel sorry for people with, like, neighbours from hell. Because it's, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, you know, I'm not saying it's justified, but I can see why people go mental with someone when they're bullied or, you know, constantly harassed and no one cares. And when you can't go to the police, you can't go to the police and go, there's a bloke next door, he's got his telly on his he's always pissed, he's shouting about, if you don't do something, I'm going to go around there um, and crack his head in. You, you're the, be the one that... But isn't it your own fault for living in central London? Well, not really, because it wasn't always like that. I'd been there years, and then all of a sudden, 
you know, good fellas turn up, <laughs> they sat down there making a racket, what can you say to them? <laughs> you call down, they can't hear the phone ringing. Could I just say that good fellas wasn't a pizza joint, he no. called the loud people that because he thought they were gangsters, because right, they sure. did what they wanted and yeah. sat outside and... Yeah. So, uh, but it's louder, I think it is louder abroad than it is here. Whenever I go away on holiday, I always notice that it's always a couple of decibels higher. Really? Always. Like the sound of bird noises and that are louder abroad. <laughs> because they're trying to get a nut above the noise of the noisy people. No, that's not true. They are. When I was in, where was I? <laughs> Menorca or something. It was like <laughs> lying there. If it wasn't a noisy local, it was the people in the villa next door. If it's not them, they suddenly collected the bottles from the bottle bank. That's a nice noise when, you, when you're just relaxing. The bottle bank. Pop that there where the villa is. <laughs> so that was a racket. There was always some. There was just oh. so much noise. Animals, oh. creatures. You can't. Noise. You can't escape. It's the one thing you can't escape. Noise. Your ears never turn off. No. They're always there. But I've told you before. Wear earplugs if you have to. I don't like it. But he doesn't like. He, can, he says he can hear the sound of his own art. <laughs> well, there's always a sound. Like your eyes, you can close them. My eyes close all the time, and if, if, if I don't like the look blinking. of something, yeah. no, but yeah. if I don't like the look of something, they they close before even I've thought about if I want to see it or not. <laughs> what, do you mean? what do you mean exactly? I just mean if if I see something on the telly or like one of those casualty programs or something, yeah. it's like my eyes know that I'm not going to like the look of it. But no, 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 no. So they You're, close no, no, quicker. No, 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 no. My ears, they oh. they seem to be interested in everything. <laughs> Even though I'm not. <laughs> no, what, what I mean is, you can't close your ears. Yeah, you that's can't. what I'm saying. Exactly, yeah. You can't, you can never. So that's no, why I love the idea that your eyes are closing when you were. Oh, well, I was watching that. Yeah, what are you doing? Have, eyes? have your eyes, have your no, eyes I mean, ever closed something that you're going to No, they normally get it right. Your eyes aren't <laughs> making any decisions. Right. You're making decisions. You turn away because you don't like seeing something. You don't turn away and then you're going, what was that? And your eyes going, you don't want to know. <laughs> you do not know. Want to, you don't know. <laughs> Just saying, anyway. Ooh, lovely pair of tits here. Oh, whoa, <laughs> I love it. I just mean oh. noise pollution. It's the it's the one thing you can't escape. It seems to me, from what you've said so far, is that these things happen to you, and you feel wronged, but you either want to close your eyes and ears so you can't tell it's happening, but it's carrying on, or move away from it so you're not a victim anymore, but it's carrying on. But the thing about law and order is. Um, you don't have to take it. You don't have to walk away. You can do something about it. You can combat being wronged. And I suppose we associate that with justice. It's not just punishment or retribution. It's justice. You want to know that you're valued. Uh, you know, is, well, this is a big issue, isn't it, Rick? Is, is, you know, is one life more important than another? Um, if you've transgressed in a terrible way... Um, you've murdered, raped, whatever, and oh, I say I'm going to put you to death because you are, you you do not belong in this society. You you are, are too transgressive. What, what's to stop me? What, why, well, why is that wrong? Why is that a morally wrong thing to do? Well, Carl? this is an interesting argument, isn't it? Whether capital punishment. Now, I I don't agree with execution, state execution, of someone, whatever they've done, for many reasons. But the main one is, I don't think you can have a state that shows that sort of violence against an individual, whatever they've done, and expect people to accept the very code and morality of treating people equally and not showing violence towards them. Carl, where do you stand on the tricky issue of capital punishment? You've given it some serious thought, I imagine. Um, so what, you're asking me, like, should he be, should he, should he be on death row? Well, should, should someone flip the switch, send him to his death in the electric chair? Um. Yeah. <laughs> that was the, that was the that. least considered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I saw a little bit of flicker behind the eyes. I don't know what. Well, just take us through the mental process that you that you arrived at the yes with there. So you you've, you know I remember because there was a, quite a brief gap there. I just was thinking, it's not a nice job if you work in there and you got to flick the switch. Right. But I was wondering if, if it's possible to just do it so it's linked up to someone's switch. What do you mean? When they put the lights on or something. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like sometime tonight when the sun goes down and people start putting the lights on in their house, it could happen. But we don't know what household, they might be away on holiday. 
so you might get an extra two weeks. <laughs> but at least that way. Because for me, well, the worst... Well, the worst. you say that? This is not... The question I asked was whether... We were talking about the morality of whether you put someone to death. But he was thinking about... He was the, thinking the, about literally the practicality of flipping the switch. Well, no, I think that you're... Aren't you talking about the integrity of the person who n knows or knows not that they've put someone to death? Like a firing squad. Like yeah. the, what they used to do sometimes yeah. in the First World War when someone, they, had, they had six riflemen, but On the five were bullet. blanks and one right. had a... And no one knew... If they were the person that killed them. Yeah. So, but what my point is, you do agree that someone should be put to death for a terrible crime, do you? You've got to have something there to stop them people who, who don't care, haven't you? Nature's done it in a way with bees. They've gone, we've give you a weapon, but if you use it, you die. And that's like the bee. Well, so yeah. they're worried they're going to go, oh, I'm not going to do it. We do, won't we? We have, we have people saying, one, you can't do that. That's, that's step one. Here's the law. Don't yeah, do it. But there's a lot of people Two. who go, I'm not bothered about the law. I'm not bothered about annoying people. Yeah, that's so true. So for them, at the end of the scale, you've got the chair and you stick the wires on their head and we'll fry your head. <laughs> and they go, oh, God, I don't want that. That, 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 that doesn't always work, does it, with, with being put to death? Because de as a deterrent, uh, most of the crimes aren't just crimes of gain with that. Some of them are crimes of passion where, where a deterrent doesn't count because you see red and you, you go crazy and you're angry and you kill someone. Uh, I, I think a lot of those crimes... The deterrent isn't relevant, you know. Things like armed robbery, maybe, where it's a risk. What can I get versus what my crime? Maybe, maybe then it might be a deterrent. But then, of course, if you start to get a capital punishment for crimes that aren't murdering someone, then th that thing brings in you might as well murder them but because then you've got more chance of getting away with it. So it's very delicate what you make people be killed for. Um, you've made a, an interesting and reasoned argument there, Rick. I'm looking forward to, to hearing the riposte. Right. When I was younger, I used to nick Mars bars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Now, I did that then, and I, and I knew that even if I get caught, what's the worst that's going to happen? Yeah. It's not going to. I'm not going to go to prison over that. But it was worth nicking because the Mars bar they were like forty five pence. Sure. When you're a kid, you can get a lot of chewing nuts for that. Chewing nuts. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, they like caramel coloured in chocolate. Last ages. Quite hard. Oh, I know. Yeah, you suck the chocolate off and then you've got to chew oh, them until they're... Yeah, I know, yeah. Now, I could afford them. I had ten pence a bag there. They'd last me sort of a, a morning. Um, a Mars bar was a proper treat. Mm. There's a lot going on in there. A lot of yeah. chocolate, a lot of caramel. Yeah. Like, like, say, 45 pence. Yeah. So, to so me... That was, that was like an advert that went wrong just at the end. <laughs> they started off good. They go, this fly's good. He's like, yeah, go there. Mars bar, there's a lot in it. It's like, oh, good, keep going. Yeah, it's got, it's got caramel. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's 45 pence, which is too fucking much, so fucking nick it, you gone. <laughs> but when I was younger, that was worth a risk because I knew that I'd be getting something worth 45 pence yeah, for free. You weren't going to get the electric And I wasn't going to get done. Mm. So the stakes were high, the risk were low. No, wait, 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 wait. You mean the stakes were high, the risk were low? <laughs> I think he's just trying to sound cool. The stakes weren't high. The stakes are what can happen to you and the risk. The stakes and the risk are the same. The risk is the stake, okay? Yeah, unless you're nicking meat from a butcher's, then the, the stakes are high and the risk is low. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but what you meant was it the was game the was high. The game was the, high. Yeah. The game was high. Yeah, the risk was low. Yeah. But it's not, wasn't, it wasn't, was it? Because 45p isn't a lot unless you're it a kid. It is when you're a kid. It is when you're a kid. Because I was getting But they're surely pounds. getting caught for nicking a Mars bar's higher when you're a kid. No, it's not, look. You see, most of the time, I didn't want to say which shop it was that I nicked it from, but it's where I did my paper round. Now, the thing is... So it's nicking from your own boss? Nah, but listen, I used to oh, wake him up. that I is him terrible. Run. No, because I... That is terrible. This is awful. That Go is, on, hang on, I want to hear him. Really no, I want to hear him rationalise his, his terrible Because that sweet crime. old man who used to give... He's not an old man. I used to go around and wake him up, there. right? He yeah. hated running that place. Right. Uh, if anything, I'd say I was his best asset. <laughs> well, not really. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't he know was nicking from him. He was yeah, nicking I, from him. I don't know how business. much he made on papers, but he'd probably go 45 free profit. Hold on. I, they got their papers really early because I, I got up early. Yeah. I used to go around to the well, shop. Well, you know, a day four. helps you work, rest and steal. So, <laughs> so I used to go around there, wake him up. He'd be like, what are you doing around here so early? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> don't know, I'm just angry. What? I'm just I'm just hungry for work. No. Oh well good well, good boy bit. I'm just gonna turn away a minute. Yeah. Um yeah. while you stand there in front of the confectionery. Um mm. I'll turn away now and I've looked back now and here's the papers. And yeah. thanks so much, Carl, because you you're a lovely it's like kid. An honorable and trustworthy yeah, I can't guy. really afford to I've uh, been betrayed so many times that's why yeah. my lovely wife's no longer with me, you know, she ran off with Ken. Yeah. But, uh, I mean at least I've got a friend. At least I've got you, one young friend. You turn friend. up early, you're oh god, it, it's brilliant. Oh and Carl, keep a lookout because um, someone's been nicking Mars. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I, know it's, I know it's not you, because I trust you implicitly. And, and, and by the way, Carl, why don't you take a Mars bar for free? Oh, thanks. Well, that never happened. All right. Stick so, I'm getting 50 pence a day for delivering papers. Mm. But I needed the energy. Right. Now, if I, if I spent my 50p on a Mars bar, yeah. 5p profit a day is not worth it. No. So, help yourself. I knew I was doing a no, good no, job no, for you. No, 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 sew up yourself. That doesn't, that, that doesn't follow. Sew up yourself. Get another job, leave that job, negotiate a pay rise, not out myself. That doesn't, that doesn't go, that's ridiculous. Where does it stop? If you worked in a nuclear power plant, well, they're not paying me much. Have a little bit of uranium. <laughs> a lovely little bit of uranium. Yeah, yeah. I do. It's a, a strange analogy, Rick. Some <laughs> <laughs> left straight from a bloke nicking stuff from work. Do you watch the power plant? He's having himself a bit of uranium. What's he doing yeah, with the well, uranium? You know, Mars a day and all that, and that's for energy, and so's uranium. <laughs> but more energy than a Mars bar. <laughs> yeah. I never nicked. I never nicked because I couldn't bear the shame. Even as a kid, I knew that was shameful. I want a clear conscience. I want to go to bed and, and sleep at night. And I do, Carl. I haven't got restless leg syndrome or people shouting out my window. So I sleep at night because I've got a clear conscience. And that, to me, is what guides me. Well, it's like when I first moved to London and I was travelling, when I was living in Oval, I was travelling across London all the way to Shepherd's Bush every day. That's a big, long, 45-minute, hour-long journey. And uh, there, was, there were not barriers at either end in those days. So I could get on the tube at one end and get off the other end and no one ever checked my ticket. And I was buying tickets every day for months and months and months and it was starting to seem to me weird. I was like, well, no one's ever checking this. So, of course, you know, got a little bit lazy. Maybe I stopped buying tickets occasionally, taking the trip back and forth, boom, 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 boom. And then for maybe a month, travelled without a ticket. And then I was coming up, kind of got a bit blasé, obviously, coming up in Oval Station. Someone steps up and says, excuse me, can I see your ticket? Uh, and that's terrible because oh. when you're in when you're in your mid twenties, it's not like a kid anymore. Oh, no. I mean, you are an adult. You've made a reasoned decision there. You can't plead ignorance. So, um, so I said, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Yeah, do you let me see a ticket, please? I went, yeah, yeah. I was, I was looking through because I had, for some reason I used to keep a lot of old tickets. And I was looking through, pretending to look for my ticket. I went, oh, I don't know what's happened to it, but I did. I did actually. I bought one at Shepherd's Bush, um, and they went, okay. If we phone up Shepherd's Bush and there's no evidence of you buying a ticket, you can go to prison. I'm going to ask you again, have you got a ticket? No. Oh, no. no. I'm embarrassed. It was unbelievable. Being told off is worse. It's worse, isn't Well, it's it? because there's people walking by and I'm being taught, told off by a woman who is at least a foot and a half shorter than me, wearing a uniform. And it was so embarrassing. It was so cripplingly embarrassing. Yeah. And I asked you again, have you got a ticket? No, I haven't. No. So you lied? Yes, I did, yeah. Okay, we're going to have to take your details. But honestly, being told... And that's it. It's the shame. Maybe it's a, a good bit of upbringing, unlike Carl, obviously, who's, you know, who's a man who's got no guilty conscience at all about the whole Mars Bar incident. But whereas yeah. you and I, Rick, have raised, obviously, by better parents, yeah. and we uh, we are... It's been drummed into us, you know. How to, much to that train journey? <laughs> Is, you know, we do feel that guilt, and that's maybe one of the reasons why we don't transgress. Because this is an interesting, you know, we talked earlier about the murder thing. Well, of course, there's that sort of uh, idea which has often been used in films. You know, in a godless universe, and if you do not feel guilt, what's to prevent you from committing a murder? If you can get away with it, if you could commit a murder, let's say you wanted to, and you could get away with it, there is no one to judge you in a godless universe, and you can live with the guilt. What's to stop you doing it? Well, I'd just like to say now, it is a godless universe. As an atheist, there is no God. And, uh, uh, and I'm a, a good person. Not because I'm going to get rewarded for it in heaven, because that's the way I want to live my life in a society that treats people like that. So um, a lot of the laws of the land, um, not just in the country, in many countries, are from the Bible. I mean, that, that's, that kicked it off. I mean, there was laws before, obviously, and there were, there were different gods before, before this one. Um, was invented, um, but let's have a look at the Ten Commandments. Oh, yeah. I think that lays down most of the. Uh, a lot of them are good rules of thumb. You know, we've got to go along with them. They didn't. They certainly didn't invent those rules of thumb. I think that um, mankind were adhering to most of them before 
it was handed down. So uh, let's have a look at them. There's a website here, a Baptist um, Christian website forum, uh, and this guy, I sh maybe I shouldn't say his name. I mean, he's put it out there for public, but I, I don't want to embarrass him. He says, uh, brethren and sistren. <laughs> what? Yeah, so I don't, I, uh, Never heard I've, I've learned a word. Yeah. Um, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Could have said, said, said that, but he's not. He's yeah, just a classic. He could have said people. Could have said people, could have said folks. Say folks. Um, it has come to my attention that not only are many of our members unable to correctly recite all the Ten Commandments, it's probably a big problem. I don't know, he goes around testing and going, number three, <laughs> um, get out. <laughs> Go and learn it. But those who can remember, even a few, invariably get the sequence wrong. Is that important? Oh, well, it is. He says, let me set the record straight. The commandments do not come in a random sequence, with the exception of Seventh Commandment, an obvious anomaly. Why? Well, he reckons that thou shalt not commit adultery at number seven should really be sixth in terms of severity. Let me explain. The commandments appear in order of severity. Right. The harsher the punishment, the closer to the top. I hope this handy colour chart will make the intrinsic beauty of God's word more comprehensible to all. So this is it. He's laid it out. Commandment. Number one. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay? Alert level. Severe. <laughs> Punishment. Genocide. Whoa. Entire cities with men, women, children and animals must be killed. So that's a lovely, nice Christian view there. So um, if you worship another god yeah. before the right god he doesn't he doesn't name him by name he just uses the uh, <laughs> the term god sure. but there's only one according to um this genocide this, yeah anyone who worships another god genocide entire cities with men women children and animals must be killed i don't know what the animals have ever done but oh, well, uh, yeah okay guys, so yeah. that's number one that's the that's the most severe worshiping the wrong god sure okay number two thou shalt not make unto thee any craven image. Okay, okay. no craven images. That's, uh, I assume, so druids, devil worshippers, anything like that, isn't it? Uh, well, I think it's also just, uh, I suppose it's kind of images that mock or degrade the Almighty. Okay. Uh, What's the punishment there? Genocide. Genocide um, again. He's, wow. uh, that's a, that's a, his favourite there. Genocide. Entire cities with men, women, children, and animals must be killed. What worries me is we're a couple of smart guys, and we're not entirely sure what that commandment means. No. So we could go, but we could accidentally. Yeah. Three. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord, thy God, in vain. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I assume God made these, did he? He's, he's used the first three talking about himself here. <laughs> alert level high. Capital punishment. Oh, so capital punishment. Just, so you're not just, genocide, thank no, God. No, no, you're just gonna be, God. Yeah, you're just going to be put to death there. Not, not all your friends and family and okay, dogs. Good. Sure. Um, <laughs> leave the budgie. No. <laughs> Number four. Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Uh, high. So uh, alert level high. High, yeah. Capital punishment. Death. Capital punishment again. Yeah, you forget for the, the holy for, day. Well, what, what makes me laugh is that sometimes you could be walking along and you go, all right, yeah, okay, all right, I'm just going to, to oh, I keep thinking it's Monday. You what? <laughs> you forgot it's Sunday. <laughs> no, I just forgot. Ah, <laughs> death. <laughs> Number five. Honour thy father and thy mother. High. Okay, so, and if you don't honour your mother... Capital mother, punishment. Capital punishment. A lot of death. Again. A lot of death. Again, at the moment. Is so, so yeah. strict. Yeah. We haven't even got to thou shalt not kill yet, and yet he's killed everyone so far. Oh, jeez. Um, now, seven, he's put a number six here. He's put them out of order, six and seven, because he thinks this is higher. Thou shalt not commit adultery. High. Capital punishment. Capital punishment again. Now, the fellow who did this website, he, uh, he's put thou shalt not commit adultery above thou shalt not kill. God, I did it the other way around. God, <laughs> thou shalt not kill, but this but fella, this fella yeah. I reckon his wife played away. Right, right. So he yeah. went, right, I'm putting them in a different order. Because before, let's see, number six, he's put um, thou shalt not kill, alert level, elevated, capital punishment in some cases. So if you murder someone, you can sometimes be killed. If you commit adultery, always, always death. get killed. So uh, I think he's made th that he can have his wife put to death, right? Or he could kill her, but maybe get off with it. Right. That's why right. he's done that. Um, number eight, thou shalt not steal, guarded, excessive fines. <laughs> Only in rare cases covered with punishment. Oh, just excessive fines? Yeah, excessive. Um, number nine, thou shalt not bear fault wit witness to thy neighbour. Uh, so basically lying, 
low. Despisement and scorn. Is that the punishment? Yeah, for lying. Yeah, despisement, despisement and scorn. Despisement and scorn. Yeah. Thou shalt not covet, really. Don't, don't, covet don't try and get stuff. Don't be jealous of stuff and try and punishment. get it. Punishment? Uh, despisement and scorn. Despisement and scorn, sure. I'm just going to go through, I'm just going to go down these, see which ones I, um, I commit. Uh, thou shalt have no other god. I don't have any god, so I haven't broken that one. Two. Craven images. No, I don't have any craven. No, I, don't, I don't accept there's a god to. Uh, three, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord. I, again, I don't take his name in vain because I don't believe he exists, so I'm fine there. Uh, remember the Sabbath. I always remember Sunday. Um, <laughs> I know, I, I've got a calendar and everything, so I haven't done it now. Uh, Honour thy father, yeah, I do that. Uh, never commit adultery, don't do that. Um, never killed don't, anyone? No, never killed anyone. Don't steal. I don't lie. And I don't covet. So I am an amazing Christian. Pretty clear, yeah, you're a pretty clean living guy. Wow. There you go. Well, uh, whereas, I don't know, Carl, have you ever, what's your review? You I still, um, still open, like, post, that isn't for me. I'm um, just going to see that's on there. That's opening other people's post, alert level, low, punishment, embarrassment. You have to walk along with your trousers around your ankle, saying I'm a div. <laughs> Why do you open other people's mail? Uh, but it's just it's just a fella called Bruce who uh, he's the bloke who used to own the flat before me, and uh, I don't know. I started off and I thought oh, should I pass it on, you know, because when people move, it's a lot of messing about tracking down where they've gone. Mm. So I thought should I just leave them for a bit and I collected some for a bit, and then there was one that sort of said this is uh, important on the front of it. So I thought how important is it? So I opened it. <laughs> what was it? Was it important? Uh, not really. It was from a tattooist. <laughs> <laughs> what did they say? It was just something they about... They said, a, oh, we use the AIDS needle on you. <laughs> yeah. can, you can you come in for a little test? <laughs> so I just uh, I just started... Th I just kind of thought, oh, I'll start opening it. I mean, I look. And it was it was weird because... Do you know like how you get fed up of being yourself? No. But go on. Well, I'm intrigued. Have, of course. No, you can just have days where you're like... I wish I was going on? It, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and Bruce and, Willis in your case, well, eh? well this this bloke was Bruce, so yeah. I just go, oh, let's see what you know. If I, if I was Bruce, yeah. would I be happier being him? Do you know, like yeah. I've said to you before, yeah. you never know if you don't feel well because they can't put you in someone else's body to sort of compare. No, but most people can just use their imagination. Yeah, sure. And, and so I sort of think they don't actually need to physically go into someone else's body to understand. That yeah, like terrible. ghost. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think, well, would I enjoy being Bruce more? Sure. And what, so what have you what have you gleaned from Bruce? What's the, he's uh, got a tattoo. We know that. Uh, there wasn't that much. So it's, it's mainly busy at Christmas. A lot of Christmas cards, which were good because I didn't yeah, get that oh, many. Yeah, oh yeah. So you just you put up just these Christmas up. you put up these Christmas cards. That's, well, that's you had Christmas cards <laughs> hanging in your flat. To, to, to have a lovely Christmas, Bruce. Yeah. Auntie Jean. That's <laughs> crazy. Hang on a minute, because when you put them on your you know your mantelpiece or your shelf or whatever, you're not yeah. you're not looking at them every day. It's just a picture of Father Christmas. It doesn't matter who it's to or from. Well, why or have them up at all? Well, why not just buy just some make blank Christmas? You can yeah. just buy some blank cards yeah. and put them up. Use them every no, year. No, I don't have to. Bruce has got a lot of friends. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> it was more awkward, right? <laughs> Because the bloke downstairs, because I, because I used to always collect the stuff for Bruce, I got talking to a bloke who's in the same block, and like he used to see me picking stuff up for Bruce. <gasps> He'd always say, you know, all right, Bruce. No, and you've never told him that you're not Bruce. Well, no point. In the pub I used to drink in, the landlord got it into his head that I was Steve, right? And you don't mean me? No, no, no. Exactly. Steve. Yeah. No. This is this is before I met you. This is like twenty five years ago, and he called me Steve. And it got to the point I couldn't correct him. Yeah. Because I because it would have been embarrassing for him, and so after about two years, um, we were playing cards, and someone said Ricky, and he went, "Who's Ricky?" And I went, "Ricky," and I just went red. I went, he went, "What do you mean, Ricky?" I went, uh, "Yeah, that's my name." He went, you know, he said, "What do you mean, fucking Ricky?" I went, "Ricky," and I looked at him, "What do you mean, Steve?" I went, "I went, no, it's not Steve." He went. He said, well, I've been calling you Steve for two years. I went, have you? <laughs> like denying I'd ever heard him call me Steve. <laughs> oh, this guy, right? He, um... But hang on, did he, did he, what happened? What was the fallout from it? He's just sort of like, he was a bit confused. Yeah. And then, and then, uh... I think he still called me Steve for a little while, but it, sometimes it was Ricky, sometimes it was Steve. It was, it was fine, right? But, um, this guy, right? He was, uh, he was a bank robber. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'd done he'd done um, seventeen years in all, 
In prison. Okay. In prison, yeah. And um, I, I was sort of, I was a bit scared of him. I'm fascinated. He was, he was fine. He was, he was done now. He'd gone straight, totally straight, and he was running this pub. And um, I remember once he'd, he'd tell me stories about it, and he'd, he'd go on about his. Uh, he did it with four people, and um, they all did. They all did time, and he said, he said, but you wouldn't recognise them now. He said, he said they are the most respectable people you'd ever seen. He said, yeah, they're just uh, lovely businessmen, high sophistication. Now, he said you, you'd never guess, right? And then one day he came over to me. It was a busy pub. He went, Rick, Steve. <laughs> he said, you know those geezers I did the prime with, the, the other three. He went, yeah. He said, they are in the pub here now. See. If you can guess who they are, I said you'll never guess who they are. I looked around, I saw three blokes in sheepskin coats with tinted hair, covered in gold sovereigns and gold necklaces, and I went, "No, oh, he went those three. I went, "You are joking, you are fucking joking." That was his idea of total sophistication. Tinted, they had tinted beards, but they looked like they looked like fat Bee Gees covered in gold and sheepskin. It was unbelievable. It was, I went, oh, that is that is a surprise. That is a surprise. I thought they were barristers. Oh, unbelievable. I was always terrified of being mugged when I first moved to London. Um, and you remember, Rick, I uh, had a wallet with all my stuff in, and then I took to carrying a fake wallet. That's lovely. Okay, which I had some sort of old library cards and DVD cards, you know, video shop cards and stuff. And, like, I put a fiver in there, you know. And then I got really anxious because I thought, what if I hand over my fake wallet? And he goes, well, it's a fake wallet. Okay, and then I got to hand over the real wallet, but maybe he also punishes me, you know, takes it out on me because he's angry. So then I took to carrying a second fake wallet. So I spent about two months carrying three wallets around, <laughs> two of which were fake, right? And then, do you know the reason I stopped? Because I thought, what if he, I give him both fake wallets, I give him one fake wallet, he opens it, he goes, well, this is a fake wallet. I give him the second fake wallet. He, now he's going to be twice as angry as he would have been if he only had the one fake wallet. And then I was thinking, what, but what if I do give him the fake wallet? And then he just starts using the library cards and the video cards, you know, and he could run up a huge fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be yeah. in the same position I would have been giving the money. Yeah, I also, I don't believe you'd ever put a fiver in the fake wallet. You no, wouldn't no, be willing no, to. No. Yeah, yeah. I had a run in with crime. I was uh, ripped off. Really? In, in a big sting operation a few years ago. Um, I was at home and I was just, I was rushing out and uh, the phone went and it was my bank. Yeah. And I went, is that Mr. Vase? I went, yeah. He went, um, have you recently bought £200,000 worth of gold bullion? <laughs> and I went, um, I went, Jane! Are we, are we did bought, are we bought, two, well, what? Are we bought £200,000 of gold bullion? <laughs> no, of course not. I, no. <laughs> oh, um, well, someone's uh, taken that money out of your bank account, uh, fortunately, and uh, and they've purchased gold. And I went, right, okay. They went, um, we'd like your permission to get the CID involved. I went, well, yeah. I said, of course. I said, but hold on, you know it wasn't me then. Um, so do I get the money back? And they went, yeah, you, all the money will be um, put back into your bank account. I went, fine. I said, yeah. I basically went, yeah, fill your boots. Mm. And they went, um, and can you come down? I went, oh, yeah, so I arranged the time. I went down to the bank. There was the CID there waiting. And, uh, well, it turned out it was sort of an inside job, someone who did some sort of random um, check-in of facts. You know, they phone you up and say you're happy with the service. They put down the phone and went, oh, you never guess who I spoke to, that Ricky Gervais. Right, right. And um, someone overheard. They were involved. They'd got a payoff from Mr. Big somewhere. Mm. It was out of the country. And, uh, but so isn't there more... I mean, you can't just... Even if you work in a bank, you can't just walk off with cash, can you? There must have well, been a more elaborate... Yeah, they did a transaction, didn't they? They mm. okayed the transaction like it was me for these people, and then these people bought gold with it, and now all they have to do is go and collect the gold. Now, this is the tricky bit. So, what they don't know is, now the bank know that it's not me collecting it. Right. So whoever turns up for the gold, they said they'd probably just be, they might even be innocent couriers. Yes. But then we get you know, the go the go betweens or whatever. And where is a go where is gold bullion kept? I don't know. It's just um, I suppose you go and to go and get it from a um, a vault somewhere right. and uh, and and take it away and take delivery of it. I, I I don't know if it literally changes hands or not. So what they need is obviously my passport. Mm. So uh, they got the people, so it was going to go to court. Okay, I didn't have to go to court, but um, I had to have a meeting with the CID for all the details and take the, you know, the, uh, it wasn't me and all that. Yeah. So the funny thing was, I'm there with a the CID man, 
And I said, well, how did they, how did they think they were going to get away with it? And they said, well, they, they turn up with um, a, a fake passport of yours, show the ID, and they walk away. I went, right, OK. And they said they get a, um, a passport from a, a, either a dead man or they steal one and they uh, replace it with your details and your picture. And the CID man started smirking. Right? I went, what? He said, uh, well, they, um, the picture they used was this one. And he showed me this fake passport. And I tell you what, I was laughing. I, we, we, then he started chuckling. And we laughed for about 10 minutes. Because all they did was they cut out the picture on the first series of The Office from the DVD. So it's a picture of David Brent <laughs> sitting behind a desk with that little smug look on his face. <laughs> That's my passport and this thing. So, I mean, uh, they might have got caught anyway. Yeah. It's nice to know that even such, you know, elaborate operations as this, it still comes down to just idiocy, criminal well, incompetence. Who was left in charge of getting a photo? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they go, uh, uh, you know, Dave... You're, uh, you're you're doing so and so and so. You're Julie. You're on the inside. Uh, Bertie, can you get a picture? Yes. <laughs> you, can get, you can get a photograph of Ricky Gervais, can you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Where you go? You go what are you going to HMB for? What are you going to HMB for? I knew we shouldn't have recruited someone who looks exactly like Bernard Breslau. It's <laughs> unnerved yeah. me. Carl, it has been kind. There's always someone doing well out of me. There's always someone, if, I go, if, if they're a little bit short, you know, we'll go around to Pilkington. But uh, that, I mean, three off. or four times a day. Sometimes I call him up and he goes, right, the washing machine's broken, they came round, they've done this, right, they couldn't fix it, but they had to call it charge 90 quid. I called the bank and said, no, they can't do that. Turns out they can't do it. It's like a string of things where you... It, it looks like Carl's handing out money, like the end of a comic book. He goes, that's for the broken window, and there's for my sausages. It's like a queue of people yeah, just yeah. taking money off Carl. I know, they're normally all right if I'm face-to-face -face with them. Really? Yeah, if I can sort of, you know, if I can go in a place. But a lot of stuff now is done on the phone. Yeah. You know, it's all phone, isn't it? Because no one's... It's all over the world where you're speaking to these people. Yeah. I was talking to someone the other day about the alarm system, right, in the flat. <laughs> Called them up. I uh, thought, oh, it'd be good to get this going again. Uh, you know, I have an alarm system. I haven't had one for years. Might as well use it. It's there. So uh, I called them up and said, uh, yeah, there's an alarm system in this flat I've bought. I uh, want to get it going again. What's the situation? So uh, they took a load of details and stuff. And they said, right, uh, what you have to do, uh, it's 400 quid a year. I said, what? <laughs> so 400 quid a year. I said, what's that for? He said, if the alarm goes off, we can guarantee that a couple will be there in like a minute and a half. <laughs> I, said, I, I said, I don't want that. I said, I'm just happy with the alarm just going off. I'll give the keys to the neighbour. No, you can't do that. You've got to have this this way. I said, four, four hundred. I said, I thought alarms are meant to stop you being robbed. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, sir. I don't understand sarcasm no, when you're course. talking to them people. Yeah. Just to get out of your system, when you know you've been conned, you just laugh in the face of adversity. I remember um, it was um, a couple of days before Christmas, I was going away, but I had a dripping tap, and it started dripping more. So uh, there was nothing I could do. The maintenance people were away. The caretakers were away. I couldn't get in. And so I, um, I called out an emergency plumber. I knew this was going to cost, but bloke came round honestly he made you look smart he was like one of those kids who looked like a lumpy child he was probably 20 yeah but he just looked like you know what i mean they yeah. scaled up a sort of 13 year old big faced lad <laughs> yeah right yeah. You know? and he and he he came in and uh he didn't know how to stop it he couldn't unscrew it he went oh, i don't know what to do i called my brother he's there just like i said i said uh, Bob, what can I do? He said, you could crush the pipe and then get it cut and fixed when you go. I said, great idea. So I said to the plumber, I said, can we crush the pipe? Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll go and get a tool. We went down the band, came up with this thing, like a fat sort of little pair of pliers. He couldn't, he wasn't strong enough. So I went, oh, I had a go. I said, well, let's, well, how do we both do it? So we both put our hands on it and we managed to crush the pipe, flatten the pipe, cut it off. He put a little thing on the end of it so it wouldn't leak, right? I went, great. Uh, I said, uh, how much is that? He went, 180 quid. So I went, right, OK. So I wrote him out a cheque for 180 quid and I, I thought, I'll have a little bit of sarcasm. So it wasn't his idea. I helped him do it. I went, how much was that tool? He went, about five. I went, that's paid for itself, isn't it? <laughs> Silence. He went, yep, just nothing. Just nothing. Tough crowd. Yeah, right? of course. <laughs> right? So I signed the cheque. He went, he went, oh, he said, I forgot to charge you for the little washer on the end. 
I went, how much is that? He went, two pounds fifty. I went, can I give you that in cash? <laughs> he went, yeah. I went, there you go. There's, there's the two pounds fifty for the washer on the end, and there's the hundred and eighty pounds. <laughs> And he went, and that was it. I didn't even get a little oh, chuckle. He God. didn't even think. He should have gone. Well, let's split that because we both did that. Yeah. Yeah. That's ninety quid each. I go. Okay, that's worth brilliant, mate. Cheers. Here's a Christmas bonus. I have a, a fascinating tale to tell you, Carl. I think you'll be intrigued. Um, when I do um, junkets for films in in America or, or uh, Toronto Film Festival, um, I was assigned a, a security. And uh, um, I've had security before. I often have security. They just sort of get you in and out of the car, and usually just to control sort of autograph hunters and things. And but um, this time I was given a, a security, and he, he came in a, a suit. He looks about thirty. He looked quite unassuming. I, I thought he was from a just a security firm, and there was a couple of them. And uh, first of all, they were talking to each other, and I thought, well, the stakes are higher here. I don't know. I, I, I don't know why, and um, they drove us to the hotel, and there was uh, loads of people going to the hotel, I mean, m much bigger stars than me, you know, there was Ed Norton and, and George Clooney, and they were going in and out, and he goes, I, we can go past these, and he called ahead, and he knew everyone, he just knew everyone, and we went down in the car park, we were met by another security guard in the hotel that let us go past everyone, I mean, Cl Clooney's having to queue up and sign. I'm thinking, this is weird. And I was feel a bit guilty because I was there to promote the film. And I think, this security guard's so good, I'm never going to ever have to pump into anyone. It was amazing. <laughs> and he was there the next day, and he took us to the junket and back, and he put us on the thing. And then it turned out that uh, he was actually LAPD, who was doing this for celebrities because he earned more money. And then... Um, I found out he had a gun, so I can't come in the airport with you, I can't take my gun. So, he's armed. So I've got a security, who's an APD, who's, who's armed, and I'm fascinated. Now I'm fascinated, this man is walking around with me with a little earpiece, talking to everyone, he seems to know everyone, and he's got a gun. I think, oh, this is amazing. Then one night, he said, uh, he dropped me off at the hotel, and he said, uh, I've actually been called, I've got to go on a mission, they need my help. I said, really, what is it? He said, it's a hostage situation, he said, and I'm... I'm also SWAT. So now I'm just, this is amazing. He's now the, officially the coolest man I've ever met in my life. So he goes off. Then I'm thinking, oh, I'm worried about him. I was talking to Jane, I was thinking, wow, he does this, he gets this effect of cash, he's risking his life, and now he's going to a hostage situation. And I was thinking, oh, God, it's, it's just, he's just a silent hero. Mm. So next day, because I was, how was it? He said, I was fine. He said, I just turned up. He said, I had to, I had to do it in my suit. He said, because uh, I'm the negotiator. What? So now, he's an armed security guard, he's an LAPD, he's special SWAT, and he's one of nine negotiators in LA. We're in LA now. We've come from mm. Toronto, went via New York and LA. So I went, oh my God. And I just asked him questions for mm. two hours. Um, so the first thing that happens is, so someone runs in with a hostage. This guy, is just a kid, who was 19, he'd done a robbery. He'd panicked and he'd run away. The police were after him. He ran in and he took his, his kid with him. It was just a, a three-year-old kid. Okay. Um, that often happens. Uh, most hostages that people take are their family because it's all they've got. And they go, oh, I'm going to kill my wife or my kid and that. And they don't mean it. They're not going to. But they, they, they need a hostage. They've got a gun. So he talks to them and he's, he says things to them like, you, you know, you didn't mean this to happen. Did you? They went, no, no. I just, he, he said, they got out of hand. It just got out of hand. And he has to let them trust him, because they, they've got a hatred for the police, of course, they don't trust the police. Now. And um, the first thing he does is call the phone company and say, what's the number of this address? He goes, change it by one digit. So now only he can call that number, because of course you can't have a, an engaged signal. If they haven't got a phone, they have to throw a phone through a window. So they've got to have contact with this guy. Mm. Uh, you know. I said, um, what happens if uh, this guy says, uh, you're never going to get me out, I'm going to kill all the hostages? He said, then my sole purpose is to get him to stand near a window. And I went, wow. Now, apparently, there's a police marksman ready, of course, if they think they've lost him. The important thing is you've got to take him out because you've got to protect the innocent. So how they shoot him is they shoot him in the top lip and it takes out the brain stem, so there's no reflex. 
and I'm just being absolutely, mm. I'm captivated. What do you think of that, Carl, as a job? It's amazing, isn't it? Um. Yeah, I mean, once you've done one, though, it's like any job, isn't it, I suppose? Yeah. Once you've done one. Yeah, not boring, impressed. Boring, yeah. No, 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 it's good. Could you do uh, it? Do you reckon you could do it? Do you reckon you could negotiate someone out of a hostage situation? Well, I think in one of them terms? things, there's nothing you can do. It's like, it doesn't matter if it goes wrong, because well, it you, does. you did your bit. No, it's like being a vet, isn't it? Not really. Not really, because well, that's well, ridiculous. No, it's nothing. It's nothing like being like a vet. No, it is. What I mean is, you're you're expected to no, make no, no. a little kitten leave. No, no, no. There's loads of it. Because I was saying, so um, so he says, I need a car by five o'clock, mm. or I'm going to kill someone. He then makes sure that he doesn't kill anyone, but he makes sure that car doesn't come till quarter past five. Mm. Even if it's there. He keeps going, it's on its way, because then the hostage knows that he's not in control, really. Even if it's as easy as saying, I want my wife here, and he can get her there at five, oh, he makes sure she doesn't turn up till 20 past five. Yeah. It's just little things like that that's just absolutely fascinating. The psychology of it is just amazing. But he's not bothered, is he? He is bothered. It's late. He is because he he really takes a bit, he empathises with these guys and he says no, you've got to understand. No, he but says, the fella in the house with the gun. Yeah. He's not going anywhere. Fifteen minutes either side doesn't matter. Well, why is he in a rush? I don't think Carl's getting out in four hours. No, you sure said is. you said. Yeah. They make the car fifteen minutes late. Yeah. He's getting his car. That yeah, bloke's not in a rush. He's never going to get in the car, is he? That's the other thing as well because um, once a, a bloke said to him, um, "I need a car," know. and he just went. Where are you gonna go? And the bloke went, uh, I d yeah, forget that. He has to make them forget their deadlines and their demands. So soon it doesn't matter. And he has to get in their head. But to do that, he says that he has to empathise with them to a certain extent. He has to understand why they're doing it, to talk to them and go, yeah, you've had a bad day. Mm. That, that would send anyone. But he has to get their trust. Carl, try and, t try and talk me out. You think it's that easy. Right, I've got a hostage situation, right? Done a crime. I've run in the building, they go, there's only one person we can ask for. Get me Carl Pilkington. Okay, you turn up, right, what's your so question? So you've asked me, you've asked for me to deal with this? No, 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 the police know that you're their top man, there's a guy in here, he's got a gun, he's got a hostage, okay, he's just done a crime, they don't know what to do, okay. Right, you turn up, what's your first question to the... I'm talking to you. Well, no, you've got to assess... Right, I'd say, I'd say, right, uh, I think there's a saying, actually, there's a, you say, where's brass, right? Right. I found that out, I heard that, I overheard that. What's that? It was something, uh, You're wasting it, time! It was, it was a, that bull cunt that's just turned up! I'm gonna fucking kill it! Right, where's brass? What does it mean? I heard it at school when they... I don't know what the fuck you're talking you about! You can't just use... <laughs> it means, I heard, I heard someone use it on the... Well, I don't know what the fuck it means. It All means the top person of, right. of the police who are around at the moment. Yeah, well, you talked, I'm the fucking top brass here. I've got a fucking gun against this kid's head. Who the fuck are you, you bald little shithead? Where's my car? What car? I've asked for a car. Where's my fucking car? Am I talking to you now, am I? If are you, you, want, are, yeah, you the, are you the negotiator? Yeah. Right. Get me a fucking car. Where do you want to go? Oh, I'm, I'm fucking sore from shouting. Throw a phone through the window so I can talk to you over the phone. No. All right, in a minute. Don't ever fucking say no to me. In a minute, I said. Okay. Right, the clock's going. Where's this fucking right, listen, phone? Listen, listen. I've got a sore throat. I've got a sore throat. I can't talk anymore with that phone. I've been, I've been called up here. I can't hear you. I need I've the phone. I've been called up here. Yeah, can you go put the phone through? Why are you putting the phone through, you dopey cunt? You want to talk to him? Because I don't want to give you a phone straight away. You said you've got to delay him. No, but they, you've got to talk <laughs> to them. They shouldn't even demand a phone. You should make sure you've got a phone, you dopey twat. Give him a phone. Right, thanks. <laughs> All right, how's it going? That's better. All right. Uh, right. Who are you, by the way? Who are you? Who are you? Bruce. I can't, I can't give you them details. Well, you can, because I've got to trust you, dopey sod. Are you police, or just some fucking cunt walking by? I'm a policeman. Right, I don't trust policemen. No, but I'm a bit higher than that. <laughs> <laughs> so listen. Oh, don't you tell me I'm laying down the law here. No, listen. I'm going to shoot someone unless I get a fast car. I've done a robbery. It's all gone wrong. You're after me now, but I want a car to the airport. I want a plane standing by. You don't know me, but I do this a lot. 
Right. And I can tell you that it never works out right. Do you know anyone who's done what you're doing and is now living a happy life? Well, I don't care. I don't care about living anyway. I don't care about living out. I don't care if this goes wrong because I'm going to shoot the hostage. What's your problem? I'll just. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the wrong attitude, mate. I think you've got the wrong attitude here. No, but this is the, the, to be honest with you, this was my last week. <laughs> what, why are you sending him that? Because I want to bring him down to my level. Right. What's that got to do with it? Well, you know, I've done this job for a long time. Right. And sometimes I felt like you. I've right. been, you know, even though I'm on this side, mm. you know, sometimes I feel like, oh, I've had enough of this. Right. Well, I have had enough. But I, I tell you, I don't care about living or dying here. So if I don't get a car to the airport, all bets are off. I'm killing everyone and them myself. So you'll you're, you're, you're be a big loser. You will be a big loser, son. There you go. I'll t give you the clue now, Carl. He doesn't care about getting away with it. Now you've got to get him to stand near a window. You've got to, you've got to take him out. Because I've got a gun to someone's head. You can't burst in, right? You've got what? Come on. How do you get him to stand near a window? Oh, I bet you're hot in there. <laughs> keep going. Uh, I, I am. Go. I am hot. Yeah, that's why I've just drawn the curtains and keep away from the window because the sun's blazing in. It's 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 just not too bad away from the window. It's uh, the sun's gone round the back now. Just come and have a look. It's a lovely, lovely evening. Why do you want me to stand near a window? I think just because when you see how nice an evening it is. <laughs> Worst, worst load of drivel ever. <laughs> keep going. Oh, interesting. When you see how lovely no, when you, it is. No, it's that thing. I've heard. About? I've heard that if you smile, you you, you feel better. So have a little smile. Think what? of a happy moment in your life. <laughs> I'll tell you what a happy moment in my life would be: putting a bullet through your little round head. You cunt. Keep thinking about that image. Right. And you can see that round head. Just come to the window. I'll show you the round head. That would probably work, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What? What? No, I'm not going to come near the window. You come near the window. You come near the, my window. I become. Are you coming near the window? No, not yet. What? Delaying it again. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm, I'm coming near the window. Well, I'm going to shoot you if you come near the window. You dopey prat. Well, why? I thought we were getting somewhere here. No, I'm going to shoot you. I've conned you. I've I've negotiated you to come near the window, and I'm going to shoot you in the head, you prat. I'll just leave then. <laughs> well, that's about it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the Ricky Gervais Guide to Law and Order. Um, the next one in the series is the Ricky Gervais Guide to the Future, Ooh, which is out on the 29th of December. So look forward to that. Anyway, it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, goodbye, and Carl Pilkington. you have enjoyed the Ricky Gervais show on Guardian Unlimited hi Ricky Gervais here with me Stephen Merchant hello and Carl Pilkington hi welcome to uh, the final episode in our series of 12 podcasts I say final it's final of 12 but um, we may be carrying on go on well next week we're going to try and uh uh, do another one to continue this for at least a little while. Um, we may have to charge a small fee for it because it's uh, it'll cost us money, um, and Carl is uh, unemployed. But we we mean a real tiny little fee. Um, but uh, hopefully we will be back next week. Now um, we're not sure where it'll be. It'll probably be on iTunes. But just go to rickygervais.com and we'll guide you there. Hurrah! Yay! Um, and thanks for listening for this long and uh, supporting us. I hope you continue to support us. Go on, continue to support us. Yeah, particularly Carl, who has no money whatsoever and is desperate. He's a desperate man. I, right, there's Carl? no one out there going, oh, they're charging for it now, but, you know, people forget we gave 12 for free. This is it. So quickly people forget. We're big shots. Yeah. Well, Carl's not, but...
but um, you know we are, aren't we? Exactly. I mean, we, yeah, we were generous, but we're not that generous. We're not. We're not mad. And Carl needs a, a little bit of money. Look at his little round little head. He's like little tiny Tim over there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Look at him sitting there. Carl, you've had a good week. Uh, it's been all right. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> well, uh, more, more of that next week. You have to, <laughs> you, but you'll have to pay for it now. <laughs> I'm surprised you're not buzzing because uh, we just had our photograph taken to enter the Guinness Book of Records for the greatest downloaded podcast of all time. We went along to The Guardian and the press were there and they took a little picture of his round head, didn't they? Yeah. But I, I don't know why, why should I be excited about it when it's just... It's Have you always wanted to be in the Guinness World of Records? Not not really, no. I, I've got. I, I've been looking at the... Uh, with, they presented us with the, the um, this year's, and I've been looking through it, and there's some fascinating ones. I used to yeah, get but this that's, that's what I'm saying, though. There's loads of things in there that I used to go to. Like, I looked at it online the other day to mm. see if, you know, what's on there. You click on it, the home page that you get when you click on Guinness Book of Records, it's a fellow with the most ear hair, right? <laughs> Looks amazing. So that, to me, is what the Guinness Book of Records is about. So Not you're impressed with the bloke who just happens to have the most ear hair? No, but it's commitment. He could have he could have shaved it off, but he didn't. He left it. Yeah, we, no, it's less commitment. But we, yeah, that just grew. We we actually bothered to do a podcast. All right, forget and that then. The one with the rings on the neck where they stretch the neck so their head's tall. That's commitment. If that didn't work out, he's stuck with that head and he didn't even get in the book. <laughs> you're stuck with that head and you have got in the book, so be happy. Uh, what if it's a stitcher? What if you're under roundest head? I'd be a bit annoyed. Why? Just because I, d I don't... I mean, have you got a choice? Say, like, the fella with, um, you know, the small man. Say if he's he's not happy about being small, he's trying yeah. to go about his life, he knows people are looking at him, pointing at him, going, look at him, he's tiny. But does he want to be in the book? Oh, I think I think they've got to give their consent. Have they? Because if, if, if the smallest wasn't willing to be in there, they'd go, the second smallest man is so-and-so, he was willing to be in here. Yeah, but we the smallest one is Frank, and he didn't want to do it, so again, he's in it without wanting to be in it. <laughs> no, but I don't know. He's got you there, Rick. I don't know if they do. I don't know if they go around. I, I, I think that you'd have to um, uh, be complicit in it for them to measure your head and say, this is the roundest head on the planet Earth. Not, you know what I mean? But then what do I do with that? That's what I'm saying. Is it something you put on a CV? I don't I see the point in it. Well, I think you are the fellow with the roundest head, and I right, think a lot yeah. of people know that. Because also, I've noticed when people ask for a picture of you, they don't say, can I have a signed picture of Carl? They say, can I have a signed picture of Carl's head? Which is a weird thing to say about a human being, isn't it? They go, well, oh, look at his head. Look at his head, not look at his face. Or can I have a picture of him? They say, can I have a picture of... Have you got a picture of Carl's head? Why, why are they allowed to mention matter. that? And the thing is, like, we're, we're on some sort of broadcasting medium where you don't even see me, Ed, so it's not important. Well, I can't see you, Ed, because the mic's perfectly round and it obliterates it out like an eclipse. But what I mean is, it doesn't matter, does it? For doing what I do, it doesn't It doesn't interfere in any shape or form. But the thing is, Carl, what people are fascinated with, and I've said it before, you've got a head like a fucking orange. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be charging for more information like that from next week. We do, of course, Rick, every week get thousands of emails. I mean, it's crazy. It takes us ages to go through them and, and read them. And we, are, we are going through them. We are reading them. Freddie Gerstrom from Winchester says, uh, of course, it was recently Valentine's Day. What's the most romantic thing that you've done for Suzanne, Carl, that you can think of? Uh, I, I don't really do all that. Sure. Uh, the Valentine's Day stuff. It's just, the problem is, if you do it once, they expect it every year. Yeah. Sure. That's that's the problem with Christmas and stuff, isn't it? It's like it's become that's what you do now every yeah. year, every day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I prefer to just sort of wait. You know what I mean? And and you know if I think of an idea or I know of something that she wants, I might get her something. But I might not do it on Valentine's Day. It's that thing. It's like how I've, I've said about Pancake Tuesday. <laughs> Make it Pancake Wednesday. Have it when you want. Why yeah. am I waiting? Why am I waiting for someone to tell me when I can have a pancake? I'll have it today if I want one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's Pancake Tuesday. No, I won't bother. I'll have a trifle. So, <laughs> so it's the same same with this, you know, with Suzanne. Um, luckily, right? I mean, Valentine's Day and what have you. She was uh, she was ill. Luckily, so we didn't we didn't have to go out. So I'd say, is he asking for advice? Well, I suppose yeah. Certainly, you may as well give it. Treat them when they deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I remember uh, once when Suzanne was ill. She had a fever, but there was no. Food in the house. What did you suggest to her? She was too ill. To well, cook. it was it was when we were still living in Manchester and that, and uh, you know, uh, 
we needed to get some food in for tea and stuff. And uh, I said, come on, come to the supermarket. She was like, no, I'm ill, you go. And I ate buying food. I just sort of get a bit blank when I'm looking at it. There's too much, isn't there? That's the problem. You go down all these aisles and there's just too much. <laughs> so anyway, I said, no, come on, come with me. She was like, oh, but I've got this fever, I'm hot and everything. So I said, well, come to the supermarket. You go on the frozen aisle, cool yourself down. <laughs> <laughs> and she did. And she said, you know, it made it worse. She was ill for another three days, but... How would you uh, go about chatting up a woman in a bar? What, what tips could you give? Um, I've, I've never, I've never worked like that. It's always been like a friend of a friend and all that, and just happened to meet them, and then you know you have a chat, and then how did you meet Suzanne? Uh, that was when uh, I was working with her, and uh, she gave me twenty p for uh, the hot chocolate machine. She never asked for it back. <laughs> Thought she's all right. <laughs> um, in uh, sort of 11 years, so it works. Has she ever given you that? Uh, she ever, have you, have you ever, you've never given that 20p never back? Asked for it back. And did you return the favour, perhaps on the next date? Uh, did you buy her a Kit Kat or something? No, I don't think I did. I think I think word got out that um, she liked me and that. And um, what did I do? I think I did some work for her, I did some editing for her, to sort of show off my skills and that. <laughs> sure. And she was like, oh, you're good at this, aren't you? I was like, yeah. And I think she got us another drink because I was I was doing that editing for her in my own time. So you're up, you're up on the deal, aren't you? Because I, I know now, I feel for a fact, you've not spent any money on her in eleven years. So you are you're forty p up <laughs> at least. <laughs> Lawrence from New York says, "I was wondering how Mr. K. Dilkington would interpret this famous saying of philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein. The quote is: If a lion could talk, we could not understand him, even if he's English." Yeah, if he, <laughs> yeah, if a lion could speak English, so there's no language barrier. He's speaking English words and using uh, all the correct uh, grammar and everything, but you wouldn't be able to understand what he was saying. Why? Because it is from a different world. His frames of reference would be so bizarre that you wouldn't be able to get a grasp on what he was talking about because you'd have so little in common, even if he used. Real words. No, but he's talking English. Yeah, I know, but his reference points would be just so far removed. You know, they're removed slightly when, uh, uh, if you saw two people talking about Kierkegaard, you'd... Un you'd, you'd I hear wouldn't understand that. Exactly. So remove that a billion times to a different species with different input. No, but it depends. If I'm talking to a lion in London Zoo... Yeah. He'll, he'll be saying, oh, I'm fed up with being stuck in there. I'll go, yeah. It's like that. It depends what his background <laughs> is. I mean, there's some people who might have lived down the road from me, but have a totally different life. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter that it's a lion, does it? Well, yeah, because they're just trying to remove it even more. So, so now it's not just a bloke who lived a few doors away. Now it's not even a bloke. Now it's not even. Yeah, but I'd I'd pick something smaller yeah. or right. or something you know a worm without a mouth. I'd go definitely not. <laughs> what? Definitely, Definitely not, not what? what? I wouldn't be having a chat with it. I just I just think that a worm that's that's underground, yeah. what's it got to offer me? <laughs> it's, it's blind and it hasn't got a mouth. It's not going to be a good day out with it, is what I'm saying. It's not going to have that much to say to me, even if it's English. Right? <laughs> even if it's English? And how can you tell if a worm is English? Does it wear a very tiny bowler hat? Oh, Christ. But do you understand... What about a jellyfish? No, I, you see, I think that's where... You, you can you can say you wouldn't be able to have a good chat with them because to me, the sea might as well be another world. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, in a way, I, I think the fish sort of have more rights than us. What do you mean? Just because when when whoever made the world, right? Yeah. Say you know we we're just bigging up God, but if yeah. I was was to have a go at him, yeah, I'd say you added too much water. <laughs> <laughs> Criticism one to God, right? right? So. <laughs> You would, how would you have changed that? Just, just more land. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, why, why, are the, why have fish got more rights than us? That because, was what I was because, because there's loads of them, and when you look at the amount of sea on the world, right? There's, there's loads of that. You only have to like, like you know, I was in Malaga the other week, right? And you know, you look in the sea. There's loads of different fish, uh, and that's just in like eight foot water. If you go miles out. There's, like, all sorts of weird fish, isn't there, with, like, lights on them and everything. So, and they're just millions of different types. Yeah. Yeah. Now... But why does that mean they've got more rights than us? Just because I think... 
you know, rights come in, in numbers, don't they? If you know what I mean. Like, if there's one of you shouting, people go, oh, he's an idiot, shut up, whatever. If there's loads of you shouting, they go, oh, best listen to him, see what they've got to say. Right. And, and that's what I mean about fish. <laughs> yeah. There's loads of fish. Right. So... But they're not really making their voices heard, though, are they, Carl? Yeah. I know, because they're underwater. <laughs> but, what, but what I mean is... I don't know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> the Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Oh, pleased to meet you. Start me up. I'm here to tell you all about Channel 4 Friday Night Comedy. So start me up. Now then, there's three great new comedies from New Green Wing. That's nearly ready. My name is Earl and the It Crowd. The great new comedy from the creator of Father Ted. Ow! Friday night comedy this Friday on Channel 4. Switch me in. It's going to be a winner. Carl, right? What, what do you think it's like being a crab? If you, if you could go now, your mind, into a crab... What would you see? Where would you be? What would you be doing? What would you be thinking? What do you think of all the other things, the crabs you'd see, the, the, the squids you'd see? What, what, what's it like, do you think? I want you to... It's like creative writing. Just think. Just let yourself go. Come on. Uh, it's got to be a crab. What do you think of a slug? What do you think to be a slug? What would you do if you were... If you were transported now into a slug, what would you do? And, you, and Suzanne, you're suddenly in the kitchen, but you're a slug, and Suzanne's sort of like there, just making tea and that. How do you let her know... I'd, it's you. It's impossible. I'd just chuck myself into the salt pot or something. <laughs> no, because what what do you do? I'd I'd eat that. I'd eat, that would be horrible. That. <laughs> oh God. Have you ever read uh, Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis, Not in which a man so. wakes up and he's turned into a giant beetle, and that's the uh, that's the whole story. Uh, I think it might be of interest to you. Uh, so what happened to him with the beetle? Well, I don't want to ruin it for you in case you no, read it. I won't but be it's, reading it, don't worry. He joined a pop group with three other people. He was brilliant. No, it's a really wonderful book. It's a kind of almost heartbreaking because, of course, he uh, he does, like Ricky's saying, he finds it very hard then to relate to other people, even though he still has the consciousness of a human. You know, his parents, his rest, rest of his family, they don't know how to deal with him, you know, because he, he's a giant beetle. He becomes a freak, he becomes an outsider. It's terrible, you but, know. But hang on, though. Is he a giant beetle? Or yeah. Is he... Well, yeah, well, that's not going to go down well, is it? <laughs> That's that course people aren't gonna like you. But if it's a normal sized one, then you just get in with the other beetles, don't you? <laughs> Whereas if you're but a giant sort of How would you do that? How would you ingratiate yourself? Right. So you're suddenly a beetle you're Carl Pilkington, right? There's other people, they're doing their business, they're scuttling around and you go you go in there and you go and they go they look at you as a new beetle. What what's your first what do you do? How do you ingratiate yourself? Well, for a bit I wouldn't I wouldn't sort of barge in into their house and that. I'd I'd wait until they're out and about. And I'd, I'd like, like in life, right? Um, sort of help them out. I don't know what beetles do all day. I've never seen one doing anything. They just seem to be going from one place to another. Right. I've never seen them carrying anything. I don't know what they eat. I don't know what they do. <laughs> I don't know why we've got them, right? But what I mean is, I'd watch them and I'd sort of help them out. And I mean, you know, it's like going on a date or meeting a woman, isn't it? But what if you there is? Whoa, a hang on. What do you mean? What, what, how, how is it like going on a date with a woman? Well, it's like I said about Suzanne with her hot chocolate. She bought me that, and I've gone, she's all right. 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 She gets me another one before I know it. She's living with me. <laughs> so, it's... You so, you're, 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 you're these, these beetles, they're scrubbing around, right? You're sort of, like, watching them, and there's and then you realise that you want to mate with this female beetle. What do you do? What's your first move? Yeah, but I don't know what beetles do, do I? So, I don't know how, how what you do. I don't know if you go up and go, all right. Isn't there? What do they do? How do they get on? Whoa. It's a different world. I, I don't know yet, do I? Because they haven't done it. Would you feel bad, because having your own mind in this beetle, right? Would you feel bad shagging a beetle? Would you feel that that was, that was a bit sick, because you've got a human mind? Well, no, because you just close your eyes and that, wouldn't you? And go, oh, pretend to think of something else. So, get round it that way. There's no point getting down about it, because I'm stuck now as a beetle. So you've <laughs> got to get on with it. <laughs> but if you're a slug, you said you'd throw yourself in the salt pot. What would you do if you were a beetle if you got depressed? And you see all the other humans. No, you see your mates, right? They got they're listening to the iPod. What would you do? Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Though beetles are different because they mm -hmm. do tend to hang about with each other. A slug's always on its own. 
It's a lonely insect, isn't it? It's, it's not an insect. All right, what is it? A mollusk. Right, they're lonely. I've never seen a load of snails all together or slugs wandering about. Those beetles seem to knock about in crowds. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. oh god. Okay, all right, another one. So they're sociable creatures, and it wouldn't bother you that you're that you've got the mind of Carl Pilkington in there, because you uh, can't communicate with these people because they don't speak English. They don't. They don't have any communication with you. Yeah, but if it's happened to me, there'll be another one in there. Okay then. Right. Okay. Um, what would you do, right? <laughs> that's, that's the most disgusting thing. What could it be? Um, right, what what would you do, right? If you were suddenly a fly, right? And you were knocking around with the flies, right? And you had to land on some uh, excrement. Yeah. What would you do? Yeah, but I don't have to. What do you mean? You're a fly. You're yeah, but I it. wouldn't. No, I wouldn't be loving it. No, would I? <laughs> Why? Because I'm me in that fly's head. <laughs> so I'd, I'd just. I don't think other flies would be going. Come on, join in. I'd just be like, no, I'll, I'll wait here, I'll wait, watch, and that. Because don't, I don't see why they have to do that. What would you do, right, if you had to go back and you were in a, um, you were had to go and put your mind in, like, the, um, an unhatched uh, egg of something? Like, maybe one of those, e like, uh, that a wasp was injected with a spider. So you know you're in an egg, right, which is really uncomfortable, in a spider. How would you feel about that, Carl? <laughs> You're a baby wasp in the abdomen of a spider. And I know everything that I know now. I'm, I'm sat in there. Yeah. And now I'm, now I'm in a spider as, a ba as an unborn wasp. What the fuck am I doing here? What's going on? I don't know what I'll do there. Uh, will they try and sleep? <laughs> There's nothing else to do, though, is there? I just pray to God it never happens. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. I don't believe it. He's written it down. I'm... Well, that's the jingle that signals it's time for more extracts from Carl's diary, and uh, we'll lunge straight into it. Wandered down Carnaby Street. There was a happy homeless fella. I gave him one pound fifty. I thought of a tongue twister after giving him the money. It goes, if you can't treat a cheerful tramp. What sort of tramp can you treat? It's good, that. All right. Say it fast. If you can't treat a cheerful tramp, what sort of tramp can you treat? Yeah. Good, isn't it? Good, that, yeah. You've got too much time on your hands, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Learned some famous quotes to see if they are as good as my sayings. Number one, treat every day as if it's your last. Very famous saying. Now, is that something you do, Carl? Um, but you know, my me, me problem with that one is that if it was your last, you wouldn't want to be doing much. That's that's the only problem I've got with that. I wouldn't want to, you know, go to a, a fairground or whatever, because you're going, oh, it's my last day, what am I going to do? And I think you'd spend so much time worrying about what you're going to do that you'd end up staying in. I think you're right. Um, you've taken some of the poetry out of it. I think it means live life to the fullest. Right? I like the fact that you were musing on the idea that if it was your last day, you'd go to the fair. <laughs> 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 it's getting such a 19th century way of spending your final day. I know, yeah. yeah. Um, well, the thing is, the, the other thing is that um, the only thing that people get depressed about in terms of sort of like, um, you know, life and death is uh, not the knowledge that they're going to die, but more the knowledge that they know they're going to die when they're dying. If someone told you um, no one ever knows when they're going to die, no one ever gets an illness, no one ever gets hit by a truck... Everyone passes away peacefully in their sleep, dreaming they're riding a big marshmallow, right? Then you wouldn't care about anything. It wouldn't matter when. It wouldn't matter if you died tomorrow or in thirty years' time. You'd just live life to the full. You'd come. You'd you'd have it. Every day would be great. You'd go out. You'd come back. You'd fall asleep. That would be amazing. There'd be no stress. There'd be no. There'd be no angsty. Oh, we're all going to die. Stress because it wouldn't matter. Because it would just be your life. Wouldn't it be amazing if someone guaranteed you, Carl, you're going to die in your sleep? I'm not going to tell you when. Yeah, but you're... some people do, don't they? Well, exactly. Yeah, no, but I we never know that. we're going to, because we, we stress, what if we get a dreadful illness? What if we, you know... But know. but we're almost not letting people die naturally anymore, are we? Because we're always bodging stuff up. What do you mean? Well, someone who might naturally die in the sleep aren't allowed to naturally die in the sleep because they wake them up with those electric things and get them going again. And... Pop in a new 
long or whatever whilst they're at it. That's what I'm saying. They don't just... Na you, you never hear it anymore, do you? Frank peacefully died in his sleep. No, he died on the operating table whilst we're putting in a new lung. They never... They don't die naturally anymore. <laughs> Frank died peacefully with 40,000 volts going through them and a couple of people going, Clear! Clear! Rushing about today. Got to get a lot done as I'm flying to Malaga tomorrow to see my mum and dad. Don't like flying. I'd be happy if they give you a parachute instead of a life jacket. They say Da Vinci invented the parachute as well as the helicopter. He never got round to making them, though, because he only drew them on some paper. Got up at 5am as I had to get to Heathrow to get on the plane to see Mum and Dad in Malaga. Went out for a drink with a cousin who lives in Spain. Ain't seen her for 27 years. Oh, that must have been tricky, making conversation. I didn't really bother. Because <laughs> where do you start? I might no, as well so go up to anyone in the street and start having a chat. <laughs> yeah, you have to go further back then. Uh, did you want Chantal to win Big Brother? Yeah. Me dad and me talked about history. I said we shouldn't go on about things that happened ages ago because I bet something similar has happened more recently. Brilliant. <laughs> Read about an island in the Indian Ocean where there are tribesmen still living like they're cavemen. A helicopter tried to land and the tribesmen chucked spears at them. This is what I meant about not having to talk about things that happened ages ago. We have got new cavemen now, so why do we talk about the old ones? People could have lived before, but computers and all that blew up and books got burnt, so all they had left was what these tribesmen have got left. Ramblings <laughs> of, <laughs> that's a ramblings mad man. of a maniac. That I mean, that's a just a few hours before you go crazy with a gun in there. No, but what, what I mean there is, right, mm. say if all this has happened before, right, podcasting's been happening years ago, Mm. Something happens. Again, a lot of your information from the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Something happens. World ends, mm. right? We come back again somehow. Yeah. It's the detail <laughs> you leave out that makes yeah. you intriguing. Just like the watch that you can wear that uh, tells you when you're going to die. How does it work? Pop it on your wrist. That's <laughs> yeah. all the detail you need. So the world happened, no. we came back, we... Uh, yeah. Have you seen the pictures? <laughs> Forget it, then, if you don't get it. It's interesting that you had all those profound thoughts about this, this period in the past <laughs> when they all lived, but you still f you still found it uh, appropriate to include at the end of that. It says that tribesmen wave their knobs about when they've had enough of having visitors. That's what's what it said in the paper. That's what happens. They're quite happy. What paper is this that you're reading? It was, it was, in, it was in, like, a paper a couple of days ago. It said um, they don't mind having visitors if they're bringing them coconuts and stuff that they can eat. Once they've got everything they need... You start waving the tackle about, and that means, like, right, leave now. Which you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, at a dinner party. Uh, uh, my grandfather used to do that. <laughs> uh, well now, well now, well now. What have we here? I'm here to tell you all about Friday Night Comedy on Channel 4. Uh, there's three great comedies. Green Wing, It's Nearly Ready. My name is Earl, and the It Crowd. Uh, the great new comedy from the creator of Father Ted. And what have we here? Jingle, jangle, jingle, jangle, as it happens. Friday night comedy, this Friday on Channel 4. Switch it on, now then, well now, the young man. Uh, well now, now then, well now, now then, young man. Oh, get back to that, monkey news! Uh, that jingle is getting more annoyed by the week. Well, this is the final monkey news, right? I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore, right? Because we've we've covered it all. All the monkey news has been covered. It has, it has. We've done, we've done loads of them. I think all the news that needs to be sort of known has been told, right? Um, that is the end of the news. Jesus Christ! <laughs> what? Get on with it. Right? Do you know? Um, oh. In the first uh, <sighs> podcast that we did. We uh, chatted about the monkey that went into space and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. So where we left So haven't you got a real no a new monkey news? Well, it's an update, isn't it? I mean, Is it new? Has no, it happened recently? Has it happened since podcast one? I have to pick Ricky up on the point that he thinks any of the monkey news we've heard, <laughs> A, happened, and B, <laughs> happened recently. It almost always happened in olden times or ages ago. Uh, oh, you're right. It never happened. <laughs> yeah. Right. Anyway, so like I say... The first monkey news, it was about this monkey that went into space. This was the one that was fed by bananas that came out of a little shoot on the spacecraft. Yeah, it went it went up there, uh, did a really good job. It was taught how to press the buttons, hit the left button for a banana, 
you know. Right button to, to go right, uh, make history and go, go into right space. Right. Um, Ooh, what do I want? Not more banana. You haven't taken off yet? Ah, eh, more banana. Oh, we shouldn't have given him a choice of banana or a change history. We should have the right button. We should have fed him before he went and only had a right button. He's at the left button again. He's just eating bananas up there. What's going on? It's costing us a fortune. Hey, oh, fucker. Press the right button and do something. Oh, bananas. Hey, you hit the left button again, the little fucker. So anyway, yeah, I told you, he went up there. He came back. He could never get that the high, high exactly, again. Yeah. You know mm. what I mean? He tried other things. I think he tried to get a band together and that. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah. So anyway, there was there was loads of monkeys that were signed up to this NASA program, and it was 1961 when this little monkey called Ham, that was his name. So mm. a bit of an update. That's that's the same one as I talked about. His right. name was Ham. As well as him, there was one called Enos. He he went round the world loads of times. So anyway, what I found out about it since then, um, Ham went up there, did the left right business with the bananas. Enos. Um, they didn't put as much work into the trip when, when he went up there. And something went wrong with the machinery. And do you know how you get a banana for the left button and all that? Mm. It's official it, now. <laughs> There's yeah. two buttons in this spaceship. Banana dispenser and everything else. The right button <laughs> is everything else. But, but it worked the other way. The machinery went weird. Oh, no, really? So, so it meant that the right button would give him a banana. Right. The left button did everything else. Oh, no. How did so that, what did so what been taught, what, 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 this is the problem with, with electronics, isn't it? Well, no. I don't think no, this, <laughs> Apparently, I this is the problem. But the good... Th I mean, honestly, look it up if you want. This is all online, by the so way. So what happened when it all went haywire? What, what occurred? Well, luckily, Carl, Carl, this is online, and it's bollocks. Luckily, um, Enos, because he'd, he'd, he'd done a few trips... <laughs> right, he's so he was like, well, I know this isn't right. <laughs> as much as I love bananas, <laughs> this isn't right. <laughs> Bell so, was his thinking, of course it was. So anyway, so he came back, they, they were all like over the moon with him. He said, I can't work with these conditions. Good mission and everything, well done and working it out. He sorted all that out. Um, it moved on a few years. Armstrong's gone up there, Buzz and that other fella. They've been up there, the, the monkeys aren't needed anymore. Mm. But they were like, we've got all these monkeys who have done NASA training. Mm. <laughs> what are we going to do with them all? Mm. <laughs> and they mm. had to raise £14 million pounds mm. To make him like a, a like an old sort of chimp home for retired <laughs> astronauts. retired NASA trained monkeys chimpanots chimpanots something they've got in there is like a little museum right of all the missions and that that they've been on so they can sort of even though they're not going to be going into space again they can almost relive it and reminisce mm -hmm. of the times that they've had. And They're reminiscing with each other, are they? Just, just sort of going, oh, remember that times. time when it all went wrong, the button became the left when it should have yeah. been the right and all the rest of yeah. it. They're just, you know, sort talking of about old times, talking yeah. about old times and what have you, like old people like to do. Yeah, sure. Um, and, yeah, that's it. So if you want to, like, give give some money to towards their home, right. you can go to, like, savethechimps.org. And it's all there, all that, all that information that I've given you. It's all there. You can. I'd be surprised out. if all the information you've given us is there. It's all there. I'd be very surprised. It's all there, just retired, you know, monkeys and that who have done the bit. Perhaps we should retire monkey news to that same space. That's what I mean. So, you know, I hope you've enjoyed the monkey news and that. That was the, the last one. Look after the monkeys. Uh, do your bit, because they've done their bit. Uh, that's it, yeah. But just because I'm not giving the news, look it up. Do you know what I mean? It's all out there. Don't be ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> Wise words. Thank you so much for listening to these uh, these twelve podcasts. I I've really enjoyed it. I know um, uh, Steve and Carl have. Um, this podcast was, uh, as usual, hosted by Positive Internet, the world's number one podcast. Next week, a, a brand new podcast. Um, we have, as I say, we have got to charge a little bit for it because um, it does cost money to host. And uh, please, please keep listening. It, it is going to be very little, and uh, you know, Carl. Carl needs your money. If you could see what I see now, he's just looking at me with his... He just, he just needs stuff, don't you, Carl? What do you need? What do you need? Just something more than nothing. <laughs> <laughs>
For information on the archive of the podcasts, these last 12 shows, and for the new podcasts to come, go to rickygervais.com. You can register there. We'll send out loads of information. Uh, plus, you'll just find out links to, uh, to how to get all, these, uh, all this stuff that we're, that we're offering out there. There's also a free taster if you just can't wait for more of Carl's nonsense. Make sure, please, that you register uh, your email and everything so we can get in touch and just tell you what's going to happen uh, with the Ricky Gervais Show, with Carl's mind, and with everything else. rickygervais.com. Go there. Makes perfect sense. Uh, it's the, it's the end of an era, but the start of a new one. It's almost seamless, in a way, isn't it? The end and the beginning. But, Carl, what do you think about that? How things end and new things begin? Um, well, I suppose you've got to have an end for a beginning, so it's just a bit odd that we've got an end and having a beginning. But that's science for you. <laughs> <laughs> the Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Hello, welcome to the tenth podcast in a series of twelve. Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello, and of course, Carl Pilkington. Right. Now, um, thanks for all your emails. We've really started a community here. I think. Yes. We're all brought together by one aim. The, the the fascination of the brain of Carl Pilkington, yes, basically. Yes, absolutely. There's I mean, thousands of people who are equally as obsessed as we are with it. I really don't know why it's called the Ricky Gervais Show anymore. I mean, I was I was cynical at the beginning, but it's it's farcical. Um, welcome to the Carl Pilkington Show. Well, people say they'd like to hear more from you and I, but I don't see why when you've got uh, do you know what I feel like? in the room. I feel like the ringmaster, but the real star is the shaved monkey in a jar that <laughs> yes, we bring out. Do you exactly. know what I mean? That, yeah. that, that's it. That's the star of the show, you know. Yeah. Well, we've uh, we've had loads of emails actually, and we've had one from uh, Nige, who's done this brilliant cartoon of Carl on the beach. I, I think we should sell those as postcards. Um, but someone's beaten us to selling uh, uh, merchandise. If you go to um, uh, www.cafepress.com forward slash Mr Pilkington, someone is selling everything with Carl Pilkington's head on it. Now these are bootleg goods. We're not making any money from it, but I'm strangely proud. I just love to see. Millions of people wearing a little T-shirt or a baseball cap or drinking out of a mug with his little round head on it. He's made a clock, which is perfect because it fits absolutely... You know what I mean? The sides of the head go right to the edge of the clock because it's perfectly I'd round. like to see maybe as well those um, sort of rubber or plastic face masks that you can buy for Halloween with just Carl's oh. face. Oh, just millions of people <laughs> yeah. that all look like Carl. Oh, that would be amazing. What a world that would be. Uh, James Bevan has emailed in. He's from Abergavenny in South Wales. I'm going to read this verbatim. Me and my partner, Ellie Richards, are both huge fans of the podcast, and as she's not aware of this email, I would love it if one of you, please, on the podcast, would ask her to marry me. So please ask Ellie Richards from Abergavenny if she will marry James Bevan. Cheers, well, that, keep up the great podcast work. Well, that's done then. Well, no, you see, now, I was thinking about this, and I, I know that I'm the one who's read that out, but I'm thinking they're almost certainly going to want you, Rick, to do the questioning, because they don't want to go in years to come. Do you know uh, who asked uh, Ellie to marry me on my, on my behalf? What? It was that lanky bloke you sometimes see stood behind Ricky Gervais at an awards do. <laughs> it's too complicated. <laughs> they want to go, it was the comedy legend Ricky Gervais. But I think Carl's a comedy legend. He is, but once again, Carl, you know, he might be a passing fad. You know, we might all get bored of him, you know, in, 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 in a year's time. It could be like tie-dye t-shirts. So, um, so, I'm thinking, so I'm thinking maybe where is you, you know, you've made your mark on the comedy but landscape. But I don't, I, maybe I don't want to endorse this. I don't know what he's like. I, d I don't want to suggest a woman to marry this man I don't know. It's, 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 what, well, what no, if it comes back? It's not... What if she comes back and sues me for selling some... Uh, it's, like, it's like me selling uh, the rest of her life to this bloke on the podcast. No, because, you know, it's more fool her if, she, if he's a loser and a weirdo and she agrees to marry him. <laughs> she knows the guy. She's already got herself in a position where this man's emailing some people he's never met before. So, um, so okay. she already understands what okay. James is like. OK, ba okay, based on your own experiences, Ellie, make the decision... Whether to marry who is it? James. James or not? I think just just could you just, well once more because that's probably not quite as eloquent as they were looking okay. for. Okay. So get on one. Ellie, Ellie, James says, will you marry him? 
This does not reflect the views of the management. <laughs> so obviously, um, James, you you will obviously let us know what Ellie's response is, um, and uh, we look forward enormously to finding out whether she's um, seen sense and, and said no. Could he marry her again about forty, fifty years to say if the marriage is <laughs> yeah. still going? And also, we should just point out as well that if you know, in in, in you know, because I think one in three marriages um, end in divorce. All right, don't bring the tone down. All I'm saying is, if they do end up getting divorced, we should not in any way be responsible for that. No. We, we can't be held responsible. We shouldn't no. have to pay any kind of <laughs> child support. Or if there's a kid involved, we don't not, you know, we're not paying any alimony. We are merely the messengers in this. Yeah, yeah. Carl, are you going to give them uh, all the thumbs up there? Do you wish them all the best? Uh, yeah, you know, if, if that's what they want to do and that, just get on with it. And, <laughs> so, right. like, if, you know, some people are, are in, into all that, aren't they? I mean, you've been with Suzanne a long time and still no uh, wedding bells on the horizon. Well, it's, it's sort of, it's gone past that time now. I think if you don't do it within the first sort of nine months or something, <laughs> right. sort of, it's kind of like, what's the point now? I mean, she she goes on about it a lot, but I, I'm not. I'm, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sort of. I don't like all the attention and that. Do you know what I mean? Of like everyone stood there watching and stuff. It sort of puts me off. So that's your only reason for not getting married, is it? You just don't like the the uh, event. Mainly that, yeah. I mean, it's not the thing. Like I've said to you before, if if you could do it online, if it was just a little <laughs> box like you tick, <laughs> sure. I do send. <laughs> Get, you know, get back to work by midday and what have you. <laughs> yeah. But it's like a full day and you've got to, like, <coughs> smile and that. Heaven <laughs> forbid, yeah. It's just hard work, isn't it? Oh, it's, pretend it's, it's the happiest day of your life. But yeah. but surely, you know, if Suzanne, a woman you love, wants this very dearly, why not give it to her as a gift? Obviously get get your old work to pay for it. But, um, but yeah, why not give that, give her the gift because of the I've, special Because I've given day? her loads of other stuff. Yeah. Um, we have an all right life, and I think that can mess it up. My brother got married. That we have an all right life, that's the best he can say. We have an all right life. No, yeah. what I mean, something I said to her, right, which, you know, maybe this could catch on, right, a way around it. At the end of the day, you only get married so you can have the same name. I think it'd be really good if when you go on dates and that, if you met people who have the same surname. Brilliant. And then you don't have to worry. That's amazing. Do a search on, like, other Pilkingtons. If they look all right, yeah, I'll go out with her. <laughs> Job done. Don't ever have to worry about getting married and that. Brilliant. That's one of the most stupid theories. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> the, the, the injecting the 78-year-old dead woman with a baby was probably worse than that. But anyway, let's move on. It's the most stupid theory we've heard today. Exactly. But I'm suspecting there's going to be a few more before yeah, exactly. the Exactly. So far. <laughs> yeah. Carl Pilkington! Cheers for that, love. Yeah, it's Carl Pilkington here. Just uh, telling you about Channel 4 on a Friday. You've got a uh, new green wing, right? That's, that's nearly ready. My name is Earl, and uh, the It Crowd. I mean, sort of being in the comedy business and that, I think it's, it's fair to say I'm qualified to give me an opinion, and these three things are funny, so, yeah, stay in, watch it, have a good night, have a nice little brew with it, do what you want. At the end of the day, it's your life, innit? So, see ya. Carl Pilkington! The Ricky Gervais Show, on Guardian Unlimited. Still to come, of course, Monkey News and Carl's Diary excerpts thereof. I wonder if we should have a jingle for questions for Carl, because there's a lot of questions coming for Carl. OK. Oh, chimpanzee, that question's for Carl, you... Yeah, OK, no, fair enough, that works. Okay. Um, this is from Jim and Bob in Manchester. Carl, if you could talk to any animal, which one would it be and what would you say to it? Uh, insect, animal, anything, fish, anything. Well, they said animal, but that's, yeah, that's broad well, to anything. Animal, well, no, animal, any creature. Uh, insect is an animal. Yeah, no, but I'm just, you know, I don't want to get it wrong. I'm just thinking about one. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff out there, isn't there? Um, I'd, I'd probably go for the tortoise. Okay. Because it would take a long time to walk away from you while you were talking. <laughs> no, yeah. just because... Most animals would be off straight away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just because they live for ages, so they'll have loads of stories. They've lived through a lot. You know what I mean? Through wars and stuff. Well, if you get an old one, if you get like an old one, that's about. Yeah. Most of them something. have lived in a box in a garden for fifty-two years. No, you, but you, but you get some that have been about, and even if it's in a box, oh, yeah. you can over it. They've really travelled, haven't they? <laughs> yeah. I mean, some one, of them, have, well, some of them have experienced more than you. <laughs> yeah. But um, they've broadened their horizons a bit more than you. They could probably teach you a thing or two. Yeah. And I what just, would you hope to learn from them? Just, just history. <laughs> <laughs> right. From their very specific tortoise perspective. <laughs> Other emails. We've had a lot of questions about time travel. People are fascinated about your approach to time travel. And I know we've talked about this in the past, but um, this is a very specific time travel question. If you had a time machine, Carl, to what event in your childhood would you travel back to and why? 
what's the point in going back to oh, things geez, that you thought? Yeah. No, it's just that it's never as good, is it? It's like a place you go on holiday, and you go back thinking it'll be as good as the first time. It never is. So I don't, I don't believe in going back to places. What, do, what, what do you understand the question as? Uh, do, do, you, do you think they're asking, would you go back like a ghost and spy? Would you go back and you've got um, your childhood back? You are that child again. You're in the body. You are the child. Or you've got your adult um, head and experiences what? on. You know, you, you Rick, could... I really don't think Carl was thinking there was any of those variations. <laughs> no, let's be honest. But now that you've flagged I them up. I think he was thinking of him as he is now in school with a cap on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but Too big for the chairs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, come on. No, I, I don't think I'd, I would go back. It's all happened now, hasn't it? Yeah, but it's a, an email to a podcast for our own amusement. Well, okay. Well, Choose then... an event. Okay, forget the time travel thing. Well, no, hang on. It? I think let's clarify one of Ricky's points. What if you could go back and you could live that moment again? How would you do it differently? There's, there's been times where I've gone, oh, that was a bit out of order or whatever. But then you learn from your mistakes, don't you? So I don't want to go back and change stuff. Because it's, it's like that thing that they go on about, isn't it, where they blame the butterfly on an earthquake. You know, it's going to happen. If it wasn't that butterfly, it's another one. So why why pass the book, is what yeah. I'm saying. So you've got no regrets. There's so nothing in your past you'd want to change or what, do differently. What what about if you went back and you spied like a ghost on something? You couldn't change anything, but you could you could have a look at someone and just sort of look like uh, you like know what? like Ebenezer Scrooge does with the Ghost of Christmas Past. He goes back and he's sort of like looking at himself dancing and stuff. Or what would you do? What would you go back and have a look at? Yeah, but uh, you're oh. asking me to change. I don't want to change. He hasn't, you're not, not changing, you're just observing. It's impossible. All right, I tell this you This question, it, this is, yeah. it's not going to happen. You're not going to have to do this. It's impossible. Right, yeah, I nearly died once, didn't I, on, a, uh, on an ice pop. Right. Right. Now, maybe if I would have died, I'd say, well, let's go back to that, and I won't have an ice pop. You wouldn't be doing the podcast if you'd have died. You wouldn't be uh, having this email put to you. What are you <laughs> That's absurd. About? You're now saying you're rewriting history and then going back to change it. Yeah. There's no need. You, you didn't, didn't die. die. <sighs> well, and what? we've changed it. You can't change anything. You're just going to go back and watch something. Would you like to go back and watch yourself choking on a Mr. Freeze? No, that's what I'm saying. That's why I wouldn't go back now, because I'm all right. I haven't had one since. I've learned a lesson. I'm not missing them ice pops. So... <laughs> I know that you're making the most of this opportunity to fantasise. I don't see the point in going back in anything. I mean, do you mean go back in time to the oh. point of you can see, like, Rome? In its working day. What, in your childhood? Was Rome about when in your childhood? Were there gladiators well, in your childhood? Well, that's what I'm saying. Everything I've, I've been through, I've been through, so why see it again? Forget it. It was just a nice little question. I mean, that shows the, the lack of imagination right. in Carl right. Pilkington. Can, can your I, mind can't fathom right, something unless it's, like, you know, got two heads. But I don't see the point in doing something twice. Because the thing is, say if there's one good moment when I was about six that I loved, mm. I'd then have to go through all the other 20 years. Again. Well, why? Why have you imposed that? It's a <laughs> fantasy. Make up. You Just could go say, back and come back again. Yeah, whiz back and fast forward 35 years. Nah. Brilliant. No. Like it was on offer. <laughs> like this was really on offer. Move on. Migrant workers in South China are wearing adult diapers on packed trains heading home for the New Year holiday because they've got no access to the toilet. Many supermarkets in this particular part of China have reported a 50% increase in sales of adult nappies for the train trips. Now, what do you make of that, Carl? You're on a long, long train journey, three hours, four hours. You know there's no toilet. You know you're going to need to go pop on a... Why isn't there any toilets? They just aren't on the, the trains. And they're a really long journey. Yeah. How long? Hours. Well, very long in China. It's a big country. I, I wouldn't... I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I'd, I'd have to hold it in or something. Just like, uh, I mean, when I, when I was a young kid, I don't know how young you are when you wear a nappy and that, but um, I remember that I didn't like it, doing it in a pair of pants like that, a pair <laughs> of nappies and that. And I used to have to, uh, even when I was too small to sort of get up on the toilet and that, because you'd fall in, <laughs> um, my mum knew that I didn't like nappies and that. I used to just go in, in the corner, just near the kitchen, in this thing that... Like a like a litter tray. <laughs> <laughs> that cat's having that. I mean, it, you know, it wasn't it wasn't uh, like that, but but it's that's that's you know that's the same sort of idea. And I'd go there, and uh, I'd do <laughs> me think. And uh, you know, my mum used to say, "Oh, he's, he's going there. Don't look at him and that," because it put me off. You know, like cats don't like being watched when they do it. 
when they go in their litter tray in the kitchen. No, they don't. They don't like it. I've tested it. Why are you just like a little feral kid just running around and going for the litter tray, covering it up, and then running up the curtain and eating a, a sweet at the top of the pelmet? No, but no, nobody <laughs> likes being watched, and that's what I'm saying. If you're sat on a train and you're knocking one out and that, and everyone's looking at you, it's, I don't. I don't think it'll catch on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has caught on. Has it they're caught all doing it. They're just, they're just, they're just sitting there. They're doing, you know, they're reading the paper, doing Sudoku, <laughs> and 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 they're looking round when they're going. They're thinking, oh, no one knows I'm going. And everyone's thinking that, and everyone's going. I mean, it's partly because there are 120 million peasants from China's vast rural areas who swarm into the cities for work. And so, you know, the, that sheer number of people means that the trains are so overcrowded. I just don't. Th I mean, what, what? What are we getting to? You know what I mean? What What's going on in the world? That this is happening. I know. I mean, people have always had to travel for ages. <laughs> I, d I, d I just don't... I don't understand why there isn't a toilet on it. We're going backwards. <laughs> We're going backwards. Aren't we? <laughs> why isn't there a toilet on it? <laughs> well, maybe there is, but maybe people are thinking the queue is going to take forever. If you've got 125 million people Yeah, but not back. everybody wants to go out once. I mean, I know Chinese and all that are, like, at the forefront of everything that goes on in the world, inventing stuff first, but this isn't one of the best <laughs> that they've come up with. What have they yeah. invented, then, the Chinese? just Loads of stuff, haven't they? Yeah, well, loads of stuff. Yeah, I was going to you. seem quite educated on the subject, but... Um, they've had them cat mop things that I told you about. Brilliant. Um, I mean, this was where you put mops on the feet of cats, was that right? Yeah. And they wander about the house, clean up and that, wash the floor for you whilst they're pottering about. Um... <laughs> They've done like hats with umbrellas on them. They've done. They've done. I mean, they've, they're known for like coming up with stuff first. Yeah, I mean, my first thought was gunpowder, but yeah, cats and mops is good as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just a final um, mention of uh, one of the emails that came through from Phil Hobby in Falmouth in USA. Uh, he says, "Hello, chaps. Just wanted to let you know that I was at a party on Friday." And I bought two remixes of I Could Eat a Knob at Night on a CD. Let me tell you, I played them at the party. They were a huge success. They were a smash. By the end of the night, the party was hip to the words I Could Eat a Knob at Night. Uh, half of them were even singing along. So big thanks to uh, you, Ricky, Stephen, Carl. Now, what would be ideal, of course, I suppose, is one of the big superstar DJs, if they could drop that into their set. You know, a Carl Cox, a Fat Boy <laughs> Slim. Tongue. <laughs> Pete Tong, yeah. The boy Tong. He got power, and I'd love to hear him drop it. Maybe yeah. even, uh, and I suppose Westwood wouldn't be able to put that in. I know he's he's more of a hip-hop guy. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, if we get, if you, if you at any point ever hear I Could Eat a Knob at Night, uh, the remix, at any kind of club event, let us know. We'd love to hear about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Well, now to one of our most popular features, um... I mean, this could even rival monkey news one day. It, I mean, it is monkey news. It's, it's <laughs> you know, it's news from the point of view of a monkey, a shaved monkey. It's Carl Pilkerton's diary. Oh, he's written it down. Yeah. <laughs> Was that the jingle, or were you just well, yeah, just sure. annoyed about sure. something? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> Went and did the podcast. We had a meeting after. I don't like meetings, as I can't keep focused on what people are talking about. I think Ricky has the same problem as after twenty-five minutes, he was trying to wrestle me. <laughs> I tried to do what spiders do and stayed still as if I was dead. But Ricky just stayed on top of me, not moving. A bit like when you see one of them big snakes swallowing a sheep. Ricky got bored and released me. I went home thinking, why had I left my old job for this? A homeless man asked me for some money, but I didn't feel like I should treat him as I felt that he'd probably had a better day than me. Suzanne called me to say she'd gone for a haircut and that she'd meet me in the supermarket. I went to the supermarket, but she wasn't there. I called her and she said she was near the fruit aisle. I went to the fruit aisle and she wasn't there. Turns out she was in a different supermarket <laughs> on the other side of town. And that if I'd listened to her properly, I'd have known that. I didn't want to say that I... Well, you just went to the first supermarket you thought of, as opposed to listening to what supermarket... I'm in the supermarket. All right, bye. I didn't want to say that I hadn't heard her properly because my ears were ringing a bit from the wrestling from earlier. <laughs> 25 minutes later, I met up with Suzanne. Her haircut wasn't that bad. Normally, her haircuts are followed by an argument between us as she pays over the odds for some daft haircut that's the latest style. Brilliant. I wish she'd take a picture out of a magazine or ask for a style rather than letting the hairdresser do what she wants. I said I only tell her to do this as she's got a square head and a close-cut <laughs> hairdo makes it look squarer. 
She said, what do you think of this cut? I said it looked all right, as I couldn't be bothered arguing about it. It's weird writing a diary. I don't know who thought of doing one of these first. The last time I did one was at school. They used to get you to do it so they could keep an eye on whatever you were up to. <laughs> My diary used to say the same thing every night. Got home, went to the shop to get potatoes, bread, milk. Went home, watched telly, went to bed. I think I might have gone to Twiggy's Dance Club just so I had something <laughs> different to write. You've not told us about Twiggy's Dance Club. It's just, uh, you know, I sort of, when I was a kid, I sort of gave everything a bit of a go. I did boxing and that, didn't I? Did it, gave that a go. <laughs> um, about 45 minutes. And, uh, yeah, a mate, a mate sort of said, oh, you know, you're into your dancing, your robotics and that. You're doing, <laughs> doing your body popping, right? Body popping and that. He said, uh, you ought to come to Twiggy's. And um, I went there, um, but I didn't go in. It was shut. It was... <laughs> It was, they, they were just having, like, loads of toilet rolls delivered. I think, like, <laughs> they they were, like, using it as a storage place for toilet rolls and that. So I said, oh, I've come to have a dance. And like, oh, not tonight. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> I, I never went back. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, oh, what, what, a waste, what a waste of an anecdote. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brilliant. Just to recap, you're convinced, then, that the teachers are asking you to keep diaries so they can keep tabs on you. Um, and then to continue the diary, as there were more problems happening on the estate, they started to add Saturday and Sundays to the school diary to keep an eye on what we were doing at the weekend. I struggled to fill it on a Sunday, as the shop I got potatoes and bread from was shot on a Sunday. <laughs> I had to go over to Shepherd's Bush to meet someone. I got the tube. There was a badly burnt man on the tube. It's amazing how the body can continue through quite a lot of bad stuff. It got me thinking about how much stuff you could remove in your body, one by one, <laughs> without dying... If it was a competition, the cockroach would win as it can live for a week without a head. I just mean, like, say, say, if, you know, they're running out of ideas for TV programmes and that, right? They get someone who isn't well. They go, look, do you mind if we make a programme on you? And what they do, they sit them in the bed and they go, right, what we're going to do now is take out the heart but replace it with a pacemaker. Right, no, 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 no. Sorry, people with pacemakers don't have their heart taken out and a pacemaker popped in. All right, then. Um, some sort of machine. What what I'm getting to is... Have you been playing Operation? What I mean is... <laughs> what I mean is the big finale would just be a head chatting with loads of wires going into it, and it's like, look what we can do with science. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the programme's called. It's the same every week. The volunteer is just a head with loads of wires going out look of it. Look what we can do with science. And he's going, Goodbye. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> little. Got some post delivered to me today. It was... <laughs> Oh, this is This great. makes it in the diary. Got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. Oh, God. <laughs> I got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I opened it and the first sentence read, Dear Mr. K. Dilkington... <laughs> You're one of our most valuable customers. <laughs> I put it in the bin. <laughs> Thought I would learn some new words, as Steve always says I don't use enough different words. I read in the Fortean Times that the word "wew" means an ugly female ghost with drooping breasts. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Is what? that how I'm, am I pronouncing Who's that right? Who's using that w word? Woo? Who is woo? using that it word? Was, it was just W-E-W-E. -W -E. Let's call it a woo. An ugly female ghost with drooping breasts. I think I'm right when I say there are too many words in the world. I don't think I will ever get round to using the word woo. Watched a health programme. Wasn't watching it properly, but heard some doctors say that we only get so many heartbeats in a lifetime, so don't do too much exercise. I told Suzanne, and she said I probably hadn't heard it right. We got talking about death. Suzanne said she didn't like thinking about it. I said she might end up being a woo. <laughs> I was chuffed as I'd managed to use my new word. I went to the supermarket to get tonight's tea. On the way, I stopped and looked in the fishmongers at all the different fish they had in the window. <laughs> it's like a child in, like, in one of those kids' TV shows. I know! Mr. Kil Mr. Pilkington went to the fishmonger. He stopped and looked at all the fish in the window. Hello, Mr. Dilkington, they said. <laughs> there was a newspaper clipping stuck on the glass about a two-headed fish that they've made in Taiwan. I don't see the point in doing this, as a fish having two heads ain't going to solve the world's hunger problems, as the head is the bit you throw away. Invent a fish with two bodies, and I'd say well done. 
Good point, all right. <laughs> Suzanne watched one of her favourite TV programmes. I've told her the telly only goes on if there's something she wants to watch. If there's nothing on, she has to talk to me about stuff I've learnt. Like Descartes. Watched a programme on him the other day. He is the one who said something like, I know I'm about because I dream. Doesn't work for everything because ants don't sleep. <laughs> I don't know if I'd like that or not. You don't know if you would like it if you didn't ever not sleep. sleeping. It's just one long day. I don't know. I don't know how you put up with that. Do you think it'd be a good idea? No. Why not? <laughs> because, as you said, it would get a bit boring. You know, your sleep is your rest, your time off. It, get, it, 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 it helps you uh, detoxify. It helps you sort of um, think things through on a subconscious level. It, it, you know, but don't it, you ever get it where, I mean, sometimes it's brilliant to have a sleep when you're tired, but don't you sometimes yeah, feel that's like... that's the best time to have a sleep when yeah. you're tired. No, yeah. but sometimes when you go to bed and you're not that tired and you're kind of thinking, oh, I'm going to waste some hours of my life now and I'm not really in the mood for this Well, that's thing. just wishing you had longer on this earth doing creative things. I mean, if you didn't have to sleep, you could spend more time talking to a tortoise than going to the toffee shop. <laughs> All right, just doing a little advert for Friday Night Comedy on Channel 4. I mean, I, I don't know what you're doing. You might be going out and that, doing something nice, which, you know, if you are, then fair enough, go out. But I'm just saying, if you're staying in, you've got new green wing. All right, that's nearly ready. Got my name is Earl, the It Crowd, all funny stuff and that. Don't know about you, but, you know, I'll be staying in watching it, just having a bag of crisps and stuff. So if you're staying in, put the telly on, do that. If you're going out, go out, have a nice night. See you later. Well, it's that time again. If you'd give us the jingle, please. Oh, Jim Pantry Dive. Fucking ass! Okay, now that surely cannot be fair on anyone's ears listening. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, ages ago, right, about, about the 1950s. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There was this gangster knocking about. And do you know how, like. Was he called Hairy Fingers? Do you know how, like, a lot of gangsters like to get into gambling and that? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, like, all these, all these peers and that, all these, all these mates who are, like, gangsters and stuff, mm. they've all bought horses, right, that they take, you know, take racing and they make money from them and that, don't they? Yeah. Mm. So anyway, he and was Chuckles like... Chuckles the Seagull was no different. And, and he was like, yeah, that's, uh, that's a good thing to get into. I might, might get into a bit of that, right? So he gets himself this horse, right? And it, there's a big race coming up, that's why he's sort of, it's he, a bit of a last minute. And the, and the jockey turns up and it's fine, he's a human jockey and it's fine. Excellent, okay, well that was another so, podcast. So anyway, so... Um, please listen oh, hang on, there's more, there's more. Oh, go on, on. So, oh. so anyway, so, uh, this big race is coming up, he's, yeah. he's like, I've got to be involved in this yeah, because definitely. I can make a lot of money out of me horse here. Choose the jockey wisely then. So he says to his, like, mate, he said, look, uh, I've got myself a horse and that. He said, we just need a jockey, get someone, oh, yeah. sort it out, and yeah. what have you, so we can get in this race. So, yeah, the jockey so his, club. Loads his mate's of like, yeah, all right, I'll have, a, I'll have a word and that, have a look round and that, see if there's anyone decent. And there's, the, the good there. thing about jockeys is there's never been a shortage of jockeys, because a lot of them don't make the grade. So there's, there's, there's always too many jockeys to go round. Normally always too many human jockeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, you, there's never a problem getting jockeys. Fine. Go on. So anyway, so... Was that back. true in the fifties as well? Absolutely. It's always been it's true. It's always been true. It's always it's just always one been true. To there's, no, there's no lack of jockeys. So... It's sort of close shot. People are trying to do it and they don't make the grade, so... But in the 50s, from your knowledge, there was never... There was not, like, in 1951, a shortage of jockeys for just one year. Absolutely never. I've known about <laughs> okay, that. Fine, I'm you, quite yeah. keen. Right. Go on. So anyway, right, so his mate says, look, I'm having a problem getting a jockey. Seems odd, oh, because no, Ricky's just been weird. saying... Oh, no, no, he's just been saying there's not a problem. What do you mean? So... Just because the main problem was... Go on. A lot of jockeys were aware of this gangster and were saying, I'm not getting involved with this guy. The chances are I won't get paid... You know, he's a gangster, it's not no, worth it. No, you would do it if it was a gangster asking you. You'd be scared of the consequences. So anyway, he's saying, look, don't be coming to me with problems and that, right? I've got the horse, I want it in the race, sort it out. So they're like, oh, but boss, and he's like, don't give me any of that. Exactly, they do what he says, so any jockey would do it. Go on. So anyway, so the day before... The big race, yeah. <laughs> left it to the last minute, okay, but yeah. fine. <laughs> and, uh he says, have you, have you got a jockey then? They're like, yeah, but... And he's going, D don't worry about it. Have you got a jockey? Yeah, but... And he's like, well, look... He wants what, to what? say, sure, he wants... Yeah, so, yeah, he uh, like, yeah. he's saying, has he ridden their horses before and that? He said, well, yeah, he has, but mainly... And he's like, oh, brilliant. And he goes, yeah, but mainly in, like, a in circus. The, in the jung 
No, like in, in, the, in the circus and that, <gasps> it worked. It, it worked with horses and stuff. In the circus, it's fine. So it's, it's like that's fine. that's enough. That's that's all I need to know. Well, they'd be too heavy because circus so people so are quite built, aren't they? They're, so, they're he said so heavier than the jockey because the jockeys are about eight and a half stone. He said, "Brilliant, get him down there." And that right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the race happens. He didn't want to meet him beforehand. He wasn't worried. No about point. It. Not no. bothered. No. As far as he's concerned, he's, it's put all his, he's putting his money on it and what have you. Yeah. Right. Sure. What happened is they were trying to make him put on the jo jockey outfit. Yeah. But for some reason it didn't fit that well. Sleeves that, too was, short, legs too, too long. It's that sort of problem. Okay. So they let him like you know wear his stuff that he wore in the circus and that because it's 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 comfortable with that. Yeah, he's yeah, happy yeah. with it. Do you know yeah, what I mean? That's yeah, what he's yeah. happy with. Yeah. Anyway, race starts and what have you. Uh, this horse straight out of the trap and that high speed right. This this jockey's got a really big grin on his face. He's loving it, right? Everyone's cheering, going, "Who is this? Who's this jockey?" Here? Yeah, it's amazing. Never seen him before, and yeah, look at him. But they can see his face clearly. Anyway, gangster's happy in that because he's he's one. But I just want to say the crowd the crowd can see the jockey, can they? What the crowd can? I mean, it's, it's yeah, but he's so fast and what have <laughs> the you. blur. It's a blur. It's all a blur. He's right? really he's good at it. I mean, apparently right. he was close to falling off, and people were like, "He's he's gone. He's a goner." Right. But he's got such a good reach. That he managed to grab hold of oh, the oh. And right. well, they could tell he was smiling. They could tell he was smiling, but they couldn't see the, the detail of his face. Is that right? Just well, to clarify it's just, that. It's just, it's just blur and that. Sure, but they could tell teeth. he was smiling. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, they knew he was happy. At the end of it, do you know, like the winner sort of rides around the crowd, but yeah. like, sort of you know show off and what have you. Yeah. And all the women are there. And, you know, like women are all dolled up at these events. Sure. They've yeah. all got big big hats on. Uh, Sometimes they got through on those hats. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, one, one of the women, oh, one the of the women, particularly oh, Carmen Miranda, was very yeah, popular. Yeah, yeah. One of the women had like, like you say, fruit and what have you on it, yeah. a little, little banana. Right, right. right. some kind of Cuban. They're not, real, they're not real though. The hats, though. They're, 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 <laughs> they're not real fruit, is no, it? Of yeah. course not. Never. So it but I don't know who. Well, I thought they wore those sort of kind of Cuban yeah, entertainment even, shows. Even I didn't realise they wore them. Yeah, at but even if it's like a big event, you know, you might have a hat with fruit, and it's sort of joke, but but it's it's fake fruit because it would it would it would perish. Well, this this jockey didn't understand that. He'd never seen false fruit. I don't understand. But why did, why did the jockey suddenly? Why was he so desperate for fruit? I don't, I don't understand. understand. So anyway, so meanwhile, the gangster's collecting his five hundred quid winnings. Yeah. Right? He's over the moon. Yeah. He kicks off because of this woman with the fruit. Yeah, I don't understand. I still don't understand no, why the jockey would go. Everyone for... noticed. Jockey, little monkey fella. Oh, that makes sense. If he was a monkey, that would make sense. Yeah. What year was this? Because I want to. It was it up. was nineteen fifties, and that's where the saying comes from about you know, like in Cockney slang, five hundred quid is a monkey. He, he sort of put, you know, he put a monkey on it, and it all goes back to the time so when. So this happened in this in in, in England. In this country, yeah, in, in England. So someone could well still be alive so, that we could easily yeah. contact. That well, would that's it. We always, you know, there's no time length on this monkey news. If you've got any, if it's history, you know, if yeah. it goes back, or know, if it's made up, bullshit. Just, just send it in. If it's to, bollocks, uh, if you've got any in. bollocks, if it's actually bollocks, send please send it in. That's this week's monkey news. RickyGervais.com. <laughs> Well, that's the end of uh, the tenth podcast in the series of twelve. Only two more to go. Um, one more hour of the uh, the drivel that is um, the thoughts of Chairman Pilkington or Dilkington, as he should now be known. Um, this uh, podcast was brought to you by Positive Internet. Those great guys at Positive Internet host the world's number one podcast. It's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. If you want to get in touch, remember it's podcast at rickygervais.com. And Carl Pilkington. Right. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. As Aldous Huxley once said, man is an intelligence in servitude to his organs. Made from the same stuff as algae, the human body has evolved into the most complex organism in the universe.
an animal with power of introspection, conceiving complex metaphysical notions of morality, beauty, and love, while at the same time battling time, illness, and even death with even more sophisticated scientific weaponry. While we may still marvel at its complexity, what do we know about the human body? What are its wonders and limitations? And with scientific and medical technology moving ever forward, how will the human body evolve over the centuries to come? To discuss these questions and more, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, award-winning writer and graduate of the University of Warwick. Hello. And Carl Pilkington, a man without formal academic qualifications or any awards to speak of, but he's good at other things. Cleaning windows, for example, with his fucking tongue, Gump. <laughs> <laughs> a bit harsh, isn't it? <laughs> All right. All your cells um, die and are replaced many times over in your life. Um, except the brain cells, you only lose them. You lose hundreds and millions and trillions, right? And you've still got plenty left, don't worry. Or well, most people have. Um, so only a small percentage of the cells you're born with remain yours, the brain cells. So supposing you're 99% different all the time you're changing is that the same person we well, would say yeah because you've got the important ones the brain cells which keeps your memory your personality your input the you but, but then, as we've talked before if you ch if you took your brain and put it in someone else would you yeah. be the same person you know well, then, yeah, what well, defines the person yeah it's the, the brain isn't it that, it is that the is brain it. but then if you look different you'd be treated differently and you have a different personality you could still be the same person but people change anyway people's personalities change and if you're in a car accident and you lose all your memories you you you've got the same hardware uh, people have had complete personality changes particularly through car i knew someone who knew someone whose uh, yeah girlfriend was in a terrible accident and she lost uh, a lot of her memory and so the person she was with her boyfriend or fiance she no longer related to them in the same way and equally he obviously that, that wasn't the same woman that yeah, but was it his fault with. was it his fault what's that got to do with it what's that got to do with it no was it his fault was the accident his well, what's fault? that got to do with it because you would be fed up wouldn't you that's a completely different point that he was making no it wasn't he said yeah. a woman had an accident yeah but we were talking about are you the same person well like, let's hear what carl's point Go is on. you said yeah. you know this woman was in an accident yeah it's terrible that it's sad yeah now all I'm saying is she went. Little bit of opinion just popped in there. Yeah, she, well, that's sad. Yeah. She went off him. I'll pass on your condolences. Yeah. She went off the fella. Yeah. All I'm saying is, you're saying, oh, it's because a, a brain had a knock and went, oh, I'm not into him anymore. But all I'm saying is, <laughs> if it was his fault who was driving the car and yeah. it happened because of him, mm. you would sort of go, yeah, but that's not the point I was making at all. It's it not, was, is it? It, it's a, not, he wasn't not. involved, but B, it was because she got a form of amnesia. So she, she didn't relate to him in the same way because the life they'd spent together, she no longer had a memory of. And equally, when he was talking to her, she was no longer the person that he'd first met. Do you see what I mean? So that's what my point was. Not because he was in. Oh. Yeah, no, I can understand that. That doesn't surprise me that much, I suppose. At the end of the day, it is what you go through, isn't it? Yeah. You can arp back. You can talk about stuff. Uh, arp back. You can arp back. Is that what a good relationship is based on? If there's a, a lot of young people out there listening, they're wondering what to look for. I, I think that's the best thing about getting old, isn't it? You yeah. can sit down and do nothing but think about a lot. If you're a baby, you've done now, you're lying there, you can't walk. I can't remember being a baby, and I put that down to it being boring. Because <laughs> <laughs> you only remember the you good things. You can't remember your birthday! No, it's, it's, you remember the good things in life, don't you? I'm quite happy, I can sit down for a good hour or so, and just think back and go, oh, that was good. When was the last time you reminisced? Well, my mum and dad have been round, haven't they, so, been yeah. reminiscing a lot. Yeah. Um, what were you thinking about? We were just chatting about, um, Tic Tacs. <laughs> One of the great memories, yeah. The happy memories. <laughs> no, because I, you see, here's, here's the thing. You're saying how that woman changed mm. when she had her head caved in. <laughs> I, he never said that. What did you, well, the, the brain accident. Yeah, um, brain accident, yeah. The, the, the Tic Tacs. Mm. Now, I used to love them. Yeah. When I was younger. Yeah. yeah. My dad got a load of them. Mm. What, got, this year? No, Just no, recently. years ago, oh, years ago, like, years ago when mm. I loved them, I said I loved Tic Tacs, me. Yeah. He met one of his mates. You nick him from the sweet shop? No, 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 that's no he knew did. some yeah. mate who uh, who could get his hand on a load. Right. And uh, he thief. must have he got about he, he must have got about thirty crates of Tic Tacs. Thirty crates of Tic Tacs. Honestly, mm. we'd about twenty four on each crate. We got them, stuck them in a cupboard under the uh, just in the kitchen, the corner. Yeah. <laughs> now I worked my way through about six crates. It's quite happy. When? In how long? I don't know, in about two weeks, three weeks or something. Right. 
and then uh, after that, I'm getting sick of these. Right, yeah. You were minty fresh, but Yo, you were sick lovely of fresh breath. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I haven't got that much more to tell you about it. It's just... What just, so just sorry, whoa, whoa, whoa. Bear in mind, this was something he was recently reminiscing with his parents <laughs> yeah, about. <laughs> they were sat around, and we've already learned up to an hour could go by reminiscing. <laughs> sat around yeah. for an hour, uh, talking about the, the great I've already run out of sorry, responses. Yeah. I've got yeah. nothing to say about no that. Opinion, I mean, that. I was nearly going to say, what do you do with the empty little flicky tic tac boxes? Yeah. But then I mean, you realise that that's utterly dull and boring. Uh, well, and I, just, I was struggling. I don't know what this handout is, other than a yeah. bloke... Other than you said your dad, I like Tic Tacs, me. He went, all right, I talked to Albert. Albert, you got Tic Tacs? I've got 30 crates, if that'll do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, bring him out. Put him under cupboard. He's got through 12 crates. What's his breath like? Fucking lovely, but he's been sick all over the cunting place. Oh, do you want some more? No, cause me fucking down. You'll talk about that in a few years' time. Cause me well for about a fucking hour. No. Then we bring it up on an audio book. But that's, I think that's how we got onto it, because even though I, tr I tried to get rid of a load, I used to give them to mates, take them to school, say, have some Tic Tacs. Yeah. You can have them for free. We used a load in the cat litter tray. <laughs> no. No, well, we you did. didn't. We did. It no, was just didn't. ways of getting rid of them. Jesus Christ. Sort of freshy, sort of freshy smell, isn't it? That's it's the same amazing. sort of condensity in that, isn't it? Condensity. It is the same condensity. Um, Similar condensity. Yeah, so I got rid of them <laughs> like that. And then the uh, weird thing was, even though I'd got <laughs> shut of them all, um, you'd be backing up and you'd always hear one ting its way up the tube. <laughs> Up the tube. It's tinging its way up the tube. It's, it's tinging, tinging its way up the tube. <laughs> Ding tong, ping pong. It's tinging its way up the tube. <laughs> that sounds like something from Willy Wonka. <laughs> oh god! No, it's just I'm just demonstrating that because that's how many of them there were around the house. You'd drop mm. them, they'd go in every corner and that, like Pac-Man mm. or something. They'd be that's everywhere. You'd be vacuuming up. Tinging it up. Sheila's getting married. Hannah gets confetti. Don't buy any confetti. Go to cupboard under stairs. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's a little memory there, isn't it? It that is a little memory. Up. No, it's, it's a, a really little memory. The, the strange Tic Tac house in yeah. Salford, where everything is made of Tic Tacs. Wow, that must have been a hell of that's a ingre hell of a time you had with your parents there oh. in the old Tic Tac reminiscence. No, but it's better. You see, you're you're saying, oh, what a boring story that is. Yeah. But when when I your mum uh, regravelled the drive, <laughs> yeah, smell it. <laughs> suck, suck the drive if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but it's different. When my mum and dad are there and they can remember that and they're oh. going, oh yeah, yeah, the Tic Tac incidents and stuff. <laughs> What's known as the Tic Tac incident. <laughs> the Tic Tac let, incident. Let us never speak of the Tic Tac incident. Yeah, I just imagine the clock ticking. There, it's Christmas Day. I go, T -t 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 what are you smiling at? Oh, and then we used to ting up the tube. <laughs> <laughs> you should think about sending this to Hollywood. Listen, what do you remember then? <laughs> what, what do, do you I remember? remember? That's wow. an amazing thing to That's say. That's a difficult question to answer. Yeah, I don't. Nothing. Nothing at all. Why, out of interest though, and this is this will sound naive, why don't we remember <laughs> the very early moments of our lives? Why, why is it? Is it? Is it because it would be too harrowing to remember the point at which we... Uh, Sort of born because I don't really remember anything from those first few years. Why? Why is it? Is it just because the brain's not fully formed at that moment? Uh, I don't know. The memory's not sufficiently uh, I, developed. I, 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 I it's got to be trauma, on it. It's the things. Again, we were talking about me being younger, and the youngest I could remember back to was nineteen seventy-eight. How old were you then? Uh, when were you born? Seventy-two. What? Well, you can only you couldn't remember earlier than six. Um, you can remember back to about two or three, most people. What, no, no way. No way. My mum and dad don't even remember me then. <laughs> <laughs> because you're not doing anything. This is what I'm saying. My mum and dad don't even remember me then. <laughs> That's amazing. Because oh they, 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 they oh. pinpoint they things. They remember all the tic-tacs <laughs> they've ever yeah, yeah. Do you remember when Carl was uh, six? Of course I do. <laughs> Five? Yeah. Four? <laughs> uh, yeah. Three? No. <laughs> To? No! <laughs> because you're not doing anything, are you? <laughs> my mum and dad don't even remember so, me then! And, and it's oh. weird. I remember, uh, s must have been about two, sitting on a potty surrounded by Lego. I remember that, very st strong image I have of that. No, I don't remember that. No, you no, wouldn't no, remember no, that, no, no, were you? No, you, no, you, no, you were not were you? What do you mean? What, you don't remember Steve sitting on a potty <laughs> surrounded by Lego? No, I mean, I can't remember having a potty. I remember having well, one you, of them. I'm not suggesting no, you have the you same memory. You used to memory. go in a fucking litter tray. Now I know why, to eat a Tic Tac while you're having a shit. But, okay, um, so what is your very first memory? The one that cropped up the other day was having my eyes sort of uh, glued together by, um... <laughs> 
gangsters. <laughs> Where's the fucking Tic Tacs? <laughs> no, I we was... lost our truck for you, yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I was on holiday and I slept near the window and the window was open and I used to wake up in the morning with my eyes shut. My mum and dad thought I was having a lovely lie in. I just couldn't open my eyes. But what? I don't understand. Why were they. Why did you mean? Why were they glued? Why were they. What do you mean they were glued? Wait, wait. But just... why didn't you say, Mum, Dad, I'm not asleep. My eyes are glued together. It's just. You get a build up on, yeah. the, on the eyelashes. Yeah. Yeah. And it all. It... But when they came in and you could sense them looking. I didn't know they were there. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Why did you say to us so you lay there dead still? Well, you should have sprinkled some Tic Tacs around the bed and you'd have heard them crunching <laughs> in as they came in. Yeah. Oh, what do you mean? So, so that's, you, that's your me eyes, wait, so your eyes are stuck together, you're lying there, you're still. You're awake, but you can't open your eyes, so you don't say anything. Yeah. What, why? What, what every so day? Your, it your happened memory a lot. It happened a lot. But your memory was that, that this was scary to you because you thought I'd gone you'd gone blind? Probably, and it hasn't happened since, so it's something you remember happening, isn't it? <laughs> it's like the kidney stone thing. That mm. will always stay with me because it's like I was in agony. Yeah. Right. And that's what I'm saying about trauma. It's quite frightening when you're a no, kid and you, you can't open saying, your eyes. No, you were trauma. saying you don't remember trauma. No, I... <laughs> <laughs> well, do you remember that, do you remember that conversation we had a few minutes ago? Maybe it's because I had time to lie there and think about it. Because I, I sort of wonder that if, if having vision <laughs> does get in the way. Mm. Nice, no, good one. Okay, go on, interesting. Yeah, interesting, yeah, go on. Well, just yeah. your eyes, your eyes mm. are, you know. Go on. Um, what are they? They're, they're the thing mm. that makes you do the things you want to do, aren't they? Your eyes at the end of the day. What do you mean, interesting? Go on. Give you, everything, give you... everything. You might want to, mm. you might like drawing. Right. Your eyes. Mm, that's an example, though, isn't it? Because then you might like music and you don't need your eyes for that, do you? Um, it's well, really yeah, because you've still yeah. got to find your way to the record shop to well, find the, well, the record no, no, you want. You no, know, someone could um, put, it, put it for you, or you could. Uh, um, what I mean is, your eyes. Wonder, say, you know, say rather you than. Like um, smells, you might be a perfume, you need Let me just think. the nose, don't you? Wine tasting, just. I've just always thought. Mm. Blind people. Go on. Are probably good listeners. Right, yeah. That okay. makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Which means that they'll be more brainy. Possibly. They won't waste their eyes on watching rubbish telly. No. Yep, sure. Um, but bear in mind, you learn a lot, don't you? Yeah, Just from yeah. what you see, Swings you absorb a lot of information Swings from what you see. Rights. Yeah, but, but blind people are going to say, right, I'm not going to be defeated here. Mm. Right. I'm going to make sure that I still feed my brain with stuff. Right. Whereas if you've got eyes, your eyes can sometimes say, well, don't listen to that intelligent thing there. Yeah. Watch some rubbish on the telly. Yeah. yeah. Why are you, your eyes are saying that, are they? Who are they talking to? Are they talk I'm just saying, if you've got eyes... Yeah, they're talking to you. You're more drawn to things drawn that keep... You, what are you drawn to, keep, though? Keep your eyes, keep on, your eyes you interested. It's like everything. Right. It picks your food for you. Mm. Does it? No, yeah, he does. He doesn't. does. Of course, he does. That's why they advertise food in a way that the look, those adverts on the telly look so, at this. This isn't an ordinary pasta. Yeah. This is. So yeah, you well, you'd eat a nice uh, a nice plastic apple, would you? It looked like a lovely. It looked like an apple. Eat it. Presentation mm. is ninety percent of what goes on now in this world. Mm. Whether it's clothes, is that is that a that's because, that you picked that's up That's because you know what the thing you like looks like, so you recognise it. You go. Oh, I like that. You don't go, oh, I like the look of that. I ate it last time and I like the look of it as I was eating it. You go, I know what that is. That's the thing that tasted good. Not always. No? I think there's a lot of cakes out there and I've, I've been conned where my eyes have gone, that looks good. I'll go, can I have one of them? And I get it and it's just like air with cream on it. But that's there's nothing. You, you, there's are no you curious with your eyes at that point? But well, you it's just contradicted annoying. your own point. No, I haven't. I've said, my eyes have said this is what you want. Yeah. And I've been disappointed with it. So they, uh, so your eyes shouldn't pick your food then, should they, really? They you shouldn't. Sh no. But they do. Well, again, the next time, you, you, you get the eyes go again. Remember well, that? Yeah, I'll, but I'll say, I'll sort of go, hang on a minute. You remember <laughs> last time? This is different. You are the strangest it's man not, I've not ever met. There's nothing weird about you that. You are the strangest person not, I've ever met. So are you mistrustful of your eyes? You, you don't are. trust anything you see now, you query here's, here's a clearer. Here's a clearer way of describing it. Go on. Holiday brochure. Right. Your eyes, look at it. Look mm. at this villa here. Look at that, it's got its own pool, close to all the amenities. <laughs> Get there, my eyes. What have you picked? 
Because it's not what? as good. Who's arguing now? Who's angry with your eyes? Your, were your eyes angry then? No, I was angry. Okay, so your mouth and brain are angry with your eyes? Because one, my nose has kicked in, I'm next to the bins. Right, okay. You couldn't see that in the brochure, no, the eyes couldn't see that's that. That's true, true, true. The bottle <laughs> banks again, they're close by, my ears are going, what's the racket? Yeah. My eyes are going, sorry. What? Your eyes are saying sorry? I'm just saying, you can't trust your eyes. I don't I think you can. I'm surprised they felt guilt. I love the fact that his, his sense of human biology is based on the numbskulls. Of course. I don't, I don't yeah. know why you... You must pick stuff based on what your eyes thought initially. Well, it depends. But, Carl, they're not detached in this separate way. They're not different operatives, all with different agendas. It's all connected. It should be. If I look at a picture in a, a brochure, a magazine, and I think, oh, that looks nice, my brain instantly says, be careful though, because that's a publicity uh, tool mm. in order to try and sell me this particular deal. It's prop chances are it doesn't look exactly in real life like it does in the brochure. Mm. I'm instantly thinking that. I'm not, I'm not going, hey, I'll book that. And then two weeks later, I get there, I can't believe I'm fucking disappointed. Ears, what do you make of it? Well, I'm livid because I can hear some fucking racket. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is you don't see that many disappointed blind people. You mm. don't not, see that many disappointed blind, blind people. people. They're not let down that much. They're not let down. Spurious. You've got, that's no, you've got no information for that, no evidence for that at all. You've just made that you up. You don't see many disappointed blind people. I've always been fascinated in biology in general. And uh, I remember when I was about 13 or 14, I got this book, Man's Body, an Owner's Manual. I was fascinated by it. It's like a sort of textbook, is it? About it's, the it's great though because it's got absolutely everything from, you know, um, life and death. And then I was worried that you could chart when you die from sort of things like, you know, where you were born, socioeconomic group, um, have, you, have you had fill-ins and all those things. Oh, I'd, I'd worry it and you give yourself a point system. But um, it's a fascinating book. It's got everything. And of course, all the stuff about male sex organs, you know. Um, I, I, I can't think of the number of men that went home and got a ruler after <laughs> reading about averages. Yeah. Um, uh, as a, there's a nice little um, chapter here. What is the average? Uh, <laughs> you have to push really hard with the ruler until it's sort of like going right into your stomach and then you can get it up to like two or three inches. <laughs> um, lovely chapter here on um, sexuality. I want to read one. Um, this is under the uh, homosexual activities. Um, it goes into what they like. Uh, Anal sex it explains what that is. It's um, anal sex. This is inserting the penis into the partner's anus. Um, normally, with the aid of an artificial lubricant, so it gives you all the details there. Um, now, in addition to anal intercourse, many homosexuals have practiced fisting, inserting a hand or fist or other objects into the anus as a form of sexual stimulation. Experience has shown, however, that this practice should be avoided since it can cause gay bowel syndrome. No, I'd never heard of that. Wow. Gay yeah. bowel syndrome. Gay bowel syndrome. Um, fissures, like lesions and stuff, and other damage to the walls of the rectum. So um, you'd go to the doctor and go, oh, I've got a problem with those. Well, you've got uh, gay bowel syndrome. Are you uh, gay? Yes, I am, yeah. All right, um, well, have, you, have, you been, have you been sticking another man's fist up your anus? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we like that. Okay, well, uh, my advice to you is to stop that because... Um, it's causing damage. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to stop it, by the way. I'm not going to stop it. I'm going to carry on doing that. And then just keep coming back here with a sore ass, if that's if that's all right. And you can just fix it, can you? Because uh, I'm just going to... In fact, I'm going to go home now and do it. Even though you've told me that I probably shouldn't. And I'm going to... Gay bowel syndrome, you say? <laughs> Carl, I mean, what, do you, what do you think about that? Sticking a, a, a fist up your ass? Uh was not meant to be, was it? I mean, it's 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 not. You know, it's going to do damage, isn't it? It's it's like you've got to know when to stop putting stuff in a carrier bag. <laughs> and it's the same as that, isn't it? Because it rips. Yeah. Someone told me this recently at a party. Uh, fascinating fact. Um, see what you think of it, Carl. He told me that apparently, if you've got time on your hands, you can put your fist inside someone else's arse and then you can work your hand very slowly up through the person's body it takes about two hours apparently and eventually it's he's, he's what he told me you can touch that person's heart right right and it's like the most intimate thing you could ever do with right. someone else that's bollocks that's what he said that's what well, how could you said. touch their heart one the alimentary canal is about 30 foot long 
So you'd have to either have to have third. You have to be Mr. Tickle, right? Or you'd have to be rolling up the elementary canal as you go, like a like a stocking on a pole, <laughs> right? And then when you get up there, how can you touch the heart? You'd have to rip through the esophagus, which would kill them. Okay, if the if the arm going all the way up there, elementary canal, the wrong way didn't kill them. But I like the idea of someone saying that to a loved one. <laughs> all right, love. <laughs> Love, little surprise for you. Um, the kids are at your mother's. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've put, I've put the phones hours. off the hook. They're yeah. out for two hours. They, they're, actually, they're maybe out for four because I'm going to need to get it back out again. Yeah. Where's the Marge? <laughs> it's like, imagine the, the doorbell goes, you've got a sign for a package. Who told you that at a party? A psychopath. I don't know. He's, 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 and then he was convinced it was true because he, he went online to try and. Uh, even when we were at a party, he found a computer also, and he started typing in fist, heart, stuff. And I said, you better delete that in case yeah. the person whose computer I is know, finds fist, that. Heart, fist yeah. heart. Also, if the aim is to touch the heart, right, go via the mouth, it's shorter. <laughs> Let's pop it down the mouth. Yeah. Kyle, thoughts? I mean, there's getting to know people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you know how people say, oh, you shouldn't use a toilet with the door open and all that mm. because it ruins... What, like, the knowing too much and everything, but that for me, where do you go from there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I've, you know me. I mean, I've got nothing against uh, gays and that, but no. I've, I've, I've they puzzle me to this day. There's still things that happen when uh, mm. I go, "What is all that about?" Like what? I went to what's the name, mm. Harley Street. I went for a, a checkup, mm. and uh, like a medical. Mm posh, you know Harley Street, it's like yeah. it's the top doctors, isn't it? I've never yeah, been before. Yeah. All posh buildings and that. Uh, went up to the counter. I said, uh, I see the doctor. They said, name, yeah. Right. Give us ten minutes, go and wait in the waiting room. Dead posh waiting room. Dead fancy. Big leather furniture and that. Yep. Loads of magazines. I mean, m like, a, like a news agent. Yep. In the middle of the room on a table. Loads of them. So I'm looking through and there's the, you know, there's the top quality ones. You're a squire. You know, GQ, Classy, Yacht Weekly, uh, all that, Country Life, uh, Boys. Boys? There's one there, yeah. Boys. What's that? Right, lifted up like the one on top of it, and it's like Boys with a Z. Two fellas stood there, looking, uh, sort of Italian looking. Ah, uh -huh, yeah. Right. Uh, remember Brother Beyond? That sort of look. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sort of greasy it's a, air. It's a cracking back. reference there. Yeah. Um, dungarees on. Uh, no shirt, though. No shirt, just dungarees sort of unbuttoned, hanging down a little bit. Sure. So no one else is about. I'm never going to buy a magazine like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, you're going to tell us you look through you a couple of magazines. I had, I had a little little look just because I thought you know like I say you, it's one you're chance you're always looking to learn aren't you always <laughs> looking to learn yeah always open you know there might have been something in there that I go right I get it now I understand why why they like doing that or whatever yeah right so uh, she said I was gonna you know 10 minute wait I can, I can have a quick flick through mm. picked it up had a look Um still none the wiser why well what did you see when you opened it up Um just loads of uh I mean like I've said to you before about I don't know why they like looking at knobs when they've got one of their own. <laughs> right. There's no right. surprises there. You're not going to go, oh, yeah, so Sure, yeah. Nice. yeah. Lots of that. Yeah, they can't get to it, can they? They can't get to their own. Who can't? Well, if they want a little... little chew, a little nosh, they can't get to their own, can they? They break their back. But they can't get to this fella's in the magazine. <laughs> it's only a picture. They're just looking at it. They might as well look at their own. That's in what I mean. Room, yeah. yeah, just have a look at it. They just stood there. They're not up to anything. They were just sort of stood there. Some had like car oil on the face. Uh, there was one Why? sat on a, I don't know, just like a mechanic type thing. Car right. oil on the face and like rubbed on the chest and that. Sure. Not about. Yeah. There was someone sat on a, um, like a, a one of them square things of hay. Oh yeah. Sat a there, like sort of sat on it, straddling it. Yeah. Uh, that must have been uncomfortable. Again, not about. Yeah, yeah, just looking, just looking like it's normal. That's great. Like no that. farmer walks around like that. What was the other one? There was a, uh, you know, motorbike. They always like them. Yeah. And I'm going through, and and then like the content is all puns. Right. It's all you know. Uh, it's a couple of weeks ago. Should I wrote some down? It, it, it all everything was to do with knob. Right. That's the only bit they're interested in. <laughs> in the these, male body. Look at look at this bloke it's straddling not, this huge throbbing thing. The bike's not bad either. Yeah, yeah all that. Yeah. Loads of them. Uh, it was just, uh, uh, just all, just, just cock. Just 100%, like, let's, let's just talk about the knob. 
That's yeah. a good name for a, 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 a gay magazine. 100% cock. 100% cock. Did it not at any moment sort of maybe slightly under you that you might, the doctor might come in and see you reading boys? No, because I or wasn't. what about if I walked through? Because I remember once when you were in hospital about to have um, a tube going down your knob and you were sitting in your pants with stockings on and I walked through and you were horrified. So what if I'd have walked in then and went, yeah, God, I what are you doing? I would have just said, look at this. Look at this, it's free. And I, and you, and I said, why did you bring that with you? No, I would have just said, look, does it look like a bright with me? Look yeah, at this. yes, it does, because well, I've never, because so you I would never see, you would never see a gay magazine in a doctor's waiting room. So I think you bought that and then, and pretended that it was that's, there. That's, that's the thing, that's, I was amazed by that. Because there was no, like, you know, there was no Mayfair or anything. They just catered for, like, if you wanted a bit of knob action. <laughs> It was really, I mean, really, I could have complained. Sure. So if you're going to have this, where's a bit of the other? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you had a bit of this, where's a bit of the other? I know one of the things that, that they had, and I thought, they're, they're really struggling with, like, ideas. They had a Sococo. <laughs> As in Sudoku? Yeah. Sococo. Sococo. Surely, surely Sudico is better. No, because it was like Sococo. Yeah, but it's dick as well. Subdico. Yeah. What, and it's it was still a Sudoku-style puzzle, but yeah, it just had that name? yeah. Yeah, it's just so everything. It is was all just Sudoku, but called su Coco. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. Now, that if I if I was gay, do you know like let's have say a game of Lubo. <laughs> <laughs> let's have a game of Knobopoly. Knoberation. Knoberation. <laughs> <laughs> let's have a game of chess. Cock. <laughs> 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 Let's have a game of fuckaroo. <laughs> well, that works for either sex. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's how we spend our okay, Christmases. Fuck a poo. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh god. Human intimacy is a very strange thing because kissing is a bizarre thing, isn't it? Really. I mean, I don't know what the evolutionary origin of kissing is. You know what I mean? It's quite a sort of strange... It's like anything, it's though, isn't it? It's a strange thing. It's because you... if you start reading about all the weird stuff that goes on, like people who have it away with dead bodies and that, it's because you've you've planted the seed in your head and you start going, oh, I'll give that a go. Like food. You either want an olive or you don't. Some people will go, I'll try it. Some will go, they're not for me. Do you want an olive? Uh, no, but you can shove your hand up me ass so far to touch me up. <laughs> uh, you, haven't got, you, haven't, you haven't got any olives? I have got some olives, but if you are fed up with olives, <laughs> yeah. I've got an arse here going begging, <laughs> and only and uh, thirty foot along the elevator now is a little hard. I like you to yeah, touch. But, but the thing is, if you if you give that a go and you enjoy it, then you want to do it again. Yeah. Right. And you've created uh, do not stuff. try and do that. Do not try and stick your hand so far at someone's arse you can touch their heart. There is no point to it. It is a myth that it could happen. You will end up murdering it's someone. A sorry, sorry state of affairs where you've got to put that message out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's it, isn't it? That's the other thing, isn't it? That um, you don't hear of animal fetishes and animal phobias. You know, you don't you don't get a lion who's a little bit nervous of antelope. I don't like antelope meat, and yet you have people here who are, um, all those weird things of people who um, can only have sex with a pavement, which is a good thing to you know, you'll never be lonely unless someone suddenly drops you on a desert island and you go, I'll never see a pavement again. <laughs> Um, what do you think of that? Those, those people that just think, you know... Well, they're just idiots, aren't they? There are some weird... You know, you've got some clever ones, you've got a lot of divs. There's more divs on the world than better ones. <laughs> wow, that's a brief sentence to say. <laughs> yeah, he's right, though. He's right. As, as gobbledygook as that was, he's absolutely right. I, I, think, I, think, I think Carl isn't a div. I think he's a better one, but doesn't know it. I think he's... He, it's, it's strange, because I think that... Um, He's got all the other evolution of the of the human being, but um, he doesn't know which side his bread's buttered. He's, he doesn't realise he's cleverer than he is. The number of times I find a theory that he said in gobbledygook, but it's true. I, I think that um, I just I think he's been dealt a bad hand mm. in the brain department. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Thoughts, Carl. Well, your brain's in two bits, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I wonder if one half is really good, the other half's messing it up. <laughs> yeah! 
That's that how could I feel be the case. Sometimes. That could be the case. Yeah. Well, it is split into two. Yeah, and they and they are, are responsible for different things. Yeah. It's like these sort of families where there's a kind of really bright kid and then a sort of wayward child who just gets into drugs and stuff. Sort of like that up there. Yeah. In your head. Because you have you have quite sort of out there nebulous thoughts and you've got a lot of common sense, haven't you? And just having that uh, that other sense of like this is dodgy. What spider sense? Just that sense where you just go, I, I don't know why, but something's telling me we shouldn't be here. And you go, all right, let's go. <laughs> and you move from it, and you don't know what what that is. Yeah. You don't know what's decided that. You know, it's like when you're lost. A part of my brain's got me lost, but then there's another bit that I don't know what it is where they go, go left. <laughs> And you do, and then you go. So, remember that time when you called me and I said I don't know where I am and yeah. I couldn't concentrate. <laughs> Think of that. Think of that. I called him. Oh my God, what are you doing? I don't know where I am. What do you mean you didn't know where you were? What, you, I got lost. I what, went in wandering. London, you got yeah, lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went wandering, and then uh, you know. It's I was when like, he first moved into his new place. He was yeah. walking back from his old place to his new place, and he didn't know where he was. He tried How can to take you ever a short... really get lost in London, though? I'm just as a um, cabbie. Well, yeah, yeah, I don't want to do that because you feel bad pulling one over and then saying, where am I? Um, <laughs> yeah, they don't appreciate <laughs> that, do they? But um, I found my way back, didn't I? Yeah. But you I'm told me one minutes. time that, you, uh, that you, you much prefer getting lost. You love wandering around and getting lost. Yeah, you said that's much better. Yeah, it was a cold sand. day. It was a cold day. I just wanted to be at home. I had things to do. There's mm. a time and place to be lost. Well, uh, went, go on. Uh, well, a place What's you don't place? know. What's the place to be lost? Somewhere you don't know. Right, good. Okay. And specific. the time? The time when when you're not in a rush. Right. Uh, but that time I was in a rush, and, and I was cold. So a typical argument in your head is what? I'm lost. Um. I do one. I do one side of the brain. You do the other side of the brain. Okay. In your head. Okay. Carl. What? This isn't where we should be. You want to go home, didn't you? This isn't your house, because it's a it's a field. You live in a house, don't you? Why are we standing in a field? This isn't your house. You were meant to go home, but you've walked into a field. No, but that wouldn't... I've, I've never been that lost when I'm walking <laughs> across a field. At the edge of the field, I'd go, hang on a minute, this isn't right. I wouldn't get in the middle. I wouldn't go that far. I'd go, right, I definitely shouldn't be here. <laughs> you did once. You were in the, in the middle of a field and your dad had to rescue yeah, you. Yeah, that's when I was a kid because I was reading as I was walking. <laughs> And he never read again. <laughs> <laughs> but there's another sense. I was in the middle of nettles there. Yeah. I'd walked. It was at uh, it was at my brother's wedding in Cornwall, mm. and I was walking near a cliff edge, <laughs> reading a book. <laughs> reading. Okay, so so uh, so okay. <laughs> walking. Carl, I know you're enjoying this book. I've got, can I have a word with you? Just look. Just look past the book a minute. It's, it's just it's a big drop. Yeah. Well, that's what happened, and then right. that's when my other senses went, hang on a minute, I'm being stung. Load of nettles and stuff. And I just had to wait there for ages until my dad sort of thought, where's Carl? I was there for about an hour and a half. <laughs> He's <showed> a book. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me like a cartoon. But why are you wandering off reading a book when it's your brother's wedding? No, this was like, we were in, uh, I think it was St. I Ives in Cornwall. Yeah. But, yeah. I was in St Ives, and uh, just, you know, it was a nice day and that. There was no telly in the place. It was a horrible house. Yeah. Um, it, was this old, it was haunted, wow. actually. Mm -hmm. No, honestly. No, not honestly. It wasn't haunted. There's no such thing as ghosts. So, those, so you saying honestly it was haunted means fuck all. It's the most, it's the weirdest place and weirdest sensation I've ever had. I spoke to a woman called Mrs Battersby. Right. Uh, who sat on my bed keeping me up all night. My mum came up, she said, you look shattered. I said, yeah, I haven't had a kiff all night. She said, why? I said, I've been talking to Mrs Battersby. She said, who's that? I said, no, oh, some old woman. Now, I can't remember it now, but that's what I did then. And then, uh Sorry, sorry, uh, so Mrs Battersby didn't exist, is that what you're saying? She was the ghost? Yeah. Wasn't the landlady? No, there was no landlady. It's a big house, about, right. about 12 bedrooms in it. Right. Dead, dead cheap to stay there, because it was a wreck. My were mum and dad went were out you one ill? night. Did you have flu at the no, time? No, I had nothing like that. I just... So you were sitting up, but you were awake. And you were having a conversation with Mrs. Battersby. <laughs> <laughs> what did she look like? I can't remember. I can't even remember having the chat now. Right. But at so the time, I was like, oh, she just doesn't shut up. Chatting all night. So you don't remember this happening? Or you do remember it happening? No, I remember 
that, like, n if I see my mum now and I mention St. Ives, she'll go, oh yeah, Mrs. Battersby. She remembers coming in, because she was older than me, wasn't she? So, to so her, my mum. Was she? Yeah. Oh, Mrs. Battersby, she was older than both she of you. She was older, because I'm calling her Mrs. Battersby. If she was my age, I'd probably say, oh, it's Susan or whatever. Right, sure, You'd Miss call Batters older people Miss by the surname, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so she kept oh, up on, like, don't know, I'm thinking of pictures at the wedding. Uh Stop why on. do you have to go through other things to just have a memory? How old do you reckon you why were? Do, why, I, I don't understand why you haven't got direct access to your memories. How old do you reckon you were? Uh Your mum was older though, yeah? You must have a vague idea of when this well, event was. I'm thinking about it now, I'm thinking. Okay. I'm, I'm picturing a picture of myself at this wedding. Okay. And how old are you? What are you doing? How tall I'd say you? I look about... How were you? Uh, uh, about I'd say I look about seven or eight, looking at the picture. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. So Mrs. Battersby is chatting away to you. You don't remember what she said, but you do remember having the conversation. No, he doesn't remember it at I all. I don't remember the chat now. Well, then so why are you telling us? You must your remember memory. it because you're telling us about it's it. Not your because memory. it's a memory. My mum's reminded me of it. Yeah, but all it says is, oh, this is so far removed. This is hearsay that your mum said you spoke to a ghost once. And you don't even remember the ghost. Mrs. But Battersby. No, yeah, you no, remember you the don't name remember her. because your mum reminded you of it. In a court of law, if there was a ghost court, they go hearsay, thrown out of court. <laughs> Right. You yeah. don't have a memory of Mrs. Battersby. No, look, I know that when I was a kid, yeah. I ate a beetle. <laughs> I ate a beetle because I thought it was licorice. Now, I can't remember that now. You can't remember that, but you you know it happened because your mother told you it happened. Exactly. Right. <laughs> but the fundamental thing is that we can believe... It's it's we can memories. believe... We can believe you ate a beetle, well, because that is something that could happen in real life. But what we're questioning is that you spoke to a ghost. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what sort of beetle was it? Just one of them standard beetles, just a <laughs> black shiny one. Thing is, right, a couple of years ago we were in the ivy and the food came and there's a big blob of wasabi, right? It was like a, a um, got a, a called an oriental hors d'oeuvre, right? And uh, I looked over at Carl and he started going, <gasps> drinking water. I said, what have you done? He said, I have that. I said, that was a blob of wasabi. He said, I thought it was one mushy pea. <laughs> 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 That's a classy restaurant, though. They're serving one mushy pea. Well, they do that, don't they? Wow. Small portions. It's all trendy, isn't it? Yeah. I love the fact that it's this, exactly the same thing. Yeah. They've swapped beetle for wasabi yeah. and licorice for pea. Uh, you see things, you see something. It's think, a good job you remember that anecdote, though, because he doesn't. <laughs> exactly, yeah. In years to come, we'll be going, it's some wasabi once. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Well, according to Ricky, I did, yeah. I was in the ivy. I thought, I thought it were mushy pea. Huh? <laughs> So hang on, I just want to go back to Mrs. Battersby because what you confidently the... said, you confidently said, uh, it was haunted, it was haunted, haunted place, yeah. but you've got no real evidence for it because even, even you claim you had this encounter, you don't even remember it. Yeah, but you don't remember everything in life, But you supposedly do you? had a conversation with a ghost. I know, yeah. but I didn't know. When I was younger, I but didn't you remember think that was a ghost. you remember the specifics of an oh, aunt walking so you, around? Yeah, so you thought, ah, oh, so I see, if you'd have had the memory, it would just be a nice old lady on the end of your bed all night. Right. And then... It, it, the, then when I mentioned it, my mum was saying, what do you mean, Mrs. Battersby. Who's Mrs. Battersby? Right. When you're a kid, you're not terrified, are you? No. Nothing scary. I mean, I'm, I'm beginning to think who the fuck is Mrs. Battersby, I must admit. But so, yeah, that was, uh, but it was a weird place. I mean, there was no telly. Right. Um, all they had for sort of company was a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> You wow. are the strangest little man that's, that's ever lived. Company, he had a company. Oh, no. There goes Carl with his friend. What's his friend? Oh, it's a, it's a little... It's a Sanyo 4197G. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. Oh, calculator, do that boobs thing again. Uh, my mum and dad used to go Memories. out. I stayed in there. Just shots of him with his calculator <laughs> on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> Sunday. Maybe beautiful and the end. Four air. plus 16, <laughs> what will it be? Why are you friends with a calculator? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh, Just oh, imagine oh, shots of him in Vietnam. He's carrying Tommy. Where the batteries? Where the batteries? Time to get on a funeral for him. <laughs> his his batteries are all over the floor. <laughs> oh fucking <laughs> hell! The only company was a calculator. Before I used to knock around with a brick. Oh, oh, God. oh fuck me! Carl. The human body is one of the things that you're actually genuinely fascinated in. This is one of the things that you admit is is quite amazing, and um, I think we all agree with that. Here's some uh, quite incredible um, stats and facts about the human body. What do you think of this? 50,000 of the cells in your body 
will die and be replaced with new cells all while you're listening to this sentence. Go on. Well, that's it. What's the sentence? That was the sentence. Uh, what was the sentence again? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. The sentence doesn't matter. 50,000 just dying and being replaced in that time. But what are they doing? Different cells do different things. Some are taste buds. Some carry haemoglobin and oxygen to other cells. Yeah. Some are skin. Some are liver. I've heard about skin. I've heard of that oh, skin, sort of. What? Yeah. What have you heard? Um, a rumour about skin. You heard of skin? What? It's just, it, it Keeps just... all your stuff from falling on the fucking floor? Well, what? it's it's a thing that makes you what you are as well, doesn't it? More what do you than, mean? More than anything. Why? Well, without the skin, you're just a skeleton. You look all the same. No, you're not just a skeleton, no. Other than your lungs and your heart and your kidneys and stuff. What well, I'm saying is... I, I know, and that, all the flesh yeah. on top and all I, the blood vessels and I all the... I went to that bodies exhibition. Yeah. yeah. This is it. He, he knows all about the human body and science because <laughs> he went to the bodies exhibition. Do you know where the German fella cuts bodies up? Yes. Now, he had a load of people on show. Could have all been the same family. <laughs> because everyone, without the skin on their head, looks the same. Other well, than height, yeah. everybody looks exactly the same. And that's why racism is so stupid. Well, it's a good point. Good point, isn't it? Yeah. That saying that, though, I did think most of them were Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> what made you draw that conclusion? Why? It's just the eyes. <laughs> I didn't have any eyelids! Honestly, if you've seen it, it, it looks there's something that... Uh, and they're a bit mad, aren't they? They do all that endurance stuff, and I thought, this is the ultimate way to that's go, isn't it? I think that's, that's the Japanese, Japanese isn't yeah. Isn't it? Completely it? Yeah, completely different um, race, culture, country, nation. Right. Well, mm. well, the Japanese, then. I reckon they've donated their body to it. You started off saying you cannot tell anything about where they come from because they haven't got any skin. It was just the eyes. <laughs> um, it didn't didn't occur to you. Or I mean, was there not any information saying where the bodies were sourced for, from? They don't tell you. They just tell you that if you want to be part of an exhibition later in your life, mm. put your name down. And what did you learn about the body from this exhibition? Well, I told you. Um, you know, we we all look similar. At the end of the day, your skin is what makes people... Look different. Yeah, that's, that's the bit that makes you look like you, doesn't it? Yeah. That's the bit that you can tell how old somebody is. Yeah, that's, that. what, that's what you recognise. You don't recognise what... someone's skeleton and their brain. Unless it's the elephant man. But then again, <laughs> with the skin on, I couldn't tell you how old he was. There's something about his head and everything that he's just he's ageless. He could buy a packet of fags and be underage. He could get on a bus and say he's an OAP. I have not got a clue how old the elephant man was. There's no distinguishing things for his age, is no. there? But with most people, it's it's the skin that does it. Strip all that away, and they were all stood upright as well. They were all they weren't sort of unched. Right, unched. They'd been straightened up. Not unched then. Um, is that the German bloke unched? But what did I learn? That's what you're asking me. Yeah, well, could, you I, could, I, could I answer that? Sure. Fuck all right. <laughs> oh, there we are. <laughs> the skin, of course, you are right in saying, is an extraordinary thing. I mean, it, it is un almost unlike any man-made item. It's one of the most waterproof things, obviously, one of the most durable, one of the most, uh, one of the strongest and yet stretchiest. I mean, yeah. it is a remarkable achievement. Yeah. Yeah. One um, square inch of skin, right? Has four yards of nerve fibres. In what? In one inch? In one inch, square inch of skin. It's got uh, thirteen hundred nerve cells and a hundred sweat glands in a in a square inch of skin, and three million cells, right? And three yards of blood vessels. Tiny, those tiny little things, and they make up three yards worth. But I understand you need the blood bit, but the nerves I'd shorten the nerves. What do you mean? I wouldn't have as many nerves. I think uh, if I could change it. Well, it depends because there are different amounts per square inch. You've got less on the back of your hand than on the finger tips, obviously. And uh, I think um, I think the most nerve endings are in the your spine. Tip of the penis. Well, that's probably going to be quite sensitive. Unnecessary, isn't it? In that, in that. Um, uh, unnecessary. It is really. Why is it unnecessary? Because I'd say what you want. I think you need them in your fingers because you're picking up hot stuff. Sure. I've never put my knob somewhere that I thought I didn't feel that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a quote. <laughs> There's a quote. <laughs> if you're sticking it somewhere bad, well, you shouldn't be, so it's your own fault, isn't it, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think it's just 
for your penis to be able to identify hot stuff. No. I think it's for other reasons why is it's it, super sensitive. It's, it's not, is that hob hot enough for your suit? <laughs> well, well, hang on, let well, me I've just check. Well, no, I've got a thermometer here. <laughs> we don't need a thermometer. Well, no, 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 no. The thermometer's not accurate. Well, it is. It's a, it's a mercury thermometer. And it, you know. Well, it, mm, you need some, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want a reading. I want a feeling. <laughs> no. No, you don't need it in that bit. Well, the penis is sensitive, I assume. Because of the sexual stimulation? Yes, because you? you need to... Yeah, you don't need the nerves for that. Well, you do, yeah, because you need... Well, something needs to stimulate it for it to know, to send a thing to your brain, and you go, all right, we're, we're mating here, we need, to, we need to get half our genetic material to that egg. I lost him, didn't I? Yeah. When did I lose him, though? When you tried to explain how babies are born. <laughs> Every human being spent about half an hour as a single cell. I heard about that. <laughs> what do you mean, you've heard about that? The I remember reading it. I, I read it. I think I went to the science museum and right. it was on the wall. And I just thought, oh, I would have hated that. What, being a single cell? For half an hour. But then when was there ever a chance of a single cell knowing anything? Yeah, if you look at it like that, it's not a problem, yeah. It never was a problem. Why are they telling us then? <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> this is a guide to. We're trying to educate. I mean, we, you know, we're, we, this, this is for people to, you know, it, it's just an interesting discussion, isn't it? So there are gonna, we are going to come up with some facts. There are going to be some things that um, we don't know the answer to. There's going to be many things you don't know the answer to. Sometimes you're right. Sometimes you're wrong. Sometimes we learn something. Sometimes we don't. It's just adding to the debate, really. I just thought it was quite an interesting fact. What do fact. you think when you read that? Um, what goes on in your head? Uh, uh, I think it's incredible that that's how it starts. That you One cell, there that to then it divides and divides a, again. A cognizant being. Yeah. That every cell knows what it's got to do. It's remarkable. It's remarkable. DNA. Stunning. Yeah, I'm surprised there's not weird, more weird stuff knocking around. I've always said that. But what's weird? Just something that isn't, doesn't look like the rest of us. Nothing looks like the rest of us. There's nothing, what's no, weird other than- wise I mean, how many people are in the world? Six billion. Six billion. Six billion people. Yeah, you don't walk down the street and I'd expect every fifth person to be like, what is that? Look at his head. He's got mm. three legs. Why? Why is the arm on the back of his head? Why isn't things? there more defects in it? Well, there has been. Don't Not forget. that many. Do you know, like, that Total Recall? Yeah. Like that? <laughs> Where everyone's a little bit weirder. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, there's only so much you can do. I mean, even in that film, there was a woman with three tits. There's only, there's, you know, I'm not talking about having like a, a shoe for a head. I'm just talking about he's the like weirdness. A he's amazing, isn't he? I just he'd like to see more. He'd like to see more three-titted women. Is what you're saying? Yeah, one. We'd all I like mean, to it see doesn't matter. Mix it up. At least then it's a bit more of a surprise. What so, you're going to get? One giant boob. <laughs> and it's a shame because it does make the world more interesting. But what's more interesting than the world, you than see, the you're natural endlessly diversity? Bored. You're endlessly bored by the world as it is. We're amazed. We sit here amazed by these facts, by thinking about the cosmos. You're endlessly bored it's by it. Always oh, looking for something new and weird and, and alien. Do you know, they, they've mm. estimated that there might be about five million species of animal, right? Mm. But they think there might be another 20 million all insects. So they've, they've stuck it about one, but they wouldn't be surprised if there's another 20 million species of insect. I wouldn't. All right, okay. Well, thanks very much. No, because you start off with the big stuff, don't you? If someone comes along, I mean, I'm still surprised when they say things like, we found a new duck, and I think, well, that's <laughs> not hard to find. If you're talking about bacteria, I'd go, well done, where did you find it? No, that's the other way around. A new elephant? Wow, really? No. Where was that idea? No, I'd be annoyed that someone's someone's not found it. If it's the, it's <laughs> not my job to find new stuff. Right. So it's not my problem. Right. But if someone's on the payroll, right, and they're out there trying to find new species, there's and they no, go, there's no we one found the a new llama. I'd go, right. well, where's it? Where, 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 why have you missed this? <laughs> right. <laughs> annoyed. Yeah. Not why wow, there's a new llama. <laughs> no, but it's it's harder to find Attenborough. 
he's been out doing his job for years, hasn't he? Yeah. He was excited that he found a small frog. He yeah. found a frog, he stuck it on his finger. He said, I've been looking for that for ages. <laughs> <laughs> And you could see Did he, he was, check under the microwave, down the back of the couch. He was delighted. Yes. He was chuffed. That was chuffed for him. He'd been yeah. looking for it for ages. <laughs> right. Now, the thing is, respect due to him there. Mm. His eyes aren't as good as they used to be. Right. He found a small He's frog. He's been looking for it. He kept looking. I'd have given up if I was him. <laughs> but he kept looking. He found it. There it was, a little frog on the end of his finger. Right. It wasn't on his finger all along, was it? <laughs> I've got more respect for him finding that, yeah. something so small, than someone else whose job it is to also be rooting around for new stuff, coming round the corner with an elephant, saying, look what I've got. I've been looking for this. Yeah, but that's not. I've been looking hard enough. Then no one's looking for an elephant and has failed to find it. They don't you're know what they're looking for. These people yeah. who are on the payroll yeah. looking for elephants. By and definition, failed to find them. they're not looking for new species because they don't know they exist. It's a surprise. No one goes out and goes, "What are you looking for today?" I don't know. Say letter D. Duck then. Let's look for a new duck. Where are you going to look? Pond. <laughs> All right. I know, but sometimes it's the slightest thing. I mean, we've done yes, a lot of insects. Yes, it is, But yeah. they go, I've found a spider with, like, a, an orange leg or a, a fish that swims upside down. <laughs> it's like, put it the right way up. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not worth... It's not worth noting. <laughs> I'd say what's... It's got to be a dramatic difference. <laughs> right. Uh, Right, you're such dramatic. a bag of contradictions. You'd be annoyed with someone who found a new elephant. You'd think that was a sizable uh, discovery, but no, that would piss you off because they should have found it before. They find a fish just swimming around upside down, put it up the right way. How, right, how different does the elephant need to be? It comes around the corner, you go, that's just like another elephant. How does it have to be different, right? How, what, what to you has to be different? To the point that I don't know it's an elephant. Well, that then, I go, like, like our hippos related what to would a it whale. like then? Uh, well, we're all related. All we're all related. No, we're not. We're not. Though, yes, we are. That's a daft yeah. thing to say. That. No, we are all related. No, all it's related. just a matter of degrees. Um, you understand what it means to be related to your brother, don't you? Yeah. So you understand what it means to be related to um, uh, your cousin. Yeah, it starts getting a little bit. Really, already at cousin. Already yeah, at there's, cousin. There's cousins, I don't it... talk to. I haven't seen cousins. Right. Well, we ne well, So well, let's forget chimp then. <sighs> My dad said uh, over Christmas that uh, who do you think you are was on. He said, "Oh, why don't you do that?" I said, "Because it's it's looking up dead people. There's cousins who I don't even talk to." Yeah, true. I've, I've, I've no idea. It annoys me when they cry about their great great grandmother. They didn't even know. Were like, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> didn't even know them. <laughs> don't even know them. And all it's going to do is dig up problems, isn't it? You're yeah. going to find someone out who did something wrong, and you're going to get the blame for it. I don't want to know. If my cousin was Einstein, very nice. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that's going to add extra pressure. If your cousin was Einstein, then you really are an underachiever. <laughs> no, but do you know what? If he was, I'd know about it. I don't reckon you would know about it. I, reckon I don't I reckon your family would be that impressed with Einstein. They would have stayed in touch, He was they? always the weird one with the scruffy hair and his tongue out. Yeah. Nah. No, I reckon uh, the stuff we know is enough now, and all we tend to do mm. is uh, find problems. All the mysteries still in the world. What the mind-body problem. What mm. a prick. Mm. How to save the world. Yeah, but we're not, are we? We know it's dying. We don't know how to fix it. Not yet, we don't. Turn your lights off. But then we didn't... You turn yours off. <laughs> Just get sick of it. Leaflets through the door all the time. Turn your eating off. Turn the lights off. Living like a mole. <laughs> I love his little internal dialogues out loud. They're fantastic. Mm. The little discussions he has with himself. Oh, I, I can't wait till he's old. That's going to be amazing, us three. When we're about 75, 80, he's, he's fucking moaning. Oh, we're in a, we're in a little home together. I <laughs> just fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! Oh, Carl, do you remember when you were 73? No, do I fuck? <laughs> Tell us the tic tac I need to do again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a fucking useless bunch of cunts! <laughs> <laughs> well that's about it for the Ricky Gervais Guide to the Human Body. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learnt something. Um, I know Carl didn't. <laughs> Um, next one, the final one in this series, is the Ricky Gervais Guide to the Earth. Carl, are we going to do any more guides, or...? I think this, that we've covered the main stuff you need to know. Yeah. It was good doing the guides, though. I like I, 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 I like the attempt of, um, learning. 
I remember our early ambition was to actually be educational as well as hopefully entertaining, and, and I feel perhaps at times we've perhaps slightly shortchanged listeners in terms of what they're learning. Well, they're not learning anything because also, um, even as, uh, you know, compared to Carl, we, we are educated, mm. but we're guessing a lot of the stuff, and he flummoxes us, for, you know, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it was fun trying to be pompous and professorial enough just to just to fight Carl's ignorance. I think we've learnt more new words from Carl than we've learnt anything else. Yeah. There's yeah. been a lot of the made-up words, and perhaps more than ever before. Mm. And also so some of the most abstract um, conversations I think we've ever had. I mean, Carl's... As he gets older, it becomes more and more he, um, arrogant and confident. He said a new one to me the other day. Um, there was a problem downloading uh, one of the guides on iTunes, and uh, he said... Um, they've added to the fuckerage <laughs> <laughs> which is good yeah so till the next time it's goodbye for me Ricky Gervais Stephen Merchant goodbye and Carl Pilkington bye right. This audio program is presented by Audible.com. Audible. Audio that speaks to you wherever you are. Testing. Testing. <coughs> this is almost the environment more than It is the really, earth, isn't it? it? Yeah. Have we already publicized it as the Earth? Uh, well, yeah, but it doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, but that's fine. The Earth. Why is it we called the Earth? Well, no, we talked about... What? I said... What do you mean, why is it called the Earth? You mean, why is the Earth called the Earth? It's Where's just Mars something I never Mars? say. I never say Earth. I always say world. Well, it depends. It's not called the world, is it? Because a world is it's relative. Mars is a world. It's it's the world because it's our world. But there are many worlds, aren't there? Yeah, you, know, you could say the world of something. You couldn't say the Earth of something. The Earth is the name of the planet. But when do we need that? What? When do we need to say the Earth? When we're referring to the Earth. When does that ever happen? Well, for instance, <laughs> right now, when we're talking about the Earth, being that this is the name if of I, this, if it's I, if I was to distinguish it from other planets. If I was in, I know, but when's that ever going to be a problem for me? What? Well, it's not. What? Well, it's not all about you. If I was in a rocket, yeah. Right here we go. I'm sat at the front. <laughs> sat at the front. He's front. got a good seat. Yeah. The pilot goes, Carl, come up here, mate. <laughs> and I look in the mirror and I see mirror, a, mirror in the rocket, mirror. Check, reverse, <laughs> indicate, uh, brilliant. And I see the world, I'd say, look, oh, doesn't the world look magnificent? You go, what do you mean? Yeah. Then? Yeah, that's how I'd say it. I wouldn't say Earth. I wouldn't dream of using the word Earth. But then you're in a di you're, you could say, well, this is our world now for the next year. This is our world, this spaceship. I'm saying, no, not really. It I'll is, always be mate. looking back <laughs> over there. I'm looking at, there's our world, there's, our, there's England there. Not anymore, mate. We're moving to Mars. We're going to start a whole new world. Oh, which world are you talking about, Carl? Let's call it the Earth and Mars, like we always have, you dopey gun. That's the name of this planet but we're on. that's what I'm saying, though. It's, it's not our problem. We're never going to leave it. So it's our world. So leave it as world. It's a bit of information. You don't write so-and-so road, London, England, Earth. You don't need it. <laughs> what other words are you annoyed by? Other words are out there you're thinking, why is that there? Because we do not need it. It's one of them where I come across something. They're not always in my head. It's just... I'm trying to think of something that I've seen recently. That's a word. I'll say I some mean, words, Carl. You tell me whether you like them or not. OK? Yeah? Um, root. What sort of root are we talking about? Good question. Uh, what about um, uh, uh, a pre-planned journey? No, I don't need it. You just go, which way are you going? I thought you meant beetroot. <laughs> That's all right. What you like? You don't mind beetroot? Depends what I'm having. <laughs> 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 he doesn't mean the food. He means you don't mind the word existing. <laughs> this is because you have such a limited vocabulary that it annoys you and intimidates you that people are using words, pr correct words, the correct English language. Probably. Are you happy with chair? Should we keep chair? It's, it works. It's fine. Are you happy with the chair you sit on, or the chair who's in charge of like a forum or a meeting? What would we call a bloke who's in charge of a meeting? Chief. Chief. Okay. <laughs> what about um, bloke who's in charge uh, 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 of, of a group Native of Americans? Native Americans. I don't know any. 
Again, <laughs> not going to affect my life. No, but what would you call him? He's a bloke that's charged there. All the Indian... All, all the, Seriously, all the, not, not a problem yes, for but me. It's a problem for someone. So yeah. you've got to have Who's a word for head it. Chief? Head chief. <laughs> oh, so he's... Um, that means he's the bloke in charge of people who are in charge of meetings. <laughs> That's no, confused. Got, I'm confused. Right? Yeah, I don't know who you're I'm confused. About, actually, I'm confused here. I mean, some words I know you're not happy with. There are certain numbers you're not keen on. What about number seven? You, would you get rid of that? I've heard about that tribe where the where it is just like they have three. They say that's all they need in their life. One, two, three. Really? Yeah, give us three of them, and then actually it gives them another two with them three. It's all like just <laughs> easy. <laughs> no, I love the fact that they're still saying they're talking like that. <laughs> still don't the market. Yeah. Uh, we should have a word for this three and this two. <laughs> nah, fuck it. I, I very rarely want three then two. <laughs> Keep it three then two. How many do you need now? Uh, just one and another one. We'll say two. Oh yeah, I could say two, yeah. Uh, do you want one more? If I wanted three, I'd say three. Do you want one more? Yeah, go on, give us three and one. <laughs> As the writer and pioneering ecologist Rachel Carson once wrote, those who dwell among the beauties and mysteries of the earth are never alone or weary of life. Earth, third rock from the sun, and the only known planet in the universe to accommodate life was formed about five billion years ago. Extensively covered by salt water oceans, it supports a myriad of organisms, the most evolved of which is man. Yet how we humans interact with our world could be sowing the seeds of our own destruction. With environmental concerns still high on the political agenda, what is the future of life on Earth? How are we coping with the threat of global warming and is our newfound ecological concern too little too late? To discuss the past, present and future of the Earth, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, award-winning writer and graduate of the University of Warwick. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. Oh, look at his round head, the can! All right. I've been hit by global warming recently, Rick, a couple of times, actually. Go on. I don't want to be one of those people that's like, oh, you know, because of the snow and the rain, and that's obviously to do with global warming, but it probably is. Uh, I was flying out to the States, you know, just hopping over stateside. Yeah. And um, on the old plane, uh, it was one of those bleak, kind of snowy days recently, and they got us all on the plane. We sat on the runway for four and a half hours, right. four and a half hours, while they de-iced the plane. Now, it's good that they de-iced it, but I don't want to be told that the plane needs de-icing. I didn't know planes could get iced in a way that they needed to be de-iced. When I, sometimes, Rick, if I, if it's a chilly morning, right, got the old car, what I'll do is I'll pop the engine on, yeah. okay, let it warm up, yeah. pop inside, have another cup of tea, come back yeah. out, it's lovely and warm and toasty in there. That's yeah. what I'd like to have seen them do with the old the plane. Pilot. Yeah. The pilot goes, don't you get on yet, let me, let <laughs> exactly, me wait let around me warm the block. Up. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. But also... When it's up at 30,000 feet, it's like minus 50, 60 it. degrees. This must get iced up anyway. So There's not some guy on the wing scraping with all those little plastic <laughs> things. Yeah, you we, don't see him, if oh, you've got a window seat. We've got to put in here. <laughs> we've got to put in here for a while. It's iced up. Yeah, I, I mean, that's it. But also, I didn't see anyone de-icing, so I don't know how they do it. It's not presumably with, you know, um, like I sometimes use a CD case if I haven't got one of those scrapers. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I, mean, I don't know yeah. if there was people with, uh, you know, probably with a vinyl record scraping away. But, um, yeah, four and a half hours to de-ice it. Bunch of people on there whinging and phoning and calling and making and making me annoyed anyway. Get to uh, Los Angeles, City of Angels. Famously, you know, glorious weather all year round. That's why people move there. Yeah. Pissed down with rain the entire time I was there. I know, you hit the storm. I, I, I think I moved out of L.A. and went to New York the day before it turned horrible, didn't I? The problem was, I hired a car, mm. right? And I was going to get a relatively cheap uh, car. They persuaded me to upgrade to a Mercedes convertible. I thought, yeah, I'll look good fl driving around LA, yeah. you know, and that. Couldn't use the uh, the top down, obviously. Every day I'd get in this car, every day it would be pouring with rain. I could hear it splattering on the uh, fabric roof, thinking, I just paid for the odds for this. And, you know, every time there'd be a break in this cloud, I would instantly stop <laughs> and lower this thing and drive around sub zero temperatures just to have the top down. I would like to have Even seen though it's still you, cloudy and grim. Like, uh, you know, uh, 85 degrees, just whizzing down the freeway at 90 miles an hour, yeah. but your glasses would fly off. They would, it? this is the problem. That's what I've never really thought. Plus, I, um, <laughs> I lost my sunglasses, so um, I have to wear a hat. 
in order to keep the sun out of my eyes. And um, all, I, all I had, all I thought I need to take out of me, all I had was a kind of, what I like to think is a rather fashionable Justin Timberlake style trilby. Oh, it's not that but hat that makes you look like one of Bill and Ben. See, I think men. it makes me look like a, uh, like Tom Waits or a sort of 1960s news reporter. Oh, right. But you've, <laughs> I thought Bill and Ben. Yeah, you thought I thought Bill and Ben the flower pot, man. The problem with it is, is when I bought it, I, again, I was suckered into it. A bloke sold it to me, told me. He was a street vendor and he told me I looked amazing in it. <laughs> I'll be honest. I honestly gave him the cash did straight you, away. Did you have a game of find the lady I, with him as well? I'm beginning to wonder if I was part of his sales pattern, <laughs> and he wasn't just a lovely fellow who's trying to help me out. But yeah, it's not quite big enough, so instead of sort of pulling in tight down by the ears, it sort right. of sits pork pie esque on top of my head. Right. And it is in danger of flying off. It did fly off into the back seat when I was driving. Luckily, I I could stop and pop it back on again. But, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. It, it didn't fly off, and, uh, and you know, it, you don't want that as you're cruising past a couple of sort of Playboy bunny types in an open top. Cadillac, and you're just grinning to them, and your hat flies off. Or, it, or it hits um, a big Al's angel on a chopper behind <laughs> you course, in the yeah. face. He's yeah, he's he scratches his bike. You stop, and you yeah. go, "It's my hat." Yeah, and he goes, "Is it?" <laughs> exactly. What annoyed me was uh, we went. I was with my mates, and we were driving around, and we had a bunch of friends, and uh, they said, "Oh, can you pick up a couple of friends of ours?" And we picked them up, a couple of girls. I thought, "Oh, ding dong, here we are, good-looking girls." They got in the car. Instantly, we were going. There's not much leg room. I was thinking, for God's sake, it's a bloody Mercedes! <laughs> couldn't it, I, I couldn't even impress them with it. It's costing me th fortune. <laughs> I feel like going, this is a lovely bit of motor, but no, wind should stay, I never met before. First thing we oh. say. Let's accept, right, that at some point, about 13, 14 billion years ago, there was nothing. There was no space for the nothing to be in. There was no darkness, no light, no, no, nothing. Okay, literally nothing. Except what is nearly a point in space that contained everything in the known universe, okay? Suddenly, that exploded. And in a matter of minutes, the universe was pretty much as it is now. And in all the debris, in all the dust, things started to cling together, one of which was the Earth. Can I have Carl pick up the story from there? Yeah! So, there we are. We've got the Earth. We've got this big... What happened next? ...planet. Um, probably nothing for quite a bit. OK. Yeah. Just sort of floated about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it wasn't causing a problem because it wasn't annoying anyone. No. You see, we don't get a chance of that these days. No. You pop something down, someone says, move that. <laughs> Dangerous, what is it? Yeah. Back then, nothing. So it's hanging around, and... If you leave something somewhere, something will sit on it. Right. <laughs> OK, if you leave something somewhere, something will sit on it, yeah? Well, say, like, a, a, a bin bag. I can put a bin bag outside. Bin men don't come until Friday. Sure. Mm. But I want to get... I don't want it in the house. Sure, it's got yeah. chicken in it. Yep. I pop it, I pop <laughs> it outside, right? Um, it's sat there for a few days now. Just time, time like, you know, a, a day before the bin men are coming, yep. I pick that up and take it round the front. Right. It's got a slug living under it. Uh-huh. Right. Like one of those little wood lice things. Yeah. Might yeah. be there. Yeah. Uh, snail. Yep. Um, yeah. What's, the, what's your point? Your We've point got a young Earth. It's four and a half billion years ago. Yeah. It's whizzing round the sun. Something's going to sit on it. Yeah, something something had to sort of happen, didn't it? I'll tell you what it's like. Go on. In the same way, um, penicillin. Go on. Happened. Go on. It was the bread was sat there. It goes mm. off. Mm. Air would have uh, created the greenness. <laughs> oh God! This sounds like the Bible. <laughs> that is that is like the Bible. Air created the greenness. <laughs> That's amazing. Carry on, carry on, because I want to. I'm, I'm, in, I'm learning here. Uh, I'm learning. And once you've got something, that yeah. leads to otherness. <laughs> this is like this is like a monk that so sat down. Oh, We're all sat cross-legged listening to the yeah, wise old man. I know. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna write uh, a thing of how everything was created. But hang on, carry really? on, because I'm interested. Yeah. Well, so well, where are we? So, so we've got. So we've got. We had greenness, and now we've got. So something. the air created the greenness, and then what is it? Then we have 
what was just it? otherness Other, from the otherness. greenness. Right. Because right. once you've got once from you've other, got from greenness comes otherness. Once you've got one thing, others come. Yes. <laughs> yeah, created the greenness. <laughs> then you got otherness. If you create something, others will come. <laughs> <laughs> Build it, and they will but come. But it's, sort of, it's sort of right. In the, it's, yeah, no, 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 no
if it wasn't for people interfering, coming up with tablets, uh, m making weak people live longer. Right. So you're annoyed at that. You're annoyed. I know, he's such a fascist, isn't he? And yeah. you're a weak person who has been allowed yeah. to live. No, Eugenics but is where you, you'd be up here. Do you recycle and not leave the tap running and turn off lights because you're worried about a child born in a in, in hundred years time? No. No. No, because I don't think, um, at the end of the day, we have to face facts here. Go on. The world is, is it, old. Hold on. All right, okay. The yeah, world's old. old. Really old. And it's the same as, if you've got a gran mm. who's 70, yeah. um, there's not much you can do for her. <laughs> you can, yeah, you can say you're warm, mm. but at the end of the day she's still going to be shitting her pants. <laughs> She's still going to be, you know, forgetting things mm, right. and all the rest of it. And you might be taking care of her, but at the end of the day, the good days are gone. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, in a way, like the world, it's got to a point that it's old. And, yeah, we can say turn the tap off, turn the lights off, mm. uh, close the windows, stop letting heat out. Uh, the earth, in metaphorically, is shitting its pants. You've only got to look at what's happening, right? Mm. It's freezing, isn't it, at the moment, out mm. there? Yeah. Ice everywhere. Mm. snow everywhere mm. now an old person what happens to them they're always cold mm. it's like the earth isn't it Brilliant. the earth now is freezing yeah it yeah. feels it yeah. feels the cold it's more winter than ever as well it's also because it's winter yeah. But yeah. <laughs> and i think if you try and make it better now you end up doing more damage does it, well, does it make any sense at all well just you can sometimes sometimes it's too late to make something better. Like, I've had old relations who smoke like 50 a day. Mm. Doctor said, you've got to stop smoking. Stop smoking. Two weeks later, they're dead. <laughs> Shouldn't have stopped them smoking. Yeah, they're smoking inside. Good good advice. Advice. Well, they're, 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 they're inside. They're used to all that pollution. Yeah. Set the pollution away. What will the world what? do? You go. Good. That is a good point. Interesting. This is scientifically grounded, is it? You've done a lot of the research, read a lot of the information about this. Or is it just a wild harebrained speculation again, backed up with nothing? Is it bullshit? <laughs> Which of those two is it? I just, like I said to you, I just think it's a, it's a theory. That's what it is. Mm. Um, yeah. It, you can, you're not telling me it's a coincidence that about three of my old relations have died because the doctor said stop smoking. Well, it might be because they're very old and... Well, yeah, they, they were old, but it's weird how, they, you know, why stop them smoking? They're old. Sure. Let them have a fag. Jesus. You know, they've got nothing else in their life. You've took that away, they die. Let them have a fag. And it's the same with this world. Uh, it's polluted now. Um, I mean, there's rubbish everywhere. Isn't they? You're just meeting the streets and stuff? Just, yeah. You know, different levels of... Uh, I've noticed how rubbish changes depending where you live. Just like when I lived in the centre of town, it was rank. It was like human human sort of poo. Oh, what? Yeah, honestly, where? down at down alleys and that. What, tramps, you mean? It must be. I don't know, I didn't sort of or hang around see who's doing it. It's just, <laughs> um, but, but very human. It wasn't dog-like. <laughs> How do you know it's human? Just, just the way it looked. What, um, used, what do you mean? Well, you'd walk past it and you'd go, that's, look at that there, Suzanne. Yeah. So look at that, oh, that look looks that. human. Oh, yeah. And what does Suzanne say? Yeah, can we walk somewhere else from now on? This isn't... Yeah. <laughs> why, are we, why, why are you walking up and down this same alley? Well, I just, 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 I want to show you the human poo. <laughs> it's, it's a cut-through. Well, you having a shit yourself? <laughs> it's a cut-through that we used to always use, and it's, it, no, most of the time it was just like smell a wee, really yeah. strong wee, yeah. and you'd see if you could hold your breath for the full thing. Um, but <laughs> a little bit of fun, a little bit of romantic <laughs> fun yeah, after yeah. a night nice yeah, in a restaurant. I remember when he took her for a walk around the car park. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... But yeah, but now I've moved to like, you know, a posh bit of London. You still get litter, but it's, it's I saw like a rice cake. That's all <laughs> chopped on the floor. Yeah. That's like, you it's know. It's just hummus tubs and... Yeah. yeah. But it's still rubbish, isn't it? Yeah. It's still yeah. rubbish. Who left this crouton maker lying around? <laughs> so, um, don't you see what I'm saying though? The way the world, we've, we've changed more than the world has. We can't handle anything now, can we? Look at it, like I say, a bit of snow, a bit of cold, everything comes to a standstill. Yeah. Oh, I can't go out, it's dangerous, you'll slip over, people having time off work. Yeah. What would you do, right, if you run a business, right, your business could go under, right, it snows a bit, you've got ten employees, you're paying them well, and they go, I can't come in today, Carl, a bit icy. I'll do, I'll do it, okay? Right, they're snowed in, right, you're running the business, what are you running? It's a, uh, let's not, don't, you know, I'm not going to big myself up, it's just a, no, it's a factory, it, it, it's, it's U-Benz, I make, no, U-Benz. 
the yeah. bends for you toilet. Know, so yeah. you run a okay, right? Okay, it's a plumbing, so plumbing. You, you, you pay them all right, don't you? I'd say most of them are on above average. So you're there. What time do you get in? About quarter to nine. Quarter to nine, waiting for them to come in at nine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's snowing. It's a bit snow snowy. You got there. It took you a bit. What? You'd set off early, did you? Or gave myself a bit more time because I had to put the heating on the car. Okay. Ring, 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 ring. Hello, uh, uh, KP Plumbing. Oh, uh, is that is that Miss Pilkerton? Yeah, it is. Yeah, who's that? Oh, uh, it's uh, it's Sheila. Um, listen, Sheila, shouldn't you be here by now? <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I was going to set off. Well, don't, but we'll set off now. Stop wasting time. We've got a big order on. No, I know. We're all on a bonus here if we get this done. I'll see you in uh, ten minutes, shall I? I can't make it. What? I can't make it. Why not? The car won't start and it's slippy on the drive. I just can't get out. Get the transport. I'll see you in... I'll give you twenty minutes, all right? Don't no, worry about it. Well, Thanks for calling. I I'll see you in a bit. I'm also scared of the ice. I'm scared of the ice. I'm gonna... I'm, I'm not gonna... Uh, I'm not gonna come in today. It's dangerous. So what are you gonna do? Well, I'm just... I'm gonna wait until the ice and snow goes away and then but I'm gonna they, come But they're predicting it's gonna be about two weeks before yeah, they clear I'm this. Yeah, I can't really travel in this. It's oh, a bit dangerous. Well, I'll tell you what. You stay at home. I'll, uh, I'll replace you because I need someone to come in. Why are you firing me? Because I can't get into work with this. This. Well, I, I got into work, Sheila. Yeah, I know, but I mean, you don't live with me, do you? If you did live with me, then no, you'd probably it see. Bad, how... It was bad where I was as well. Yeah, oh, I'm you, here. Do you know how bad it is here? When you come round and have a look how bad I'm, it is here, no, you drive I'm my. Not tell you what, you come round and drive my fucking car because I'm snowed in. You fucking calling me a cunt? And I'll tell you, if you fire me, I'll take you to drive you, you bald headed wanker. Right, you're fired anyway for for that. You're in fucking trouble then. Mm, right then, see ya. Right, and right. then she's she's done with. She's weak anyway. Ring, ring. KP Plumbing. Hiya, uh, is that, uh, Miss Pilkerton? Yeah, it is, yeah. Hi, it's Bobby. Oh, um, Bob. Yeah, um, bit of trouble, um, uh, in uh, my area, it's absolutely snowed and it's possible. No one's getting out. I live near Sheila, Bob, by the listen, way. yeah, well, yeah. Sheila's just been on. She's saying she right. can't get in either. She can't. I've just seen her out there trying to dig her car out and she's hurt her back. She's really, really tried hard to get to work, but she can't do it because she's, she's not very rich and her car doesn't work. She hasn't got the right tyres. And there's no public transport. They've cancelled those. Wrong snow in uh, this country. I'm not going to make it in today, son. So, um, I'll see you tomorrow, right, boy? Well, no, you're saying you'll see me mm. tomorrow. Yeah. But but you'll probably call up tomorrow with the same thing. Well, only now, if it's snowing still. No, listen, it might not happen. Well, I can't, I can't run a business like this, Bob. Yeah, it's not my fault, is it, really? So go round to Sheila's and, and like, slag me off if you want. But I'll tell you I'm what, you're not coming just... back here. Oh. Fuck off. <laughs> one chance. <laughs> give them one chance. Oh. Well, you didn't even give them one chance. No, because they've done it before. <laughs> Just annoys me. Do you recycle? Um, I give a lot of stuff to Oxfam. Well, yeah, that's the sort of recycling. Yeah, hand me downs and passing uh, passing on things. Well, it's probably it's a, probably a better form of recycling, isn't it? You're not destroying anything and remaking it. You're just letting someone else wear a jumper that you don't wear anymore. So yeah. that's yeah. Don't really do all that. I don't separate stuff. I don't sort of put there's the cans, there's there's the paper. You don't do that. You just throw it away, do you? Because yeah. oh, that, that's, that's not recycling. That annoys they can't me. Do with that. that annoys me when you're just putting it in landfill, mate. Come on. Yeah. But I haven't got all the bins. There that. isn't enough room for all the bins. Yeah, we have to do. You've got yeah, a recycle box. You stick outside. Yeah. What are you on about? Recycle box. Yeah. I haven't got one. Well, no, you got uh, you got to ask for one. I tried to get rid of a um, a sofa. Right. I was getting a new sofa. Add the old one. You try and get rid of one of them. It's murder. Right. I called up the council, said I want to get rid of it. They said, we're not coming round there till Friday. It was like a Monday. I said, it's in the way. So I put it outside. They said, you put it outside, you'll get a fine. I said, yeah, but you don't know where I'm going to put it outside. <laughs> yeah. It's not outside my house. Yeah. So they said, well, you do that, we've got your number What's the now. sofa like? It's a beige <laughs> one. Well, if we see that. Right. So, um, they said, if you if you want to pay to have it collected, we can come and get it tomorrow, 30 quid. I said, I'm not paying for it. It's madness. Yeah. So, hung up, annoyed, called my dad up. He said, oh, I saw this thing on the telly saying that you can donate your furniture to people who haven't got a sofa. Look it up on the internet. So I looked it up. There's a firm that does it. Right. Uh, right, cheeky sods. Called them up. Said, I've got this sofa here. I want to donate it to someone who hasn't got a sofa. They said, uh, oh, what's it like? Is it in good condition? Yeah, it's all right, yeah. Well, why are you getting rid of it? <laughs> <laughs> I said, because uh, we've moved into a bit of a bigger place and the sofa looks daft in the corner. It's, it's too small, so I'm getting a bigger one. There's no wrong with it. How big is it? How many people does it sit? So it depends how big you are. <laughs> you can sit two people on it, but it's not the comfiest. But it's, it's in good condition. It's none of your nonsense like stuff. It was expensive right. when I bought it. He said, right. He said, uh, is it safe? I said, what do you mean? He said, is it fag proof? So I said, I don't smoke. 
He said, well, go and get the, um, lift the thing up. He's got me running around looking at my sofa <laughs> and I, I, I'm giving it away. I had to lift it up, it had a picture of a fag on it. I said, yeah, it's got a picture of a fag on it. And, uh, could, I, could I just um, point out for our, our American <laughs> listeners, uh, fag is a slang for cigarette. When he says, is it fag proof, he's not going to open the cushion and someone's go, you, it's me! <laughs> So I should explain that straight away. <laughs> so anyway, it turned out it was fag proof. They came and picked it up, took it away. Uh, that was that. <laughs> but look at the hassle. Look at the hassle it takes to get rid of something. And then they say to you, do not be dumping stuff on the street. <laughs> you know, it's, it's that thing of having to wait for certain days of the week and you can't always keep hold of something mm. till a certain day of the week because it's big. A mattress is a, it's one of them things you can't get sort of rid of. Or you can't stick it somewhere because no. it's in the way. It's a big clumpy bit of furniture, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's not a bit of furniture, really, a mattress, <laughs> but I know what you mean. Well, it's <laughs> a, n a new sideboard. Yeah, don't, don't, don't lean on it. It's a bit, it's a bit spongy. What do you keep in it? We can't keep anything in it. It's just full of springs and stuff. <laughs> no, but you know what really I mean? It's a piece of furniture, to be honest. Well, it's part it should of, be on a bed, to be honest. <laughs> it's part of a furniture bit, isn't it? Did I tell you that time when... I don't think you'd even ever count a mattress as a piece of furniture. <laughs> of course you can. <laughs> it's functional. And where do you stop? Is a pillow a piece of furniture? <laughs> Is is it, it, a, a blanket? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a nice bit of furniture you're wearing. They're my trousers. <laughs> They're furniture if you pop them up against a wall. <laughs> Can I tell you that time when we first bought a flat? Go on. Bought a flat in Manchester, right? And yeah. You, you know, when you first buy a place, it's expensive, isn't it? And it's a big bit of furniture, a flat, isn't it? So, you know, we bought a sofa, we got a table. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, you don't mean you bought a sofa, you ended up with a table. No, no. no bought, you bought, bought a sofa, sofa and a table. Yeah, a table. Yeah. Now, I was, I was, I didn't, I didn't know. Suzanne sent you to buy a sofa, you yeah. came back with a table. Now, back then, I wasn't as wise as I am now. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! Oh, what was he? Some snot in a jar. <laughs> Can I just apologise to any snot in a jar that's listening and was offended by that comment? All right. So, so I ordered a bed. I ordered a bed. Yeah. It turned up. Oh, well done. Okay, now that's I a thought, big treat. I thought... <laughs> they went down Jean Green this that's time. That's the end of the story, is <laughs> it? <laughs> so I thought, I thought, oh. I'm going to get this in the bedroom, set it all up. Suzanne comes home from work, the bed's done, she'll be well happy. Yeah. <laughs> so I get it all up there in the lift and what have you. I think it's, it seems like I'm missing something there. Put it together, no mattress. <laughs> There was no mattress. No, it's just because it's like, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, I've got all the screws, I've got the slats for that at the bottom, there's, there's the post and that. So put it together. Where's the right. softy spongy bit of furniture that usually <laughs> sits on top of the uh, the more rigid bit of furniture? So I called them up, I said, there's no mattress with it. They said, no, it's not part of it. So what do you mean it's not part of it? A bed isn't a bed without a mattress, it's, it's a climbing frame, right? <laughs> so um, they said, they said uh, you know, you can buy one, we have got them in for that thing. But it was like 400 odd quid. I don't know why telling me this, so I know this, this is, I've walked beds, so I understand this is how it no, works. The mattress isn't but, a bed, no, the, the bed is something else. Yeah, yeah, but that's wrong. You cannot use a bed without a mattress, is what I'm saying, so don't sell it without it. No, but some people replace the bed frame that's with fine. and keep that's the old fine. mattress That's fine, that's fine. Once you've invested in it and you go, oh, will I buy a new bed or will I just buy a new mattress, fine. Well, they're not going to keep selling beds with new mattresses in case you've already got a mattress. What? A bed and a mattress without any pillars and blankets is no good, but you don't expect that to come with but it. At least you can sleep on that. You can sleep on a spongy bit, you can chuck a coat over you, you can yeah, use a cushion off a sofa. I'm thinking some fuckwit might buy it without the mattress, we might include it. So anyway, so I was like, oh, I didn't think of this. <laughs> I didn't think of this! So I called my dad up. I didn't think of this! So I called my dad up! <laughs> dad! It's your fuckwit son again. Alright son, how's it going? <laughs> what have you done? Bought a bed without a mattress? <laughs> oh. So I said, listen, I bought that bed, there's no mattress on it, can, you know, can you get us one? So he said, oh, I'll, I'll have a word. I'll call around, <laughs> right? So he calls back, like, an hour and a half later. He said, uh, got your mattress, uh, go round to Alf's. Alf is me sort of uncle who isn't an uncle. Oh, right. right. Uh, he's the one who I've told you about who had two tellies, we've talked about on the podcast. He had two oh, yeah. tellies, one that worked picture-wise, <laughs> one, one that worked on the sound. Perfect. Slept in a rubber dinghy, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, the thing is... I remember Alf, yeah. He, uh, he said, yeah, 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 I've uh, got a mattress, come and get it. So I go Where's round there. Why does he sleep on the fucking mattress if he's got one? Why does he sleep in a fucking boat if he's got a mattress? He's don't... terrified of flooding. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I get there and uh, it's in his van. Right. right. 
drug He's sorry, driving off. around with a mattress in the back of a van. Why is he a fucking out, serial out. killer? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought Suzanne's going to be happy. Dragged it out of the van, chucked it in the car. Thought she won't even know. Do you know what I mean? No. So, uh, yeah. so I dragged that back. And the oh, am I going to make it to rush hour by this point? Think, oh, she's going to get home. Anyway, get home, drag it into the lift and what have you. Drag it up, drag it into the bedroom, stick Dead it on. Dead falls off it. <laughs> <laughs> Put a sheet on it and that. <laughs> Suzanne comes in. Uh, she goes, "What is that smell?" Oh. So I said, "What?" She said, "It's like." Oil and diesel. But hold on, oil. why didn't you smell it? <laughs> no, it doesn't make sense. I think I just sort of got used to uh, Maybe it, because I got in the back of the van, <laughs> smelt that, thought that's in the van, then I got used to that smell. Yeah. It's in the back of my car, folded yeah. up. I'm yeah. I'm concentrating on trying to get this bed made before she gets in. Mm. Sure. Um, Plus, I used to wear a blindfold instead of sunglasses in those days. <laughs> so anyway, she's going, what is it? I said, I've got this off Alf. She said, we can't have that. She said, you no. know, it's a new flat, nice clean flat and everything. We've got this old thing that stinks. Get rid of it. It was murder getting rid of that, and I had to tip it. Right. I went round the back of some supermarket and left it there because you call fly around tipping. illegal fly tipping. Well, no, because I think it's illegal and bad when you when you're chucking it out, say at a bus stop or <laughs> somewhere on a high street or something, and people are going, "That looks a mess." I chucked it near the bins at a supermarket. I'd gone out of my way. I thought, "Where is this not going to be offensive?" Why couldn't you just go on the tip? I think I did try the tip. Oh no, no, there was a massive queue. There was ah, a massive queue. Laziness, so laziness, Rick, a sorry. Queue at the tip? A massive queue. Where I remember was it now. Oh, Stratford. Stratford, that Why one. Why is there a queue for the tip? I don't know. I remember, oh. yeah. I remember driving past it thinking, I haven't got time for that. And um, that was. That's... So don't go on about you couldn't get rid of it. It's because you could be asked to queue up, you lazy bastard. Um, Couldn't get rid of it. But what was he thinking? Why was he panicking? One, why did he get a bed without a mattress? Two, why is he calling his dad to get him out of mattress related <laughs> problems? His dad goes, Alf. Alf's got one in the back of a dirty old fucking van. <laughs> oh, wait, that should be all right. No, but the thing is, what I'm saying is, when I was in that bed shop and I'm going, oh, yeah, good bed, good bed, I'm sitting on it, I'm sitting on a mattress with it, <laughs> at no point did he say, now, have you thought about what sort of mattress you want? Have you got orthopaedic problems or whatever? That didn't come up. He said, there's your order, there's your address. I'm not a bed man. I go to the bed man to get bed advice. In the same way, <laughs> same problem here. I've had work done recently with, uh... Dad, what? How to get rid of a body? Let me call out. <laughs> I've worked on recently, right? Bathroom retiled. Yeah. Right? It's been a nightmare. Polish fella. Right. Not a word of English, which makes it hard. Mm. I've got him in as a professional to do it. He's sticking grout down the toilet. So then, like, he sort now, of finishes... grout? Is that another mate? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when after they put, like, the grout in the tiles to finish it off, yeah. anything that's left, he didn't put it in the bin and get dispose of it properly. Mm. He stuck it down the toilet. Yeah. And now it's there, the grout's there at the bottom of the toilet. Is it really? Yeah, with a screw in it. Well, you can drain it, can't you? You can turn the water off, get rid of it, drain the water No, off. it won't seem to go around the U-bend. Well, it's no, you'd there. get it out there, you'd dry it off, wouldn't you, so there's no water in there. Well, just stick yeah, your hand in. Get your hand in there. Why don't you put a, a, a well, Maragot Well, last time glove. I did that, once, last time you called up when I had my hand down a grid, and you were going, what are you doing? Get someone out to do that. Yeah, but it's putting a marigold on and taking the screw out, isn't it? Oh, yeah, the screw's not a problem. I'm not that bothered about Still that. Still down there, though, about the grout. Yeah, the screw's there, yeah. So you could have taken that out, no problem. Yeah, but it's half a job, that, isn't it? I want to get rid of the grout first, and I'll get rid of the screw. Yeah. But I will, I'm not scared about putting... You, you called up here, I was oh, up to my shoulder, Steve, in, like... Glunge. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, annoys me, what annoys me, Rick, is he makes up his own words. Well, I'm going to use that for flannimals, mate. Yeah, so you're up to your arm in glunge. Yeah. Yeah, and Ricky called, and it's again, it was in Kent. The bloke had done the kitchen, been pouring down cement into the grid outside. I'm sort of washing up. Look outside, loads of water all over the place. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah. I go out there, all the water's like, because it runs to a grid outside, you know, that sort of system. Yeah, yeah. It's not flo it's not going down, is it? Sure. There's loads of water there. Right. So I call up the main fella who does the kitchens, there's a message there, sorry, I'm away in Cyprus. Right. So I can't get hold of him. Right. So he's, he's ballsed it up, but he's on holiday now, he doesn't want to know. <laughs> there's all this, like I say, gloopy stuff. Lunch. I'm I'm scooping that up with my hand, up, seriously, must be close to my shoulder. Right. Not, not my problem really, but all these people, you're saying, recycle properly, don't pour stuff, um, all these bottles you get now, Demestos, it has like little pictures of dolphins looking unhappy, because people are pouring bleach down a sink or whatever. 
I've, I've never had that problem. I've never upset a dolphin. But I know if I hadn't sorted that out, it would have caused loads of problems for me and the neighbour, and it would have been my problem. And that's what I'm saying. I'm not that selfish, really, when it comes to the environment start of the people around Start using me. reliable tradesmen, And please. also, do start caring about the dolphins, please. Because they're all we've got on this planet. <laughs> Why don't you care about what's happening? What are we going to swim with if not the dolphins? Yeah, I'm swim with one. It's never going to happen. Never well, going to happen. What if you had a little div, right? Didn't have long to live. What do you want to do? And he went swim with dolphins. So you don't want to do that? I go. Oh, Uncle Carl killed them all with Domestos. They're all bleached It'd and be blind. some other animal. Anyway, it's not about the dolphins, it's about the ocean, isn't it, that the dolphins are in. I told you, if dolphins were in the Thames, they wouldn't be that keen jumping in there saying, oh, let's swim with a dolphin. Right. It says you want to swim with a carrier bag in the Caribbean. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> it makes no difference. <laughs> I'd love to see that on Noel Edmonds. <laughs> We've got a little kid here. What's your name? Andrew. And, uh, you want to go swimming? Yeah. What with? Dolphin. Okay, well we can't uh, we can't no arrange dolphins. the dolphin. They've yeah. all died out because of environmental oh. ignorance. Would you like to swim with the carrier bag? <laughs> well good, we can do that. <laughs> you can chuck it in the pond, get in. And you can take him out with you after and he can be your best friend. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Tesco. You know you know <laughs> that's the problem, don't you? That's why do you know the carrier bag problem? Sure. I was in I was in the supermarket yeah. and uh, it's that point when they'd uh, they turned round and said, do you want a carrier bag? And I said, yeah, I'd bought like milk, loaf, I think I bought some uh, pikelets. Some uh, what? <laughs> That's a pikelet! It's like a thin crumpet. <laughs> <laughs> I think you told me that before. The I it. Yeah, yeah. There's pikelet. a word I'd get rid of. Pikelet. There's a word I would get rid of. Thin crumpet. I could, I've got time to say thin crumpet. I do yeah. not need a specific, specific thin word. Thin crumpet. Bought, um, uh, these, uh, these, that's not a crumpet. Why? Too thin. <laughs> Call it a pikelet. Little is, fuck off. I'd, I'd spend over a tenner anyway. Right. <laughs> right. I get to the what, till. It, can you make a, a pikelet by squashing a crumpet thin? <laughs> it's tough what to... If, I've tried on, that. What if you cut one in half? No, it doesn't. It's not the same. No? I've, I've tried squashing a crumpet. How thick is a crumpet that you need a thin Depends where you go. They've got thicker. I'm not. I'm not enjoying the thicker crumpet at the moment. <laughs> Why? Because the outside burns and the inside does nothing. It's like eating dough. I've, I've cut them out of my diet. Have you? Yeah. Well, you straight the pikelets now. Is it's also pikelets? because it's not the 1950s anymore. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so I bought all this stuff. It's over a tenner. Uh, she said, "You want a carrier bag?" I said, "Of course I do." With all this, you know. Uh, yeah. She said five pence. I said, "You what?" She said five pence for a carrier bag. I said, "I come here all Good. the time for the pikelets." I, no, I'm right behind this. Right behind this. Mm. Why? Charging for carry bags, yeah, absolutely. Think, like Lazy bastards. I take carry bags down the supermarket every time I go down there. Yeah, we've got a drawer full of carry reuse. bags. Oh, I use no, them. Steve, them. can I put, just put a question in? Go on. I do normally, I oh. reuse them. Okay. But I didn't know <laughs> I was on my way home from work that day. Fine. So but this is the problem. Up. So mm. be it. And so That's you bought Come with a nose. Five P otherwise you carry yeah. one with you. And you got another one and you got right? another one. Right. So I said I said, how's that gonna work? How's my five pence gonna help the environment? Typical. That is the attitude. That sums it up, yeah. then it's well, sums it, it goes towards something else, doesn't it? You're it's just making you think. It's the turtles. Right, yeah. Yeah, turtles, that's why they get caught up in them, yeah. Terrible. She said she said think they think they're a jellyfish and they go, Oh oh they swallow it, yeah, and they choke. So I said, right, so it's all right, I can, I can kill a turtle, kind of, for five pence. You're not that bothered, then? Why do you want to kill what? a turtle at all? Because if carrier bags shouldn't be out there, yeah. ban them. But don't say, you're killing turtles with free carrier bags. If you want to kill a turtle, five pence. Oh, there you go, there's five pence, I don't kill a turtle. <laughs> That's what's annoying me. It's not compulsory, though, is it? Th but what they're saying is that that five pence goes towards something, doesn't it? What? If they're the what's it going towards? Well, we don't know. Why are they She just told pence? me, she said, we can't give you carry bags anymore because you're killing turtles. See, there's no way. She <laughs> said, we can't give you... Carl Pilkington, stop killing fucking turtles. Five pence. All I'm saying is, if carrier bags are killing turtles, stop making carrier bags. Because the thing is, I can afford two carrier bags. Two turtles are dead since I've been going in there. <laughs> So, oh, so, what, so d does it matter? Does it matter that much or not enough or what? What's the point here? There could be for that 5p, you could get a little fella out there, when he sees a turtle going, <laughs> he goes and sticks his finger down his throat. But what taste are they getting out of a jellyfish anyway? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Will they? The carrier bag's bare, innit? <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it, it gives, oh, 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 it's pikelet. <laughs> Someone threw a perfectly good pikelet away. <laughs> <laughs> talking about the earth carl is going around the earth um myself and stephen have set carl up with a dream job um not only have we got him a tv program on um on sky 
but he's going to see the world. It came out of Carl not being impressed by anything, and we, Steve had this idea, and we've talked to the producers, and we're basically sending him around seeing the seven wonders. Okay, the seven most amazing things on earth according to polls and opinion it's it's a bit of fun we know they might not be the most amazing things on earth but um if carl finds all seven of them unimpressive and boring there is something fundamentally wrong with him we think i've only done egypt so far and what do you think of it they're probably the the, the greatest and earliest it's civilizations the yeah, yeah they're up on about that a lot well, yeah. and it's like that's slowing them down. I think. Unlike the yeah. English, we don't drone on about our great past. No, no but we shouldn't. Yeah. I don't think we should. Carl, move on. You go on about doing boxing when you turned up once and got battered by Leroy. Yeah, because you asked me about it. But right. the thing is, they're constantly. It's like they haven't moved on. Uh, everywhere you go, you see the Sphinx or a pyramid on right. something, and it builds it up too much, so that when you actually get there you feel like you've seen it so many times that it doesn't impress you that much but i like the uh you know it's it's different i liked all the you know locals and stuff and the way they are and that and that's that's oh, good are isn't they? it oh, are they? just a uh, lot of old people yeah a lot of old and the old and the young mix more than our, our lot do uh there was only a couple of things that i didn't like and that was uh the toilets toilets are pretty depressing sure. why what's up with them just um it's just a hole in the ground isn't it right and i i like the toilet it's sort of you know me time and to mm. sort of go in one of them you don't want to hang around you yeah. sort of you just want to do the job and get out but my insides don't work like that <laughs> you like to sort of relax a bit and <laughs> uh and you can't do that there because you've got flies whizzing around your head and uh, there was one time when we were out and about and i'd had a bit of hummus or something because that's you can't get away from all that mm. I'd been dipping my bread in it, and I suddenly thought, oh, it barely feels funny. Mm. Got to find a toilet. Cut through this market. Didn't know one was there, but you sort of smell it. It's like, really? I'm getting close to one. Yeah, it stinks. <laughs> Go in, there's like, like a fella sat there, really old. He must have been about 93, about two teeth. Uh, sat there with a rag, and you have to pay him to use the toilet. What's the rag for? He doesn't wipe your ass for you. I don't know. I don't know. But well, the, the, well, the toilet's never been cleaned by the looks of it. I had to give him like five Egyptian pounds, whatever that is. I don't know how much that is. But I don't know what he's doing for that money. Because the place had never seen a mop. So I go in there, open the door, and it's like one of them holes in the ground. I go, oh, God, can't use that. Push the next door open. That's the same. Thing. Oh. Get to the end one, open it. Normal, normal toilet. All right. Ding dong. Brilliant. Sit down there. Do what I do. Look round. No toilet paper. Oh no! He's waving the rag over the top of the cubicle. Yeah. <laughs> More money. Ten pound. <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh god. I, I'm thinking, can I just get up? Because it was quite a clean. You know, I, I thought if I <laughs> it was to, quite a clean drop. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking. Don't they oh, use water though? Don't they use? Water? Well, they have a hose pipe. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't it? fancy that. Well, that's cleaner though, isn't it? A hose pipe. I really no, getting a proper wash. Heck, Why? Heck. How can it be? <laughs> Why? Because that's just gonna. That's that's not gonna clean it properly. It's gonna get rid of some bits, isn't it? It's like when you clean a car. Yeah, use a hose, but where's a sponge? <laughs> <laughs> sure. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so, oh you, God. you rinse I off just, a plate, but then but you I always just, give a little wipe as exactly, well. Exactly, but I like it. That's when the bloke knocks on the door and goes, you need sponge? Yes. <laughs> so I'm in there, I look at the door, there's no handle on the door. So I'm, I'm trapped in there anyway. Someone's oh, yeah. nicked the handle. So I can't open the door. I'm sat there, there's no toilet paper. I'm calling, uh, I'm calling like the people I'm out there with. Yeah. They've got the phones off because we're meant to be filming. <clears throat> so I'm thinking, well, if I just wait, eventually they'll... They'll call. They'll panic, yeah. And uh, they did after about Hello? 20. Oh, it's Carl. What do you need? A uh, handle and some toilet paper, please. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they called up and they had to come down. That, they, that fella don't let you in unless you pay five Egyptians. So they like and pay. they all had to pay five. I mean, I don't know why they all had to come in to see me like a son. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a bit embarrassing. Yeah. Okay. Did, you bring, yeah. did they bring you some toilet paper then? Um, no, that, well, they got it from the, like, the fella with the... He oh, paid he had to. You should have paid for some right. on the way in. So I think yeah. that's what you do. But they, on, they don't give you a full... A full roll to give you like a strip, right? Which I'm pretty wasteful with toilet paper. Mm, well, I, I prefer you learn, to do it? a good job, use it up, replace <laughs> it, rather yeah. than five sheets. I've never done that in my life. Right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> my brother taught me something when he was in the army. He said you used to have to sort of put your hand through it, get it all, then use that paper to get it off your hand. What? 
when you're in the army, yeah. you're taught survival techniques. Right. And they said if you're a court with very little toilet paper. <laughs> a survival technique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. What if he die? <laughs> Died of a dirty ass. <laughs> oh. uh, hold on, wait a minute. Right, what is this technique? You get the toilet paper. Right. You use two sheets. Right. Fold it over so you've got, normally to one sheet is two ply. You've right. got four ply. Right. So it's, a sort of, it's like a bog glove, a bog paper glove. Yeah, so you put your hand through it so you make a hole. Yeah. What do you mean? Make you a hole. Make a hole so your hand goes through it. Yeah. Then you can wipe your wipe your arse with that. What and with then, your hand? Yeah, and then the toilet paper that's left you pull it off like that and you wipe your fingers with it. Well, so you've still got shit on your hand. <laughs> this is horrible. Yeah, why, don't you just wipe, why don't you just wipe your ass with the toilet paper? Because you've only got a couple of sheets because you're in the jungle, right? And it's survival. Oh, so, so, survival so what's the difference between wiping Maybe your you ass wrong. with your hand and trying to get shit off your hand <laughs> or wiping your ass with the toilet paper and pulling your fucking trousers up? I don't know why this is a technique. That's some sort of mad sergeant's idea. What I do, boys, is I like to smear shit all over my face and then you Use the one sheet of toilet to wash my face <laughs> off. It doesn't make any sense at all. Do you know? I suggest something for you. You like wiping your ass with your hand. You don't like paper and water. You like a sponge, one of those big foam hands that you see at sporting, <laughs> sporting events. events. So you just yeah. go in with that, like Kenny Everett. You go in there <laughs> with two big sponges. You sit down. You wipe your ass. You just leave yeah. them. Like, you just leave and them. And you can cheer about it as you leave. <laughs> but everyone will know. Be careful with the giant sponge finger that it doesn't go up the arse and cause damage. <laughs> that is a problem. <laughs> oh, God. Well, that's it in the last series of uh, the Ricky Gervais Guide Twos. Maybe the last guide to ever. Maybe the last audiobook ever. Who knows? As you've seen, we've run out of ideas. Well, I've had enough. Yeah, Let's so have I, yeah. Right. Well, I mean, that was about the environment, and we certainly recycled some old shit there. <laughs> so it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Bye. And. This audio program is presented by Audible.com. Audible. Audio that speaks to you wherever you are. I'm Ricky Gervais. The English biologist Thomas Huxley once wrote, To a person uninstructed in natural history, his country or seaside stroll is a walk through a gallery filled with wonderful works of art, nine-tenths of which have their faces turned to the wall. Teach him something of natural history, and you place in his hands a catalogue of those which are worth turning around. To some, the wonders and intricacies of the natural world are a miracle, living proof of the existence of God. To others, the natural world is a wondrous illustration of Darwinian evolution. To discuss the complexities of plant and animal life, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, graduate of the University of Warwick and award-winning writer. Thank you so much for having me. And Carl Pilkington, a man with no qualifications, very little education, but who is now known the world over as a man with a head like a fucking orange. All right. <laughs> Natural history obviously takes in everything to do with animals, plants, bacteria, which are in neither group. Um, I should start by just saying, Carl, that the natural world is so diverse that we don't even know how many species there are. Conservatively, there's two million species of animals. I mean, without even taking in plant life, there are at least two million species of animal. With plants and animals, there could be up to ten million species. Um, there are 37,000 different species of spider alone. What do you think of that? Uh, it's a lot. It is, isn't it's it? A lot. But if, if, if there's loads of stuff out there that we don't know about, and we don't know what it's doing, is it that important? Is it worth finding them now? Well, yeah. Why? Well, it may give us the key to unlock other mysteries. A spider won't. Well, it might do. A spider won't be unlocking well, any that, mysteries. Well, that's, that's totally... Plants are different. I, th I reckon no, there's a natural no, cure for everything no, out cause there. No, because there's loads, there's loads of animals that have toxins that uh, are used in medicine. Yeah, I know that we use dangerous spiders to get rid of headaches or whatever, or they do in the tribes, right? Yeah, do you well, want to just expand on that point? 
Um, it's just uh, that's what they do in tribes. Who's they've got they? all natural. All these tribes, they've got, they've got all natural remedies. They, you know, they go, what, what's up with you? You got a sore ankle? Chew on this twig, and it works. I've seen it. They've, they've sent women out there, and like they couldn't believe the stuff they can do with twigs and trees and hedgehogs and stuff. Mm. So it wasn't an in-depth analysis, was no. it? What I'm saying, they just sent some women out there. <laughs> well, they, 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 <laughs> apparently, yeah. yeah. I reckon mm. the the stuff that's got venom in it, that's useful. Mm. We probably know about all them, because it really, really doesn't make any sense. We right, probably know about all of them. What, what I mean is, the police know about the gangsters, but right. they go right. We're aware of them. Right. Let them get on with it. We'll keep our eye on them. And it's the same in the jungle. The spiders, the deadly ones, you're aware of. The ones that are just pottering about, you go, don't even worry about them. Don't even give them a name. They're not doing anything. <laughs> but what if there's another poisonous spider they haven't identified yet that lurking in the undergrowth? I'd be very surprised. So but you'd be very surprised. I'd be surprised yeah. if there was something... It sounds like laziness on your part. But they're no, discovering new not. species all the time. We know about all the dangerous stuff now. Because we have to. We live no, in a world don't. now. We do. We know about a lot of the dangerous stuff. Whenever they find something new now, it's like a well, new look, butterfly or... Well, no. Well, no, look at AIDS. What? When I was a kid, I'd, no one had ever heard of AIDS. Yeah, but that's not a natural thing, is it? That's not like a spider or... What do you mean a, it's like, not a natural neighbor. thing? It's not, a, it's not a natural thing. It's not something that's... AIDS hasn't been, like, living under the soil for millions of years going, I'll wait till the 1980s and I'll come out and kill a load of people. No, but it is a natural thing. It's a new thing. thing. Yeah, it's new. It, yeah, but loads of animals are new, aren't they? Not in... Not, I mean, it, uh, evolutionary terms, there's new animals I'm in sure, evolution. I'm sure there's new stuff deep down that's just like, almost like bacteria. Sat under the soil, it'll never come to the top. Right? It's like having having an old woman who's a neighbour. She never goes out, she doesn't bother you. Let her be. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but what if that old neighbour could unlock the secrets to... I don't think she can. Just even to us understanding the, the complexities of the universe, because of the way things have developed and grown. Because we know about it. Well, why would we know about it? Because I never understand why is it you want to stop researching and studying now? Why is it that you're happy to, to just draw a line under everything else? What if people had said this back in the 19th century? We've done this. We've done this. I think someone in the 1900s we uh, said everything that's going to be invented has been invented. And, and then look what happened in that century. Yeah, and I've said to you, look at the stuff that is being invented now. The frisbee and stuff like that. It's all, <laughs> it's all, it's, it's all stuff that right. like, you kind of go. It's all right. It's a good idea, but it, we don't need yeah, it. Yeah, but the frisbee wasn't being worked on by the top brains of our generation. That was some novelty toy that some manufacturer made. Yeah, but it's like look at the fuss we made over that fella who came up with a Dyson vac. Everyone was like, he's up there with Einstein. Well, he's not. Uh, it's a good vac. It cleans up floors well and everything. Who said he's up there with the, Einstein? His one PR of, people. In did. one of those programs where they did like great inventions of our time, it was easy early on. You go, Einstein, you know, Newton did this, Archimedes, Dyson. <laughs> and that's, and they, they started to run out because it is harder to come up with something new now. Because everything that's needed, remember, the things we've invented are things that we sort of go, we could do with that. Inventors don't sit there going, what can I make? Oh, I need a toaster. They've sat there, they've burnt the toast under the grill, and they've gone, I need some sort of device here. Well, that somebody, I can put yeah, bread yeah, yeah, yeah. In. And what can it do? Oh, Necessity it like that, is the that. mother of invention. Yeah. However, there are uh, uh, people who sit around going, where, where's a, you know, a loophole in the market? Where's a little where's well, a niche? Well, here's something. About what? a year ago, I came up with a see through toaster so that you can see how much the toast is cooked. Right. I found it about two months after that. Someone had done it. So I've just been beaten to the post. Yeah, but all you're really doing, Carl, is That's modifying that. an existing invention. What, 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 what other examples are being pipped at the post, are well, there? Uh, uh, it's got to be one that hasn't been done. Or it's not your theory. But also what? something that unlocks a mystery. Or helps the world. What's causing problems in the world at the moment that needs sorting? Well, cures for things. Uh... Faster transport, uh, t t anything to do with security, anything to do with well-being. You I know, mean, obviously environmental concerns are a big issue. People trying to design automobiles that Fuel. can run on different yeah. alternative fuels. I met a bloke on a conference once who sent a drawing to Blue Peter. It was their design a car of the future, and he sent them a drawing that was a car, and the only innovation was that you can have a shit while driving. <laughs> And then it, he put, he put, shit goes down pipe, which becomes fuel. They must have looked at that and gone, what a mania. I think that's a brilliant, I mean, I've driven a long way. I drove to Cornwall recently, and I would have loved 
But I think he did it when he was about nine, seat. and he must have thought, oh, I'm being driven to school. Oh, I need the toilet. Wouldn't it be good? But if why, hasn't the, why hasn't that been done? What? Well, like Steve says, I've been in the same situation when you're driving and you go, oh, where's the service station? You see a sign saying 36 miles. So what would you say? So, so you suggest pull your trousers down and shit down in the seat that's a toilet. Yeah, well, what's wrong with that? Well, you've got your nan in your back. She's got one as well. So you are going to Cornwall all shitting? <laughs> <laughs> well, not all the time, but it's, it's, it's more useful to me than a lighter. So, also, what, at Where what do you point wash do you your hands? Wa wa wash your hands or yeah. wipe your arse? At what point does that occur? Oh, at the end a... of the journey. <laughs> oh, God! So, you get in, you have a shit at Deptford, and you wipe your arse at uh, Pole Perro. Yeah, but like I've said to you, this isn't like just people going, oh, I think I'll have one. You need one, not really, but it's something to do, isn't it? I'm sick of playing I Spy, I'm having a shit. You have it when you really need one. When you have to pull off a motorway, it's a lot of messing about. It's probably going to be a queue at the toilet. No more queues at toilets. Ten minutes, Rick, that takes, doesn't it? Ten no, minutes yeah. to pull Ten off, minutes. have a quick shit. Driving along. Just, it's just going on. It's just going on. Don't even know about it. Radio's on. Everyone's happy. Doesn't matter. I don't know. I mean, we all do it as well. That's the thing. Anything else you'd uh, come up with? I mean, so far you've come up with nothing. That was a, a, a nine-year-old boy's idea. <laughs> I mean, the Breville maker wasn't needed. <laughs> That's true. That's What's right? the Breville maker? <laughs> like toasted sandwiches. <laughs> but there's so many things, chocolate fountains, anything like that. I just go, what are these? Who's invented these? Who's okayed this idea? And yet I can't have a shit on the motorway. <laughs> Think of computers. What about them? Well, I mean, that's in the in the last few years, you know, uh, in a, a hundred years in our existence. Okay, they've been dabbling with anything even close to a computer. No, nothing before that. Yeah, c computers are a good thing, and it baffles me as to how they came about. When you think a, a computer chip is just made out of sand. Now, for someone to come up with that, you go, this, there must have been some sort of alien involved here. What do you mean? Why do you <laughs> think that? <laughs> so, I love it. So, the Frisbee, rubbish. Anything too clever, well, it wasn't an invention, it was an alien. <laughs> so, there's nothing between Frisbee and computer <laughs> chip. What I'm saying is, it's not even an idea, is it? What do you mean? A computer chip, where's that come from? Oh, it's amazing. Well, that, it's it, astounding, yeah. So you think it was an alien? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Great. Because I, I can't believe that someone would go, right, I want to make something that will hold information and be able to do, I don't know, let's use some sand, we've got loads of that. You, you go, what are you, you do Well, that's what genius is, though, But Carl, there's no alien involved. No, but when I say alien, I don't mean an alien came down here and said, you know, oh, do you want to buy this? There could have been <laughs> yeah. uh, a, a spaceship uh, crash, right? Right, yeah. And... There's all them rumours, isn't there, in that anger? They've got the spaceship, they take it apart, they go, yeah, wheels, we've got them, yeah, 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 steering wheel, yeah. And then they go, hang on, what's this here? And they find the chips, and they break it down, and they find Carl, the sand. but that as an explanation to human genius is nearly as ridiculous as the Adam and Eve explaining uh, life on Earth. Uh, how could you tell that to someone without going red? I mean, I always worry about that, where people, like people who believe in Adam and Eve, don't they wish there was a slightly better explanation? With all the evidence but, we've but, got, but do you know what I mean? On. With all the evidence for evolution, what? that they think the Earth is 5,000 years old, and God made Adam out of some dust, and then he went, oh, I need a bird. It's all right, I'll make it out of your rib. Yeah, right? but there's loads of things that you go, oh, this is a bit embarrassing. I bet Charles Darwin, when he said, we've all come from apes, I bet he sat at home going... Should have told about the frisbee first. But the fact that sand makes computer chips is not the interesting thing. The interesting thing is how the human being discovered that, uh, what am I talking about, sand <laughs> makes computer <laughs> chips, that silicon can have information uh, uh, put on it. But we're made out of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, yeah. do you know what I mean? And hydrogen. It, uh, yeah, the but that's na nature. You see, yeah. nature is amazing. You can't beat nature. Right? No. He comes up with some amazing things. Yeah, but man is nature. Don't forget that we are, we're an animal. We're a brilliant ape. Now, it's, it's, it's clear to any sensible, reasonable, educated person that, that we did evolve from um, apes, or rather, we had uh, a common ancestry, and that we're closest to, to the chimpanzee. We're actually 98.6% genetically identical to a chimpanzee, Carl. Um, we're closer to a chimp 
than a chimp is to a gorilla. Genetically speaking. I, I just find that hard to believe when you Well, I'm at telling you it's true, so no, what, no, what, 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 what are you finding hard to believe? Well, your eyes, y your own eyes are what, what sort of comes up with a lot of, uh, thoughts. No, yeah, no, no, no. One's eyes don't come up with thoughts. No, Two, but what I'm saying it, is, you, what you through, mean is, through you, your own eyes, you look at things you and make up your own decisions. So if there was no Darwin or anything, yeah. and I was sat somewhere, and someone yeah. said, right, we're going to bring a few animals in, one of them's related. Right. Uh, they're all related. All right, but but they're all related to you, but one's not so long ago, all right? And they brought them in, and they lined them up, and there was a chimp stood there. Yeah. And a gorilla. Mm. And, uh, what's another one? Orangutan. orangutan. Right, yeah. Right, a girl, the orangutan, send that out. <laughs> I'll be first to go. So he's definitely not linked to me. Mm. Uh, See, I disagree, but there we go. That's yeah. just looking at you. Yeah. Right, so the, the air colouring. There's none of that in our family. Well, there's no air. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that it loses out because it's ginger. So that's gone. Right, so I'm left with a gorilla and a chimp. Right. I would go for the gorilla. Well, it's a good guess, but you'd be wrong. Um, so we are much closer to the chimpanzee, okay? 98.6% genetically identical. Think of that. We only differ on 1.4% of well, our that, genetic that, that, makeup. That must be the arse. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot different. <laughs> rights is uh, is a hot topic it's a big issue what rights should they have uh, how do they compare to humans you know uh, it's a well-known fact that we test on animals um, with the assumption that humans are more important we test drugs on animals and uh, we're basically saying if they die they die we'll learn something from them people do make distinctions between animals right they, they know that it's probably more acceptable to kill an ant uh, than... Uh, Punch a cow. Yeah, exactly. You know, we, we, it, I think it, that comes again from how close are they to humans? Have they got a face? But that's are the, they furry? I told you, you know, about me, my dad's mate who had, a, who had a monkey and he had to thump it. What? <laughs> why, why, well, there's two things there. One, why did he have a monkey? Two, what sort of discipline is thumping a monkey? What was the monkey doing? He kept, he was annoying his wife a lot and sort of, you know, pinching her ass and stuff like that. Right, right. No, that's Wait, not we, true. We've it's never heard this before. How have we had all these years no, of sure monkeys and we've never heard this ages before? Ago. Your dad had a mate who had a monkey? Yeah, I'm sure I told you. That, well, why did he have a monkey? Just for a laugh? Well, it was back in the day when you, people did. They all had, like, <laughs> odd, in, sort of pets and that, didn't they? In like about 68. Oh, 1968. When the, oh, when everyone had a monkey. But he had to thump it. Now the weird thing is. Now that's weird enough. Is this the? This is all the story. This is the entire story. No. You've got all the information you've got. Is he had a monkey and he had to thump it? Yeah, my dad told me about it when he found out that I, I was into monkeys. He said, "Oh, Benny thumped one." <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Benny thumped one. Oh, my son's into natural history, particularly uh, Simeon variety. Um, I've got an interesting fact for you, Carl. Sit down. What is it, Peter? Um, Betty thumped one. But, Brilliant. But, but what was mm. interesting is the way that people are thumping other people all the time. No one bats an eyelid. Thump a monkey. People go, you thumped a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes, they do! They do yeah. go, you thumped a monkey. So that's what's weird, isn't it? But this gym doesn't want to be caged and kept in a fucking council house in Manchester. No, it was, it was quite happy. And if it, it wants to live happy. like a human, I mean, in the 70s, you know, there were all, all the tea bag adverts and all that, and they were loving that. No, they and weren't people loving it. Fear. People go, oh, that's unfair. Now they, they're in like a cage in a zoo. They go, they, it was better when I was pushing a piano up a stairs. They weren't really, they weren't really... They weren't actual delivery men. They weren't really sitting down and having a cup of tea. Well, it wasn't a documentary. <laughs> a, a, a week in the life of the monkey delivery oh, men. I love that. Chimps in a zoo now going, okay, now, we, at, least we were, at least we were free. Remember we? when we used to drive a van? And, we were, and we were on 58 quid a week. Yeah. They're not meant to be kept in a house in Manchester. It's cruel to keep a person in a house in Manchester, so it's fucking cruel to keep a monkey. <laughs> are you aware, Carl, that 99% of all forms of life that have existed on Earth are now extinct? So there's only 1% of everything that's ever been still alive? Yeah. But that's just as well, isn't it? Why? Well, I think it's pretty crowded now. <laughs> so it's just as well. 
You see, this is this is what I'm saying now. Years ago, they accepted that. Cavemen wouldn't have been going, oh, we're losing stuff, stuff's dying. <laughs> Whereas now everyone's, oh, the panda, polar bears, not got any ice, and all that. At the end of the day, the world's only so big, we know it's not getting any bigger. Right? Stuff's got to die, hasn't it? You can't keep everything. Just think of that, though, as a tool of natural selection, that the species that are surviving today are 1%. Just how amazing that is to survive and evolve. How perfect everything is on Earth. It's amazing. No, but but it'll drop off again, won't it? As we find the new stuff, other stuff will be dying. Well, In that one percent, when that was written, when that statement was made, was the dodo gone or was it still here? It was. I'm pretty sure it was the gone. dodo was gone. It was gone already. It doesn't matter though, does it? A percentage is a percentage. Yeah, the dodo went. The last yeah. dodo died. They yeah. said that was the last dodo. No yeah. more dodos. <laughs> but we found a, a Dido still making great great cheese. albums, great albums. Great, yeah, we, we lost the Dodo, but we've got Dido. A recent album's not sold very well, actually. It's, I've heard it's dying out, I've dying out. Everything yeah. has a lifespan. Dido's uh, dying out. But mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's that's life. So it's not amazing, really. That's that not either anymore. No, it's not either. That's life's gone. That's gone. That was good. What else? Esther Ranson forced to just hang out in the jungle. Yeah. Now. It's a shame. When I went to Nat Natural History Museum, there was a thing called a uh, cyber ear or something. Right, died out ages ago. No one knows about them, which is weird because everyone knows about the dodo. Well, yeah. that's because it died out uh, in I think that uh, was it 18th century or something, wasn't it? Well, we, you know, within what might what might some recent history. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this this thing's sort of. I don't think it was far behind it. It's just timing, isn't it? Got all, that got more press, the dodo. The <laughs> Sither or whatever it's called. Mm. It was a big thing. It well, was a you, cross you've seen it and you still don't know what it's called. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's spelled awkwardly. <laughs> but it's, uh, but they said it was a cross between a moose and a giraffe. <laughs> now, we don't need that, do we? No. At no point have we said, do you know what we need here to get us through this? Well, that's funny because when um, they first named the giraffe, they called it the camelopard. Because they thought it was a cross between uh, a camel and a leopard. Really? Yeah. Well, I can tell you that when zoologists examined a platypus for the first time, some of them thought it might have been a hoax, because they thought it could have been different parts of different animals sewn together. Because the platypus has the fur of an otter, the tail of a beaver, the bill and feet of a duck, and the venomous spurs of a fighting gamecock. So they assumed that uh, it was like a, been a scrappy hoax. challenge of animals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember right. But they actually, sorry, sorry, go on, say, well, just to clarify that, it actually is descended from a link between reptiles and mammals almost 150 million years ago, a sort of living fossil. When I was about 13, 14, I once tried to improve the animal kingdom by making the hardest animal ever, the most perfect animal. Now, just to clarify, you didn't, in sort of Frankenstein style, no. try and bolt various bits of animals together. It, it was a drawing that I sent to Blue Peter. There was no competition going on. You just thought they would be appreciated. I thought they'd, they'd look at that and they'd go, well, this is, he's a genius. Yeah. This is like Da Vinci. Sure. Um, and this is the animal. This is what I thought, the perfect animal. I mean, when I say perfect, I meant the hardest animal. This right. animal, it could take anything. It was just the strongest, hardest, fastest. Right. Yeah. So... I started with the head of a lion. Of course, that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Rawr, it looks good. Rawr, bite you, right? Yeah. Okay. I popped that on the body of a rhinoceros. Okay, so it's got the toughness, oh, the armour, if you the, like. The, the, oh, it's full strength. Head yeah. of a lion. Think of that. So you've got this picture. Head of a lion, body of a rhino. Perfect. Okay. Hold on, though. Pop some arms on it. The front arms were the arms of a gorilla. The arms of a gorilla. So okay. it could punch, grip, it could make stuff. The lion, I mean, that's where the lion falls down, because it can't make stuff. Sure. It can't climb, you know. So, okay then, wait a minute. You think that's got enough weaponry? Sounds like it. No. Pop on the tail of a giant scorpion. <laughs> a giant scorpion? Yeah, yeah. So, so the a scorpion that's, that's the size so of a Exactly. So the tail was as long as that rhino. So now right. this is a scary animal. Yeah. And this is where the animal fell down. Uh, I thought, right, legs. Well, the fastest animal is the cheetah. The cheetah. Popped on four cheetah legs. Four cheetah legs. It would have collapsed. Crushed under it the weight It would have collapsed the immediately. <clears throat> so, uh... Yeah. Yeah. And you, you drew this, did you? Drew it, yeah. Did you show it to anyone yeah, other than Yeah, my mates went, that's brilliant. Right. They said, that's brilliant. <laughs> And uh, then just sent straight to Blue Peter. Yeah. Any reply? No reply at all. Really? No reply Surprise. at all. What do you think of that, Carl? 
What would you? How would you? Though? What would if you wanted to make the ultimate fighting animal? What would you come up with? If you had the power, like that fella in Arabian Nights, size of a chimpanzee, you could change into anything. But you could change into, you know, like that. I don't think I'd go for strength and that. I'd go for survival. What would you do? Uh, Cockroach. I'd have. Uh, I'd have like uh, an armadillo's body. Right. Okay. So you've, that's that, that's as big as you can be now. Then. So you you, you can't really pop on. A lion's head, because it'd just lay there, going, I can't fucking move. All right. I'd have the uh, head of an owl. Right? The head of an owl? Yeah, why, 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 come why, what does that bring to the table? The head's there to sort of make it look friendly to, to the human race. So, okay. because if you look half decent to the human race, they'll, mm. they'll look after you. Right. That's the way it works, yeah. it? Okay. with a cat and a dog and all that. Mm. Okay. So the owl makes it look nice. Right. I'd have, uh... I wouldn't have legs, I'd go for like the slug juice. <laughs> what do you mean? So now you're a really slow moving legless armadillo with a head of an owl. Slithering along. How yeah. is that going to be friendly? They'll, be, they'll see the beautiful face, but then they'll be terrified by the sludge. No, because the head's that nice that they'll, they'll forgo the, uh, the sludge. But hold on though, but wait a minute. So this got, it's got this thing that's stuck, right, going at 0.1 miles an hour, with a going, Ooh. right, you come over, you kick the head off. How is this No, because the head can go into the thing like a tortoise. Can it? Yeah. Of course it can. Into so, the armadillo body. Well, no, an armadillo doesn't do that. It just curls up into no, a ball. No, this isn't an armadillo, is it? So it's, oh, Why has it got the slug? Why because is that so attractive? what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is, an armadillo, they're good when they're on their feet. Flip them, they get stuck. Like a tortoise. Right. Slug stuff keeps it down. <laughs> so if anything attacks it, it's like a limpet or one of them things that can go Why have a limpet stuff. then? But, but, but it no. can't get any, how, it can barely move, it can just hardly go get just anywhere. Just go and kick it. Just, just, can't get but anywhere. how can it escape from danger? It's going to move very slowly. No, what, that's lock, the worst it'll animal. It'll it'll lock itself in. Yeah, and then I'll just scoop it up on the you sand. You can't scoop it up, it locks itself in if it's in danger. I'd give it peacock feathers. <laughs> Why has it got peacock heard. feathers? Again, it's, it's just It's, it's just the so worst animal you I've ever heard. Why is it got peacock feathers? Threatening. It looks more threatening. It that's does, what, what, that's the least be. threatening thing, peacock feathers. It's like Danny LaRue coming at you. There's yeah. nothing remotely scary about peacock feathers. Yeah, to humans, yeah. but the humans won't be harming it because they like the owl head. People will like to have these things in the garden. Hmm. Uh, they eat lettuce. They eat lettuce? Why has it got a beak? They eat lettuce, he's telling them what he's going to eat now, the owl's going, fuck that, I want a mouse. I love the fact that he's based what it eats on the fact that how it moves a bit like a slug. Yeah, they it eat lettuce. Yeah. It moves that, and they eat lettuce. Like I said, it's not that weird if that, if that existed. If that was normal, like when you went out to empty your bin, there was one of them sliding up the wall. <laughs> You wouldn't, you wouldn't even double take. It'd just be like, oh, there's the, uh, the owl head peacock feathered thing. I don't know why it's climbing walls in an effort to find lettuce. Yeah, why is it climbing up that wall? Because that's the only way it can see properly. Because its head's coming out like that. <laughs> so even though you've designed this animal, now it's, you're even explaining <laughs> it's, its limitations. Problems. Well, it's, 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 it's mainly made as, uh, to be on walls. Because <laughs> <laughs> what else is living on walls? <laughs> What a useless animal that is. Carl, I mean. But nature chucks up odd things, doesn't it? Don't. Why are we starting on this again? No, I'm, 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 just, I'm just saying that is nature. Okay. Now and again, you'll get, you'll get stuff that... Oh, was he looking at you? Yeah. Was he really? <laughs> Look at his fucking head. Look at his stupid, round, fucking orangey head and... Oh. Why, why aren't you a freak? You've got a little bald head. We're not meant to be bald. Well, I, I was, I think. That's the thing. That's what nature's done. You see, I didn't do anything with my hair when I had hair. I didn't style it. I didn't do anything with it. And it probably thought, what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas people who love their hair and they comb it and have different styles and look after it, they have hair for ages. Nonsense. No, it's nonsense. Gobbling. Absolute well, nonsense. Well, you're saying Absolute nonsense. Well, it's a little bit weird then, isn't it? And that's what happens with old people. Once they lose their, you know, will to live, once they lose the job, they get old. What's my purpose? What am I doing here? And it's like nature goes, you're not needed, and they die. Maybe that's what happened with the dodo. What's it doing? It can't fly. Its wings are useless. Eat it. Tastes horrible. 
kill it. <laughs> no, they did Nature. eat it. I think they did eat yeah, it. Yeah, but it wasn't very nice, was it? I, th I think they over-farmed it. I think that's why it was extinct, because they did eat it. No, but they did eat it, but they didn't like it. Everybody, you never, you never saw like a fully eaten carcass of a dodo. You're it making this up again. Eaten. All conjecture. No, but they, they didn't eat it all. Everybody would probably try it and go, "It's not for me, that." <laughs> but you don't know no this. No idea. You don't You're know just making this. it up. What's this based on? That people. And also, why would that kid it out? Because I'll tell you why. why. Because if it's not nice, people don't go. Don't get another one in. And they die out. The reason we've got loads of chickens and loads of cows is because we eat them. If we ate polar bears, we wouldn't be short of them. Because <laughs> you'd farm it, you'd care, take more care, but what's a polar bear doing? Sat on a block of ice floating about. <laughs> <laughs> it's no use to us, is it? It sounds harsh. Once it's again, no got use. his information from a glacier mint advert. No, it's no, it's no use <laughs> to us. We know they're there, and it's all very sad when you see them on the news sort of struggling and all that. Yeah. But it's going to make them stronger. Mm. If scientists could bring back to life the creatures that have uh, existed in the past. Do you think that's a good idea or a bad idea? Bad idea. Bad idea? Yeah. Now, leaving aside the horrors of Jurassic Park, do you think for research purposes it might be a useful idea? Um, I don't think it is. It's, for me, it's like a friend reunited. It's like, <laughs> it's like people who you knew ages ago getting back in touch and you go, I don't want to get in touch with you. <laughs> that was then. And it's the same with a mammoth. That was then. You had your day. It didn't work out. Now, to bring it back, it's unfair. You're messing with nature anyway. I think I've said to you before about, I don't know what they do with them. They're massive things. I think it's, it's like, it, it, they're just not thinking about it. It's like rushing into buying furniture. That's massive. And then you get it back and you go, can't get it through the door. No, and it'll be can't. like that with a mammoth. Where no, are putting them? Oh, I didn't think of that. But what about if you could say you could feed the third world with mammoth meat? But what's wrong with, 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 we've got loads of cows and stuff. Why do they need a mammoth? No one even knows what it tastes like. Imagine that. You bring it back and you've got another dodo on your hands. <laughs> no, People go, this is welt, this is horrible. Well, they used to eat them, because they, again, what they, what humans found out is they, uh, they could take down a mammoth, but they got greedy and they found out they could, uh, they could chase them and so they'd go over the edge of a cliff. And what they did, they went crazy, and they used to herd them, and they'd all die. But of course, then they'd waste the meat because they couldn't eat it all. Yeah, well, that's that's. Uh, I think that's why we shouldn't bring them back because they are too big. So even if didn't hear a word of what you said then, didn't you? No. no, I did. You can everyone can eat them, but the yeah. problem is they're so big that you couldn't eat it quick enough, so it all went off. Yeah, but I was saying that they killed too many at once. Yeah, I know. <laughs> He no, know I heard what you're that. About. I heard that. But what I'm saying is, why not bring back an animal that's smaller, manageable mm. for everyone? Yeah. Um, that's why the chicken is perfect. <laughs> Out of all the animals, perfect. Good size, feeds a family of four. <laughs> Whilst it's alive, it's giving you eggs. I agree. So and it well. tastes nice. But it doesn't if you think it's not having a good life. If suddenly, suddenly it has said to me, I stopped eating it because. I found out about how badly they were treated like 10 years ago, and at least I have organic. And honestly, eating an animal that's been tortured doesn't taste nice. Fragua gras would make me vomit. The yeah. thought of it, the evil involved in torturing a goose because the liver tastes slightly better. I mean, where does it end? I think if they looked after, they don't want to die. The ones in a nice warm little, you know, hut, being fed lovely food, you're going, right, we're going to cut your head off, and they're probably like, oh, God, I'm, I'm going to miss this. I'm loving this life. Whereas the one sat in its own shit is going, have me first, I'm sick of it. There's, all, there's different ways of looking good, at it. Good point. So what you're saying is, give animals a bad life, torture them, and they'll be happy when you eat them. Brilliant. But we've ordered a, what's it? We've ordered a turkey. Right. It's way too big. So I don't know what we're going to do with it. And it's worrying me now, actually. <laughs> It'll be nice on Christmas Day, but it's my job to look after the kitchen and everything tidy up. And I know, I don't know what I'm going to do with it all. <laughs> the fact that he's been given a job to make it worthwhile, really, it's like a little home. No, but a chicken, like, a, your chicken. Arthur, you, you're washing up today, aren't you? Yeah, Arthur's job. And that's the problem with, with a mammoth. I think the idea of it's probably quite pleasant. You go, oh, that's something new to, to try out. But afterwards, when you've got to tidy it up and stick it in cling film, you'll be going, how much <laughs> of this have we got? <laughs> so I wouldn't bring back the mammoth. Um, Brilliant. Charles Darwin, of course, once <laughs> said, uh, I cannot persuade myself that a beneficent and omnipotent God would have created parasitic wasps with the express intention of their feeding within the living bodies of caterpillars. Mm. His point being that, you know, uh, creatures and their reproductive cycles are so complicated, so intricate, so bizarre, 
that that alone is proof of the non-existence of God. Where do you stand on that? Um, it's it's pretty weird. We talked about it ages ago, didn't we, about the wasp that has a thing growing in it and all that. Um, Lays its egg in the spider. Yeah, and then the spider goes mad, doesn't it? Uh, you fucking can't lay your eggs in me, you fucking stripey wanker. Goes absolutely fucking mad. It is weird. I don't know how what's going out my arse in a couple of weeks, you fucking. Don't know, I don't know how it, how it found out that that's what it had to do. That's the amazing thing, isn't it? Well, it didn't, did it? It just did it. No, I know, but when I say found out, I mean it just did it. Well, it's like mimicry when they say mimicry, you know, that there's. There's a, a poisonous snake, and then a snake comes along that looks a bit like it that's not poisonous, but people go, oh, careful, it's poisonous. That snake didn't go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strain, and I'm going to try and look like scary over there. Some were born that looked a bit like scary, and they survived. Yeah, I know. It's just being chosen. But that's changing now, isn't it? The fact that, like, when them frogs came out, that were dangerous, they were just dangerous. What frogs came out? But... Some frogs in the jungle somewhere that were like pretty dangerous. Yeah, Ooh, from Mattel, dangerous frogs in the jungle. <laughs> yeah, but they, but people didn't know that yeah. they were dangerous, and they were going about killing loads of stuff. Anyway, they weren't going. No, they don't go around killing loads of stuff. Nature said, "This is a bit unfair. Make them orange." So then the frogs that were orange were dangerous, but you got a warning. It's a bit more fair. Nature said, "If they're going to go about being dangerous, make them orange. Make them stand out." In the jungle, orange stands out in all the green, right? So people went, there's an orange frog, stay away. Then over time, nature went, right, what's, hap what's happened there now? Everyone knows the orange frog's dangerous. Birds aren't eating it because they know it's dangerous. Mm. People are avoiding it. They don't even need the poison. It's just the orange it needs. So now you've got a load of frogs that are orange, not even deadly. But people go, is that a deadly orange one or is it a friendly one? Well, best to leave it. Again, he's explained my point, but took yeah. 30 times as long over. But, no, so but listen, let me finish what I was going to say. But what's, what's interesting with all that is evolution has taught stuff to lie. Because that orange frog isn't deadly. It's going about like it's the big I am. <laughs> yeah. You could squash it with your hand. You can't do anything. <laughs> but evolution... It's swaggering has, around. Has, 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 it's made it lie. So lying is part of evolution. But and it's not lying, is it? What do you mean? <laughs> well, it's got no the poison. interesting thing about, um, like, a toad that uh, secretes a poison is that um, often it's no good for it as an individual, but it's good for the species as a whole because some that come along and, and chew it, now that toad might well die, but that fox is sick and it doesn't eat another one. So it's sort of saving the species. Yeah, but at the same time, the dodo... Tasted rubbish. Everybody said, you know, "Don't you want to that again." We don't know that. We don't know that. We don't know that. We don't know that. I have, I have read it. I've read that they don't taste very nice. But it didn't Why stop doesn't it, it taste very out. nice? Why it's just, in the same way that chicken's nicer than duck? You can't all have nice tasting flesh. Pork's all right, but I prefer beef. <laughs> <laughs> Point proven. Good night. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, with the dodo, um, it did taste horrible, but everyone wanted to give it a go. Meanwhile. It's different people trying it, so it died out in the end anyway. So your theory of a frog being poisonous and a fox going, yeah, that's horrible, I won't eat another one of them. Then you get another fox trying one, and another fox. They don't all have a word with each other, do they? They're going, I had a rotten frog the other night. So it's pointless. It's a pointless exercise. What I like is your image of nature. This idea that sort of, in your head, there's mother nature sat around like a boardroom table, yeah. making these decisions. People are coming in, oi, frog, what's been going on? Well, I've been poisoning people. Why? What about you? It's just... You just picture everything as one large you, 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 reason. Your confusion is that they, you still think of evolution has a will. You still believe that things are striving to be something else, as opposed to surviving if they adapt or change. I just want to um, go through some of the, uh, the wonderful diversity of uh, nature, um, some of the incredible feats of uh, the animal kingdom, in a way. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting one. Alligators and old people have something in common. They can hear notes only up to 4,000 vibrations a second. I don't know what you meant to do with that information. <laughs> <laughs> When's that ever coming, Andy? 
when a band's getting together, they don't go, no, we're after <laughs> crocodiles and old people. <laughs> what sort of tune do they like? It's pointless. <laughs> not, not impressed, OK. Um, scientists have applied electrodes to the pleasure centre in a rat's brain. The rat pressed a lever 48,000 times over a full day in order to receive that shock that seemed to him pleasurable, choosing the simulator instead of having water or food or sex. So it, it chose that virtual pleasure, well not virtual pleasure, it gave it real pleasure, but an artificial stimulus rather than the real thing like food or water he or never sex. ate and had water he never yeah, had it a could, change it could, no it was addicted it just it loved this electrode it was giving it it just made it feel good it was getting as much pleasure from that as the real thing from sex or or food yeah but with, with any pleasure you get sick of it don't you if you have too much of it well it had forty-eight thousand hits in a day but i like having a twix <laughs> but if i have more than four a week ago I'm, I've, I've ruined that little pleasure i used to like yeah. so what i'm saying is what did he do the second day? Did no, he go near the machine the second day? No, no. Where did he go then? No, 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 no. But what you're saying is this, right? That Twix is failing to give you pleasure on that fifth Twix, but this succeeds every time because it's literally pleasure. It hits the part of the brain that says this is pleasurable. So but. my pleasure, uh, pleasure nerve <laughs> that you're talking about in my head, <laughs> it lights up when it has Twix. I, I don't think it ever lights up. Right, I don't think you've got a pleasure nerve. But it lights up when I have a Twix. Right. It lights up uh, if there's something, if there's some chicken, right? It lights Fuck up me. if there's a... What a miserable cunt he is. You know, all, all, all loads of things. Chicken and Twix. That's now, it. That's all he lives for. No. Hang so, yourself, mate. So, what you're saying is, if I had that device that the rat's got, mm. I'd just sit there, wouldn't I, hitting it, thinking, I can't be bothered going to the shop for a Twix, I'll just hit this button. Yeah. Think of this. So aggressive is the horned frog of Argentina that people believe that if the frog bites the lip of a horse, the horse will die. Actually, the frog's mouth contains no poison. It earned its fearsome reputation because it attacks animals many times its size. What do you think of a frog it's attacking ridiculous. a horse? I don't know what's going on. I don't know why that would happen. Why, why is it getting upset with a horse? Of all the things for a frog to be like, getting cocky with, them two should never even meet. <laughs> Why? Why? Because <laughs> it's not. I mean, fights are normally over something, aren't they? Yeah. If you have a fight with someone, you're in my yard, or yeah. you know, it's it's it, you're fighting over something. A horse. I and love a frog. the fact that he immediately goes back to the 1930s. Yeah. You're, you're in my yard. But a horse and a frog. How did that disagree? What are they happen? over? I don't. I don't understand what they've got in common. I. I, I don't. I don't understand it. I bet that's only happened once. It's a rare incident. So wants to put that in a book. <laughs> I can't imagine it. That that's happening a lot. That horses are being bit by frogs all over the shop. <laughs> oh God! I saw this trailer for this documentary that said uh, the man who's having a baby. Mm. And I turned on, and it's a woman going through a sex change, and she's pregnant. That's not a man having a baby. That's a woman having a beard. Having a breakdown. Uh, uh, what, what, why is that? What? That's a con. That is pure sense of, it's a man having a baby. Look, the world's first, but no, it's a woman. It's a woman. What do you think of that? What would you do for your doctor? And I came to you and went, Carl, listen, I'm having a bit of a rethink of these. Uh, I don't... I, the penis, I hate it. I hate this cock. But what do you mean you hate it? I hate it. I don't want it there. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. It just sits there resting on these fucking awful testicles that I'm going to get rid of. I want I want this thrown away. Yeah, well, it's, you know, they're not a great look. <laughs> I know that. Everyone knows that. It's just <laughs> the way they are. I mean, if we're all being honest, they're an odd design. I don't think anyone likes their own, do they? That's why we cover them. They're not a great thing, are they? <laughs> what, is this not why we cover them, though, is it? It's part of it, I think. I think deep down. I mean, even if, like, I know you, you ate the Adam and Eve thing, but even if back then he was like, good God, cover them up. <laughs> even he had a leaf on. <laughs> no, but listen. Why? So, are you thinking fundamentally, then, that aesthetically, the testicles and the penis isn't as good as it could be? What would you have there instead? 
Well, it's, it's designed that way because that's the way it's got to be designed. It's more about function than... Uh, yeah. And, and that's that's the thing, isn't it? With with modern technology... You, need, you know, the, the thing is the testicles have to be outside because they have to be a few degrees below body temperature. Yeah. Otherwise the Satoli cells die, which sort of feed the semen and all that. So, they, they, you know, to, to be functioning and sort of like fertile, they have to be outside, which is annoying because I'd put a little rib cage around them like that. I'd, I'd pop a rib cage round those, protect them, wear a cricket box, have that built in, so you cannot get a kick in, a swift kick in the bollocks no, that makes you feel sick. But it'd be better if they could sort of reverse up in a way that <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were hidden away. Right. Yeah. So that they were just, then you dropped them, it's like, right, we need to cool them down, be at it in about half an hour. Yeah. Zzz, drop them down. Yeah, like the gear on a on an aeroplane, landing gear. Yeah, and uh, landing gear down. And the bollocks and the cooling down. Or you could just like just pop them in the fridge for ten minutes. It's well, like they could detach, and you could pop them in the fridge. Yeah. Down. Can you make me some breasts? Easy. Okay. Go okay, on. Well, you say easy. What are you gonna do? What's your plan? Just. Uh, how do you do that? It's tablets, isn't it? <laughs> no, but testosterone, isn't it? <laughs> testosterone. <laughs> Toblerone. I want. To, yeah, I want some Toblerone. Just well, sort of pointy, pointy tits, mm. like Madonna. <laughs> Where do you stop though? Suppose I came to you and said, uh, Doctor, listen, um, I like the bollocks, I like the penis, but I don't like them where they are. I'd, I want them, I want them in the middle of my chest. I want breasticles. Yeah? The arse, I don't like it around the back, I can't see what's going on. Pop that on the front where the bollocks were. I want my arse where I can look down and see what's going on. Can you do it? I think it's just easier to move the head. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Rick, I know you're a big fan of Professor Richard Dawkins, the evolutionary biologist. He wrote a book, uh, The Ancestor's Tale, in which he predicted a post-human world. Uh, this was his, you know, his kind of hypothesis, if we were to, to, to uh, well, let me read what he's written. If nuclear war destroys humanity and most of the rest of life, a good bet for survival in the short term and for evolutionary ancestry in the long term is rats. I have a post-Armageddon vision. We and all the other large animals are gone. Rodents emerge as the ultimate post-human scavengers. They gnaw their way through New York, London and Tokyo, digesting spilled larders, ghost supermarkets and human corpses, and turning them into new generations of rats and mice, whose racing populations explode out of the cities and into the countryside. When all the relics of human profligacy are eaten, populations crash again and the rodents turn on each other, and on the cockroaches scavenging with them. In a period of intense competition, Short generations, perhaps with radioactivity enhanced mutation rates, boost rapid evolution. With human ships and planes gone, islands become islands again, with local populations isolated, save for occasional lucky raftings. Ideal conditions for evolutionary divergence. Within five million years, a whole range of new species replace the ones we know. Herds of giant grazing rats are stalked by saber-toothed predatory rats. Given enough time, will a species of intelligent cultivated rats emerge? Will rodent historians and scientists eventually organise careful archaeological digs and through the strata of our long compacted cities reconstruct the peculiar and temporally tragic circumstances that gave rat kind its big break? Carl, thoughts? I mean, who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> that's about it for the second in the series of the Ricky Gervais Guide 2. That was Natural History. I think we've left no stone unturned there, Rick. I think that is a definitive work. Um, if you've enjoyed the Ricky Gervais Guide to Natural History, why not go back and listen to the Ricky Gervais Guide to Medicine, if you haven't already? Or if you have, because you know, it'd be revision. Exactly. You know what I mean? There will be a test. There will be... A, there won't be a test. There won't be a test. We can't be... Uh, bothered. No. Um, and next in the series is the Ricky Gervais Guide to the Arts. Look forward Sorry, to that. Sorry, just clarify, that's the arts. Yeah. Right. Just Not the arts. Sorry, just, yeah, just the, the way you speak. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it, you should never go away, people speak your words away. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, no, <laughs> but just be clear, be clear. Well, no, but you make you clear, clear, be clear. Yeah, clear. Yeah. you're not being clear, 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 aren't you? You're making dumb, bumbling fool. And we won't even get on to Carl Pilkington. Don't be. 
Anyway, thank you very much from me, Ricky Gervais, with me, Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And Carl Pilkington. All right. you have enjoyed this program. Well, episode two of season three of the Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And Carl Pilkington. All right. What's been going on? What's been going on? I've been to hospital. I was rushed to hospital. I had emergency and that. Had a... Uh... Tube put up my knob. You had a tube put up your knob? Yeah. What, what's the story? Uh, kidney stones. Oof. So, shouldn't really be here, to be honest, doing this. He said rest. No. Climbing them stairs on the way in. Is to be quite honest, it doesn't look like you're expending a lot of energy at the moment. It's it's like at Zookeeper going, oh, that sloth moved today. Calm down. Yeah, but I had to get here. It's been raining. Yeah. I had to come up the stairs. I had to carry the computer. Yeah. Well, that's not entirely true, because your girlfriend was carrying it. I saw her outside. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying... And, oh. then you, and then you handed it to me and said, Steve, God carry this. God almighty. So. Yeah, I know. But that's already a lie. Christ almighty. Whinging. Not whinging. I'm in show business. I know loads of people that wake up every day with a sore knob, feeling like they've had their kidneys probed, and they, they, you know, they will say they're unconscious. So... They yeah. don't whinge about it. They get straight back onto it. They, you know, <laughs> a lot of them on TV now. Yeah, straight back to hosting game shows. <laughs> <laughs> so you rush to hospital. So yeah. tell, take us through the take us through the events because it does sound quite dramatic. You started feeling a bit of pain, did you initially? I felt a bit of pain. I thought, you know, yeah, maybe I just pulled a muscle or something when I've been wrestling with Ricky and that because mm. you don't know what damage has been done. <laughs> Uh, so I just think, oh, it'll go in a minute. And then it didn't. It got a bit badder. It did. did it got badder, did it? So then I thought, I, lo- oh, I, I, was, I was crippled. I was lying on the floor in agony, looking on the internet, looking for sort of Still solutions. Still looking at monkey news. No, <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I just put in, like, bellyache and stuff, and they were saying <laughs> it can be loads of different things. Um, and I, what I used to do when I was a kid, I used to always just get a cold ashtray and put that on my belly. And the coldness used to get rid of the badness. <laughs> Amazing. The coldness got rid well, of like, like a witch doctor. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this, this, this is like... A witch doctor happens to work in a pub. It's like a, some sort of 5th century remedy <laughs> yeah. written in mud. <laughs> yeah. Coldness doth get away with the badness. Yeah. Uh, what, why specifically an ashtray? Just because they were they sort of old cold. <laughs> <laughs> They're old I cold. Do, I don't know what this is. It's, I love this idea that he's, he, uh, he's uh, had the operation and he comes round and they're talking to him and uh, his, his girlfriend gets a phone call and, go, and, and they say, uh, Mr Pilkerton's it's got maybe complications, he's just talking rubbish. <laughs> yeah. She goes, oh, good. Yeah, he's back to his old self. <laughs> yeah. What, 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 is it, why specifically an ashtray? Sorry, because it's old cold, I understand it's old it's, cold. Oh, yeah, we understand, we, every, <laughs> everyone who's done a medical degree understands old cold, but, but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> old, yeah. old cold belly badness. <laughs> if you want to buy that book, old cold belly badness. It's uh, uh, the, the yeah. history of abdominal surgery by Carl Pilkington. No, it just you know. It, it, so, it, but you put it in the freezer or something first. You can do if you want, but they're normally cold anyway. <laughs> sort of thick glass, and that it holds the cold. But we're not smoking our house, so I had to use a plate. <laughs> Oh, well, that's madness. A plate's not going to work. Pla- Famously, a, pla- a plate oh doesn't God, work. Oh, God, no. <laughs> oh, God. So you put a, 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 uh, you put a plate on your belly, but that didn't yeah. do any... No, that that, ever, that yeah. didn't work. So I uh, called Suzanne and said, oh, I'm in agony here. She said, go to the doctors then. Good advice. So A lot of people have done that straight away, <laughs> as opposed to going through the plate <laughs> ashtray. <laughs> so he went to hospital, and he went to hospital, and he said, have you got an ashtray? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> no, no, this, an ashtray. this is no smoking. <laughs> so anyway, so then we get in a cab and what have you, go there, I have an x-ray. His voice is even more boring than usual, it's isn't it? isn't it? Yeah. Fuck me. And they put me on a drip and everything, give me some morphine and stuff. And found out that I had kidney stones. 
So that's why I was in hospital. And they get them out by... I can't even... I don't know what's gone on, to be honest. Oh, I've on. got some tube inside me, from my kidney to my bladder. That's helping me stuff get about. That's and so there's a little tube up the end of your knob into your... Yeah, it's not there now. It's right... It's high up. Right. So it's high up between my kidney and my bladder. But why didn't you have the thing where they go in the side? You had the choice to... Because I said to the doctor, I said, I'm not a doctor. I said, what do you <laughs> he think... He went, stop, stop putting yourself down, <laughs> Carl. Yeah. Said, we need you in the operating <laughs> theatre now. He just said, you know, I said to him, what, what should I have done? Because he said, if you want, go home um, and we'll get you in again or something. I said, something like that. And I said, no, I might as well have it done properly. Have it done now whilst I'm here. Sorry, the choice was have it done properly or go home. It was it was something like that. He said he said there's there's something you can do, and I said oh flush it out. Um, no, because it's too big. It's something like seven millimeters. And it was it's basically because you don't drink enough water. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I said, what do you think I should have done? And he said, tube up the knob. And I said, mm, not my favourite one of the choice, but if you if that's what you think. So he said, yeah, have that. He did me little diagrams, which didn't help. <laughs> he was, like, showing... How big like, did he draw your knob? Uh, <laughs> sort of normal size. Yeah, was yeah, it? It was all right. You weren't offended by uh, them. Well, he wanted into detail. It's just, you know, more the tubes and stuff in your yeah. bladder and your kidney. What was your ball bag like? Did he draw that? He didn't did... do that bit. He left that bit out. OK, right. But, um, <laughs> but he said, oh, we'll just pop that up there. And, uh, and then that's when Ricky turned up to visit. Yeah, uh, came in laughing at me because we sat there in like me underpants and stockings. <laughs> in stockings? Yeah. 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 Why were you? He was there. Seat? No, he wasn't in bed. He was sort of out of bed with his little drip. Right. He had his little boxer shorts on. Just sat there. Right. In his pants. Right. And he had stockings on. Yeah, because they stop clots or something. They put them on your legs. It's like you know when people have got big veins and they go on a plane. Right. Yeah. Uh, you said you're not a doctor. <laughs> no, but I've, I've seen it, because Suzanne's mum did it, and it was she put them on ridiculously early, like three days before we were going away. And like, <laughs> she, she'd never been away before, and it, everything was, like, over the top. Do you know what I mean? She was like, I best put them on. And, uh, so, so I put them on, and they, like... I don't know what it is. It's something when you're in... When you're under, your blood doesn't move about the same. Right. And it can clot up in your leg. So you wear these tight tights. And I came in to cheer him up, didn't I? Yeah. Was that a nice cheery experience, him coming in? Uh, I had a headache at the time. I think I was a bit stressed out. <laughs> but uh, he's just a man you want at that, at that point. Yeah. Uh, he reassured you, I imagine. Well, it, it's weird how it suddenly all happened quick. It was like, as soon as he came in, it's like they got the finger out. And when I say Not that, literally. I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, suddenly I was being rushed down to, you know, have me stuff done. And uh, I woke up and there was an Irish woman over me going, are you all right? Are you all right? And I said, oh, it's stinging a bit. She said, I'll give you some more morphine. And I sort of put my head up to have a look at my tackle because I wanted to see... If it was still there. ...what, what was attached to it. Do you know what I mean? Because they said something about they might leave some string hanging out of it so they can pull the tube out. And it makes you talk. So, uh, <laughs> so I, had a, I had a look for that. Couldn't, couldn't see any of that. Yeah. Uh, but as you put the morphine in, all the muscles in your body go funny. My head just collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> Your head collapsed. You yeah, know. I sort of looked up to look at my stuff, but then she said, oh, you just need a little bit of morphine. And she put that in, and I just sort of went, Oof. And then uh, they sent me home about two hours after. Oh. But I'm in agony now. And uh, Are you in agony right now as we speak? Yeah, certain. Now, are you a man who's had this kind of hospital experience before? Is this I your whole first go. time? I don't go, do it to hospitals and stuff, because I don't like them messing about. Uh, but it does make you think now, do you know what I mean? Like... Life and everything. From I mean, it's weird how it's all happened in the last month. From seeing that bee, sort of die. No, no, well, not really. No, you, no, 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 no. This is not a near death experience. It is you a had a routine bit. operation to remove kidney stones because you don't drink enough water. No, I know, but this what, is not a shark attack. Yeah, but it's all it's all uh, life threatening. Otherwise, you wouldn't have to fill out forms, would you? Saying if everything goes wrong, Suzanne can have the house or whatever. And then you, you find out more about the body as well, which has been sort of doing me head in a bit. You're more aware of stuff in your body, which I don't like knowing about. Yeah. They keep taking your heartbeats and stuff, mm. and your blood pressure. I don't like knowing about that. I just, like, leave it. It's happening. Don't be messing with it. Stop measuring it. <laughs> Stop me! 
pleasure in it. No, do you know what I mean? Same no, with the knob. It's, it's that thing of, of like, they put that thing That's on. what the anaesthetist was doing when you were under, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. He was comparing the diagram to the actual thing. Oh, God. The fella across the way from me had had the same thing as me, but he'd had it a couple of days ago when he was in agony. So that doesn't help when he's saying, oh, I've been to Ellen back. No, don't tell me that. <laughs> sure. I don't want to know. Just say it was, it was all right and stuff. So uh, it just, the, the whole thing of a hospital is stressful. Do you know what I mean? They wake you up at like every half an hour in the night, saying, how do you feel? It's like, oh, what, you know, it's half past three. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, I've got to have it done again in a couple of weeks. Because um, what they've done now, they've popped pop that straw up, but the stone's still in there because they didn't have the laser team in with them. Blast the stone, and then that time they're probably going to leave a little bit of string out the end. Then they have to go about three days later and they pull it out. Tell you what, though, when you are sort of... Because when you're in hospital, you've got a lot of time just to sit there and think about stuff. And uh, what I was thinking about is, what is the closest thing to sort of living that's nothing? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> what? What's, like, the closest... Like, do you know, at some point, something's gone from nothing to something, hasn't it? No, I don't know. I don't understand what you mean. Something at, at some point, people were nothing, and then something happened, and there was something. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But they were never you, nothing, you, were they? Do you mean what is the 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 first and lowest and most primitive and most simple form of life? No, he's so, right here in this room, Rick. <laughs> say, say like when you look at a, a stick insect, right? You go right. There's a slight crossover there from a stick. To a living thing. No, it's not. It didn't used to be a no, stick. No, 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 it's not. There's no, there's no, there's no biological relationship between it and a stick. But the, there isn't much difference between the two, is what I mean. Of course there is. It's a huge there isn't. difference. They just, they just sit there looking like a stick. That's their skill. Yes, but there's nothing to do with being a stick. It's, it's like camouflage. That's like saying when a soldier puts on combat gear, you get, you're saying he's a cross between a human and a shrub. <laughs> He's not a cross between a human and a shrub. No, is but, he? That's, but that's that's man from a distance stuff. you can't see him. That's the same as the stick insect. No, but that isn't what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, have you seen them weird things that just look like they they, they sort of look like a leaf? Yeah, there are insects that look that that have evolved to look like a leaf. So a bird thinks, oh, there's no there's no tea there. No, that's not I, a juicy I, insect. It's a leaf. I don't eat leaves. Yeah, but Forget it. At some it. point, something has had it away with a leaf. No, what? at to no point has something had it away with a leaf. No, to make it look that much like no. a leaf. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> at no point did a beetle shag a leaf. There's nothing on a genetic level or molecular level uh, any, anything to do with it having anything to do with a stick or a leaf. It's superficial. It's the way it looks. That's all it. It, that's like saying chameleons must have mated with green once. They are green. No, but it what, looks like a leaf. What I don't understand is it has evolved to blend in perfectly with its surroundings and fool predators. But then, how does it meet? How does it have relationships? It will be going around, sort of having it away with a leaf. <laughs> <laughs> no, it won't, because it doesn't know what it looks like. It doesn't matter. They do it with pheromones and attraction and. Uh, they, it, it's not like they, uh, it, 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 you know, um, a stick insect will be talking to a stick for ages and go, oh, I've wasted my time here. <laughs> this club's dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rude. I was chatting to her. She was foxy, but she was giving me nothing. But, Dave, that's that's not a stick insect. That's a stick. What, what are you talking about? That's a stick. You've been talking to a stick all night. I, thought, oh, I can't believe it. I just thought she had a great f slim figure. No, no, it's actually a real stick. But I've been I've been reading a lot about... You know, I like spiders and stuff, just reading about them. Mm. Uh, and there's one, right? Mm -hmm. It's got big legs. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't use them. Um, it goes around floating in the air on a bit of webbage. Um, <laughs> like he just took a gamble then, didn't he? He took a gamble. He thought, do you know what? I'm going to go with webbage. <laughs> Don't know if it's a word, not sure, but I could just <laughs> say web, and I'm going to go with webbage. I'm going to risk it. <laughs> And it didn't oh. pay off, did it? <laughs> Webbage! <laughs> Webbage! But that's how it gets about. It's in the air like a kite. Yeah. It's just floating about. I've seen one, yeah. So that's what I'm saying about weirdness. Mm. The way all that goes on, and this is what I can't get my head around. 
You, you have got your head round. <laughs> but do, do they get ill then? <laughs> He's just, for those listening at home, he has just bumped his head against the microphone. Trying to mate with it because it's perfectly round, this microphone. <laughs> <laughs> no, but when when I was like, this is what I'm saying. When I was in hospital and stuff, mm. you do think about how others live because insects don't have operations. Uh, are they built better than us to survive in this world? The trap you seem to fall into again and again and again is you cannot conceive of the fact that insects and animals do not have consciousness and personality and communication. They do not function in the way that humans do. You've seen so many Disney cartoons, you believe them now to have a life and wear bowler hats and go to work. But just in the same way that the cavemen didn't have Flintstone-type cars and have a little house, but you then, can't seem to understand that animals don't work in that way. But what I mean is you're saying that no animals or insects know anything, yet when you see them things on nature programmes where a load of ants are having a walk, there's always one at the front who's leading it all. So one well, of them's got to know to first. Or there are leaders in, in... Yeah, but the other ants are going, follow him. No, they're not. They're not. They're not vocalising that in any sense no, that you understand it. No, they're not saying follow it. him, but they sort of look as if to sort of say, I'm but going without, this way. Without, without, no, without, without cognitive speaking. reasoning. It's not made a conscious decision to act no. in that way. Yeah, but this is when if you... A get... bird, if a bird, if a, if a raindrop falls on a bird's beak and it moves, it's, it moves away because instinctively it's hardwired to be wary of things which drop on its beak in case it's dangerous. It's not thinking, oh, crumbs, that's... I better get out of the way. It just does it because it's somehow hardwired into it to act that way. But it doesn't stop for a moment and think. Which we don't really, except we then are able to rationalise our, our fears and our actions. Well, I, I've been watching birds more than insects recently. Oh, in the, okay. In the, last, in the last week, just because so, I've sort of looked at the ant and the bee and that. And what I've found with pigeons is they've got wings, yet they walk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'd love that to be a thesis where he got like a, a half a million pounds grant from a university and I said well Pilkington seems to he's done ants and he's done bees um, he's, he's followed ants apparently they're not doing anything some of them are lazy um, he we are granting him another uh, half a million pounds um, he's been working on it for a year um, please welcome Carl Pilkington Carl what have you found? well even though pigeons have wings they walk a lot No, but even in times of danger, one was crossing the road and a car was coming, and you'd think that his head would say, let's start flying. Yeah, he just walked faster. Well? Well, what's he doing? It was doing stuff, wasn't it? It saved a bit of energy. It takes a lot to take off, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's either that or, you, or you're going to get crushed. You but it didn't energy. get crushed, did it? Uh, no, I don't think it did, no. There you go, they knew what he was doing, didn't it? Yeah, it just annoyed me, that's all. It's got a... <laughs> it's got a... <laughs> Power and it's not <laughs> power. They're, they're all super they're powerful. All, these yeah. animals. Yeah. But that's why he thinks of the stick insect <laughs> as, as like that. He, you mentioned earlier that's its power. That's its skill. Like Spider-Man was bitten by a radioactive spider and now he can solve crimes and, and uh, swing with webs with webbage, <laughs> using his webbage. Whereas yeah, stick insects is not. It's not a superpower. But say if if everything was at the same size as us, what would be the best thing to be? Say like a tarantula, yeah, and a tiger. What would happen there? To a, a fifteen stone tiger versus a fifteen stone tarantula. Yeah. Well, I'd imagine the fifteen stone tarantula. Right. So it's just weird that, isn't it? It's a good job that they're small. Yet things are getting bigger because we're messing with the world. But it's a ridiculous thing to say, isn't it? Because what would it eat? Fifteen stone. Well, it wouldn't happen anyway because the insects have a uh, insects and arachnids and uh, it just. Uh, invertebrate arthro arthropods in general they have a um a critical mass because they haven't got lungs they breathe through things in their side called spiracles and if it gets too big the surface to volume ratio um isn't big enough to allow it enough oxygen so the biggest you'll find is like a foot long beetle or somewhat weird it's like big that. though isn't it yeah and that's about as big as they get so i wouldn't worry that. about it mm. <laughs> again Based on nothing, he queries not, you. And also, it's not a case that one that will be born too big and can't breathe, it won't happen. That's why they're only that big, because 
But it's like fish, isn't it? How they say about a goldfish. Yeah. That thing about a woman who went on holiday and stuck mm. it in a bath. Mm. She came back, it was seven foot. Right, that didn't happen. No, that's a well-known thing about goldfish. No, it's goldfish. not a well-known thing. What? I'll tell you why. Because a fish will only grow to its surroundings anyway. So... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You have to put it in a bigger tank. Yeah, in a bath. No, a seven-foot fish in a bath. It just fit the bath exactly, did it? When she got back off holiday... Don't talk shit. It's what a well was it known. eating? What was it eating? How long was she gone for? <laughs> Two million years? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she went to Mars and back. Yeah. It's just that fish are weird, aren't they? Well, no, there's, uh, no that's a bollocks story, once again. No, I don't know where you've heard it or read it. It's a well-known story. A seven-foot goldfish in your bath. But, uh, no, fish are weird. Ted, right you're not going to believe this. Come up here. Well, how many fish do you see that have naturally died? That's the weird thing. What do you mean? Just ping-ponging around these ideas in your mind. You just never see fish sort of just floating about in the water and you go, oh, died of old age. It's always been caught by a man or a shark set it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't just see dead fish washed up, do you? When you think Sometimes. of the amount of fish... Not when you think of the amount of fish that are in the sea. There's loads of them, and yet you never... Because they're eaten straight away. The, that's what I'm saying, though. Are they eaten when they're dead... Or are they just being eaten? Well, most things like that don't die of old age. Yeah, that's weird, though, isn't it? Well, no, because it's a... You know, it's a jungle out there. Yeah, no, that's why I said oh, I wouldn't want to live in the sea. Because you've got to Are be you old... sure you're not on morphine as we speak? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you have... You, in the sea, you've got to be constantly sort of alert, haven't you? Yeah, but that's stuff. true of all animals. No, worse in the sea. The sea is, like, full of... Uh, you've got an enemy around every rock. <laughs> I love it! I love yeah. it! I love it. it's like a warning to crowds yeah, exactly. and young squid. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's, it's like the policeman that comes into your school. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What <laughs> advice would you give? Okay, then. What advice would you give? Um, Some plankton. <laughs> now, what advice would you give um, uh, a, a, a two week old octopus? Um. And what am I? Am I an octopus? <laughs> no, you you're, you're you. We've so, set it up that it can understand you with some sort of... One of your inventions to talk to the animals. One of your brilliant inventions is just to watch you strap on its tentacle and it can understand human talk. Um, you know, but, you know, I'm sure you'll, you'll come up with that one day. Um, what, what do you say to it? What would you say to an octopus, a young octopus, who wants to set out by himself in the sea? Stay, stay close to the rocks. Um... And just let it know about the thing about it can get into a small space. You know, if you look at an hole, don't go, oh, I can't get in there. And sort of squash it and show itself. <laughs> ah! I can roll it into a ball and sort of say, look at that. Is that hurting? Uh, and, uh, I love the fact that the drugs make no difference. Look. It's like there's no difference. Oh, God. Because that's the only thing that that's got in there. It's boneless. So <laughs> that's, its, that's its special power. That's, that's what it. it can do. You can roll it up, and uh, <laughs> as long as it knows that. But that's the problem with a lot of powers, isn't it? That's that's the same thing about how people say don't have a go at bees because they're not like wasps. They don't sting you because once they sting you, they die. That doesn't know that, does it? It's also not true, but yeah. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't know, so it's not like the bees going around going, "I'm not going to sting you because I'll die if I do." What's your point there? I don't understand. I'm just saying we shouldn't we how, shouldn't how did, dislike bees. Uh, well, how did how do these creatures know what to do? Instinct. I suppose it's like that story you told me about the scorpion, isn't it? It's that, isn't it? What the scorpion and the frog? Yeah. What the fable? Yeah. What was it? It was a frog. It was a, going... it was a uh, the scorpion needed to get across a, a river, and it said to a frog, "Can you give me a lift?" And the frog said, "Well, no, of course not, because." You'll sting me. You're a scorpion. And he goes, well, no, why would I do that? If I sting you and I'm in the water and you drown, I drown. And the frog went, good point. So the frog get, gives him a piggyback, going across the river, halfway across, the scorpion stings the frog, and the frog's dying. And the frog's going, no, I'm going to die, and you're going to die. So why did you do that? And the scorpion said, because I'm a scorpion. And what do you think that, that was meant to point out? Just... Sort of be careful who you help. No. It's meant to point out that you are what you are. 
you are your nature. No, but it's also that thing of like. Uh, I'm telling you, it's nothing to do with. If you're what the driving frog was. No, and, and no. someone's hitchhiking, no. don't pick them up because. No. No, it's nothing to do mm. with the mentality or the reasoning or the, 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 the anything to do with the frog at all. The point I, of it. Well, I don't know. I think Aesop was thinking a lot about the hitchhiking problem. It wouldn't happen. That's the problem with a lot of them fables. They're putting animals together that wouldn't meet. Oh, whereas insects go around shagging leaves. Well, insects are with the leaves, whereas I don't know where a scorpion is knocking around with a frog. <laughs> I mean, there's that weird one I remember uh, yeah, he's watching. Annoyed. I remember hearing something about this lizard that sort of gets pally with the scorpions, even though they're not mates. They don't get on, but they've kind of got this agreement that the the scorpion can live in their house if they guard it. And there's, there's the local people used to stick their hands down these holes and get the lizards to make slippers out of them. And... <laughs> The lizards were getting sick of this, and I think somehow something happened where the lizards thought, look, enough's enough, uh, we'll let you sleep in our den if you stand by the door. So the scorpion used to, like, stand by the door and stay awake at night whilst the lizard's having a kip. Fella comes along wanting to make some new slippers, puts his hand down the hole, scorpion gets him. Now, yeah. that's, that's what's weird with that, that two that's... enemies... I've worked together. It's called a symbiotic relationship. But at no point did they sit down and go, right, what are we going to do? I'll tell you what, I'll give you shelter. You give me that sting in case uh, there's a fellow who wants to make slippers. Because all this happened way before people were making slippers. But isn't it weird, though? Because people, there's nothing that happens like that in people, is there? Of course there is. What, like that, where you don't get on but you work with them? Of course there is. What? Loads of business relationships. What's, what do you mean? No, but Too normally you stay... What I mean is you stay enemies. away. If someone's being a bit weird... There are loads of examples where you might go, well, I hate to do it, but my only option is to go with X, Y and Z. But what, what I'm saying is, though, let me just finish. Go on. I, I live in an area where, you know, I sort of know a lot of the locals, and there's a local woman who's a bit mad. Yeah. Now, I know her, but I choose to sort of stay away because... It scares you a bit, doesn't it, when something's like that and it's unpredictable. So, uh, you know, when I was in the little corner shop, she came in, right? Uh, she screams a lot, just screams for the sake of it. And you don't know if, if she's upset or if she's just doing it for attention and the scream will go from screaming to laughing. <laughs> so you're like, oh, what's going on? And it was like, like rush hour. <laughs> it was like rush hour time in this shop, and she chose to go in then, and she doesn't work, so it was like, why is she coming in now? She's had all day to go in. Mm -hmm. Just pick the busy time. Mm -hmm. And she was like about three places in front of me, and she was only buying a Yorkie and some earbuds. Right? And I thought, <laughs> a, what, a Yorkie and some earbuds? Yeah, and I uh. thought, what's the rush? You've come at the wrong time, and you bought stuff that could have waited. You should never have to rush out for a, a Yorkie or an earbud, is what I'm saying. Right? Uh, and I ended up sort of going, oh, I can't stand this, and I left. Now, that was me being like I would expect the scorpion to be, or the lizard. I don't know what you're talking about now. <laughs> I have I no don't know idea. Where the, okay, what do you mean? No, I'm just saying how, like, I chose that that woman could be dangerous, so I'll leave, I'll leave her to it. And that's, that's where nature kicks in. And you go, I don't want to be here. I don't know what she's going to do. She's unpredictable. <laughs> I'll pop back later. And then, I, you know, I look out, I can see the shop, I saw her go and she was, like, oh. laughing to herself again and trying to climb up some ladders. And I thought, once she's gone, I'll, I'll nick back. <laughs> I don't know what my point was. I don't know. <laughs> oh, he's only got it really down there. Wow. That's the jingle for Carl's Diary. 
We have bacon and egg on toast. I'm eager to get through the brown sauce, as the bottle is too big to go in any cupboard, so it has to be left on the sideboard. <laughs> so I had about four dollops of the stuff. I love the, cons- you know, that made it into the diary. He's concerned about the fact that brown sauce know, is too big, so he's rushing through it. I know, but I'm just saying the kitchen isn't that big, and it looks messy when you leave stuff out, doesn't it? And we've got this giant brown sauce bottle, <laughs> and I don't want to chuck it away, because that'd be a waste. So you're having brown sauce and everything, oh, your cornflakes, yeah. in your tea. Yeah. A wasp got in the flat. You know trouble's brewing. (laughs) It was massive. The biggest wasp ever. Suzanne asked me to get it out, but I wanted to take a picture of it first. (laughs) I was getting my phone ready when it flew at me. I reckon the sting on it could have killed a kitten. (laughs) (laughs) So specific. It ended up flying out the window on its own. (laughs) Drama averted. Oh, God. We went out for tea. You're always in a cafe. That's what you, this diary. You're all, you spend so much time in a cafe. There were loads of flying ants. I kept kicking the table because I could feel them on my legs. I wouldn't be that jumpy normally, but I still had flashbacks of the giant wasp from the morning. <laughs> Suzanne told me to stop being stupid because I was ruining her night out. A night out in a cafe. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Oh, what, was, what, was her, what was it, her birthday? And flashbacks from an incident. Yeah. Like he's some sort of, like, war veteran. <laughs> what is it? It's the wasp. It could have killed a kitten. Bought some wallpaper. We got back and got on with it. The wall that we've papered before has got a big mirror under it. We papered on top of it again. I ended up reading my phrase book while Suzanne did the rest of the tidying up. Now, what's your phrase book? I don't, this, is, this is just you trying to master English, is it? It's just a book that tells you... Little sayings and how they came about. An interesting phrase is pot luck. It came about when all people ate is stews. They used to chuck all sorts of stuff into the stew. You stuck your spoon in and sometimes you got something nice like beef or you could end up with a bit of frog. It's pot luck. <laughs> Good time, isn't it? That's what it said in the book, did it? A bit of frog. Got up and checked the wallpaper out. There are loads of air bumps and it's buckled on the joins. I wish we'd never done it. <laughs> Suzanne said the washer was broke and it's out of its warranty. She called up the people who made it and they said it will cost £150 to fix. I don't know how they know that when they haven't even seen it. I want to smash it to bits and see what they can do for <laughs> <them> as <laughs> <laughs> So much anger. <laughs> <laughs> I want to smash it to bits. <laughs> oh, that'd be great, wouldn't it? 150, you sure? Yeah, Come yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's just like a cube that's been yeah. through one of those car crushers. Yeah. 150 quid, there's 150 quid, fix it. Yeah. I watched the news and calmed down a bit because there was a story about some Siamese twins who are having an operation. They've got two heads, four arms, two legs, one liver. The doctor said they will have one leg each. I felt bad worrying about the washer when people have bigger problems like the Siamese twins. Ricky and Steve asked me to do a poem about one day a week, so I thought I'd do one today. I can't obviously do it justice, I should let the master read it. You've done another poem? Yeah, you said, you know, just just do one. If you have a day where you've had a lot of emotions... Well, I I loved the poem, and so did uh, the listeners, and I knew they would, so if you can do that every week, that would be a joy for me. You can't force a poem, though. No, I know. So a diary is easy to do, because you just write down what you're doing. But yeah. you, you've got to have some really meaty subject matter to be able to write a poem, Rick, as you'll discover. I know. Right, so, you know, you've heard what problems they had that day. Go on, then. Bubbled wallpaper. What a mess. <laughs> Washer dry and knackered. What a mess. Siamese twins separated. One leg less. <laughs> scheme that is again <laughs> oh god oh, oh god oh fuck <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <like> me <sighs> well there you go that's the end of episode 2 of series 3 of the Ricky Gervais show um, more next week more drivel, more diary, another poem, I hope. Maybe. Um, just more news and stuff from me, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Goodbye. And Carl Pilkington. All right.
The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Hello, welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show with Guardian Unlimited. Back where it all started. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And of course, Carl Pilkington. All right. The internet phenomenon that is Carl Pilkington. Ah, now ah, this could be that, interesting. Now that noise... Do you want to explain, Steve? I will. I've just sent a text to this number that some of you may have heard of, 63336. Now, apparently this is a number you can uh, send a text to, and it will answer any question that you have for it. And in the past, for instance, I sent it um, quite some quite profound questions. I once asked it, um, should they have dropped the second bomb on Nagasaki, and it had a very thoughtful answer. So we've sent it a question, perhaps equally thoughtful. Carl Pilkington believes in ghosts. Is he an idiot? Now, we sent that because this is the Halloween special. These podcasts are, are three one-off free specials, and they're free because we want to thank people who, uh, who paid um, for, the, for the audio books we did, the, uh, the last two series, so thank you for that. I've just bought a, a flat in New York, and Steve's just bought a lovely BMW. Mercedes. Oh, is it a Mercedes? Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't long, seen yeah. it yet. Yeah. Carl's having his kitchen done and his boiler replaced. He's still not happy. But, um, yes, thank you. Um, uh, the back catalogue is still available um, in audio books on iTunes, but these are three free ones. Anyway, the question we asked 6336, Carl Wilkinson believes in ghosts, is he an idiot? And this is the response. Unusually... Producer Carl Pilkington is both an idiot and a comic genius. His humour is not to everyone's taste, however. That's <laughs> amazing. That's the response. But it's curious because it doesn't really answer our question about ghosts. Send them, do you believe in ghosts? OK. This is the Halloween special, of course. That's why we're talking about ghosts. Carl, do you believe in ghosts? Uh, yeah. I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen, like, a proper proper ghost. So why do you believe in something that uh, there's no evidence for? Yeah, you but what, what, why are we here then? If, if it is just sort of, you're born, right? And when, I mean, we are useless, at least other creatures, when they're born. Well, you speak for yourself. No, but they're born, other creatures are born to do a job, aren't they? When a bee's born, you know what that's going to be doing. It hasn't got any <laughs> options. That's got a job to do. And it does that job and it dies and the next one comes along. Oh. We asked it, do you believe in ghosts? The existence of ghosts is not proven. Many experiments have claimed to identify ghosts, but none have been scientifically sound. Excellent. See, yeah, that, that, that's that, just, that's but that, but that, that's a sensible, intelligent, logical, thoughtful answer. Weird things have happened to me when I uh, mm. was living at home and uh, was in bed one Where night. do you live now? No, but I was at my first home. Your mm. parents? Yeah, my mum and dad's. Mm. So I'm in bed and uh, I'm lying there. And you know you get that sense of like, uh, oh, there's something going on. Right. And uh, I sort of look over my quilt, and there's nothing there. Thinking it's weird that. So uh, turn me back on it. I'm thinking I don't want to know. If there is something there, I don't want to know. Right? <laughs> so I'm turning me back on it. But then there's like a really high pitched noise, right? Sort of the hairs on my back are like going up a bit. And I'm like, oh, I don't like this. And it's the, the high pitched noise. You had a hairy back even as a kid. No, but you know, everyone's got little hairs on them, saying. aren't they? Everyone's got little tiny hairs on them and mm. stuff. And uh, and I thought, oh, I can't stand this. And, and I turned around, put the light on, legged it downstairs. Mm. Right? And my mum's saying, what are you doing? I'm going, oh, I don't know, there's something up there. So she said, all right, then watch the telly. So I stayed up for a bit, mm. uh, watching the telly. Went back to bed, the high-pitched noise had gone. Went to sleep. Get up the next day. Charlie from next door comes round. He goes, Hilda's dead. Mm. Right? And... Uh, my dad said, oh, when did that happen? He said, last night at quarter to eleven. Right. That's, that's when I was in bed. So? What, what are you telling me for? Because it's weird, isn't it? It's that thing of... Uh, what, what, what do you think it would be weirder that uh, no one ever died at quarter to eleven when you were in bed? No, but that's when all the weirdness was going on. That's when the tone was happening, my back was getting itchy and stuff. And Coincidence. And I went down and watched telly, went back up, gone and that, but that's when her spirit had sort of... No, no, no. Ah, OK, right, interesting. No, this, this is where we get into the facts. So Hilda's spirit... Had left was whizzing her... round, whizzing round my yeah. bedroom, because my bedroom was right next door to theirs. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So I'm just saying, that's, that's one. Why, that's did they, why do they whiz round when they, when they die? Why do spirits whiz round when they die? Because they're going, where am I going? 
Are they? And they're whizzing round, aren't they? Am I going down? Am I going up? No, no, that's Carl. Oh, no, no, but I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, but it's n it's not going to be easy, is it? How do you think it works? It doesn't work. But once again, it's not proof of anything, Carl. Mm. Beyond the fact that you were a child in bed. Why did your dad ask what time she died? No, it, it just sort of you know. What do you say to someone when it's it's awkward, isn't it? When someone gives you bad news, so you just think, well, what can I ask? Oh, what time did oh, she when, die? When? What time did exactly? that happen? Sorry, no, just, what, you just go what, what, exactly. What time did she die? Uh, my no, wife. Like, my wife passed away. Yeah. What, what time exactly? <laughs> <laughs> no, not exactly. He just said, no. oh, that's bad. When did that happen? Like, what yeah. time? And he said, well, thanks for asking. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. I remember. What did he say? What did he say last night? Oh, that's weird, isn't it? Convenient, aren't they? All these it stories, is, or is it? Or, yeah, I mean, it's either that's exactly what happened, Rick, or he's he's misremembering the, the yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know which one <laughs> to plump for. But I tell you this though, go on. You know, if we're talking about ghosts and that. Yeah. Mm. Now, Ilda. Yeah. Uh, choose your bog standard old woman. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. I think that's on the gravestone. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> no. Did, you, just, did you do the eulogy? No, you know. <laughs> that is great. You, you what can we say about Ilda? Bog standard old woman. Right, there's sandwiches at the bar. <laughs> That's the most insulting thing you could ever say. There's nothing. No. <laughs> Let's just think about Hilda French... lived her life. Thank you for coming to celebrate the life of Hilda. Who died at quarter to eleven specifically. And was a bog standard old woman. Are we burning or burying? But anyway. But she lived to be quite old. Mm. Which annoyed you. And, but yeah, no, in a bog standard way. But this is what I was saying about us all living too long and stuff. Mm. It just, it just makes it worse when it does come to us being a ghost. I don't know what you're talking about again. That sentence made no sense. Just, if you are going to be haunted, right, say, I know you're going to say, well, I don't believe in them, so I'm not worried, so don't be going on about it. Mm. But say, like, you know, your new place that you bought, you move in, and you go to bed, and there's something moving about the room. Mm. You see it, mm. it's a ghost. Oh no. Okay, look, let, let's, for the sake More of argument, likely, a Siamese cat called Ollie. No, because that's probably got its own room. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is, would you prefer to have an old person moving about looking at you, or just a young person? I'd prefer a youngish person who looks normal and he's sort of floating about, and you go, oh, right. that That looks normal, floating about. No, but but an old woman would really scare me. Some ghosts are always going to have a bad reputation because they look scary because they're old. So that's... You talk absolute shit. That's all I'm saying, so... Can you now believe going... we ever charged for this? No, but look, <laughs> if, if we are going into another life, right, after this... Which we're not, We move yeah. on to another life. Yeah. We're not going to move on. That land, say if it is like another world, where we go and we plough fields and we grow crop, it, crop, croppage. We grow crop, crops, uh, crops. If you want. Yeah. Um, well, I would like to use the English language. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's too much fruit about, so just a crop, just something we need too to get much by. Fruit about. <laughs> <laughs> He's got an answer for everything. That's so we grow some crop. Yeah. yeah. So you grow your crop, and uh, now if we're all going into that other land or world or universe, mm. old, who's going to do the cropping? <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh you I, i've never heard so much crop in my life <laughs> it's a load of old crop i, I had to go for a an ultrasound right isn't that what you do if you're pregnant yeah but the do you know i've had kidney stones Are you expecting? we talked about right, it in, yeah. the, in the other podcast and that, that we've done right uh, I've had a kidney stone. I don't want to go on about it. Uh, but it hurt. It was painful and that. Well, you are going on about it. Yeah, yeah and there was no, nothing. No, but I'm just saying. It's routine. Don't worry about it's it. It's not routine. Well, uh, well, why do they have to keep going back? Then? Why do they have to keep going back? You're, you're yeah. questioning me. You get into a routine. Out. Keep going back. It's better than working. It. You don't have to you know, the sell the book. No, no. If holiday or hospital. Holiday or hospital. Holiday or hospital. I don't know. I just say that we've got a book out. Right, the world of Carl it's, it's it's out now. When he goes on holiday, the first week. Right, uh, he, he's in and out of hospital. He's doing no good. He's got to go in again. He goes away with his family like twice a year. Goes away with Suzanne's family twice a year right. he's now said he doesn't want to do any press for it because it's boring or he doesn't want why don't you why don't you plug in the book well, i mean if you if you're an author you've got to put, I've, get behind I've it. bought books without hearing someone telling me to buy stuff no you're you la buy you're stuff. lazy you're no, lazy I'm, I'm not lazy it's just that i'm sick and tired of putting telly on or the radio and having people telling me oh you've got to buy this you've got to buy that no i don't have to do anything i'll have a look myself when i'm in a bookshop 
Let them just find it. But there are hundreds and thousands of books, Carl. They may not find it. Well, You're trying to look. direct them towards it. I'm, I don't want to direct them to it. I just, you know, if you come across it... But why have you books... put all this work into this book, all these illustrations you've done in extra material? Because I enjoyed it for me. Right, but you don't want anyone to read it, yeah, so why just put it in the drawer? Will, they will read it. They'll, they'll find it. People will find it. It's in the shop, isn't it? I'm always finding little books on different things and what have you. Yeah, you don't read them. You read the first couple of lines and you get it wrong. What, you know, it, it... So I went back, right, and they had the, uh, the ultrasound thing where they, they're looking to see what else is in there. Mm. Uh, and uh, when I was in the waiting room, there was a woman there. I reckon she was about 98. <laughs> <laughs> now, awesome. why, why are they rooting around in her to see what's up with her? Just let her, let her die. Do you know what I mean? If she's not in any Jesus. pain. No, no, no all I'm saying, I'm just saying, how long does she want to be around? And the, the, the problem is, she went off, right? I was sat in the waiting room, she went off into the little cubicle to put her uh, a gown on and because she's old she can't bend her arms and that so she came out with it all open <laughs> on the back <laughs> and it was horrible it looked like like a, a chicken that hasn't been looked after right it was all leathery skin and that right now the thing <laughs> is it's all very well keeping people alive but the surroundings of the body isn't meant to be lasting that long is it <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The actual skin of, of a body. It's all very well keeping the heart going, checking the kidneys and all that, but we're not meant to be around this length of time. Yet we are, we're messing with it. Yeah. Just do the gown up. You never do, you never get, you, you never see insects or anything like that that look old. You don't go, look at the state of that. Because <laughs> they live about four weeks! Yeah, but maybe that's the way it's meant to be, in the same way we, maybe we were only meant to live to be 40. But why did you go in for your operation then? Why didn't you just think, well, this is it, about the time? If they're looking after an old woman who's about 98, I'm having a go. <laughs> well, of you course. Because you want to live on. She, she might have been flirting it. with you. No, she was... <laughs> Keeping it open, just so you can have a little look. But I'm just saying, is that right? Is it right that the they're going in around. there rooting around and stuff? I didn't like it. I didn't like having it done. You know, I don't like going to the hospital and stuff and the doctors and all that. And she was pushing the... Uh, the thing down, and she said, oh, you can have a look if you want. So what, what down where? On on my kidney, she was pushing, like, this little scanner thing. Oh, right. She was going to have a look, I was going, I don't want to have a look. She's going, what's up with you? I said, I don't want to see me inside. Did they, have a did they put a tube down the Indian knob? Yeah, they did all that. We've talked about that in the in the other... But you were unconscious, books. weren't you? Uh, yeah, but it doesn't matter, does it? If you know it's going on, it still bothers you. It's because you're asleep. Well, not really, no. What do you mean? Well, why does it bother you if you're asleep? Well, that's like saying, oh, I woke up and the house was robbed. Oh, it doesn't matter, you're asleep. Well, no, but... It's still going to bother you, isn't it? <laughs> no, but, no, but you knew it was happening and you, you did it willingly. Well, it's not pleasant to go in and be made to go unconscious. That's the unpleasant bit, isn't it? And the uh, pain and Well, no, it's more it, the idea of it, isn't it? That's why, you know, doctors tell you everything they're doing. It's like, don't tell me, you know what you're doing, just do it. I'm well, not yeah, have so a go at it. You know, it's not like DIY people coming around going, oh, well, what you should have done there is, and you can go, oh, I'll have a go at that next time on my own without calling you out. Forget kidney stones again. I'm not going to go, oh, I've had it done before, I know what to do, I'll stick it up there. Doesn't happen, does it? But I can't, what was I saying? <laughs> so anyway, so she she was pushing the, the scanner over yeah. me, kidneys and stuff. Yeah. Now, it was weird with her because at no point did she make eye contact with me. Well, I don't understand what that means. Well, she's meant to wink and go, your kidneys are fucked. <laughs> no, yeah. but it's, ju it's just weird that she probably spends her days looking inside people more than she does talking to people. I just thought it was odd that she, that's, that's how she sees people. When she looks at people, she probably sees kidneys. What, the, this doctor? The woman doctor. The well, doctor? Uh, yeah. Right. So, what you're saying is... The strange thing is that she often spends more time looking in people, because she's a doctor, than chatting to them. Yeah. And I is it weird that Jonathan Ross is the other way around, because he's a chat show host, he spends more time talking to people than looking inside them? No, but even when I was asking... he's got a, a different job. When I was asking her questions, saying, uh, you know, does it look all right? Uh, what's it doing? Is it moving about? You know, asking her questions about my kidney. She could have quite easily have just turned around and, and give me a bit of eye contact. So she, was say, she was up. looking. I'm but concentrating. But she I'm was looking work. at the screen in order to answer your questions. Yeah, she's at work. She's doing something. No, but just if she was here now, going, Carl, what are you doing with that microphone? You'd go shut the fuck up. I'm doing a podcast. Did she run this scanner over your head? <laughs> <laughs> and if so, did she find anything? 
<laughs> we like to try and educate Carl, Rick, as you know, as we have done since we've known him really, and mm. he doesn't really seem to absorb any information. No. And um and I, I was asked recently when I was going back to Bristol if I would come and talk to a classroom of school children. Oh right. You know, just talking about careers and particularly my career. And uh I went down there. It was in Bristol, it was an inner city school, quite rough area. You're a son of Bristol. You're uh, Exactly they love me You're down a there, celebrated right? son of Bristol. You've done your Golden Globe winning uh, person who's returned to the homeland. It annoys me when I go down there that I'm not met as I get off the train like the Beatles used to be when they came back from America. By a know? mayor and a brass band. Hordes of people, ticker tape. Forever this day will be called <laughs> Steve Merchant Day. <laughs> exactly. It frustrates me that I just sneak back into town and there's no yeah. fanfare. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, basically they asked me to, to come talk at this school and I sort of batted them away and said I'm too busy. And so um, they, I foolishly left them uh, the opportunity to, um, to ask me again, which they did, and I didn't have a decent excuse, so I went. And I was expecting to talk to maybe a room of six formers. Um, they were nine, <laughs> these kids, nine, nine and ten years old. But I realised as I was walking into the school, I was suddenly really nervous. I was more nervous than anything I've ever done because I realised that I've not spoken to a child like that since I was a child myself. I just I've never interacted with them, so I didn't know at what level I would be able to pitch this this talk. You know, I didn't know what they understood, what ideas they understood. Obviously, in my mind, I was picturing Carl, and yeah. then I was ratcheting it up a few years. Sort of IQ wise, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And I went, so, you know, what did you talk to them about? And I, I was supposed to talk about careers, and I realised very quickly that they didn't really understand conceptual. Did they know you were? Not really. One or two of them may vaguely knew. One of them went, "What's Richard Rage like?" And I said, um, "You got a deep voice." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, that was one of the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, and uh, I'm supposed to be talking about careers, how to get into careers. And I start trying to explain the idea of being a writer and I say that it's very important to be able to get inside other people's minds, you know, figure out how they think and how you know, and try to understand other people. But this they didn't really seem to grasp. They started talking amongst each other. You know, they were just losing interest. <laughs> I lost them straight away. I was devastated. <laughs> oh no. So then and this is the worst thing, right? I started lying to them. Because <laughs> I realised that every time I told a slight lie because I thought they'd be interested. That's they were. Great. So I, I know Justin like, Timberlake. You're not joking, right? They said, one of them said, I understand you used to be a DJ. And I went, yeah, it's great being a DJ because you get to meet pop stars like Robbie Williams and Beyonce. Never met either of them. <laughs> Never met them. <laughs> and I, they went, one of the kids went, what's Beyonce like? <laughs> and I went, and I went, joking, I went, you wouldn't like her. And I said, <laughs> I said, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. She's, yeah. lo she's lovely, she's sweet, she's good as gold. I was making it up. Oh, and, but God. they were loving this, and the teacher was going, oh. would you all like to meet Beyonce? And they were going, yeah. And I was thinking, God, well... We'll bring her, I'll bring her down tomorrow. <laughs> well, exactly, but I don't know why I felt the... It was like I wanted to win the approval of these nine-year-olds. That's amazing! Because my own achievements, I realised, wouldn't mean anything to them. You know, I could yeah. talk about the people I have met, but they don't care if I've met Robert De Niro, but they're interested if I've met Girls Aloud. <laughs> Well, me and girls led some of the times we've had together, it turns out. <laughs> but uh, it is fascinating when you have to interact with, with people, with children like that, because I've got no concept of how to talk to children. I don't. To me, I can't grasp the difference, really, in conversation and chat between, say, a seven-year-old and a 13-year-old. I don't know at what point they learn stuff and pick stuff up. Do they understand? Do you know what I mean? It's, I find it really hard. I remember hard. once when I was about nine, uh, the... The, the headmaster, Debbie Headmaster, used to do a little fable. I've talked about him in stand-up, he used to do a little fable. There's uh, uh, one I remember where um, he uh, got a tube of toothpaste and he got someone up, he said, uh, you, um, come out here, squeeze this tube of toothpaste out on this board. And he squeezed it all out, right? And he squeezed it all out and emptied it. He went, now put it back in. And the kid tried to struggle and he goes, you can't do it. He said, it's easier to do something than undo it. <laughs> okay, go back to class. <laughs> like people are going, oh, I get it. I know what he means. Yeah, yeah. And they're just thinking, don't squeeze all the toothpaste out. Yeah. Just save some. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, there's there's no way they're going to take on <laughs> no, that exactly. metaphor at the it's age too of nine. Conceptual. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just stop misbehaving, or I'll <laughs> smack you. That worked. Carl, have you had to have any dealings with kids? How do you get on with kids? Do you relate to them, or are they just as angry and perplexed by your views as we are? Uh, I mean, it's with everything, isn't it? Everyone's different and that. I can get on with some young kids, all right, and some of them are, like, you know, a bit cocky and what have you. But um, I'm sort of getting on with a baby at, at the moment because uh, I've been made, a like, a, a godfather. Think of that. So, uh... Wow, who did they reject? I know. 
No, I mean, it, it, who said no? Yeah. Well, I, well, I did. No? I did at first, and Brilliant. then Suzanne said, "Look, you're not. You know, it's not really a choice. It's not like a job interview or something that you're thinking about. Is it a good thing? So you, you've, you've been asked. You should take it on." But what are they? What if they? Hold on. If you're the godfather of this yeah. kid, presumably you're friends with them, and they probably listen yeah, to this yeah, podcast. Good so now they're hearing for the first time that you didn't want to be. Yeah, but I think I think that's good because they can hear that you know it wasn't. I didn't just do it because I was asked. I thought about it. I thought it through. Um, you know, I, I was worried. It was kind of like, is this a job? And uh, I was I was just. Well, it's nothing it. but tokenistic, is it? You're not. Well, really this is what I looked into. I said we went back and I said right. I've been thinking about this thing. Uh, I've heard that it's my job. If anything happens to them, I've got to kick in. And I'd have to start looking after the baby. So I said right. How many of you are in your family? If that happens, am I going to start getting a phone call or what? And they said, no, there's a big family, you're not, you know, you're at the bottom of the list. So I was like, how many? And just finding out what their age is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and you know, I've only got a small flat, it would have to sleep in the sink or something, right? So I uh, checked all that out, and uh, all safe. So this, uh, this baby, it's spooking me out a bit because it doesn't blink. <laughs> and that's pretty weird when you're sort of talking to it and you're thinking... It's not blinking. Are you sure it's not asleep? No, it's honestly, it's weird. If something doesn't blink, it's like it's it's evil. Because blinking just makes something look a bit more friendly, doesn't it? <laughs> and I was stood there, you know, talking to it. I just tell it little stories about anything. Uh, it's lying there looking up at me. How old is it? It's about, must be about two and a half months. Well then, well, why are you telling it stories? Because it likes it. But it's just weird how, like, then I'll, I'll sort of forget the story because I'm looking at it going, it's not blinked yet. It's been about <laughs> ten minutes, it's not blinking. <laughs> so then I forget the end of the story and I just walk away because it's not bothered anyway, it's probably not listening, is it? But <laughs> what a pointless tale! What a pointless tale <laughs> now and at the time. I think it likes it. The kids like stories. Like you say, they're not bothered if it's if it's not true or anything. Or if you walk away before the ending because you've forgotten it. That's Brilliant. why it's not blinking. It's so dumbstruck at the idiocy coming out of your goal. No, but you don't need to wear endings of stories. Maybe, uh, like I said that's to you... That's the point. That's the point of a story, isn't no, it? No, it's not. That's the point why people... That's why people like stories because they're hooked into knowing what happened. No, because there's loads of films that happen and they have a funny ending. You leave there going, I wonder what's meant to happen and you make it up in your own head. You go... Well, I bet what happened is that person went off and got married to that woman, mm. and they lived that. And then, in your head, it's the truth. It's actually what happened. But, but I think that's better. Why are we told everything? Because so, what would your end be to a story such as the Elephant Man? Okay, he's rescued from the freak show. He's put in the hospital. He becomes something of a celebrity. Then what happens? He discovered he had big ears and he could fly, and he 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 joined the circus and he was the the main attraction. Um, I wouldn't change change the end that much because at the end of the day you can't you can't make something up that's not believable. At the end of the day, he's got an head like an elephant. He's not going to have a good life, is he? Mm. So there's no point making out that he went on loads of women fancied him, and you know he, he modelled hats. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so so he's got to die. The elephant man had to die, yeah. but at the same time, was shot by poachers. Just show just for his, show for a, his tusk. A, show a few positives. You know, because I'm sure there was good bits in his life. I don't know what they were, but, you know, l look at everything. Uh, what was he like when he was a little baby elephant? They didn't cover what he was like as a kid. But you can get away with them sort of looks when you're a baby. You can be an ugly baby and everyone goes, oh, isn't it nice? There was some woman in a cafe the other week mm. that I was sat in, and she came up and she sat down with her mate and she was talking loudly, going on about, oh, the baby's lovely. They said it's got uh, it's got lovely big eyes. Uh, really big hands and feet. Now that doesn't sound like a nice baby to me. <laughs> I felt like saying it sounds like a frog, but I thought I don't know her. There's only there's only so much you can say to to a stranger. I don't know what kept kept me from saying it. That's what I was saying before about there's something in, there's something. It sounds like a frog. There's something inside of you that stops you. Yeah, that's amazing that you had the urge to go. Oh, that doesn't sound like a good baby. What, love? I'm just listening to the conversation. <laughs> that baby you're talking about sounds like a fucking frog. Um, <laughs> yeah. But something stopped him saying it. <laughs> I just came back from uh, America, and uh, they love Halloween. They're obsessed there. over there. I mean, it's a, it's a proper, proper thing out there. Here it's sort of half 
hearted, a few people, a few middle class families sort of. Uh, but do you, you think know, it'll get up. more popular here, though, if we do find out that ghosts are about? Well, that would that never happen because they're not. No, okay? but if they did, then but, suddenly that would be a big. Well, be Ameri a big thing. America makes things famous now um, because of because of film culture and everything. So, yeah, it's it's all it's all. It's all from that. I, I doubt we uh, celebrated much at all, did we, 50 years ago? So I think it's crept oh, up. Oh, certainly over here we didn't. But it's no. been largely introduced over here through commercial ideas, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We can yeah. sell stuff for and, and And film and, and, and things like that. And, uh, but um, out there, it's uh, it was... Uh, they, they start, like, weeks and weeks before, and they're decorated, like, proper, proper. And um, But I saw a baker's, a little bakery in, um, in, in Soho... Um, and uh, it didn't look right with cobwebs all over it and spiders on the buns. Yeah. And but even though it's fake, it just it's just I don't think you should do it on a bakery. It, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. It's it's think, well, that that's, that surely puts you off yeah. the the product a little bit. I, I always know. find it a bit depressing. Like last, I remember going into supermarkets and you see sort of these old women who who you know in their sixties and they're doing this job they don't really want to be doing but they've been made to dress up as a hat I know as a witch or as, as Cinderella and it just well they could do it, it in like a morgue or something just to sort of brighten up the place well just so people aren't that scared imagine that imagine you're going to identify your your your, your dead relative and they go what's the spiders all over it's uh, 31st October no, oh, but, okay but just make it a bit spookier and have a bit of fun with it and let's not get serious about you know like I say passing on yeah, but, but those sort of people have to take their job seriously. I remember when um, my mum died, and um, uh, I had to go along, and I was talking about um, uh, the what wreath they wanted, and this this person, uh, quite rightly, had to turn off their sense of humour in a way because I suppose they're so they mustn't offend anyone. So I had to. He spoke like that at all times. <laughs> yeah. At all times. Okay, and what what um, would you like the wreath to say? Um, she was a mother and a, a, a grandmother. I went, yeah, my uh, mother, grandmother, and, and uh, what was her name? I said, uh, her name was um, Eva. I said, um, and I made a joke. I said, do we get a discount because her name's short? And she went, well, actually, um, didn't laugh, didn't, didn't get yeah. that at all. She just went, yeah. just answer the question. She went, well, actually, you pay by the letter. And I thought, okay, that fell flat. I'll go again. I went, well, uh, a friend used to call her E. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went, I'm joking. She went, okay. Nothing. Yeah. Bad audience. <laughs> bad yeah. time, bad audience. Tough crowd. Yeah, undertakers, so, never known for their... Yeah, um, exactly, yeah. Their they life. don't crack jokes, Carl. A, a, a friend of mine um, was um, tra trained to be a doctor, and um, in his first year, uh, when they actually they practice, they intern at the, the hospital, um, he was watching this patient, and... Uh, Two other doctors came in, and I won't say his name. Um, they said, uh, "Can you um, can you go and check on Mr. So and So?" He went, "Yeah," and changed his drip. So he went in, changed his drip, came back out. The doctors came after about ten minutes. They came running and said, "What did you do? What did you do?" And uh, they went in there. They said, "I just changed the drip." He goes, "Well, he's dead. He's dead." He was going, well, uh, "I just changed the drip. I did this and that." And they started laughing. He goes, "No, he was dead when we sent you in there." Yeah. Now, that is almost excusable because it's imperative if you're a doctor Absolutely. to become accustomed to yeah. Yeah. the fact that people die and that it's... Exactly, you know, yeah. It's so, that, so they were making a joke about a, a dead body that means nothing to them other than professionally. Yeah. You know, they were getting through it. He thought he'd just murdered someone. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, he thought he'd just killed someone. Um, but yeah, they have to be desensitised. But they wouldn't do that in front of the relatives. They wouldn't go... I had a laugh earlier with a young intern. Um, when your dad died, we sent him in to change the drip. Didn't even check. <laughs> it was quite good. Anyway, let's get him out of here. Not what they do, but they do have a laugh. I heard about a doctor who was uh, working on a brain, right? Mm. Um, and apparently when they work on the brain, it's best if they keep you awake. Because, um, you know, just so you can go, that hurts a bit. And they go, oh, we best not touch that bit again. <laughs> That's right? the reason, Rick. Amazing. That's the reason. No, there it's is amazing. Certain, there's certain operations, isn't there, where they go, you know... We can knock you out for that, but for this one, we want to know. Well, it's probably because the awake. brain needs activity. to be active in order to. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, no, anyway. it's so you can wake up and go, yeah, no, that hurt. That, that stings. Hell, oh, that stings. Don't pop that in there. You can't feel anything in the brain anyway. No nerve endings. Really? You what? can't. 
Can't feel it, can you? Well, maybe there's another reason. But anyway, his head's open. He's sat on this chair. Um, the doctor's going... I reckon you know, he was laying down. I thought he was laying down, but in your world, he's not. He's sat on a hard-backed I think it's more like chair. in front of a mirror, like a hairdresser type thing, right? <laughs> and he's cut the skin off. Uh, go, you, yeah, get a bit shorter there. So he's... he's so t- for the weekend, sir? He's oh, I won't be shagging with no brain. <laughs> anyway, so he's, he's cut the skin off and, uh, you know, chopped a bit. And you're always, you're always going to get bits, aren't you? Sort yeah. of. Whenever you cut anything, you end up with a bit missing. <laughs> but anyway, somehow it's it, it, it does the brain stuff. He fixes it. I don't know what he was doing. But he don't f- you? He you, don't know about, you don't know about. You don't that. know the intricacies of brain surgery. That I find perplexing. So you're not a neurosurgeon. I don't. I don't want, oh, okay, so they on. sorted out the problem, right? Mm. And he goes, right. All we've got to do now is uh, stick the uh, the head bit back on. Yeah. Um, That's what it's called, by the way. The oh, head this bit. This happened. This happened. Yeah. The head bit's connected to the <laughs> face bit. Yeah. So he sticks. Nurse, it. head bit. <laughs> Doctor, do you need leg bit? Not yet, nurse. Head bit, then leg bit. So they stuck the the head bit back on, <laughs> and then uh, can you pass me the sharpie sharpie thing? He was trying to sew it, and he was going, "This isn't fitting this." He's going, I don't know. And, and you know, like, because the patient... Right, if this turns out that it's <laughs> someone else's head... Or no, 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 a, no. a toupee from the doctor next to him, <laughs> yeah. or a cat. Meow! No, You've sewn a cat to my brain! <laughs> it's none of that. He's trying to sew it, and he's thinking, why isn't it fitting? And he's thinking, is it because the head's swollen? Because, you know, he's been messing about in it, and things yeah. swell, don't they? And messed about yeah. with. So he's messing with it, and he's going, I don't, I don't understand this. And he's panicking a bit, because the patient's awake and chatting and stuff, and, mm. you know, what, it's difficult to have a normal chat when you're panicking a little bit. I know, bit. there's a queue as well. People want their brain done. You know, they're, they're just reading old copies of magazines. They're going, hurry up. So, <laughs> I'm going out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to wash it? No, 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 just, uh, I'll wash it later. Just, just, just take it off, do the brain, put it back on. <laughs> anyway, what happens is, he mm. has to start rubbaging. It's <laughs> a start rummaging. Sort of rummaging. 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 No! There's no N before the first G. Rummaging. Well, he starts looking through the, uh, he starts having to look through the bin. Because, oh, what? Because he knows he's chucked a bit away of the skin. Right. Oh, where is it. this surgery <laughs> where a bloke's sitting up in front of a mirror and there's a bin? Is there a little basketball ring above the bin as well? So when he throws things, it goes through there first. I'm just saying that's what happened and you were saying about things that happen you, and you've got a joke about so it. So he's rummaging and what, what happens? He said to him, he said the, the fellow was starting to sense the nervousness and he said, what's going on here? And he says, oh, I'm never going to believe it. I've, I've lost a bit of your skin. Lost a bit and, of your uh, head, yeah. I can't Why is so- he cut? I don't understand. Why is there... Why That's is it in what two I mean. Bits? Because because things just break up, don't they? It's like chicken. When you see him walking around, everything's in place and it sticks together. You cook it, suddenly it all breaks up. And he, he cooked his face before he <laughs> cut it out. I'm just saying how how flesh it sticks together well. Yeah, when but he'd, he'd, he'd cooked the scalp before he'd taken it off his no, head. No, but it's he? just an example of how oh, skin okay. can break up with the muscles and everything. So he's rum- he's rummaging in the bin, and does he find the head? He found the bit, and then he's like, "Oh, sorry about that." And he, he sort of managed to stick it on. Right, he didn't stuff. wash it off or anything. Yeah, I'm he sure he gave it a bit of a rinse. But um, <laughs> but I'm just saying how. Nonsense. You know, you've got to make a joke out of stuff, haven't you? Yeah, it's bollocks. If you're a doctor. Okay, that's good. So where was the joke in that story? At what point did... When, I thought this was a story well, about how jo- doctors have a sense of humour. Yeah, when well, did he make a joke? And he sort of laughed and he sort of said, oh, there you go, it's back on, but, oh, f- good job we... You know, the bin men didn't come or whatever. And they, <laughs> and they made a joke out of it. I've never heard <laughs> such nonsense. I've, I've never heard such that joke nonsense. Right, Carl, let's do a competition. Chance to win uh, some of the product that we've got out that Carl doesn't want to um, talk about because he's too lazy. No, it's not that. If it's um, well, if you do want to uh, win a copy of this book, um, Ricky Gervais presents The World of Carl Pilkerton. It's by um, all three of us, uh, and it's some of the uh, uh, musings and thoughts and ideas from the, the podcast. Carl has uh, um, got some new theories. It's illustrated throughout... Um, by Carl Pilkington. By Carl Pilkington. It's got um, excerpts from the diary. They're genuine, aren't they? They're just... They're photostated things from the diary that yeah. people haven't seen, and it's fascinating, Reed. Um, we can sign that. We can also give you a uh, copy of this new three-disc set, CD of the best of... Is it the first series of the Ricky Gervais show? Yeah, well, it's got everything, actually. It's uh, It's got the whole um, 12 first series that, that we did with um, Guardian Unlimited, the award-winning, record-breaking podcast um it's also got uh some excerpts if you want the, the best of you can put that on um and it's got uh one hour of new material which we recorded especially for it but you can't get that you can't buy that in the shops till the 13th of november and i throw in the new flannimals book flannimals of the deep it's the third in the trilogy carl are you excited about that yeah and the the question is uh do you want them 
Okay, that's the quiz question. That's the quiz question, yeah. Okay. Is if that a trick question? No, 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 no. It's just the, the, the first correct answer. Uh, I'm not going to worry what the correct answer is, but do you want them? And think, what you know, if you do want them, then that might, you know, do, do, you know what's the answer? Uh, and you can send that to... Podcast at rickygervais.com. Include your name and address, and if you're the lucky winner, then we will send this stuff to you if you want it. And it's the first come, first serve, okay? So the first correct answer to the question... Do you want it? Do you want that stuff? Do you want? Do you want? Do you want flannels in the CD box set and the book and that? Okay. Well, if you know the correct answer to that, podcast at rickygervais dot com. Good luck, everyone. Well, thank you for listening to the first of these three special podcasts uh, with Guardian Unlimited. Um, the next one is out for Thanksgiving, twenty um, third of November. We don't actually celebrate Thanksgiving. What is Thanksgiving? Uh, it's a it's a thing in America, right? Uh, it's like the, it's like the big holiday. Probably probably rivals Christmas. Probably bigger than Christmas. In well, what do we do here? But we don't celebrate here, do we? So it's a, it's a day, isn't it? Yeah, but no one's going to remember that, are they? Twenty third of November, they can remember, can't they? Yeah, but it's nice. Well, they should it's remember a... that's one day before my birthday if we're going to celebrate anything. Okay. Well, we've got this one. The next one's the 23rd of November, and the next one's the 25th of December. Can we... Well, how can I remember 25th of December? Um, well, Christmas. That's fair enough. That's Christmas, but Thanksgiving, we don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Okay. The next one's out about the 23rd of November. Then yeah, after that, about the 23rd... Twi- the day before my birthday. Oh, they're going to remember that, aren't they? It's Steve Day in Bristol. Yeah. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this special edition of the Ricky Gervais Show, the entire back catalogue is still available on iTunes under audiobooks, by the way, not podcasts, audiobooks, and you can get everything we've ever done. I'd like to thank the guys at Positive Internet for hosting this. Those great guys, what would we do without them? So, it's uh, goodbye from me, goodbye from Steve Merchant, Bye. and goodbye from Carl Pilkington. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Welcome to number two in this uh, second series of the Ricky Gervais Show. With me, Ricky Gervais. Hello. Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Well, uh, I've been away. Um, I had a little bit of a, an express tour of uh, America, um, L.A. and New York. And uh, they're all talking about one thing out there. Carl Pilkington. Really? Yeah. Um, I-, I hooked up with the Simpsons lot. They all listened to it on their their iPods. I went down to the American office to keep an eye on, you know, things. Yeah, check, check it, check it. Well, as we get money for old rope yeah, doing yeah, next yeah, to nothing, yeah, yeah, I thought yeah, I'd yeah. show him a face. Yeah. They're big fans, Carl. I, I met up with Jason Bateman, you know, Arrested Development, and uh, he knows how stupid you are. David Letterman knows what an idiot you are. Mentioned on the Letterman show. I mean, unbelievable. David Bowie listens, and they're all listening to little Carl Pilkington. I think... When I think of people like that, like, like pretty much geniuses in their yeah, field. Yeah, sure, yeah. But uh, when I think of Bowie listen to it, I still think of him as 26, dressed well, as... Well, dressed as Ziggy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. With a pair like... of those big 70s headphones. <laughs> yeah, and it's going, hey, Mum, can you turn the TV down and listen to Pilkington? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I love his kooky outlook on life. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, Christopher Guest. Now, Christopher Guest um, empathises with you a little bit because obviously everyone else sort of knows how stupid you are and not understanding concepts like, you know, the infinite amount of monkeys. But he empathises with that because he thinks that sometimes... He, he thinks that he sometimes doesn't understand concepts that uh, seem obvious to other people. However, um, I think he's being polite. I don't think you've got a lot in common with him because he did all that other genius stuff. You know, what you did was do the washing up with your pants pulled down slightly. You know, it didn't have the same effect to say... It's not spin- as influential as Spinal Tap. Oh, wait, for Guffman. <laughs> no. no. I mean, unless people... Uh, maybe that's sweeping the nation now. Maybe if someone sees someone nude in a room opposite their house, they immediately they get, get their cock out. They go genius. <laughs> that's genius. Well, I did a, uh, uh, an appearance at the Oxonian Society in New York. It's a Princeton College uh, run event, and they have, like, academics, artists, political figures. They have uh, heads of industry. They had world leaders. They've had Prince Hassan uh, of Jordan, and there was a Q and A afterwards. And one of the questions was, "Is monkey news coming back?" Yeah. 
in that sort of forum. Mm. I mean, it's, yeah. it's... I believe they also asked that of uh, Bill Clinton. <laughs> they did, yeah. <laughs> now, Carl, is, is monkey news coming back? I mean, maybe. It depends what goes on out there. It's gone a bit quiet, hasn't it? <laughs> on, the moment, what, on the monkey front? <laughs> yeah, that, you know, that I don't know if they're aware or whatever that it's being covered, but it's just like, you know, <laughs> there's no point, you from. can't make news, can you? All these news channels, that's the problem with it. They've committed to saying we're a news channel, you've got to find news. Well, don't do it like that. Sure. I'd say put something else on. If now what's going on Cartoons. in the world. Just, just... Is there often no news in the world on the planet Earth with six billion people? Is there ever a day when they go, no, nothing? But, but I'm just saying the news is... Uh, how, what, what is it, about half an hour long? That's There's news channels well, that are 24 yeah. hours. But yeah, you're thinking of one specific news programme that's on in your house. Yeah, but I'm just saying it's half an hour. How much of that... No, well, no, no. You look again. You, again, you don't... You, I've told you that not all news programmes are half an hour by definition, but you go anyway, it's half an hour. Again, you didn't listen to me. Why do you think all news programmes are half an hour? They're not. I'm just saying... Uh, how much of that do we actually need to know about? But we don't need to know about any news. There you I go. mean, a a outside sort of dangerous situation. It's interesting. It's entertainment. People want to be aware. People want to be hooked up. I mean, I, I don't, um, uh, you know, watch the news much or read papers. But it's funny when I'm away, I do. I suppose it's because you want to feel connected with with what's yours. It's that feeling of being part of society, isn't it? No, but there's there's places, say like there's places where they don't have telly, right? And they're not watching the news. They're still getting on with life. Yes, they are. And yeah. they're bogged down with their own problems, which is the way it should be. Say, like at the moment, I've got a leak in the bathroom. Right? Have you? It's doing me heading. <laughs> so I, I put the telly on to get away from all that. And then you put the news on. They go, oh, there's a you know bad weather in what's it? You go, oh, don't tell me that as well. I like it when you hear about inventions that are coming out or you know uh, stuff they're doing in science. But you uh, but you told me the other day that you thought everything that needs to be invented has been invented. Something they said in 1900. But, uh, so what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I mean, they are sort of playing around now. Like, they've, they've said they've made, uh, like a, a heart now that can be bunged into a body if yours isn't working and keep you going. But why is a, why is a heart that you can bung into someone to save their life, why is that a bad thing? Just because it's another thing, isn't it? That's we meant to die from from the year dot. Uh, things <laughs> live. You have your bit. You knock about, and then you die. If you're going <laughs> to live forever, how do you plan stuff? Right. That's the way I look at it. Sure. You sort of go. How big would your diary well, be? Well, that diary would become intimidating, wouldn't it? This is what I'm saying. You have to fill that in for the rest of and eternity. You, and you get bored. You get bored with living forever. And you know. But I agree with you. You get bored of people. You'd have to keep making new mates, wouldn't you? Because you've have discussed everything by the time you're about 110. <laughs> <laughs> 110. So it's kind of like. Go. You have the same concepts that you worked out and decided that were true at about 10, I think. I look at life like a. Like a, big book, like a big book. <laughs> right, OK. Yeah. Right, and, you know, sometimes you get halfway through it and you go, even though I've been, you know, I've been enjoying it, I've had enough. Um, Give us another book. No, 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 no. Your metaphor, analogy, whatever you're, you're trying to create there, falls down with let's have another book. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You, you can either opt out of life or stick with it till the end. You can't go, ah, be someone else now. You can't do that. I know you think you can. And I think in your world you can, you know, you possibly be injected into an old woman's head <laughs> when you've had enough and you come out a little baby. What I mean is, at the moment, you know, my life... Uh, I'm going to live to 74, 75, okay, right? right? So, yeah, I'm probably on page... What am I on? A, a book that's got about... <laughs> this is painful, Steve. This is really painful. Come on, sorry, I'm, carry I'm, on. I'm on... I Save My Book's got uh, 300 pages in it. <laughs> yeah. If you, <laughs> few pictures and that. Um, <laughs> it's a picture book. That's the great thing about Carl's life. I, it's, it's a like, book for children. It's a, it's a pop-up book. Yeah. And it just, every page he pops in, he goes, all right. <laughs> all right. I'm probably on, like, page about 170. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to die at 74. Yeah. He's reading a book with a few pictures in with 300 pages and he's on 170. Go on then. So, right, if, if the book was too thick... Right, and there was loads more pages. Let me tell you, this book is way too thick. Yeah. <laughs> if the book was m more thick, yeah. <laughs> the book could not be thicker. If there was loads more pages left, I'd go, I can't be bothered reading on. Right. <laughs> 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 
Okay, <laughs> let him finish the analogy. Didn't know that when he saw the book. You don't. We've got to finish this analogy, right. otherwise we're going to be here all Listen, night. Listen, he must have known how many pages there were when he got the book out of the library. Yeah, but the way they write books, <laughs> they're painting pictures more at the beginning. You're going, this is good, and then it it gets a bit boring as it goes on, doesn't it? Okay, well that works. So you're saying that you were you no, were young. No, it doesn't work. Well, no, you just accepted no. that that's what all books are like. No, but there's a little bit of poetry in that because he's sort of he's actually saying that you know, when he was young, his whole life was ahead of him. He couldn't wait. The whole world, the promise that he was given of this world, and now he's he's, he's a bit jaded and he's more cynical, and he realizes that the world hasn't got uh, as much to offer him as he thought it was. Is that what you meant? Yeah. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> Well, Rick, you're not the only one who's been away. I know you've been off working, yeah. but I, at long last, have taken a bit of leisure time. Go on. And uh, <laughs> you've probably heard of the Rio de Janeiro Carnival, only one of the uh, the hottest, uh, you know, events in the world oh, calendar. Yeah. <laughs> imagine me down there. Oh, Rio, God. you can imagine, did not know oh, what hit it. Oh, God, oh, my, imagine, were you like uh, Paul the Party Animal Park? He would not have been able to keep up if he was with me. God, what did you do? Oh, what did you get up to? Well, let me tell you right now. Um, Day one, I almost drowned. Day two, I got a foot infection and spent the day in the hospital. And the rest of the time, I had diarrhoea. <laughs> so that's uh, that's the, that was a hell of a that was a hell of a time. Carnival. Yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, I was able to watch some of the carnival on TV, oh and right. it looked brilliant. It looked did amazing. It? Um, I didn't actually. I, it was difficult to make out because the TV wasn't actually in my room. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because in an effort to save money, I wasn't staying in a hotel. I was staying with a bunch of other people in some kind of like someone's flat that they let out, <laughs> and uh, so I had to look. I had to watch the TV was, like from my window, watching a neighbour's TV. And of course, when they changed the channel, you know, often during the juicy bits, I couldn't see anything. And um, so, but they looked really good. I'm bunged up at the moment just so I can get through the show. But I've just been on a 12-hour flight, and it is terrifying being on a flight when you know that any moment you could go. Because you know how the problem is sometimes the toilet's free, and sometimes then you've got to queue up. Mm. And the worst bit is that that sort of half an hour just before you land, when they say the toilets are out of bounds now. <laughs> I'd say I went twice before that in quick succession. The woman sat next to the toilet. She was she didn't know what was going on, the noises and stuff in there. And I was because I was really oh. panicky. Oh Christ! And um and so of course then on the whole flight uh, as we're landing, I'm just I'm really petrified because I'm thinking this could I, mean, I packed a pair of underpants and jeans in my in my bag in my hold all just in case it all went. Oh, and I was no. really because I hate flying anyway. And I hate landing because it's the most terrifying moment of the journey. Then it really was rumbling and I was thinking I got to get out of here. Of course you know you know. When you're in a hurry, everything suddenly everything makes you angry. The little old lady in front of me who's just hobbling along off the gangplank, get yeah. out of my way! Yeah. You know, just really with your with your with your bad hips and yeah, your bad and legs. Yeah, Zimmer frame. I know you've been through a war, but get out of my way! <laughs> yeah. And just anyone who kind of even passes you, oh, you just oh. and uh, so I, yeah, I managed to get there just in time. Got into the and it all went off. Man alive, it was it was grim. But th that was that was not anything compared with the first couple of days. Because the first day I was, I went for a walk, and of course Ipanema Beach is famous. I mean, obviously the girl from Ipanema, one of the most famous songs in the world, and it's Ipanema Beach is famous for just the beautiful, beautiful people that gather there, and it is extraordinary. I mean, the people are remarkable. There's so many beautiful women in Rio. It made me angry. <laughs> I was angry that these women were so attractive, and that you know none of them were even looking at me. <laughs> so, but anyway, I'm on the beach because I I was shopping and I needed a wee. Right, and we went for a quick impromptu swim, and I thought, oh, have we in the in Just the sea? Just think of him! I'm in the right with diarrhea! Well, I'm wearing great big long shorts, because I'm not going to try and compete with these boys, because they and are... And you are, could I say this, the whitest man uh, yeah. I've ever met in my life. Yeah. I mean, with his shirt off, you can see his heart like a newborn fish. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, <laughs> well, this is the thing. As I went into the sea to have a wee, oh, there was a discussion about this. As I went into the sea to have a wee? <laughs> yeah, well, I was desperate for a toilet, and I, and I was shopping, and I, so I thought, well, I'm never going to make it back to the hotel. So I'll go in the in the sea and have a little swim and, and just swim. Don't see him straining, just like a cat in well, a litter tray. Well, see, there was a discussion about this because I'm very much of the opinion that you should take your trunks down. And some people, uh, some of my friends are saying, just do it in your trunks and let's see the sea just wash it away. What a hell of a carnival! Well, and I think that's I'm against that. I've always been against that. Against that in swimming pools, everything, you know. So I so no, I don't think I'm against pissing in swimming pools. Full stop. It doesn't matter whether you do get in, take your trunks down or let. Don't piss <laughs> well, in the swimming pool. Yeah, well, it's fine, yeah. Fine, okay. Okay. Right, so, so, 
fish do it. So, so anyway, so I'm in the sea trying to trying to urinate, and I so I kneeled because I'm obviously very tall, so it's tricky to get deep enough for the water to to mask what you're up to. So I tried to kneel down in the water, right, and, and I got the I got John Thomas out, but then the water swept out again and just left me on the beach. <laughs> so, but luckily my my back was to everyone, so no one saw. So um. So I, so I can't I walk. think of a funnier sight than Steve Merchant on his knees with his little John Thomas out. I don't know how big it is. I've never seen it. But, I mean, I imagine it's in proportion to the well, rest of it, is it? I no? wish. <laughs> um, this, all I'll say is I've been a little shortchanged. But, um, so, I, so then I got up and I waded a bit deeper in, right? And uh, now I was, sort of, I, was, I was trying. I got it out. But what I didn't realise is that the waves just off the beach are really just uncontrollable. You never know what's going to happen. So one minute they're calm, and the next minute they're crazy like a tsunami. So um, so suddenly I see this giant wave coming towards me, crashing towards me, and I got the cock out and everything, and it grabs this wave, comes over me, and lifts me up, and flips me up in the water, right? And I'm floundering around. I can't see anything because, of course, I had to take my glasses off <laughs> to go in the sea. Because oh I didn't, wa- I didn't want to lose them. Oh God! So, so I, so I floundering around, and I'm wa- genuinely getting scared because I, as I try to get into shore, the wave just pulls me back again. So I'm waving to my friends on the beach, but what with everything. Well, what I don't realise is that because I'm wearing my, because well, I'm not wearing my glasses, I don't realise that I've been dragged along the beach some way, and I'm not actually waving <laughs> to my friends. So there's like a bunch of these beautiful women on Ipanema Beach. <laughs> watching a pasty white man waving <laughs> with his cock out. And, and what annoyed me was my friends were laughing. And that Steve, really, really angered me. if I'd have been there, I would have burst. But why wouldn't you have come running? Would you have come running in and helped me? Not with a knob out. What? So even though I was screaming and shouting? I'd have thrown a rope or something, or, or a dinghy or something. I'd have th- I, there's no way I'd have... No, uh, I, oh, I couldn't have saved you with your glasses off and your knob out. When, <laughs> if, I, if I ever save you, I want you to be fully dressed with your glasses on. So you'd have just let me go. You'd have, that would have been what you'd said to my parents. <laughs> he had his knob out and his glasses off. There was no way I was going to... I gonna... can't think of a funnier sight. Oh... Chimpanzee, that is running it down again. <laughs> yeah, this is where we read extracts from Kyle's diary. Um, we've had to wrestle it from him. He's never happy, but you know that's the way it goes when you're doing a, you know a show as popular as this. And I'm going straight now to this entry. My mam phoned and said that my auntie Nora, ah, uh, classic auntie Nora, wanted me to look on the internet to find out what the weather will be like in Spain at the end of November. I don't know where she gets her money from. Two months ago, she was asking me, Dad, how much it would be to get her back garden astroturfed because <laughs> she's sick and tired of the grass getting out of her. What does she want to do? Start a football team? Uh, <laughs> what does she want a back garden astroturf? She likes the sort of green look, but she doesn't like the headache that comes with it, so she's just looking into getting that false grass put in there. Brilliant. Don't know how much it is. But. Went round to Ricky's and had some chicken curry that Ricky's girlfriend Jane had made. Ricky and Jane were going on holiday for a few days and had arranged for Glyn to come in and make sure the cat was okay while they were away. I'm sick of that cat. I was surprised that they hadn't paid for the little shit to go away with them on first class. <laughs> but I'm getting a bit vitriolic in the uh, why diary. Doesn't he, uh, why doesn't he like the fact that I've got a cat and I, I love the cat? Why? why it's why just everything in that house that you've got gets sort of special treatment and it's a cat. And it what do you mean you get me? special treatment? You, sometimes we put I, food down for it, and yeah. sometimes it gets uh, uh, on our lap and we stroke it. You don't what, just stroke it. We're you not massage it. it. You massage its back. You go, no, you stressed out. Well, no, no it's out. good. It's, no, no, I'm not saying you stressed out. At no point did I say you stressed out. You <laughs> said, what the fuck are you doing for? Is it stressed out or something? I, 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 I like uh, touching my cat. To be honest with you, I don't like Ricky's cat. Oh, it, I can't believe it! Because it, every this. time I go around there, it goes straight for Magoolies. <laughs> yeah, instantly. You, yeah, he'd probably seen you in the sea and thought, well, if he's waving it about, I'll have a bit of that. But it's like the lizard thing you've got. It's kind of, it's just sat there. You've bought it a big box, right, to be in. Right, one, one is a salamander, right. so it's an amphibian. Yeah. It's not a box. It's a big vivarium. Yeah, but what I'm saying. And is as it, for, and, and and if you're going to criticise someone for just sitting there having a round head and doing nothing with its life, uh, people who live in glass houses, no, we've done this do one. You know, do you know what gets me though, right, Steve? When I was there, I was looking at it and I thought, is it dead? Right, because he's just sat there. Like, and then it was thinking exactly <laughs> the same fucking <laughs> thing. Sat there, not moving, right? And then on the top of the box is like a box full of crickets and stuff. <laughs> That's it. It's, it's it's food, yeah. Right? But they were more active than the thing that it was going to feed. <laughs> Get rid of the lizard. Keep them in there. More entertaining. <laughs> Don't understand it. 
A few months back, a girl who was having a kid showed me one of them scans of the kid that was in her. That's science gone mad, in it. I couldn't think of anything nice to say as it looked like a frog. <laughs> Do you know why we've got to that point? <laughs> what? Why, why have we got to see something that, that young? Why? Because people can keep an eye on the progress of the baby in the womb. Yeah, but why are they printing it out and stuff? That's some, surely that's for a doctor to see. Well, that's just an added bonus for people who are interested in but such things. That's like saying, why do you take pictures of anything? No, because normally pictures are like, you know, you in Brazil sat in the sea or whatever. You'd go, oh yeah, I remember that day, it was a good day or whatever. But it wasn't. it's just kind of like, why have you got to see something? It, you might as well. Well, you just, just ask the why have you got to see something that small? So why would you take a picture of Steve in the sea? No, but what what I mean is, why? At what point are we going to stop? Are we going to start sort of X-raying the fella's testicles and saying, well, there it is at a really young age? <laughs> Well, where, where, where are we going to stop? It's, because, it's just horses for courses, isn't it? Some people like to have a record of their baby in the womb. They That's like right. to show the baby. They're they excited sit, about it. They All sit right, down then. and they, they show the friends the, the slideshow. There That's the birth. Oh, that's the conception. Oh, look, Ron's going a bit mad there, isn't he? But why do I need to see this? This is what I'm saying. It was an awkward situation because she was happy with it. I was like, oh, God. You know what I mean? It was an odd-looking thing. I couldn't say, oh, it looks like you, because that would be a diss. <laughs> Met Suzanne at Euston Station. I said I would sort out the tea tonight, so I called the curry house. The fella couldn't understand me. I asked for two poppadoms. He kept saying, how many? I kept saying two. He still couldn't understand. I said, one more than one. He understood. <laughs> when we picked up the food and took it home, there were five poppadoms in the bag. There's a restaurant somewhere that sells knobs to eat. <laughs> no, there's not. There is. No, there's not. No, there is. It says that women can't eat too many of them, and if you want a seal's knob for dinner, you have to book in advance. Right, it's gobbledygook. This is the ramblings of a madman again. It's a trend, he writes. It won't last long. It'll be like hummus. <laughs> <laughs> but hummus? What, what, when did that happen? What do you mean? It's still going. It's a Greek traditional food. I know, but there's one down the, there's a restaurant down the road that that's all they do. That isn't a proper, that's a side order, isn't it? That's like having a restaurant just flogging tomato ketchup. <laughs> hummus isn't a meal. They don't even try and kid you and get you in and flog you just hummus. They actually say it's hummus today. <laughs> Not gonna work, we shut down within a month. <laughs> Called Ricky and asked what the difference is between the mind and the brain. Yeah, he did. That's a hell of a phone yeah, call. Yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Ricky did explain, but I can't remember what he said. I wondered at what age you are when the mind kicks in. Okay. Ricky changed the subject and said there is an island called Spider Island. There's nothing but spiders on it. A bloke went to visit the island and said there was a thousand types of spider in one tree. Yeah. Well, I, didn't, I didn't tell you that. No, I locked it up after talking to you. Oh, right. Is that true? Um, yeah, they just said there's, there's loads of them. What, what do you think about that? What do you think about an island that's just full of spiders? It's a, it's a bit it's a bit daft, isn't it? What do you think they should do, then? Um, I don't know, because y you need spiders. I, I, I don't know what they do, but they say a world without spiders like, wouldn't, wouldn't be good. Who says that? I don't know, someone... But, but they sort of do, they do something, there's something about if you did get rid of them all, it would have an effect. Well, of course it would. Any, get rid of anything, it would have an effect. Mm, not, not everything, no. <laughs> like I've said, you know, jellyfish and what have you. Well, it, no. The world wouldn't change. Well, it would. No, it wouldn't. Well, it would, because it's part of an ecosystem, so they're, 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 they're something's food, aren't they? No, but the, it's 97% it's water or something. Yeah. So... How much are they doing? Just g give them another three percent, make them water. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's more useful. <laughs> give them another three percent and make them water. Oh God! The rain ain't stopped. The old woman with the bent neck. Now we've not heard about the old woman with the bent neck Who's before. The old woman she's with a bent neck. Character. What's this? Incredible. She's um she's really old. And she's got a bent neck. Yeah, but tell us something else. I don't know what's up with her, but I read sort of comes out of here. But it's radio, we can't, they can't see what it you're doing. It sort of comes out of a, of a chest, so from behind it looks like she hasn't got an head. 
<laughs> it's really weird, right? I mean, she's old, and I don't know what's happened. Just Suzanne said it's sad, and her bones had sort of bent up or something, or maybe she carried something heavy when she was younger. On her head. And, you know, I, I don't know. It's sad and everything. Yeah. But she's just... she She's wandering up and down the street, always looks fed up, but you can see her. You have to sort of bend down a little bit. Mm. But... Our head's just... I thought, I thought I'd told you about She finds a lot of change. Yeah. I said, yeah. Well, as you write in the diary, the old woman with the bent neck is struggling in the weather. The rain must be running down her back. Don't know why she went out in this weather. Me back's doing me head in today. It does this every time the weather turns a bit grim. Ever since I tried to kick me height. <laughs> oh, I remember that. We've heard this before. Kicked me height and landed on me arse. <laughs> Was going to treat Suzanne to a trip to the pictures to see Breakback Mountain, but then remembered there is a programme on about two-headed kid tonight. <laughs> what two-headed kid? It's just a two-headed kid knocking about. <laughs> and I just, just <laughs> wanted to watch that. <laughs> what would you mean, a two-headed kid? It was, something on, it was something on the telly. I only saw the beginning of it. I thought, oh, it seems a bit heavy, this. The programme about the kid with two heads was a bit sad. They never go into the good sides of these stories. I asked Suzanne what happens if they sit an exam. She said she didn't know. So, Rockbusters, you gave out three clues last week. Have we got a winner? Uh, yeah. OK. Now, this was the first person to email in, but you pointed something out, didn't you? That we're going to do it this week, the first person, but we think maybe it shouldn't be the first person because some people are up in the world when this comes up and some people aren't up in the world. So uh, um, we're just going to pick one at random next yeah. week. So you've got the whole week, but we're going to pick one at random. But this one is this is the first one we got with all the right well, answers. That's the we first promised. one with the right answers, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, um, well, give us the clues and the answers. All right, so last week's uh, clues, there was three of them. Uh, I'll give you an initial of an artist or a band yeah. and a cryptic clue. Yeah. Uh, you work it out, you email it in, you win a signed picture and that. Yeah. Um, first one was, uh, well... I don't want a house that, that far away from the water. I want to be right on top of it. Go on. Right, so that was B. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, that, that was Beyonce. Be Beyonce. Like, yeah. Like a cryptic thing. Do you got that? Mm. Second one. I'd stand. Beyonce. Um, Beyonce. That Beyonce. part of my leg is English. Uh, the initial was B. That was Britney. Right? Britney. Yeah, so it's like British. Britney. But so you only take, you're just taking the one half of her name, are you now? Well, she's known as that now. Mm. I think she's known more, know as, she more, is, as, but fine. more as Britney than okay. Britney Spears. They don't really call her that anymore. Mm, yeah. Also, British isn't the same as English. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, I realised mm. that, but it was too late. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Brilliant. That's what you're up against. Just like that Ollie was with Millionaire. The last yeah. one was, uh, the initials were KW. Yeah. And the clue was, uh, the fitness teacher has got a speech impediment, right? So you've got to sort of think about that. You've got yeah. to think about a fitness teacher. Yeah. He's working out and that. Yeah. But he's got a speech impediment. So no, when no. it when it like comes to like finishing, well, no, you didn't, you didn't say all this in the clues. So. But no, well, well but no. it was it was just that that one was Can Kanye West, right? <laughs> Kanye so, West. So I'm just saying. Why like, did you the know, fitness teacher say Kanye West? Because he's got a speech impediment and he's been he's been working him out. They built up a sweat and he's like right. Well, no, you didn't say all that, so it doesn't matter. But anyway, but even even if that is the case, so what is he saying? He's, he's say saying all right. C can we can we rest now? As in, can we rest now? Yeah, just kind of, because they say that at the end, it's like, right, everybody... So he's got a speech impediment, he's very, very camp, and he's adding words. <laughs> OK, <laughs> so, but apart from that, it works perfectly. <laughs> so That is um, bollocks, you're an idiot. So that was uh, the first three. Who and, won? Uh, it was Gwimlin Howe Jones. Right, let me have a look at that name. There's no such name as Gwimlin. <laughs> what is Gwimlin? <laughs> is it something from Lord of the Rings? Gwillem Hugh Jones, OK, and uh, uh, a signed photo... Of uh, um, us is on the way yeah. to him. Lucky you. I don't know why he wants that, but uh, well done. He got the clue. I don't know if that's a good thing or not to get the clues, but there it is. Well, there you go. So, so are we going to do some clues for next week? Yeah. All right. Again, same sort of system. Uh, three of them email in, and we'll pick one at random. Right. First one. Uh, the initials R P. Right. Right. And uh, the cryptic clue. Uh, not cryptic. Well. Steel. That woman's flower, <laughs> right? If you're gonna, if you're gonna like nick a. Well, no, it's different now. What yeah. is it? If it's a good no, clue, let, him, let him finish it. Okay, what is the flower. clue? What is the clue and stick to it? Steal that woman's flower. Fine. Okay. RP. Right. Okay. Right. Second one. B. 
Is that the clue or the initial? B is the initial, right? And uh, cryptic clue. Um, keep keep whacking the cooker with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's a band or an artist. We kept whacking, you know, kept whacking the cooker with some sort what, of. What is it? Stick. Keep or kept? What's it? it may, uh, if it's cryptic clue, everything matters. So. It, well, it doesn't really. Just well. just think about whacking whacking. Well, no, no. The, give us the clue again. Just, okay. Just the, whack the cooker. No, with what some is the clue? Do the clue. Stick. Okay, do the clue. This is the clue, keep and the only right. But uh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. The initial is B, and the clue is... Keep wha whacking the cooker with a stick. Right, fine. But, but it doesn't have to be a stick, though. It well, could no, be like <laughs> an iron. It could be any sort of... Well, OK, then. Let's do the clue again, then. OK, so the initial is B. What's the clue? Keep whacking the cooker. Fine. The last one, uh, the initial M, and then the clue is uh, Venice. It's it's all water, isn't it? Right. How would you describe it, right? When oh Jesus Christ! Is this the one? <laughs> Let him finish the clue. I want to go home. I haven't slept. I just come back from Rio. He might never finish the clue. It keeps going. Oh, it's full of water. Right? 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 I think that sort of works. M. M is the <laughs> artist or a band. Email in uh, podcast at rickygervais.com and we'll pick one at random. <sighs> Win some stuff. Well, that's the end of uh, episode two in this uh, second series of the Ricky Gervais show. So it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Oi! And... Sorry, I just, I just want to explain why that that's a greeting in uh, in in Brazil. Is it? You see someone, hey! Oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't just a meeting. Where's your knob out when you're shouting at waving? Yeah, that's why I didn't let you see what was going on. I'm Carl Pilkington. All right. Audible hopes you've enjoyed this program. English is to win first prize in the lottery of life. So said Cecil Rhodes, one of the grandfathers of British imperialism. At its height, the British Empire ruled over one quarter of the world's population and consequently exported Englishness to the furthest reaches of the globe. But what is Englishness? Is it stiff upper lips and fair play, village greens and tea and crumpets? And who are the English? Are we defined by a shared heritage, a common set of beliefs, by the language of Shakespeare? Or in a multicultural modern age, when more languages are spoken in England than in any other country in Europe, do we need to develop a new view of what it means to be English? To discuss and define the nature and characteristics of the English, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, graduate of the University of Warwick, an award-winning writer. Thank you for having me. And Carl Pilkington, a man who, by his own admission, uh, didn't go to school, has no qualifications. Mention the head, talk about the head. I'm just trying to get to the point that he's not qualified in anything, or True. really is, uh, has no authority in any subject, or hasn't got the right to it. Got, the head. And it was known the world over as a man who has a head like a fucking orange. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think one thing that's very English is harping back and whinging combined. People saying, oh, England used to be better in my day, oh, England was better when I was a kid, England was better in the 50s or whatever. Carl, do you think England's better now? Are you happier now um, than you were when you were a kid? Do you feel that life was better in, say, the 1950s? Uh, I don't know, I wasn't around. Oh, so but you understand what it was like in those days? Um, You've seen happy days? I don't know, people always say, don't they? Old people always say, oh, uh, you know, it's a better life in the 50s. He was like, yeah, it was for them. Of course it was for them. They're old now. Being old isn't great, is it? So you're just happy with your lot. I suppose I was happiest at in about 1984. <laughs> right. <laughs> like a specific year. Why? Why was, just, was that? It was just I was free and happy. How old, how old were you? I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> He's just counting on his fingers now. 12. Right, OK. And it was just good. So right. the happiest days of your life were between the age of 12 and 13? Yeah, it was good. I had the world ahead of me. 
Mm. Um, Little did you know your hair was going to fall out and you were going to whinge every minute of the day. I had my bike. I like messing about my bike. You had your mates. I had a pet magpie. So you were probably the teenager that you eventually hate? Probably. Were you a good lad, law-abiding? I wasn't bad. I just sort of, you know, just potted about. I mean, when people talk about what was on the telly back then, I, I don't have that much memory of it, because I was always out. I was always playing out. What were you doing when you were out? Just playing about, just like on a bike or... Just riding in a circle endlessly through you, blizzards, I loved it. rain, sleet, loved hail. It. I never seemed to be in. I was always... When, when everyone always goes, where were you when uh, Band Aid was happening? I was always out on my bike. And everything was like... like you and McGregor. A, a memory is always sort of like coming in for some orange and looking at the telly and seeing Princess Diana's getting married and my mum says, have you seen this? And I'm going, oh, I'm going out on my bike. I was always doing that. The only time I was in the house... <laughs> this is why you don't know anything, because you never stopped. Yeah, but this is what being a kid's about. But all the I'm information free. you have, Carl, is as though you've gleaned it as you raced by on a bike. <laughs> it's almost like, you know, every piece of information you have... Your hair, it your is. hair blowing the wind. <laughs> Carl, your hair will blow out one day. Oh, don't talk, stupid ma'am. So, yeah, 12 to 13 was good. But you see... And it was all downhill from then, was it? 13. is your teenager then, aren't you? Life got tough. Yeah. How did it get tough? Just straight away when I was 13, my mum was like, you know, oh, it's your 13th birthday, you're a teenager now. Right. And she gave us a quid to go and get a cake to celebrate it. <laughs> Went to the supermarket, got a cake, and I just thought, I don't like the look of this. Don't like the look of the way the future is here. <laughs> <laughs> On his 13th birthday! <laughs> well, you were buying a cake, what, what did what you see at the supermarket? Just, that... It was kind of like, I don't know, I suddenly felt grown up. I didn't like it. But I think you were always about 58. Really, with your outlook? Well, yeah, my mum always said I was old. She said I was an old baby. She said I could frown before I could walk. <laughs> so they always had a bit of a worried look on my face. <laughs> Didn't say much, just always listened. My eyes moved about more than I did. Just sat there looking around, looking stressed. Uh, <laughs> my eyes moved about more than I did. <laughs> oh, dear, I couldn't walk. Well, I can't walk, but I'll try and get a bit of movement in my face. Mm. Oh, it's no. a yeah. workout, a baby workout. Hi, oh, babies. Well, if you can't walk, what about your face? Let your face do the walking. It sounds like uh, that horror film. It sounds like Pilkington's baby. <laughs> yeah. Just you lying there in your cot. I didn't like all the stuff that's set up for you. Like, me, me mum tried to send me to, um, like, a nursery. I said, no, I'm not having this. <laughs> Just like that. I said, I said when, I'm, when, I'm older, when I'm older and I've got to go, I'll go, but let's leave out this bit. And she said, all right. She was, <laughs> I love the fact that you can reason with her. I love if he's like, he's three years old with a pipe. She's going, you're going to know, she goes, I, I think not, man. <laughs> I mean, kids don't play out, do they? Kids, you know, parents are scared to let the kids play out, and that's why the streets are dangerous now, because no one's playing out on the streets. Whereas when I was a kid, everyone was out on the streets, the streets were safer. Because there was more people knocking about. Right. Let the kids play out. It must be like a constant, like a Larry painting, is front garden, do you know what I mean? <laughs> just loads of people just walking around. There was, there was never around. any problems. I was sort of taken away by some fella. <laughs> what? Who, uh, I what? Whoa, 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 no, whoa. no I, was in, I was playing about in the garden. Yeah. But my dad's mate, Tony, yeah. he did tiling with him. He <laughs> drove past. And he saw me looking a bit fed up, so he just leant over, picked me up, took me to the pub. Now, the thing is, there wasn't panic. People weren't going, oh, God, where's Carl gone? He's out. Just, just... How old were you? He's down in the pub. <laughs> yeah, he's, four, he's four years old, yeah. <laughs> well, he's only having a... He's down in the pub with Tony, probably, playing darts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about three or four. Sorry, so some bloke drives by who happens to be a friend of your dad's, thinks that baby looks grumpy. Yeah. I'm taking him down well, to the that's, pub. Well, that's what it was Tony, like. Tony, you bringing a baby to the pub? Uh, yeah, I might do, yeah, we're all bringing ours. <laughs> all right, see you later, mate. Well, that's what I'm saying, whereas now they go, the baby's gone, there's a big full-on panic going yeah, on. Yeah, but I think it says more about your parents that they didn't do that. They looked out of the back car and you were gone. <laughs> <laughs> Some bloke's driving off in a van. And they're just going, yeah. oh, well, oh, doesn't Princess Diana look lovely? <laughs> this is absurd. So what happened when you got down the pub? I just was there for a bit, and then... Uh, the for, for a bit? Just had a game of pool? Then my dad came in. It was like, oh, there you are. Mm. Oh, there you are! I love that! Oh, where's my baby? Going to the I'm just going to have a quick pint. Oh, there you are. <laughs> All right, mate. So, uh, yeah, I think things were better back then. <laughs> Rick, as you hinted at in your introduction, um, 
the idea of Englishness and England, it's quite a vague term, isn't it? It's, you can play loose and fast with it. I mean, for instance, I was uh, looking at some quotes about England, and John Major, former Prime Minister, he typified England as being a place of long shadows on county cricket grounds, warm beer, invincible green suburbs, dog lovers, and old maids bicycling through the morning mist. Very yeah. specific vision of England. But he never came to the estate that <laughs> I was born on, sure. or Carl was born. You know what I mean? I, I think I know of that. If we go for a walk around Richmond, we see people playing cricket on the village green, and, and it's lovely, but I don't know if it's, it's typical. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know where most people live. Um, but in a it's way, probably 50 50, isn't it, in cities and in the country, but, but that's wealthy country. But that's, interestingly, that's the vision of England that people like to subscribe to. When you buy your nan a, a box of biscuits for Christmas from Harrods, that's the image Ooh, of England that's on why the am front. I, why am I spending money at Harrods on my nan? Well, well, I just, she, she's out with sort of like broken custard greens. You've, you've earned a bit of money now. Well, What's I know, but don't, they don't need to know that. I mean, also, b both my grand... The mothers are dead, so it'd be. It'd Sorry, be a, that up, well, no, but I mean, who who buys their who who spends good money at Harrods on biscuits where she just suck them and and eat the Garibaldis and leave? The, I mean, I, I I don't know why I'm wasting money on the elderly. I, bit. I worry that you you've taken that too literally. I was trying to get to making more of a point, like an analogy, but I, mean, I don't shop at Harrods. Right. I don't. I mean, I, I, mean, I might you know get some sort of Easter eggs. Two well, days after Easter. Well, what do you think of this then? Um, we were in Fortnum and Masons after Christmas, and all, and all the crackers were half price. Good idea. And there was a box of crackers for 500 quid, down to 250 quid. And I thought, right, that's got to be the best prizes anyone's ever seen. I'm going to get Cartier watches in these things. <laughs> so we bought a 250 quid. I thought, oh, it's a bargain. It's half price. Got them home, pulled a couple, and it was a little notebook, right, that said wine notes. That's one. That, what? Hey, wine notes. So you drink a bottle of wine and, and go... you make a note. Make a note of it, right? There was another one that had something that it was like opera notes or something. And then there was one for uh, uh, um, travel notes, like what, what country you were. I'm thinking, what world are these crackers for? It was putting a cracker and going, I need it. Um, I, I filled up my um, uh, wine <laughs> notes book. It's not like... Uh, 500 quid? Yeah. I mean, for some little notebooks. Yeah, I mean, if you'd have paid 500 quid, I mean, I don't know who buys those. Well, I assume they're for presents. And it's I mean, probably the absurd, cliched, toff Toffington Englishman yeah. who has no sense anymore of what were of any sense of worth of anything, and it's just a crazy, you know, snotty-nosed inbreeding. There top. was a, there was a silver-plated like mussel, you know, like, like the clam, the mussel, mm -hmm. right? But you know, when you eat um, mussels, you scoop. I'm out with an open muscle. Sure. There's a silver plated one. <laughs> Who carries that with you? You get that out. We go, oh, muscles. Good. Um, oh, I, <laughs> I brought it with me. My silver plated yeah. muscle to eat muscles. I'm um, wait, this wine's delicious. Let me make a note. <laughs> That's absurd. <laughs> Again, you yeah. see, it's interesting you say that because those are little images of what we would like England to be, aren't they? They're pandering to that image of what we'd all like to be, that sort of upper-class English person who's worried about fine wine and good food. And again, I mean, is, does, this, does this England still exist? I'm presuming there's a small minority that does. But well, there are some people that, that are in that world that are posher than the royal family. Yeah. You know, I can understand what the Queen and Prince Charles are saying, but there are some people... <laughs> yeah. What? And I don't know what they're talking about either. Well, I um, was never really aware of class and the English class system until I went to university. Absolutely. That, I became I'd, aware of it then. Absolutely right. When I got to university and everyone sort of spoke like royalty, that's when I discovered I was probably working class. But when I hear those people who do actually speak in that kind of, oh, Jeff, Jeff, you know, that sort of absurd, oh, rugger, oh, you absolute bloody well, you bastard. Know, you know they, what, though? I don't mind the mega posh people. I don't mind that. Ah, bloody hell, yeah. Yeah, of course, take one. Take one. Uh, you know, I don't mind one of those. Uh, what I don't like is the ones that um, stand around in all bar one with a rugby shirt with a collar up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, those sort of, uh, are going to work in the city, yeah. and they're loud and think they're gentry, yeah. but they're, they're not. It's that middle bit. That annoys me more. That's, they've got this, that confidence, but without any of the charm. But that's the England that I think people think of when they think of it. It's the four weddings and a funeral England. And yet, it's not the England I experienced and grew up in. So, what is your typical image of an Englishman? Now? If I had to draw it for an alien, yeah. um, he'd be uh, quite squat, um, quite sturdy, sort of no neck, 
um, hairy. Are you just thinking of yourself? Do you know what? I, it would be my build with Carl's head. Really? And no neck, yeah. I think he's sort of balding and unshaven, and uh, he's like a shaved caveman. I think he's he's tough. He'd have tats. He'd he'd eat like a dog. A Ray Winston type. A, a, a sort of yeah, that sort of um, and he's Bob so Hoskins, just squat, strong, tough. Doesn't take any messing. Built like a giant wombat. It's the bulldog breed. It is the bulldog breed. I am thinking of the bulldog breed. Yeah. See now, my image of an Englishman is is essentially that cliched one. It is, I think, f Hugh Grant. So you're modern, you're straight well, away modern or now. I would say is either mixed between Hugh Grant and Roger Moore when he was James Bond. You, you see, that's I mean? another that's another small percentage of I Englishness that sort of annoys me. Those people that think they're James Bond, they think they can buy a suit and read GQ, and they're suave and sophisticated, and they get cars they can't afford. Or what they basically do, the people who think they're James Bond, all they do is work in a bank, come home, and flick through GQ at the adverts, looking at people in with wearing watches and aftershave. Who wears aftershave? Do you wear aftershave, Carl? Um, normally, it's, it, aftershave is a sort of thing I let other people buy me. It's like underpants. Underpants, tea towels, and sort of aftershave and that. <laughs> other people buying me. Who's buying you tea towels? My mum. Right, and okay. Every time she turns up, she's got Brilla pads and stuff. <laughs> I've got loads of them. <laughs> I keep saying to her, I don't need any of this, but she always brings a box full of stuff. Brilla pads, tea towels, underpants. The underpants size hasn't gone up since I was 14. <laughs> but that's, I can rely on her for that. So do you not have anything in your life which you would think of as being gentlemanly? Do you ever dress smartly? What about suits? I bought one suit that time when you invited me to the BAFTAs. That's the only suit. I wore it for the BAFTAs. I think I wore it for one other thing. I haven't wore it since. I don't like, I don't feel comfortable. It's not me. But don't you go to a wedding? That'd be a lovely advert, wouldn't it? Him with a suit on going, I haven't wore it since. <laughs> Carl Pilkington hasn't wore it since. <laughs> I don't you go to, to weddings. A wedding. No, I don't like going to them. I agree. I mean, even though you know them, they don't give you any time when you're there, do they? They just sort of, they don't know whether you're there or not. They're on cloud nine. They don't know who's around. It yeah. doesn't matter. You don't need it's to all, be there. With them, on a murder day, it's all me, 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 isn't it? <laughs> oh, what are they like? I know, unbelievable. You don't even get to make a speech, do you? Although I know you were annoyed, Steve. Steve doesn't like to part with money. I, don't, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I don't know what the politically correct term is. Stingy cunt, isn't he? Mm. <laughs> He's fucking mean, right? And uh, if he ever has to spend out on like, a wedding gift to someone he's known, you know, all his life, um, he look down the list and he find things things under twenty five pounds. Then if he if he bothers spending that much, he's furious when someone an usher goes just stick it there. Oh, it drives me insane. You spent well. Firstly, oh, I, I'm annoyed about the wedding list. I don't know when that's come along because I don't know why I can't just bring maybe something I've made at home. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why has there got to be a list of stuff? What bride, what newly married bride doesn't want a pair of homemade clogs? Exactly. Do you know what I mean? And then you arrive there and it's just, oh, thanks very much, stick it on the table. Uh, well, but the saying that, I think people very much appreciate you being at their wedding. No, I they don't, do. I, they remember if you were there. No, they don't. They do. They don't. You don't get invited to weddings because you ain't got any mates. No, I have. I've got. I know enough people. Everyone's getting married. But it's they're always in the middle of nowhere. That no, that, that annoys me when people say, "Come to our wedding." Yeah, fine. Where we're having Greece. Yeah. Well, no, down the road. I might make it down the road for the reception. Yeah. Go to quit. What you want me to book a holiday? and come to your wedding. Well, the thing that drives me insane when you do go is when they put you on a table with people you don't know. Well, that's I got it. all my mates there and they put, what, well, because uh, I got a mingle with some people, I don't care, I need these But that's what people. I'm not good at, They're talking to people friends. once. Talking to people who you don't know. No. Well, what sort of stuff would you make conversation about at a wedding? Uh, I'd probably say, oh, first of all, how do you know them? How do you know the people getting married? No. And then, like, you know, do you think it'll last? <laughs> I oh, where should we put him? Oh, I don't know. Is there a, is there a table for one? Oh, just you a table with the kids. Imagine being stuck with Carl Pilkington at a wedding. Yeah, what else? So you've asked them to think it'll last. They've gone. I'm sorry. Who are you? Uh, Carl Pilkington from Manchester. Right. Yes, we think it'll last. What else would you ask? So what was your next? Um, you know it's going badly. They're sort of like looking down their nose at you. They're thinking, why did they invite this bald-headed scum? It's just the, the last wedding I went to. It's going back a couple of years, but everyone seems a bit snidey. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because you've got a mixture of families there, haven't you? Yeah. And none of them really like each other. No. And I got stuck with an old fellow who had a flatulence problem. <laughs> That's so fun. And then he went on to say it doesn't matter, the suit's hired. And then it's just kind of... <laughs> I'm gonna die! I 
they're still shining their shoes and you know what I mean? I mean you sometimes can't even bother to put your trousers on or something. <laughs> no, I know. Well, I've got an elasticated waistband yeah. and they're, they're still fiddling with braces and buttons. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's that's what I like about Italians and that. There's a, there's a lot of So you respect. want to be Italian because when you're old you can sit outside a cafe and get more respect than you do here. Yeah. Look at the old people in this country. They never look happy, do they? Really. Most of the time, when you see them walking around, they, they go to pot. No one's keeping an eye on them. Well, it's a, an important thing, isn't it? That, that um, my uh, my mum. This is when she was about sixty, sixty-five. Uh, there was a, a neighbour who was uh, uh, like, you know, eighty-five, ninety, and um, again, completely alone. And my mum used to go on there every day. Do you want any shopping? Do it right. She, she was she was she was good for us. She was like her witness in the world, you know, to her existence. But I remember calling her once, and uh, she'd come back. I said, "What are we doing?" She went, "Oh, I've been around so and so." So I went, "All right." She went, "Oh, she won't die, Rick." <laughs> <laughs> like she's helping yeah. her, but she's yeah. thinking yeah. this yeah. is getting silly now. You were meant to go years ago. <laughs> yeah. <I> was, I'm, <laughs> well, that's the problem, you know. If you if you get pally with an old person, yeah, then you could be stuck with them for years. And having to do stuff, you know, that's what you don't want to do, is it? You you, you meet an old you know, an old fella, and then you've got to start um, popping in his sort of piles or whatever when he can't do them himself. You know, what do you do if you're... It depends how friendly you are, though. I mean, I'm just talking about someone you meet at the bus stop as opposed to popping the piles back in. <laughs> <laughs> how does that happen? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> just the ones on, on the estate I grew up on. As soon as he got to a certain age, there was Mrs Knowles who went mental. One right. day she seemed fine, next day she was chucking cans in everyone's garden. <laughs> I you could you just hear her coming. <laughs> Which was weird. Aren't you? Now you brought up weird people. There Go was on. a fella called Shorts Man. Right? <laughs> I'm so pedestrian! <laughs> oh, I love the fact. Shorts Man wore some shorts. Now, now, what I like, yeah, he did, but they were, they were really short. They were that sort where, you know, it's almost pointless having them on. What do you mean? They were just, you know, like shorts now for blokes, yeah. they go up to your knees, don't they? There's yeah. no chance, there's no accident happening there. There's go nothing going to pop out. Yeah. No. But shorts, man, he liked it. He liked the fact that that happened. Right. And he used to walk with, with big strides to sort of help the chance along. <laughs> so that he what? knew, with the big strides and the short shorts, yeah. they were going to pop out. Did you ever see it pop out? Yeah. Why did you look at the shorts? Just because it was it was like it was what like was it? it was like playing Buckaroo. <laughs> it was like when are they going to pop out? But what? <laughs> <laughs> it just what happened. So wh right, but so shorts man. <laughs> so he was an exhibitionist. He liked he mostly wanted people to yeah. see his veg. Yeah. yeah, and they were out more than they were in. I mean, they, they had a tan, right? <laughs> now the thing is, what what we like in England, I think we like that. We like local characters. The eccentric. Yeah. yeah. Eccentric's very. That's very British. Eccentric. Yeah. And, and yeah. I and I I'm glad I grew up round there with all them people. So am interesting. I. Well, there is a certain uh, mindset about you know, the great English, certainly the older English people. I mean, my grandparents are you know my grandfather died recently, but the amazing kind of eccentric, very English, seemingly. Um, no friends, from what I can identify. I don't know if this is unique to them or true of a lot of English people, uh, older people. They're terrified of what the neighbours might say. They always did that thing of speaking like that in case someone said, Yeah. Jack's in next door. Yeah. Like the, like the neighbours are constantly listening in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've got glasses against the wall. They're constantly listening into what my grand's got to say. Yeah. Um, they had about three teeth between them. <laughs> it was extraordinary. My grandfather had a, a plate of false teeth during the war that had a wooden pallet, a wooden upper wow. pallet with teeth on it, and those teeth slowly fell off during the course of the years, never got replaced. Were. So you, they'd sort of invite you to Sunday roast, and they would they would wake up at six in the morning to put the beef on, and they wouldn't have it till six in the evening. <laughs> <laughs> they would cook it. The biggest compliment you could have uh, if you made some food from my ground, if it was some beef, would be, oh, you're so lovely, this, so tender, you can suck it away. <laughs> she, if you could suck your Sunday roast through a straw, she was happy. Well, yes, she didn't have any teeth. Right, exactly. Basically, they got to about the age of 60 or something, and it was as though they were just waiting to die. It was strange. They, and they lived for another, or my grandfather lived for at least another 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, you must have been gutted. But you know, when my father, uh, my father needed a winter coat, a big heavy winter coat, and he was thinking of buying one, and um, my grand said, oh, don't worry about that, Ron. You can have your father's winter coat. And um, he said, well, 
but, but you know, he's, he's still alive. What do you mean talking about? You know, he, he needs it when the coach. She went, no, he'll be dead soon. Just don't, silly to waste it. Seems to waste it, you know, just wait. My father must have been waiting ten years for that winter coat. I love the fact he waited. You can, <laughs> you can see where did. Steve got it from. Of course he waiting. Did. Stupid, I'm waiting now. <laughs> Steve, you must be freezing. I am cold, but I'll tell you, it's a lovely coat. In English society, traditionally and now, is manners. Mm. I mean, obviously manners change, but etiquette. what is etiquette? What is good manners? Um, I think that a lot of that has been lost. Well, I was thinking the other day, have you ever heard of the finishing school? Carl? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Do you know that? Uh, no. The idea is that, you know, the sort of gentrified ladies, after they finished their education, they would go to finishing school where they would literally be taught, you know, how knives to... Knives and forks, walking with a book on your head, just things like that, what to say. I mean, that's... I mean, it's like, it's, it's like a, a year of being Eliza Doolittle, isn't yeah. it? Don't put your elbows on the table. You start you start from outwards, going inwards with cutlery. You know, you eat soup, the spoon goes away. But there's things like the, the fork. Uh, you're never meant to face those prongs uh, up. That you, so you either stab your peas or, you know... Mm. There's ways of eating soup. You know, the spoon needs to be moving away from yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Scooping it up and bring it back to your mouth. I mean, it's crazy, but, you know, the people that subscribe to that stuff would look at the way you live your life, the way you eat your food, Carl, and would be appalled. Yeah, how about In the same way we think that's absurd, they would think you're a disgrace. But who's, uh, as long as you're enjoying it. No, they would say no. Well, no, there are certain things that I can't stand. I can't stand eating with a mouth open. I think that's rude. I, 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 I banned chewing gum on the set of a film because it, uh, I think it's rude. I think it's rude. Those people stand there talking to you. Yeah, but we all know you're a preposterous hypocrite. I mean, the way you no, eat food, come on. No, I don't eat with my mouth open. I don't... Uh, I do eat with just my right hand, smash it and scoop it in, but, the, but I see nothing wrong with that. I would say it was slightly rude when you're ordering the bill and getting up to leave yeah. when I'm still finishing my main course. Yeah. I'd say there was a touch of rudeness But I go into that. a restaurant to eat. Yeah, but you're supposed to wait when you're with the other people and let them finish as well. This is my ideal restaurant. It is empty. They know what I want, and it's waiting for me when I walk in. I leave, still chewing, and I go put it on my bill. That's yeah. the ideal restaurant for me. Yeah. You're pretty much there. Yeah, I, I, try and, I try and... That's what I try and, try and do, yeah. Um, but, you know, there are certain things. I am one for manners. I think... I, I hate rudeness. I hate lateness. I hate all those things. But some of them are ridiculous. The albums on the table is arbitrary. Why? I mean, there's a reason you say please and thank you. Because it shows courtesy. Um, th those make sense. There's a reason you don't talk when you're eating, because it goes over and it's disgusting. There's a reason you don't lick your fingers and then put it back in the chips, because someone else has got to share that. But don't put your elbows on the table or, or start with that fork. I think it's ludicrous. You know there's those rules when you meet a member of the Royal Family. For instance, if you were at the Royal Variety performance and you met the Queen, mm. there's various rules they yeah, tell you, you about. Yeah, you don't fart or call her love. <laughs> exactly, for, for one. But also, you don't speak until you're spoken to. You have to do a slight bow. I was um, invited to the, the palace a couple of times. The first time was after the office sort of broke. And I got an invite. Um, a company of uh, Her Majesty the Queen would like you to come to a, one of those dinner parties. And um, I know what you're thinking. Why didn't you get one? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Well, well, well wait, wait, wait. I was, I was a big shot quicker than you because I was in it. Um, don't forget, you didn't appear until... Um, but uh, even series so, two. if we'd if we'd split the atom, they would <laughs> invite both of us. <laughs> Not just a guy who does the press conference. <laughs> so, so the thing came through, and I thought, oh, I don't, I didn't, I, I was worried about it to be honest. Um, but it just said, I will be attending. I will not be attending. Tick the box. And I couldn't bear to just tick, I will not be attending, because it was too harsh. So there was an RSPV number, and I phoned up, and it was obviously the, the head of the house or a butler or, I don't, I don't know, someone. Who, and he went, hello, Buckingham Palace. And I said, hello, it's Ricky Gervais. I just got an invite to come and... Um, and I, it sounds weird, but I couldn't bear to just tick, I will not be attending. Um, I just, he went, well, you're the first person ever to bother to do that. Thank you so much. I went, oh, um, my pleasure, sorry I can't make it. And, but I, I don't think that's weird. It is strangely brutal. It is strangely brutal, isn't it? I wonder if they've changed it by now. Yeah, there's a little asterisk. Thanks to Ricky Gervais, <laughs> it now says... <laughs>
I am too fat and lazy and busy eating cheese to visit your majesty. Uh, what I think is this, that no one's ever ticked I will not be attending. Right, yeah. So it was never a problem. Until, so why until, did you not want to go? Um, I don't know, I just thought it was a bit intense. And um, I I'd, I'd turned down all those things. I, I think I would like to go now, just to look around. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I just felt a bit funny just being invited there. I, I was invited to all those things at the uh, um, Downing Street as well. Mm. And I just thought... You're inviting me because I'm on the telly now, because I'm famous. Well, where was my invite when I was on the doll? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? With respect, I wouldn't have invited you <laughs> <laughs> circa 1983. <laughs> no, I haven't got a problem with, um, you know, going to Palace or... Um, except I do have a problem with sort of being wheeled around as, as a celebrity. Because I used to think if I was ever invited uh, to get given an MBE or a knighthood or something, I'd be like, nah, I'm not part of the system, you know, I'm a rebel, I'm outside. Now I think it would be, be quite cool. Well, I only think it's a problem for a comedian, because, you know, we're sort of meant to dish it out, and it's difficult to dish it out if you're being seen. What I do find weird is the idea of having to bow and scrape before people because I'm told to do that. Well, like, I, 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 I what I find is that idea of I'm, I'm, a, I'm obligated to be respectful to such a degree just because someone's the queen. Like, obviously, I'd always be respectful, but why can't I speak when she turns up? What I don't understand. That's how I find a strange what idea. What would you say, though? Well, I just say, you know, honour to meet you, Majesty. But, you know, I don't understand why I can't initiate that. Why, if I, but I, I don't find think it she'd weird. mind that. If, if you went, went honour to meet you before she'd spoken, what she's going to say? She's going to go... Cheeky cunt. <laughs> I talks first, lanky. <laughs> Carl, what do you think about all the pomp and circumstance around... Um... It's, it's all alien. It's not It's not for me. I don't like that sort of... Uh, I, I try and not put myself in the same sort of circles as, as posh people because it's just a different... It's like a different club, isn't it? It's like, like I said to you about young people and old people. There's such a different life going on. They say, like, the... The whale and the hippo are related. You never see them together. And it's the same with, with really posh, you know, well-off people and someone who's just getting on with their life. But it's, but I mean, uh, that's the thing that's changed as well. The stiff upper lip thing, that's out of the window now. I mean, it, it's like everyone's got a new addiction. Everyone's, oh, I'm addicted to drugs, alcohol. I'm addicted to sex. Not a problem. Have a wank. <laughs> and everyone's got depression now. I Can you be addicted to sex if you're not getting any? Because <laughs> if that's the case, then... <laughs> oh, dear. Do you think there's a big difference, Carl, between the, the Englishman of year, yesteryear who didn't complain? I mean, he just got on with things. He might have whinged about the weather and the like, um, but he just got on with things. He carried know? an umbrella. Yeah. He Whereas nowadays, people are getting their Prozac and their antidepressants. Someone, if someone into therapy. Yeah. He kept out of stuff as well. I just did a war and so on and so on. All right. They're coming this way. If they come over here, give them a slap. Why are we getting involved now in everything? Thoughts on that, Carl? Uh, it's news now, isn't it? Sometimes I think, don't tell me. Don't want to know. Just get on with it. Whoever's job that is, get on with it. Yeah. Why am I being told about it? When I've got a problem in my job, no one else knows. No, no. one helps me out and goes, well, I've got an opinion for him. No. This might help him. No one helps me. But I'm being bombarded by everyone else's asshole. <laughs> they love talking, actually. That's what the English do talking but they never finalize it they'd love just being in the meeting room talking saying yeah we could do this we could do that i'm the only one in that room not getting paid everyone else is on a wage <laughs> i'm there looking at me watch thinking right i've been here for an hour nothing's been sorted <laughs> they're looking thinking we can drag this out for another half hour get us to lunch that's what annoys me they're all sat there just pushing bullshit around the room like dung beetles <laughs> sick of it and that's what the english do <laughs> And it's a shame, because I don't think we used to be like that. <laughs> I wish everybody just sort of kept to themselves more. Like, you know, certain animals do. They just get on with it. It's like no, an old-fashioned way. What animals keep well, any, themselves? Well, any animals keep themselves themselves. No, what? Said, no. Loads of things. What, what, keeps, what animals keep themselves? Badgers. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they keep themselves? Just, no, they just... Uh, when, whenever you've seen them and you're sort of wandering about a roadside, they're on their own. Right. They're, not, they're not sort of... What are they doing? In pairs. I don't know. Most of the time, they're dead. <laughs> I've seen more dead badgers than alive ones. I've never seen a live badger. <laughs> I don't so know what his point is. So that's was. why they're one alone and two getting on with it. 
I love it. Most I of love the time. It started off with some kind of poetic analogy. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Most of the time. I just. Uh... <laughs> oh, God. Um, I like this thing of the, the, the Englishman I knew growing up um, was uh, you had to. When you hit a certain age, when you hit like manhood or puberty or whatever, 13, 14, 15. You had to start showing your metal. Then the most important thing then was to. Uh, well, the worst thing to be growing up was gay. That was like you couldn't be gay. That was it couldn't be gay. Anything but gay. Um, and then you had to be hard. You had to be tough. Um, I remember right, when I first started going to pubs. Right. So I'm I don't know. Say 18. You walk into a toilet the urinals, and the first thing everyone did was fart and gob. <laughs> yeah. That was it, right? Yeah, if yeah. you couldn't do that, then, uh, you know, you'd get funny looks. You yeah. know, you'd go in the urinal, and they'd look at you and go, oh, sorry. It yeah. was all about um, being a man, <clears throat> you know. I think wearing glasses makes you slightly exempt from that. It's like you don't have to... People mm. automatically dissociate. It's like if I was in prison, I wouldn't have to do that because I'd just be the professor. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Exactly, or brains. Yeah. I would, yeah. I, they would, I wouldn't need to be part of I'm never yeah. a threat, because I never look like I'm going to be a tough guy. So consequently, I live in this sort of parallel stratosphere, where I haven't got a piss and gob. Yeah. Has that got more popular? Yes. Has it? Yeah. Has a lot of people gobbing. doing it in the streets now. Really? It's not like in, avoiding... Not in Hampstead. It still is, you know. When I walk, walk The only here, person gobbing in Hampstead is me. <laughs> Jane says, don't gob. People are looking. Well, it is. It's your trail that I'm seeing then. <laughs> It's like a load of sort of washed up jellyfish in London. Just big blobs of it. I, d I mean, I don't know how they're coughing this stuff up. I mean, they shouldn't still be alive. Some of them have like organs in them. It's just big lumps of stuff. I mean, that list of idyllic, antiquated England of, uh, you know, tea and cakes and cricket, I mean, is, is valid. But I think the things that sum up Englishness. I mean, talking of the weather, I think drinking, uh, war, we love a ruck. Yeah. We've built on war. And we're a warrior race. We're pretty good at war. We used we to be. We are good. We used to be good. I don't yeah, know no, we're very good. We're, good. we're, we're very good. I mean, we've, I think we've reached our peak with Churchill. Probably that's probably our, our greatest uh, hour, our finest hour. According to him. Yeah. Well, he should know he was there. He should know. And he liked to drink, didn't he? He loved a brandy. He's just not afraid of a drink. He liked to... He'd get pissed up, and he'd no wonder he'd fight him on the beaches. He'd fight him anywhere. Yeah. See, there's an example of a posh bloke. It was like I was saying. He'd lead you into battle. He'd have a weapon too. He'd go in there. He didn't. He didn't sit back. I mean, when he was old, he did. But nothing wrong with being posh if you're willing to go and you know get stuck in. What do you think, Carl? Um, is it as scary though? I mean, imagine if if he was rougher sounding. And he was on on the front line. And like he uh, went, he went. You fucking little cunt! I fight you on the beach. Uh, look, see me down in Brighton Monday. I'm gonna fucking smack your head in, you little fucking German cunt. Like that, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a morale boost. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the other point of one, isn't it? That he was. Those speeches were for as much as morale as uh, information and and defiance. You don't want to feel like the the leader of your country. Could glass you if you got on the wrong side. No, of exactly. It's got to be. It's, it's got to be rules under war, hasn't it? I mean, that fair play has got to come into it as well. Talking of the um, English sense of fair play and war, when um, the crossbow was invented, a lot of people wouldn't use it. They said it was unchristian, so our soldiers sort of resisted it. So Europeans got this thing that needed no skill. And it was shooting these bolts, and they could reload quick. And uh, versus our our bowmen, what do you think of that? What do you think of going? Oh, it's cheating. We won't use it, but having a disadvantage. That's honour, isn't it? It's almost like it's okay to kill someone, but with skill. But uh, what's the problem here? What am I meant to be worrying about? Well, you've got you've got bow and arrows. Yeah. They're amazing. They're heavy. They're, they're your arms, they've got, they've got trained bowmen, they're skilled, the most skilled sort of marksman uh, uh, soldiers in the country. Someone comes along and goes, don't worry about that, here's a crossbow, just pop it in, put it back, <laughs> deadly, deadly, quick, anyone can use it. So now you've got anyone 
with a crossbow killing people. Women, children. Anyone can use it. So the Europeans, they're going crazy. Oh, William Tell and his, they, he's shooting apples off heads. Yeah. Right? But we did, we resisted it because we thought it was, you know, unchristian and cheating to kill without skill. What do you think of that? But where were the where were the actual bows and that being made? Because that's the thing, isn't it? The the the, the company who's making them, they just right. want to get out to a big market. Brilliant. That's that's what they do now with the iPod and everything. It's not about people wanting more music than ever before. That's not the case. It's about having having the accessory. And if the bow and arrow was like sold as this, you know, light to carry for all the family. <laughs> That's that's how it would have happened. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Ye new bow and arrow from Ronco. But what what do you think the problem yeah, is? Yeah, but you're not quite getting Ricky's point. His point is the idea of there being sort of rules and fair play and etiquette in war. The I don't, objective I don't is to kill the place, enemy. I don't think war and that is a place to start getting all uppity about someone cheating or having a better oh, system. Really? You think all fair in love and war, do you? Yeah, definitely. Right. Well, it's just about rules, winning. Isn't it? No, not in a war. There isn't rules. So what about things like the Geneva Convention? It's the understanding that even if we're entering into a war, theoretically, there's a set of agreed universal rules. It's good for both sides, rules. isn't it? Fair play has got well, to come into everything. What's so. extraordinary about the idea of English fair play is, you know, famously the, you know, the approach during the First World War, that we would sort of walk up out of the trenches onto no man's land and sort of politely march at a slow, steady pace across towards the I enemy. Know. I mean, and then we were just being machine gunned down. I mean, it was absurd. Well, I, I know we were fodder. It was fodder to use up some of their bullets. I mean, it was crazy. But, I mean, it's madness. But in a way, it's it's the gentry who are leading us, seeing you know the average Tommy as a sort of as well, cannon fodder. Of I mean, course, it's of course. And you know, you've got to realise that most of people didn't want to be there. Most of them didn't even understand it. I mean, and if you think of the first and second, you know, they were just wars, you know. But um, I just I can't just can't imagine How what it'd be like. Do you think, Carl, in a war situation, you've seen all those films of the? Uh, I mean, that's the one they had a, had a knockabout and stuff, didn't they? They took you know, the game of football in that. no man's land. Yeah. Christmas Day. But who, who took a football there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I was on the front line, I would not be getting out the rule book. I can tell you that much. I'd be going mental. Are you saying there should be some rules or no rules? I mean, you've got to have some rules, otherwise it's, it's just going to be like Grand Theft Auto, isn't it? I'm just going to go about battering everyone. Yeah. And you soon get bored of that. Mm. So I think you've got to have some rules. Right. Which rules would you repeal that already exist that you don't like? Uh, it's a shame you can't tip as much as you used to be able to. You mean in a restaurant? No, just when you're getting rid of a mattress or something. <laughs> So fly tipping, you'd like to see more fly tipping. What, what, what just, do you mean? This is something so personal, he's fed up, he had to take something. No, it's, okay. it's just that they used to put stuff outside the house. And just like, you had mattresses, you had sideboards, uh, sewing machines. The thing is, it was it was a good way of recycling. Now, they say recycle, but we're not recycling. It's just being put in a bin. So you'd like to see more fly tipping? <laughs> no, not, you see... You, you That's see, what we needed, London, more this rubbish. Is, this <laughs> is the problem, you see. Look what's happened. Look what's happened to what I've said. It's been taken the wrong way. Right. I'm not saying tip. I'm not saying chuck your bin bags out the door and let crisp packets go everywhere. I'm saying if you've got old furniture... You should be allowed to leave it outside your house without the council going, move that, it's dangerous, someone's going to trip over it. Mm. Well, if right. they trip over it, it should have been looking where they're going. Well, what if they're blind? Huh? What if they're blind? That's why you don't leave things out in the pavement, because blind people will fall over them and smack their face in. What if a woman with a couple of kids in pushchairs has to go out into the road yeah. to get past and your get, piece of junk? And get crushed. No, because I'm, I'm leaving it, I'm not leaving it on the, on the pavement. What you said you were, where are you leaving it? Sort of outside the house. Right. In well, your front garden. Well, who's going to take it from there? That's just thieving. No, sort of just Where are you leaving it? Where are you leaving it, Carl? You haven't established where you're leaving this yet. Because uh, so far, a blind person's fallen over and broken his nose. I've never seen a blind person trip over anything. You've never seen a blind person trip over anything? Definitely not. They're, they're better on the feet than some people, because they're more cautious, aren't they? So... They make it more fun for them, if anything. Why can't you just have this stuff collected by a second-hand shop or... Because they, won't, they don't come, charity. Steve. They Honestly, will. they don't. They I've, I've called up people and they're saying, yeah, we'll be there in an hour. And I say, right, I'm going to put it out on the street and are you going to come and get it? Yeah, we'll be there. An hour passes by. They haven't been. 
suddenly the council goes the past <laughs> on the floor, bloodied noses. Then the council said, I call them up, do you want to shift it? Well, we might, but don't know when. Well, it's outside the house now. Well, you can't leave it there. It's your responsibility. You'll have to stay with it. Suddenly I'm wasting time sat outside the house with rubbish that someone else might want. But mm. you're not allowed to leave there because a blind person might come along. What's the dog doing? <laughs> do you make of St. George, the patron saint? What's your take on that? Is he the one who killed a dragon? Right. Tell us the story. There was a dragon problem. <laughs> Where? Um, must have been in England. Right. Um, George took it on. He took on the job. He was like a rent -a kill <laughs> uh, <laughs> He came out. <laughs> the interesting thing with him is, right... He was a hero then. I honestly think if he did that now, there'd be an uproar. Because he's the last he's the last dragon. It's the same way we try to save the panda and all that now. If he came out and said, I've done it, and they've done, done what? They've just killed the last dragon. They'd, they'd go mental. They'd be marches. <laughs> idiot, bloody idiot. <laughs> and that's what's interesting. But it was it was going around burning people. Doesn't matter, we, we shouldn't have killed the last one. It's the last one. And that's no, what we'd be like. You say you should have saved it, you should have captured it and put it in a cage so we can all look at it. There's no stuff. point. It couldn't have bred anyway. It was the last one. Was it definitely the last one? <laughs> well, you were saying it was the last one. I'm not bothered either way. Well, hang on, what? To Sorry, me, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you think that there were dragons? Well, what are we celebrating then? Well, it could be a metaphor, a dragon slayer. It could be... Um, a, a bad thing amongst us. It could be a foreign threat. It could well, be things that threaten. Our, it could be anything. It could. It's not. It's not to be taken literally, is but it? But the real legend of George was that he was a figure who uh, stood up for Christianity. Doesn't have you ever get, done anything brave? There was a kid at school who used to have epileptic fits a lot, and uh, the teacher used to always say, "If it happens, grab his tongue." And I sort of had a go at that once. His tongue. His tongue. Yeah. What it was? What, what, what do you have a tongue for? To pick stuff up? What do you mean a tongue? His tongue in his mouth. Oh, his tongue. Oh, oh his tongue. Yeah. Right, go on. And they used to say, the if, if he starts, if he starts doing it, uh, grab his tongue and that. Yeah. And and I sort of had a go at that once, and it was wasn't nice. Well, how did you grab it? Well, you grabbed his tongue, did you? Well, I tried to. It's like grabbing a slug. <laughs> and plus, his mouth's going up and down. That you think he's going to have me handy? Eh? So you sort of do that thing where you go... So you were, fight, you were trying to grab hold of a kid's tongue, yeah? And he was... He was throwing himself all, all over the place. It was in a physics lesson. I sort of had a go, and then I thought, this isn't happening. So I just sort of kept putting my hand in, like, I'm having a go. But I, I, in my head, I was going, I'm not going to get hold of it. What you could have used is a pair of tongs. Well, firstly, I don't see why this is brave. Uh, kids have an epileptic, epileptic fit, and you're just supposed to help them out. I don't know why that's bravery, but even given that, the fact that you were thinking more about yourself in that situation than this other kid, you were thinking, I'll make it look like I'm helping, but I'm not really. And yet, this is kid having well, an I epileptic did, fit. Well, I did at the beginning. Doesn't I that sum you up, Carl? Selfish. No, no, it doesn't. Because at the, at, I didn't, no one else was having a go. At least I did try and grab it. You at weren't one doing point. anything. You were just making it look like you were. It's, have you ever tried to grab a tongue? <laughs> it's <laughs> like chasing a, a chicken. It's murder. <laughs> And after a while, it wears you out. And it was weird anyway, because it, it was like... I, a kid. I, I, what was he doing it for? I don't know. Like, well, I, I don't know, know, after hours of chasing love, this kid's tongue. I love the idea of you ever tried grabbing a tongue. It's a, it's a valid question. I love that he's annoyed. He's annoyed that this what poor you, kid's... What was your technique? Were you trying to grab it... Just, sort of like just with your thumb and your... What's it, finger? Like, like, yeah. a, like a pincher thing. Yeah. But it was... Because his mouth's going down and... Was he, was he shouting or just... No, just throwing himself around. So that's your one attempt at bravery. Well, hang on a minute. Let me just think of... Trying to else. grab a tongue. There was a time you were chased by a bee and you scored a goal. What <laughs> about that? <laughs> that, that? That isn't really bravery, is it? As you were, as you were running away from a bee <laughs> and the ball happened to hit oh. your foot and go in. Oh. That count as bravery. I love oh. it when he goes up to the pearly gates and goes, well, you know, have you done the act of courage? Uh, I pretended to grab a tongue. <laughs> a what? A tongue. A tongue, yeah. Uh, got chased by a beast, scored a goal. It doesn't count as brave at all. Well, what have you ever done? Well, it's a good question. I thought of some of them. When I was a kid on the beach, um, there was a, a baby, like a toddler. I was about 12, and uh, they were out. Their little boat had gone out. The mother missed it, and they were miles out, and the mother was sort of distraught, and I swam out. And uh, I was a good swimmer then, and I pulled it in, right? And she bought me a box of chocolates. 
It's not enough, is it? What? It's not enough, a box of chocolates. I'd have been furious. Really? I'd have wanted a lot more. I didn't expect anything. No, it was like when I found that old lady's purse and I sent it back to her and she didn't. She sent me a little thank you note, but nothing. No cash, nothing. I was furious. I thought, come on, I've just, I've kept, I could have kept that purse. I sent really? it back to you. I, did, I need more than a little thank you note. I didn't, I didn't expect anything. I was, I was sort of, uh, I wasn't even particularly proud of myself, but I just thought, well, I could just, I could just do it. It, what, I mean, if it happened now, I'd go, what's in it for me? I've just eaten. <laughs> exactly. I'd go, is that your kid? They're miles away. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I've got less brave. He's I've got more scared of the world, yeah. The things I used to do, jump off sheds, I used to jump down flights of stairs to see if I could do it, walk along, walk, you know, all those things that kids do. And, um, and you lose your nerve, I think. After. Apparently, if you haven't bungee jumped by your 30, you never will. Really? Yeah, you sort of. I think it's a sensible gene kicks in. I, I'm pretty sensible. Yeah, you think, well, if this is not worth dying for. Don't do it. Mm. You know. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think having glasses prevents me from doing a lot of things. <laughs> no, seriously, because it's hard to be brave with glasses. Because <laughs> if I stepped into the middle of a fight and there's people being bullied and I stepped in, <laughs> my glasses come off. That's it. <laughs> Now, now I'm just being bullied as well, but I'm also yeah. blind in this, so I'm just crawling around. It's very hard to strike fear into your opponents when you're crawling around on the floor looking for your frames, going, don't step, don't tread lightly, tread lightly. That's 200 uh, quid there. Oh, God. I love that when you took up judo and you think you overheard the yeah. judo instructor say, just knock his glasses just off. Just knock his glasses off. But why are you, why are you, who are you, Woody Allen, what are you doing in this scenario? Why are you stepping into the dojo wearing a pair of glasses Well, how anyway? am I supposed to do judo without, where am I supposed well, to do Well, they come off immediately. But what am I supposed to do? Not do any form of martial art because of the glasses? I don't know. Actually, I haven't thought about that. Exactly. This is the problem, isn't it? People don't think that. You never see boxers with glasses. Well, of course you don't. Right, exactly. So I got no kind of athletic role models in that way, except... Dennis Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, a man with glasses. Me and my glasses. Hey, so tell you this, I could I could write a book on the difficulties of having glasses. But I suppose it's completely affected your life, hasn't Course it? it has. Everything you do. Of course it has. Absolutely. Fashion, fashion. Yeah. Um, certain sport, dancing, moshing. Can't go in the mosh pit. Can't, you know, I've always wanted to jump on the stage, you know, <laughs> take my shirt off and then jump back in and everyone catches you and they sort of, you sort of swear along on top of everyone's hands. Can't do it. The glasses would come flying off. But how do you swim in the I'd sea? I'd have to hand them to the singer and then do it. <laughs> I, I went to, um, I was in India recently, I went to Goa and I got myself a pair of prescription goggles. Could not believe my luck. It's revolutionised my swimming experience. All right. Pre goggles which have got the same lenses in as my glasses so I can all right. see all right. That's good. Went in there. Uh, literally, I, and they're pricey as well. Went in the water, within Love seconds, it. giant wave had come over, and it was crazy. It was like real all over again. It ripped off both my trunks and my goggles. They went flying off my head. What now, I, I can only grab one of them. My like trunks have my never trunks. come off. Maybe once well, I've dived in, they come down no, a little they, bit. They came loose, and they slipped down, thus revealing penis. Goggles came off. I off. reckon you're but like you know shorts, what? man. I think you've been doing it on purpose. You know how most swimmers... Tie your shorts up, Steve. <laughs> no, I'm just going to see. But if they well, come off, you know, if they come off, then you might see something. You know how most uh, swimming goggles would float? Yeah. My prescription is so dense <laughs> <laughs> that they just sunk straight to the bottom. <laughs> if I should die, think only this of me, that there's some corner of a foreign field that is forever England. There shall be, in that rich earth, a richer dust concealed, a dust whom England bore, shaped, made aware, gave once her flowers to love, her ways to roam, a body of England's breathing English air, washed by the rivers, blessed by sons of home. And think this heart, all evil shed away, a pulse in the eternal mind, no less, gives somewhere back the thoughts, by England given, her sights and sounds, Dreams happy as a day, and laughter, learnt of friends and gentleness, in hearts at peace, under an English heaven. Rupert Brooke, the soldier. What an, what an amazing poem that is. Yeah. It's a shame you read it, though. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Ricky Gervais Guide to the English. That's it for a little while. Five in that series of guides too. Plenty to be going on with. Plenty to be going on with. There's also the, the, the rest of the back catalogue as well. And we might do the odd free one, but we'll be back soon anyway with maybe um, another series of guides too. Who knows, Carl? 
Thoughts? I've enjoyed this, have you? Yeah, my favourite ones. I like learning stuff, you know that. Huh? If I can learn something and make a few quid, I'm happy. Mm. Mm. Unlike the people who are listen to this who have, are down two quid and have learned absolutely nothing. And what they have learned from you is total bollocks. So, thanks. That's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And Carl Pilkington. All right. This is Audible. Well, here we are, number five in a series of six of the Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant... Hello there. ...and Carl Pilkington. All right. Well, Carl, you are officially a published author. Your book came out, The World of Carl Pilkington, and and a copy will go in the British Library. Will it? Well, yeah. they have to take every rubbish. I think it will go in the British Library lavatory. <laughs> from what I understand, yeah. it'll be in there yeah. uh, with like a collection of like novelty postcards <laughs> and yeah, maybe exactly. a this compendium. But, you know. Yeah, so they have to, they take everything. Just think of that. But yeah. is that a rule they set up when, when books were more important to people? And now it's kind of like, oh, I wish we never said we'd do that. Well, they have to add two miles of shelves every year, apparently. That's what I mean. Now, surely, you know, they change a lot of other rules, don't they? They used to allow people having their head cut off. And now they've gone, we shouldn't do that anymore, so we'll sort that. Why don't they just say, only so many books a year make it in there? Ones that are important to the future. But who knows what's important to the future? Well, you know, normally, when I say something that I think's a good point... Uh, yeah, but you're I, always wrong. No, 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 but what I mean is, when I say something that I think I have got a point there... Yeah, but you're always wrong. But why do they do this? Why do they think they've got to keep everything? Because it's... We're living in a world now where everything is sort of binnable, and, you know, we, we use stuff binnable, uh, for, binnable. for what it is. Well, that, that, I no, think I think you could say that. Oh, that's binnable, fine, that's yeah. fine. Um, there was a sort of poetry to it, but I think he stumbled across that. I don't think it was intentional. Yeah, I mean, I'm st I still haven't got over last week him saying foodage. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? That the, the world's changed, so why is that rule still hanging around when... Well, it's not a rule... I mean, it's not a rule that, you know, the, the country's going to, you know live and die by it's just that it is seen as a, a, a repository for knowledge for information and i don't believe any old joke and wander in there and get one of these books i think you have to either be a scholar i think yeah. maybe it's open for a brief window for students but you know you can't you can just wander in there and see your own book carl you know there's some books public. that uh, they have to turn the page for you in gloves so your the amino acids i don't that with yours, it won't matter. They just go, it's over there, or they throw it to you. No, it's just... Or they slide, they slide it along the floor. They say, well, I, I can't give it to you, Carl, because it's propping up this desk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they kick it to you and say, put it in the bog when you're finished with <laughs> yeah. it. It's just that thing of being timed, though. I hate it when people go, oh, have you read this? And then yeah, I can't read it properly because thinking, they're thinking I'm taking ages here. Do you know what I mean? So I have to scan read it. And I go, oh, it's good, that. And they go, what do you think? And I go, about what? <laughs> So I hate the fact that someone stood there with gloves on, because that isn't normal, relaxing sort of reading, is it? <laughs> but it's not, it's not, you don't go in to read the Doomsday book, let's say, in order to just have a relaxing read. You're going in there to study there it, you know, historically. There are say they're professors and scholars and scientists and historians. They don't wander in because it's raining and they go, what's a good read? There's not a man wearing white gloves turning the pages of the latest Jackie Collins. <laughs> Do you have heat? Watching I... your lips move as you read <laughs> to see if you can turn the next page. I suppose I shouldn't really feel guilty, because at the end of the day, right, I mean, people always rave about Shakespeare saying, oh, you know, mm. his work was good. Mm. But Brilliant. But at the same time... He probably put that on the book when he brings another one out. He'll put your review on it. Yeah. Oh, that was good. Carl Pilkington. But... At the same time, you know, like, some people will have a go. I'm ready for, for people having a go, like that Wendy did about my little films I made. There's always people... Wendy knowing, Robinson? Yeah, you know... It's her opinion. For those yeah, of you who didn't hear last week, she slammed Carl. No, well, you know, each to their own and that. And, uh, you know, if everyone liked the same thing, I don't know what we'd do, right? Sure. Um, you don't know anything. So, so all I'm saying is, everybody raves about Shakespeare. Mm. When, if you properly looked at what he did, he, he invented a lot of swearing words. Right? Effing and Jeffing and that. Now, if... That if, was one of his. Well, it's Effing and Jeffing and Effing and Jeffing part two. <laughs> Did um, he make up a great deal of swear words? I don't know that I'm aware yeah, of this. A lot of them are Shakespeare invented. 
But all I'm saying is, for some reason, when things are, are brought out years ago, um, people say they're good even though they're not, is what I mean. But let's, let's not mistake the fact that Shakespeare is not... He's not uh, people seem to confuse him as though they think he's, he wrote these things in order to be read. He wrote them to be performed. They're plays. They're not books in the traditional sense. He didn't bring out the latest book. No, but just, just when something's old, it gets a bit more respect, is what I mean. When I was watching that documentary about the, the real Indiana Jones, um, Brilliant. they dug out um, some rocks with drawings on, and they were like, oh, don't damage them, don't, don't mark the paint, and, and it's like, it's rubbish. It was like a stick fella with a yak. <laughs> and now, if that was found now, or if a kid brought, showed me that, I'd go, hey, it's not that good. So what I mean is, because stuff's old, old stuff gets respect. But you're not judging it on its aesthetic merits, you're judging it on its historical importance. I don't because... think that's fair, though, because when that, when that fella drew that, it wasn't old. He did it when he was knocking about. No, yes. but, but, you, but you, you must see the difference between you doing a, a stick man on a wall with a bit of chalk near your local, and a cave painting that, 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 that they date to 10,000 years ago. Yeah, so in 10,000 years' time, when they find my story about the monkey fireman, will it gain more respect then than it is now? No, less. But why is it? Cause I, I, because people will more and more realise what a buffoon you are. The more research we do, the more of these podcasts we do, no. the more you expose yourself as an empty, egg-headed uh, moron. That's a friend speaking right there, Richard Gervais. <laughs> no, he loves you like a brother. <laughs> I'm just, I just think, you've mentioned him before, Steve, this Peeps fella. Yes. Has he done anything else apart from a diary? Because now, now I've done a book and a diary. That means you're better than Peeps, well, is I'm what just, you're thinking, Well, I'm it? not going to say that until I know, but what else did he do? Well, Peeps wasn't a writer predominantly. I right. believe he was, uh, you know, like a bureaucrat or something. But he kept a diary which has since become a historical landmark. And what did he say in it? What did he say in it? Well, it's, again, more because it's both well-written and it's also an amazing insight. A social into document a social as well. Document. Yeah. yeah. It's a social document I of mean, that yours period. is a social document, but... It, it sort of revolves around uh, having egg and chips in a cap and seeing a ladybird, which, you know... But that's, that's today's living. That's well, his, saying, just, yes, but his describes the Great Fire of London, which is what it's most... Yeah, it's but best we haven't had for. one of them. If we had one, I'd write it down. I'm only writing what's happening. The ladybird <laughs> happened, right? I wrote it down. He, he was just lucky. He was about in London when that happened. So you're a little angered that you've not witnessed one of the great disasters... Um, because the thing is, if they read your diary, they'd think, well, nothing happened that year. Nothing important in the world happened that year. Because your diary doesn't just mention... I mean, OK, yes, it, does, it fails to mention any disasters in London, because we haven't had any, but it doesn't mention any... It doesn't man mention any world events. It doesn't men mention wars in Iraq, it, terrorism. It doesn't mention now. anything. But that's all being wrote about anyway. If you're saying there's a museum that's keeping everything, there's loads of other books on that. Who's looking at the fella whose skulls fell off? What? We see. It's interesting, isn't it? What do you mean the fellow's skulls fell off? Well, that's what happened the other week, so I wrote about what? it. What? A fellow's skull has fell off. What do you mean, his skull has fell off? It's something to do with circulation. But what do you mean his skull fell well, off? Well, it's in the diary. We well, how can a diary. skull fall off? Because it's surrounded by tissue and it's got a brain. How can just his skull... How can it, how can it detach itself from all the stuff surrounding no, it? He mislaid all his dreams. But, but, <laughs> but all I'm saying is that's, that's not getting a look in. No, because it's not significant or probably true. Good point, Steve. I don't. All right. Well, let me just. I'll just. On. I'll just consult the diary quickly and find the uh, the moment with the man whose skull fell off. Oh, here we are. Yeah. Looks like the world's fattest man is having an operation to get rid of some of the fat. Yeah. He has to have an iron bed because that's the only thing that can hold his weight. Yeah. There's also a man whose skull has fell out. He's in hospital somewhere. I hate that. It would make me panic. The hospital is busy with people coming in to look at their head. What are you talking about there? That tells us nothing. Right, it's impossible for a skull to fall out. It How are scholars in 10,000 years going to be... What are they going to decipher from that? They can sort of go... There's not enough incident but, 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 detail. But, but, but how did his skull fall out? Circulation problems. But they, answer the question. How did his skull fall out? Fall out of what? He was at home, um, and I don't know if he was combing his hair or something... But it, it come off. What did? His skull. What do you mean, his skull? Do you know what the skull is? It's a part of the head. 
Well, no, it's the it's the structure of the head. It's the bone. Do you mean the top of the skull? This is only useful if you have all the salient facts. Then it would be of interest to us. We could we could. Well, that, I, that, I couldn't take that on. I'm busy. I'm not going to start looking into stuff in depth. Just get the details. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> you're such an idiot. You are the best. Oh, idiot in the world. Well, I don't want to be premature, but that entry is followed by. I injured my toe the other day by dropping the toaster. Instead of letting it hit the floor, I tried to catch it with my foot. <laughs> I didn't think I'd done any harm, but my nail looks like it could fall off. I might show it to the doctor when I get my kidney stones out. We could easily get by without nails on the feet. They are more trouble than they're worth. You're so wrong. You're so wrong. I think on the days when cavemen without shoes and animals need nails, I don't think we need them now. I honestly, because you hear about uh, ingrowing toenails, right? So that's a problem. Um, you got to cut them. Um, stuff gets under there and gets infected. Get rid of them. You won't have any of that as long as you wear shoes. No, you'd have unprotected toes and fingers, wouldn't you? I didn't say on the on the fingers, just on the toes. So why why do you need them on the fingers and not the toes? Because you st you use your you use your hands to do stuff. I've said about toenail out. It'd be good to have it growing on the head. What? Just having like a sheet of it, just just like a, a nail on the forehead. You wouldn't look weird because we'd all have it. I'm not saying. What are you talking about now? I'm just saying we've. I, I don't want to go on about evolution stuff because we've done it all. What but, do you think the skull is for? No, but I mean on the outside, so that when you bang your head, it's a little bit more protection. Like like people. I mean, you're looking at me like that. Why do you wear a helmet on a bike then? <laughs> Because the bike wasn't meant to be invented. We weren't meant to whiz along at 70 miles an hour with evolution. I know, but, you, but because life's changing, like you've said. Let's but you can't, the... you can't go, let's evolve, let's re-evolve. OK, let's assume we've got this nail on our head uh, that's growing out of our forehead. So we look like one big thumb. Yeah. Uh, which, weirdly, Carl kind of... I mean, you can almost imagine it looking at Carl now. You can imagine a big nail there. Does the nail great. continue to grow? Do we have to trim the head nail? Uh, yeah, in the same way you get hair cut. Why... Is that preferable in your mind to just wearing a crash helmet in instances where you might have something hit your head? Just because, um, for a start, helmets, you have to carry them around with you. That's one thing that's put me off having a motorbike. Whenever you see someone on a motorbike, <laughs> it's all like the clothes you've got to wear. And it's like a big upheaval, isn't it? It's, it's, you know, if you have a car, you can get in with your shorts on, your flip-flops on. A motorbike, it's like, it's yeah. like you're an astronaut or something, and you're only nipping down the road for some milk. Do you know what I mean? So, get rid... What I'm saying is get rid But does it annoy you having to put shoes on every day and underpants and a, a vest and a... I don't know... No, but once they're jacket. on, I'm not carrying them. They're on me. If I had to then take the shorts off for whatever reason and walk around holding them, I'd go, oh, I can't be bothered. I don't like holding a bag. I don't like bags. We carry too much around with us now. I don't like carrying stuff. It's just a, a hassle, isn't it? <laughs> it's just endless things he doesn't want to do, he doesn't like doing, he doesn't like carrying bags. I mean, Who the hell has a gripe about carrying bags? Why just, is that a concern? Because it's it's stuff that's on, on I you. I love the way that he wouldn't mind having a nail going out of his <laughs> fucking head, but he doesn't want to carry a bag. What's good with it is, everybody's got one of these. And but it's, it's not going to happen, Carl. And the most important thing in your body, apart from the heart, is your brain. So protect that, not the toes. The toes we can get by <laughs> Please, without the people. toes. But your head's important, isn't it? There's a lot of stuff in your head. Um, and I know all this just after seeing the, the body works thing. I went to see the uh, it's a show on where there's a load of like dead bodies and that. And uh, you can see how much stuff's in the body. And it's, there's loads of stuff. There's nothing in there that you don't need. It's all doing stuff. Everything in your well, body. We've been but telling you, you that for years. But you reckon you don't need the toenails? Yeah, that's on the outside. I'm saying everything that's on the inside of your body. Right. You don't need the appendix. No, but it, that, it doesn't that depend on what, what lifestyle you have? Well, it's a, it's a hangover of when we uh, probably ate a lot more cellulose and it's... it's. Yeah, well, they, they might come back. Things are always coming back, aren't they? So if people start eating them again... What about male nipples? Uh, sort of looks all right, though, doesn't it? Because the chest is quite plain, so with, with nothing on it, you'd go, oh, what's this? <laughs> It just balances it out. I think it looks all right. I think it works. So leave it. Um, but what were we talking about? But w wouldn't you rather have um, maybe a little, uh, like a rib cage around the testicles? Because you get a whack in them and it, oh. 
Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, it's not an invention, Carl. It's not an invention and we can't do it, but... But will you be able to sit down still? Because that's the good thing with them at the moment, is movement. <coughs> so it sort of works. But don't they say, um... They said something about testicles, about the body works thing. Well, they're on the outside. Put yours away, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> You're not one of the exhibits. <laughs> uh, they're on the outside because they have to be a few degrees below body temperature for the, I think, the Satoni cells to... to so to that's, that's an odd design, that they had to go there, because it is a da it's a bit of an odd place to have them. Where would you suggest? Probably. Dangling from the throat? Um, sort of... I want to redesign you, right? You, 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 you can possibly do this now. This is something you can actually do, probably. You could probably have your testicles anywhere. So where would you want them? You've got a giant forehead nail. Yeah. You could have that. It probably wouldn't grow, but we could certainly have that. that I, I just mean, like, because uh, if, if all it's about is temperature, you don't yeah. want to get them too hot. Yeah. Well, they're getting hot down there. You're wearing pants, and what have you? Mm. So have them nearer to the outside of the of the body. Well, they are near the outside of the body. No, but we wear pants over them. So you what? wear pants over them because they're they're testicles, and polite society suggests that you don't show your. Yeah, well, testicles. that's the odd thing, isn't it? That's what's happened somehow that we've that we've said testicles shouldn't be seen. Well, then just cut a hole, cut a pair of hole in your trousers. If it's only about you know keeping them cool. And because they're too hot, why don't you just uh, hang them out your shorts? Because there's too many sort of seats that are shared these days, isn't they? But what I'm saying is... Well, what are you saying? Where, well, where would, you, would you put them? Somewhere like, um, sort of under the ears. So it sort of just looks like lobes. So uh, you would redesign your body to have a pair of testicles hanging from your ears. And when people are sometimes talking, they do sort of mess with their ears and they're always saying, check for lumps. It's more handy. <laughs> Does the penis remain where it is at Leave the moment? Leave that where it is. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know about you, Rick, but I would love to see, perhaps on the web, you know, it's very easy to put stuff on web pages now, some kind of illustration, could be computer generated, could it be drawn by hand, yeah. of the new model car. Bear in mind, people, that he's got some testicles underneath his ears. And a big thumbnail on his forehead. Big thumbnail on his forehead. Um, talking to Carl, I want to see Carl's head everywhere. It's the roundness that I like, OK? So do a viral campaign. Anyone out there with a picture of Carl, just get it everywhere. Because I want, eventually, everyone to, as they walk past him in the street, to shout, you shaved monkey, or look at that bald head, or look at fucking coconut face coming this way. you got a head like a fucking orange. Went out the other night with the lads. Um, you know, there's a few of us, you know, young, free and single. You Must have looked like the swingers. Oh, it was pretty. It looked like a boy band had gone out. It looked like, really? It looked like, you know, NSYNC had hit oh, the streets. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd all, we'd dressed up, talked up, out for a few drinks. A friend of mine said, let's go to a club. Well, I haven't been to a nightclub for a long time, actually. I haven't been. Is that because your glasses steam up when you walk in out of the cold? That is a problem in the winter. I genuinely, it's not, it's very difficult to make a good impression. <laughs> when you, as you walk in, your glasses steam up straight away and. You know, you you got to take them off and clean them and stuff, <laughs> and then you know you get a bit. Dirty. On your wife runs, you yeah. pull your wife runs up yeah. through the jeans, yeah. clean them on that, or the back of a girl's dress. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we cruised down to the club. It's one of those big sort of super clubs, London super clubs. Never been in one of those, the Ministry or any of those things. So it was all new, and uh, it's a bit of a queue. I think it's a bit of a chore. But we're queuing up, we're in good spirits, we're looking at it, it sounds pretty funky, we can hear the music coming out. You know, we've been in the queue for quite a while, 20, 25 minutes. Forget it, 25 minutes. Well, yeah, we were pretty excited by this point. The doorman says, uh, hello lads, he said, yeah, we're coming please. He went, no you're not. Went, really? What? He said, we're not, you're not coming in. And he just immediately lifted the little rope and sent us away from the queue, right? And we were slightly perplexed, we were, we were dumbfounded, we didn't know what to do, we, we, it was like... This, it, this couldn't be happening. It didn't make sense. We just que queued up what was going on. And so um, my friend said, well, we've got to find out why he's not going to let us in. So he goes yeah. back over. I thought you wanted to do. You wanted to tie him up with logic. That'll show a bouncer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, show him how educated you are and how you can win an argument and make him look stupid. You'll be in that club in no time. <laughs> That's what they appreciate. <laughs> they love that. Because what they respect is being made to look like a fool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we went over and... Uh, 
They, they really look up to intellectuals. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> so one of our mates goes over and he says, uh, why didn't you let us in? And he went, because you don't have any girls with you. No. <laughs> No, I'll tell you this, <laughs> that's kicking you when you're down. <laughs> because when you're out on a Saturday night trying to get into a club to meet women, and the yeah. reason you're not allowed to go in a club to meet women is because you haven't got any women with you, that's just salt in the wound. It's so humiliating. So, um, a friend of mine says that there's a VIP entrance over there. And there was like a woman with a clipboard, you know, the guest list. Uh, separate entrance. She said, you know, you've got a little bit of profile, Steve. Why don't we try and use your... You ran out. You've got your Golden Globe in your Emmy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I always uh, I always carry, uh, you know, some of my cuttings with me. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, uh, so, and I felt a bit self-conscious about that. I was thinking, I'm not into this, you know, it's uh, a bit awkward. But he said, look, don't worry, you just stand here. Just stand here, just like you're having a conversation. I'll go over, I'll, say, I'll point him out, I'll go, oh, there's you know, Steve Merchant over there. They're out of the office or whatever. Oh, God, Steve! So I thought, well, you know, well, the thing is, we were out, and I was, I was a bit frustrated, and I thought, you know... Uh, we may as well try everything. So, um, so I stand there with my friend goes over and he has a word and he comes back and he says, uh, it's fine. She's, she can't let us in the VIP entrance because she's not allowed. But what she can do is walk us to the front of the queue, right? And you walk in front of the queue and explain. So I think, okay, fine. Oh God. So oh, the guy, uh, God. the guy takes me and my mates, right? This girl, she takes us, she, we walk past everyone else, right? To the front of the queue, right? She goes up to the guy, she says, uh, this is Steve Merchant office. The guy goes, I know he is, we're not letting him in. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, God! By now, of course, some people have recognised me, so they're having, trying to have my photo taken. So there's people inside the uh, line that's being allowed in the club. I've got to lean across the rope to have my photo taken with them, even though I'm not allowed in the club. So they go, oh, all right, this is Steve, there, and the photo's taken, right, camera phones and that. They're going into the club where the music, the party's kicking off. I'm outside waiting for the next chump who wants to have his photo taken. <laughs> I mean, it was <laughs> mental. So, um... That's unbelievable. I was furious. And then one guy, I remember he was, he was, and he, he goes, oh, yeah, brilliant, I love the podcast and all that stuff. I love, Car is Carl with you? I said, oh, Carl's not here. And his girlfriend, who, his girlfriend was with me, she went, who's that? And he went, oh, it's just same motion, he does the office, he does the thing. And she went, who, who cares? Who are you, Bruce Forsyth? And it's that thing when suddenly I'm being humiliated and embarrassed <laughs> by someone's girlfriend. I never asked for that. I never asked for her opinion on me. I'm sorry if I don't impress you, if I'm not sufficiently famous for you, but it's not my fault. <laughs> it's your boyfriend who brought it up. It was like I'd gone over to her and tried to show off, and she was annoyed. I was, so by now I was just furious. Oh, so God. I thought, forget this. Well, I was walking down the street, and there's a, a group of uh, um, builders, um, sitting down on a cup of tea. One of them goes, all right, Rick? I went, all right, mate. The other one went, not as fat as on telly. <laughs> I went, oh, thanks. Not as fat as on telly. So he went with, well, you are fat, but you look even fatter on telly. He didn't say, oh, God, you don't look fat at all, or, oh, you look, you look, you look, you look big on telly, but you don't look... Just went with, not as fat as on telly. But and there's nothing I could say, but cheers, mate. Now, when you said cheers, mate, cause you, did you say that because you were... Because I'd say cheers, mate, because I'd be a little bit scared of them. No, I'd, I'd be worried about the like sarcasm and, you know, I laughed or I laughed or... Yeah, 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 so I, you can get away with sarcasm I'm, with working-class blokes. I'm I a little could... bit more secure with a working-class man no. than you, aren't I? I'm terrified of them. I feel like they're going to turn on me at any minute. You don't feel confident sort of backing in a lorry driver? Terrified. Oh, right, Because okay. if I did, he'd, le he'd probably lean out and just go, go and get your dad, mate. Yeah, not you. Fuck off, I'm not interested. Not you. Yeah. So, um, so the final stab is this guy says, uh, there's a party I know of going on, right? Oh, blinking So we get into this party. Right, as we're getting there, as we're about to go in, he goes, now, you know it's a singles party. I thought, oh, what? He says, you know it's a singles party. Oh, God. So I go in this party, it's right, it's all single people, right? Now, theoretically, that should be brilliant, right, if you're a singleton yourself. It's the worst kind of party to go to. Because when you normally go to a party, right, and you're chatting to a girl and she says, um, oh, I've got to go and get a drink or whatever. You think, oh, she's probably got a boyfriend or whatever, or she, you know, she's with mates, that's fair enough. But when you're at a singles party and a woman says, I'm just going to go and get a drink, and then you just see her leaving, <laughs> you, you realise it's not because she's got a boyfriend or whatever, it's just because she doesn't want to talk to you. You and can't even kid yourself. You can't even pretend. Oh, and you, you suddenly sense everyone judging everyone else. So you see a girl and she'll, like, look at you, look at you up and down, and then... 
ignore you and walk on. And it's just, it's like a massive slap in the face. It's like girls coming up to you and going, not interested. Just by being there, they don't have to say anything and they're rejecting you. And so, um, so I'm trying to, anyway, my friend, one of my friends has been reading this book, The Game, right, by this guy called Neil Strauss, which is sweeping a certain part of the population because it is one of those books written on how to meet women and seduce women, right? And there's this guy called Neil Strauss who infiltrated a sort of secret organization in America of blokes who've got all these various seducing techniques, right? And one of the techniques which we've been discussing is something called negging, where if you see a very attractive woman, the theory is that she's getting asked out all the time by blokes, right? They're always coming up and saying, oh, you're really beautiful, can I buy you a drink? And that what you have to do to set yourself away from the pack is to sort of not be so obviously complimentary. So you come up and you almost sort of pay her a backhanded compliment, or you almost neg, as they say, say something slightly negative. So you, what you might say is you might go up to her and say, oh, I like your shoes. I've seen another girl wearing them in the club, right? And the theory is that she's sort of all and it, she's a bit taken aback she's a bit sort of thrown off and then of course you start complimenting her and you start building her back up it's very elaborate mind games i'm not saying it's a good idea but we've been talking about the neg and i was chatting to a girl and i was a little bit drunk and i wasn't thinking it through and i thought about the neg because it wasn't going very well but but i don't think you should say to a girl <laughs> I think your ears are a bit too big for your head. Because, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's like you can't come back from that. And it's there's nowhere else to go, because that really is just an insult. <laughs> oh, he's only gone and listened it down a little fucking car. That jingle, of course, signifying yet another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. As always, packed with rich insight into the man's mind. I had a late night last night because I stayed up to watch a programme about monkeys. <laughs> it's already good. <laughs> of course it is. It's already good. Now, before I read on, I mean, is this not some kind of monkey news? Is this not a late return to monkey news? Uh, well, it's not. It's not that good. Is it not? Whereas the other monkey news is... Oh, chimpanzee, that's some more shit! This is what he says. He, this is what he gleaned from the programme about monkeys. It sat on a bridge and wanted stuff off people to walk over the bridge. What? So it was acting as some kind of toll booth, This is it? ridiculous. No, it was a bridge in, in, like, the jungle. Oh, shut the fuck up! And it's a monkey that sat on a bridge and um, a lot of tourists go through the area... No, it's to, a monkey who realised that, that if he sits there, it gets stuff because it looked like it's a cute little chimp begging. No, but every time. Yeah, because you give a monkey, you give it. Oh, I'm bad as him now. If you give a chimpanzee uh, a banana uh, and he starts realising that humans have things to give, yeah, but it's all squirrels sort of learn stuff. that. But you don't go. Oh, you wouldn't say. Oh, went to the park. The squirrels waiting at the gate. You, you have to give him a toll to go in. They don't, they're only going to give him a nuts. They come up to you every time. You, you fucking idiot. Went to bed after watching it and fell asleep thinking about it on the bridge right now. It's a bit bad, really, because the monkey should work harder for its food. <laughs> It made me remember the slug I saw yesterday that was eating bird poo. <laughs> Nobody would ever help a slug with food like they do with ducks and monkeys. A slug's life is pretty bad. The only time they come out of their den is when it's raining. Den. So, so even their days out are depressing. <laughs> do you know what I mean? No. It is like... It's a horrible thing to be, in it? <laughs> a slug. <laughs> talking about what is it like to be a slug no just because like the monkey even though it's been quite aggressive everyone was like oh give it some water and it was it was well like kitted out it had like you know chocolate bars bottled water some like you know fizzy stuff and all that an ipod it was listening to monkey news it could have had one if it wanted one it was getting away with murder on that bridge and that's just because it was furry yeah if that was like a blob like a slug there's no way people would be that friendly towards it and it just annoys me how you get this pecking order for, like, no matter what creature you are, favouritism. And that slug was only eating that bird poo because it wasn't being offered stuff. If it was offered toffees or whatever. <laughs> well, it's just sad, isn't it? It's, it's come to that. That's what its life has come to. <laughs> yeah, but it's not as it mollusk like that's down on its fucking yeah, luck. It didn't live in a big country house no, and his wife it left it, the kids was, went, it started hitting the bottle. And I kind of thought, and look, they do only come out in the rain and it's depressing and it'll probably get killed in a bit. And that was its last meal. I just... That's <laughs> me! People but it wouldn't care. prefer steak and chips, Carl. It no, doesn't a leaf. have... It must like a leaf or a, a... You know, at the end of the day, it's an insect. They love it's it. It's not an insect. Well, it's part of that gang. It's part of that... 
No, it's part of that. They hang out together. They hang out together. Why do you think it's part of that Because it it knocks about in the woods in the same place as a spider does. But all I'm, uh, what I'm saying is they, they're eating boring stuff because that is what's It's in not their boring area. stuff to them. They're not, I have no opinion of it at all. They take in sustenance. No, but where you are is what you eat. When I'm in London, I'll have beans on toast for lunch. On holiday, what? Tapas? Go on, I'll have a bit. <laughs> so it's whatever you eat what's in that area. Suzanne went off to work and I went to the shop to buy some envelopes. The shop was empty, but the fellow behind the counter was on the phone and just kept talking, even though he could see I was waiting. I started to count backwards from 20. (laughs) When I got to six, he hung up and served me. I won't use the shop again. Question, why count backwards from 20? So he's thinking, what's going to happen at one? If I start counting from one, he's going, well, let him carry on. What, out loud? Not not really loud, but like, uh, more of a mouth action, so he could see who was doing it. Sorry, you... You just started miming, counting backwards to a man in a shop. He's on the phone. The yes. shop is empty. Yes. I thought he'd like me custom. He could have served me and stay on the phone. Even though I don't like that, at least he's still doing what, what you know, he needs to do. I just said, sorry, can I just get these, please? Yeah. Well, I stood there and I thought, it's annoying me now. My kidney's a- aching and I started to get a bit of a sweat on. So I thought, right, I'm going to give him 20 seconds and if he hasn't got off the phone, I'm leaving. And when, he got to, when I got to about six... He, he served me. What's wrong with that? Again, you are giving one yourself... of the strangest people. It's just giving yourself a, a thing. I could have been stood there for free. ages. He's one of the strangest people who's free to walk yeah. it's the about, streets. No, I set myself a little target and I thought, I don't want to waste another 30 seconds in here. I'll give him 20. It worked. He served me at six. But it didn't work. Yeah, but did he do it because you were doing that or did he finish his phone call? I don't know. I was busy counting. <laughs> Looked at what's been going on in the world. There was a human head attached to a seagull's body in a jar. Is that all it says? This is the sort of weird stuff that goes on behind surgery doors. I doubt it ever flew because the head would have been too heavy. Well, of course it wasn't. It didn't happen. It wasn't live. No, but they try this stuff, don't they? That's like that program I watched with a, a well, monkey. Well, who has ever tried to put a human head on a seagull's body? They've done loads of stuff like that. It's part of us moving on, isn't it? It's what are you talking about, I'm not going to get into an argument about well, science you're wrong. because it's all Don't behind talk closed shit. doors. How do you think we can change a, a, a heart now from another body? You have to try things out. It's trial and error. All sorts of weird stuff goes on in hospitals, but we let it happen because it's to help us out in the long run, isn't it? But what, what are they aiming towards when they're going to find out if you can put a head on a seagull's body? What is that? What, what, what are they want to learn and what do they, how do they want to apply that knowledge? A new heart it is obviously for a reason. It saves a life. Yeah. What is this to, to save money on transport? Instead of getting a bus pass, you go, can, you, can I just put my head on a seagull's body? I go, well, it won't work. Well, we'll try it. <laughs> yeah, but it is, there is odd things like that. Like, uh, I saw a fish the other day, right? right. And, uh, honestly, it's the weirdest thing. It was just like a blob with a face. <laughs> now, I would never have said, yeah, let that swim about. I'd have killed it from day dot. I would have been, get rid of it. <laughs> oh, God! Under what circumstances would you have killed that from day dot? Oh, wh- I'm just saying, looking at it, I'd say, that does not work. And it looked sad. It looked like it didn't want to be about... Have you got her number? <laughs> That's it for another week. Um, the end of uh, episode five. One more to go in this series of six with the Ricky Gervais show. Um, we'd love you to uh, buy Carl's book because uh, it is genuinely, it is genuinely interesting and funny. As a, as a, you know, just as a social experiment to see that uh, you know it proves Carl's theory wrong that a monkey can write a book. Um, so uh, it's bye from me, Ricky Gervais. Goodbye from Steve Merchant. Goodbye. And goodbye from the little shaven monkey that is Carl Pilkington. Huh? Audible hopes you've enjoyed this programme.
welcome to number three in the third series of the Ricky Gervais Show. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And of course, Carl Pilkington. All right. Had a good week, Carl? Uh, all right, just, just boring. It's a boring week. It was like that sort of kidney operation I've had. Um, it's just affected my life in a big way. How are you now, Carl? Are you feeling better? Uh, better, better than it was last week. Because last week you really were not putting the effort in, were you? And it's your own fault. You know, you've got kidney stones, you don't drink enough water. I've yeah, no, well, that's, that's what I've been doing this week. Just drinking. That's, I mean, you, you said, what, what sort of week have you had? What have you been up to? That's what I've done. I've drank water. <laughs> that's all I've been doing. If there's a water shortage in London, <laughs> it's because of that. <laughs> Honestly, just that's what you have to do. Can't, it's sort of, it's just boring. It's like a, a basking shark. It's sort of... <laughs> With his mouth open, just going through the water. Oh, Sick of it. Oh, he's led the life of plankton for have one you, week. Have you been able to do anything, or have you just been resting? Uh, it's best to rest, um, just because, you know, your body's still in shock, even though in the head, physically, I thought it was all right. Uh, the body sort of just acts in weird ways. Brilliant. Um, you know, it's a weird thing, isn't it? Like I said last week, you, you don't think about your body until there's something up with it. And then you panic a bit. And then you go, right, I'm going to look after it from now on. I've been given a second chance here. Uh, as I said before, this was not a life-threatening illness or operation. No, but it's, it's that same thing. The last time I had it was when I nearly choked to death on the Mr Freeze pop. Right. Where I had that sort of, uh, what do they call it when you have, like, a second coming? Do you know what I mean? It's that sort of thing where <laughs> I you I don't go, think you're the second coming. No, but that, that thing goes... <laughs> if you are, we're all screwed. That, you mean the second chance? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a second chance. Thing where, your life flashes before you, doesn't it? Yeah, but you get a... You suddenly feel kinder. Do you know what I mean? You, really? You, yeah, you sort of go, right, you know, that was a bit of a warning. Be like screwed? Be good to people and stuff. Yeah, a little bit. I think it's normal. So are you now a nicer person? You're giving more generously to charity and the like? Uh, well, they haven't been out, so I can't do anything. I can't help anyone. You yeah. go online. And but maybe, right. uh, you know, once... Donate some money, all this cash you're in. No, I've given enough money away. Sick of it. But... Um, no, it's changed. So he hasn't changed at all then, no. But you've also got to be careful as well, because there's that thing of you can drown yourself uh, by having too much water. Yeah. Mm. So it's just getting that balance right of not having too much and filling yourself up. Mm. Uh, well, yeah, it's that balance, time. right, of uh, not uh, dehydrating and, uh, you know, be becoming like a, a desert jellyfish, like a little crisp, and drowning yourself. Yeah. You're right, it is a balance. That's exactly what you've got to I do. I don't know how you've managed it, Carl. It's very complicated. Yeah. No, but... What I, I do is I, um, when I'm thirsty, I drink, and when I'm not thirsty, I don't. Yeah, but the, that's the problem with me. Uh, th whatever it is that's in your head that says you should have a drink, I don't really have one. <laughs> it's called a brain. It's called a brain. Yeah. It's the brain that tells you. <laughs> but the brain's never thirsty. I only think of drinking when I'm eating. And I'm not eating as much because my kidney's weird. I don't want to put any pressure on it, so I don't drink. So now, if I have it in front of me all the time, I go, right, I've got to have that. <laughs> so, yeah, so I feel, you know, feel a bit better. Good. Just, uh, it's just been a long week. Because when you, when you don't do much... It's just, you know, time doesn't whiz by. And normally your weeks are packed, as we know, with yeah. visits to the cobbler. And yeah. So. Well, it's just, like they say, isn't it? They say... Uh, following, following an ant. <laughs> exactly, yeah. You've normally got a hectic schedule. I know, but, I don't but, know how you fit it all in. But, you know, because I was close to death and everything... <laughs> you weren't close to death. I, I've been thinking about, uh, you know, other people who have been in that situation where they're dying and what have you. And it's weird how, like, in a way... Do you know, like they say before you die, things to do? Yeah. I I've never heard that sentence before. I don't know if they say. Well, I've extrapolated from that. What you mean is there are certain things you should do before you die. Swim with dolphins, etc. Yeah. But in a way, because I've had such a boring week, it's been a long week. So if I was dying, don't go swim with dolphins because you'll love it and the time will whiz by and you go, oh, there's another day gone. Whereas I've been sat at home watching, you know, The Price is Right and stuff. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, it's only four o'clock. <laughs> oh, this is dragging. So if I was dying, I'd go... Yeah, it's dragging, but I've got ages more left to live. Yeah, what's the point? But it's really about quality of existence, isn't it, when you're dying? No, but anyway, I'm just saying... Oh, OK. <laughs> ...been a boring week. But what I've been doing is going on the internet, oh, sort of learning stuff, of course. watching more documentaries about stuff. Yeah. Uh, OK, tell me something you watched on the internet, then. 
the thing that stands out the most, uh, there's this spider. Right. That a fella got. Um, popped it in like a little sort of bottle. Yeah. And uh, chucked in 80 ants. And the spider, right, just went mental. And uh, I don't know if the spiders eat ants. I don't know. I don't know if they do. Uh, but uh, he wasn't happy with them that they were there. And he was just whizzing around, um, sort of biting them. Not eating them, just giving them a bite. And the ants would sort of just lie there, dead. <clears throat> and uh, Spider had this system of sort of going, right, I'm going to put the dead ones over there. And he was biting them, dragging them across, putting them in a pile, killing another one, popping it in the pile. And by the end of it, he made like a little pile of dead ants. And he was just there sort of breathing heavily. And that, that, that was amazing, because I'd never witnessed that before. <laughs> But you don't see that happening, do you, normally? So you think that if people are unfortunately passing away, sort of visiting Disneyland or whatever, they should they should just learn stuff. Just sure, make get think, on the internet and this, watch this spiders. This world is amazing. Attacking ants. Um, and just that thing of you know, you, last week you were saying how good ants were and how they brainy and they work hard and everything. Yet none of them sort of they didn't know what they were doing. There's panic going on. <laughs> <laughs> You watch them again, they were running backwards and forwards. And I, I remember like seeing a program about ants where um, they meant to sort of work together as a team. Yeah. And if they climb up a person's leg, um, that person stood on their house, say. Yeah. And they're all like, oh. There's um, a signal and they all bite at the same time. They all bite once. Now, yeah. if that had done that on that spider, yeah. they sort of all go on it. And when they're all in position, one of them sort of goes, no. And it bites. Yeah. And then it would it would do some damage, but there was none of that. Mm. And but you've seen things like the Towering Inferno, where even humans panic crazily and jump out of windows and things until Steve McQueen comes along and saves the day. So yeah, but you, at the end of the day, when you're in a Towering Inferno, you were there relaxing on holiday. So of course you're going to be relaxed, and it's the shock of it's going to make you go, oh, I wasn't ready for that. I was sat here in my trunks. <laughs> where's <laughs> sure. where's that ant? Ants should always be alert. Well, yeah. Any insect life should always be... Well, so for a human scooping up uh, 80 of them and putting them in a bottle with a giant spider. Yeah, but I'm just saying that's what insects do. Um, their life, they never relax. That's what's weird with an insect. There's no downtime, is there? <laughs> it's you wake up, you go and get the food, you build your house. That's what you do, so you're always alert. They shouldn't be sort of running around going, oh, what do we do now? That should be that should be in them. I love that you're annoyed and these poor yeah. ants that were bitten to death. But also they say they're clever. I was looking at it. If I was an ant, I would have just crawled under the pile of dead ones. <laughs> just sit under there, wait for the spider to go. None of them were doing that. They were all staying on one side and the dead ones on the other. So I'm just saying I'm just saying that, you know, you're always sticking up for insects saying they know what they're doing. They don't. Uh, uh, what, 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 <laughs> where, where's this come from? When have I ever stuck up for insects? It's you that's follow them saying saying they're brilliant and that and ladybirds are right handed and Christ knows what. No, but you know, so I'd learned that. Brilliant. Um, you haven't learned anything. There's nothing to learn from that. There's nothing you learned from uh, that. something about um jellyfish, uh and uh what else was there? There was this fella, there was a programme on the telly about survival. Um, and a fella who, uh, he, he looks after elephants. And he's in this little hang glider, looking for an elephant that he's looking after. He has to keep a track on where it's going and all that. And one day he's saying, oh, I haven't seen the elephant today. And the fella's like, well, look, look for it tomorrow. He's like, no, it's best if I go and look for it now, because it might go further away or something. He said, oh, I wish you'd leave it. You know, till tomorrow. So straight away you're going, oh, this is trouble. So he's going out in his glider, sort of at night. Uh, he's looking I for. I doubt it's a glider. I imagine well, like it's, like a, it's a glider with an engine. It's one of a the light aircraft then. Yeah. So he, he gets in that on his own. He's wandering about in the air, looking down. Um, like I say, it's loads of land. He's looking for one elephant. He's not having much luck. Anyway, I think he gets to a point when he goes, oh, I'm having no luck. I might as well go home. Goes to turn round. Something happens, the glider falls to the floor, crashes. Light, light aircraft. Light aircraft yeah. Yeah. That crashes, he gets out, he's broke his legs, um, done his back in, um, uh, his hands. I mean, he's in a bad way. And uh, he looks at the plane, and that's uh, that's a wreck. Petrol's coming out of it. 
just thinking that's not going to fly again. And uh, he has to lie there, doesn't he, for like 48 hours or something. And in that time, everything's being chucked at him. He has a, a lion wandering around him. A scorpion walks over his leg. Some sort of dangerous snake went in his shoe. Yeah. Uh, what else is there out there? Some sort of bad ants. Um, just everything that's there that could cause a problem. Mm. He had it all in his life. I, I, uh, I haven't seen this, but I suspect there's a lot of conjecture <laughs> yeah. in this telling of the it. Bad, bad ants. Bad ants. And... No, just anything that you could think of mm. that's out there to cause you a bit of a problem. Camels. He got hot. He got so hot his lips fell off. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you have to have a lot of juice to keep your lips sort of how they are. Right. Uh, so that's the sort of state he was in. Yeah. 48 hours. And yet he survived in the end. Someone came and found him. And, and you that, thought that you were bored in. doing nothing? Yeah, no. Well, he didn't even have the internet. Yeah, but he had a lot of insects. What would you watch. do then if you land? If you landed, right? Supposing uh, we all land, right? We're shipwrecked. Okay, there's no food around, um, but there's a chance we might be saved, like in a few days. We just got to stay alive just for a few days, okay? Mm. Um, Steve offers up. His penis. For what purpose? Well, it's it's already he's, he's torn it in the car in the uh, plane crash. Anyway, it's, it's hanging off. You go, okay, listen, that lads, let's eat this. Let's go. This will go three ways. I should be so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, yeah. I'll look for something else. <laughs> Because we're surrounded by water. Why are we eating knob? There's loads of fish and everything. There's more fish in the sea than there is stuff on land. <gasps> that, that was something else that I've read about, about how there's more sea life happening. There's loads more. What stuff. do you mean? Than what? Um, than stuff happening on land. Well, yeah, it's a bigger place, isn't it? Yeah, and there's more... It's, they're all coming further in because it's getting so crowded. Everything's uh, being pushed outwards. So we, we're going to get to a point where people won't go walking in the sea because there'll be something deadly just floating about on the on near the shore. Again, that's no information at all. <laughs> I don't know. There's yet. no information in that statement at all. Yeah, I said I said how the sea is so overcrowded that everything's being pushed to the edge. It's not overcrowded. It is. What's being? You mean things that are in the sea are being pushed to the edge of the yeah, sea? Yeah, because there's new stuff happening all the time. There's new creatures being made, they're changing quickly. They were saying how, like, I don't know, 50 years ago, jellyfish didn't even have a have a sting. That's rubbish. Try 50 million and you'll get closer to the truth. But, but what I mean is, in terms of, like, land, we all look the same, don't we? We've had two legs and two arms for ages. Whereas in the sea, things are changing at a, a really fast rate. So, like, jellyfish were knocking about. The sea is a much more stable environment than the land anyway. What are you on about? Well, I'd have thought... I wouldn't have thought evolution is any any faster in the sea than land. Yeah, it is. Well, no, what, what's, what's the evidence for this? The well, I'm telling you now. I'm telling you how jellyfish have changed. And look at them. They how have they changed then? So they did, 50 years ago they didn't have a sting. Yeah. Now they have. Yeah. Trilbys, they wore trilbys 50 years ago as <laughs> yeah. well. And they just spoke with a much more, you know, <laughs> refined <laughs> accent. Yeah. Just that, that is quite a lot though, isn't it? Because jellyfish are nothing. But like no, you've made that up. That's not a fact. There's, there, there's no facts come out of this. That's not, not, oh, that's interesting. That you haven't said anything. Jellyfish oh. are, haven't changed in 50 years. No, they have. They've changed a, a lot in terms of... Well, they haven't changed in like, hundreds of millions of years. So I don't know what the 60s had to do with anything. I don't. I, I just don't know what what influenced the Beatles and Mary Quant at, suddenly had on jellyfish when they because hadn't changed for all, hundreds of millions this, of years. The, with all this sort of loose free sex, you know, free love, <laughs> yeah, they yeah. were just going berserk. I know. Yeah, there were no inhibitions yeah. amongst the jellyfish anymore. Things are, are changing a lot. To think that jellyfish, when they were, when they first came out, they were nothing. Jellyfish are, are nothing, aren't they? They're just a blob. So <laughs> when they first came out, when they were first released, and, new and, by Ron Bell. <laughs> yeah. uh, but what I'm saying is, even though they were nothing, they've grown to have a bit of something, <laughs> just to get by in a busy place. We which don't is know what you're talking about. It's it, all guesswork and it's conjecture. It's not guesswork. I've been it's all I've been reading all this and watching stuff. Carl, you haven't learned anything. Mm. Well, that's not entirely true because he's obviously 
learnt enough to have written a poem about some of these subjects. Oh, I love his poems. Are you getting into poetry now, properly? I really like it, yeah. Um, is Carl going to read this for me, Steve? If you want him to. I think so. I did one about my kidneys. Mm. What was it called? Uh, didn't have a name, it doesn't need it. Ode uh, to a Nephron. Right, I did two about jellyfish. Excellent. Uh, I don't like jellyfish. They're not a fish, they're just a blob. They don't have eyes, fins or scales like a cod. They float about blind, stinging people in the seas. And no one eats jellyfish with chips and mushy peas. <laughs> Get rid of them. <laughs> and then there's just a shorter one about a jellyfish. Um, it would be spiteful to put jellyfish in a trifle. spiteful to put jellyfish in a trifle. Yeah. A little half rhyme. Yeah. Um, do you want the one about my kidneys? Yeah. Uh, for God's sake, my belly ache. The doctor said it's my kidney. He said he's got a stick of tube up my knob. I said, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> for God's sake, knob ache. <laughs> I'm sort of mildly disappointed that they're quite good. Yeah, yeah. No poet's ever written about jellyfish and kidneys. It's great. Oh, God, I think you might have the market sewn up there. <laughs> it, is, it would be spiteful to put a jellyfish in a trifle. I mean, I'm, I'm both impressed and fascinated and worried by Carl's new literary outlook yeah. you know we, we've said to him we've we've tried to make him appreciate the arts and poetry and and uh, you know uh, you know explaining like what metaphor does and and symbolism and all that but i'm worried it'll backfire because what if he becomes clever and erudite and then we lose our little endless well of stupidity what if mm. we lose our little shaved monkey i mean these podcasts without you know it's almost like you were evolving into a human I mean, you've actually, you've authored the book. Well, I have to say, I mean, without, at the risk of sounding like we're shamelessly promoting it, I've only just looked at the book today, because that's the first time I've seen it, The World of Carl Pilkington, and uh, I was very impressed by how legitimate it feels. I mean, it does feel like an actual well, book. Well, he's put so much work into it. I it, mean, he... He's I done mean, drawings, he's done extra thoughts and ideas, and it's very odd to think that that has probably gone now into the British Library, which I think is obligated to take a copy of every book published. Incredible. I uh, mean, let's be honest, it's not going to really... It's not going to be on anyone's bookshelf. It'll be on their lavatory cistern, possibly next to their bed. But nevertheless, you know, it's hardback and it's got pages. It's a real book. Yeah. Will you uh, now read some some great works? Will you read poetry at all? Or? Um, probably not. I don't like reading made-up stories because Fiction. life's life's interesting enough, isn't it? Right. If I'm going to read someone else's lies, I might as well make some of my own up and save me money, is what right. I mean. But you do read um, lies and made-up things, you just take them as the truth. Um, Most of the spurious facts and apocryphal tales and ridiculous stories that you read on the internet are, I mean, fiction. Yeah, but as long as it gets you thinking, then it really doesn't matter. Say, like, you know, I was telling you about the sea being full up, yeah. right? Yeah how there's too many fish in it and they're all being pushed out. Then, um, you know, it was saying about how the jellyfish is changing yeah. from a bit back just being a blob to now being a blob with stingy bits. You go, oh. And then... No, I don't. I think I wonder what he read. And I then, what he was reading then I'll think of what other things are in the sea. How are they changing? And then that's when I might do a poem about an octopus with two heads. <laughs> Because it's, it's got me thinking. So no longer am I just reading someone else's story, spending a full week reading some other story. I've read a little paragraph, and that's got me thinking. About and it's an inspired you to make great art. With uh, an octopus with two heads. And you just think, yeah, that would work. You know, that's a good good way for them to evolve. 
They've got all the arms. Give them two heads. <laughs> They've got all the arms. And, you know, it would work because, like I've said to you before, it is one big head to make it two smaller heads. So it's just looking at science, looking at how things can move. It's on. not looking at but science. But it's not looking at science. You then speculating on an, on an octopus having two heads is of no value, is it, to anyone or anything? But there's people out there who are bringing out books who are writing stuff like that for sci-fi stuff. And I think why am I reading that? that's entertainment. Everyone knows it's not true. They're doing it to... But they do more than just say, what would it, wouldn't it be great if there, was a, if there was an octopus with two heads? They then paint a world in which this octopus exists I and presumably causes some kind of narrative interest. I can do that on my own, though, without... So know, what's the story of the octopus with two heads? It's happier in the end. Everyone likes happy ending. He's got company. But if that's not a story, Carl. What, what, th- tell us the story. What, you made up a story about an octopus with two heads? No, I'm just saying... I've, I've, pitched, I've thought about how the sea's changing. Right. right, what else is in the sea? Octopus. Right. What's an octopus like? Well, it's just a big head with a load of arms. Right. How would I change that? <laughs> I love this thought process. But it's not a story. This is not a story. It's not anything. It's just some thoughts you've had. It's not a your story. Talk- a story is there to make you think and, and have thoughts. But what is it that you've thought? You've not... I don't see what, what you've thought here. I've just thought, yeah, that'd be all right. <laughs> I know, but... Well, like, like King Kong, then. That's only someone who's gone, oh, monkeys are getting better at stuff. Yes, but it has a story, doesn't it? They go in search... No, it isn't. It isn't saying monkeys are getting better at stuff. <laughs> that's not what it's saying. There's lots of themes, but that's not one of them. Monkeys anyway. are getting better at stuff. No, they're getting <laughs> yeah. better at stuff. The way they try to sort of... He tried to go out with a woman. <laughs> That's them moving on, isn't it? It's the monkey going, do you know what? I quite fancy her. And you know from the beginning, I mean, that is a story that you go, well, that relationship ain't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? I don't... I, I mean, I've not gone out with women who have quite fancied, but then they smoke, and you go, oh, that's enough to put me off. Yeah. So... When a monkey's that big, <laughs> I wouldn't even the thought wouldn't even pass my mind <laughs> to go on a that date. we could this could work out. <laughs> Sometimes it's just you know relationships aren't made for each other. <laughs> now that for a story, you you, you wouldn't think it go past page one, <laughs> yet you're having a go at me because an octopus has got two heads, which isn't that weird when you look at them anyway. I mean they must be the weirdest <laughs> thing knocking about on the planet. I'm not kidding you. I've never seen anything so weird, and yet. <laughs> he's angry because he's not he's seen anything so weird as not to so happy. But it's not yet a story. What's weird about it? What's strange about an octopus with all the things that could... Why is it any weirder than a dog? Because it couldn't be further away from us. A dog has got human eyes. <laughs> <laughs> if, if a jelly... Honestly, if a jellyfish had a pair of eyes like ours, I probably wouldn't worry about him that much. But, like I said to you, it's that way that they haven't got eyes, they're floating about. I can handle some fish. They look they look like, because they've got eyes, you can make eye-to-eye contact with them. <laughs> what are you a jellyfish, making? what are you looking at? It's a snidey thing, like I've said to you. <laughs> you can see, see a lot in eyes. Do you know what I mean? They say, I don't trust him. Why? It's his eyes. Jellyfish haven't even got any, and I don't trust them. <laughs> Whereas if it had them, maybe they'd be the odd one that I'd go, oh, that one's all right. OK, Carl, I'm just going to throw an animal at you. Tell me how weird it is, what bits annoy you, how you change it, OK? A crab. I would have changed it. Yeah. Does it annoy you? Do you think it's weird? Um, they are weird. <laughs> but they're at that size where they can get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it suits them. Okay, um, good. Would it, would it change anything? Um, in a way, you know, what you're saying about things not working, he can't walk forwards. So but, why hasn't something happened? Why haven't they said, you know what, these arms are too clumsy. We need to have them so they can slot away easier and we can pull them out when we need them. <laughs> Instead of clumping around with them. Because they do struggle. You see them struggling with their arms. Yeah, they're still here. They're still doing that. They're still designed that way. What's the weirdest animal? So you think the octopus is the weirdest animal on Earth? Yeah. In terms of um, design and everything, and uh, if you lined everything up, say if I'd come from another planet yeah. and everything was lined up in a row and they said, right, we're going to give you a crash course in what's knocking about on this planet. Yeah. And you go, right, go on then. And you go, this is man. 
here's a woman, here's a dog, here's a cat, here's an octopus, here's a... I go, hang on a minute, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> that jingle, of course, signifies another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. There was an animal in the paper today that I've never before seen. It's called an alpaca. They are gormless looking. The fellow who breeds them said they are easy to look after because they're used to harsh conditions because they normally live in the mountains. The problem with this is they will turn useless eventually, and then if we try to bung it back on the Andes, they won't like it. It's like how people win these live like a star for a week competitions. They're not good for anyone. <laughs> okay. Do you know what I mean? If something's living somewhere... But he's not going to send them back to the back? Andes. He's presumably breeding them for something else. Yeah, but say if eventually, you know, the world's getting busy... There's hardly any room, and we go, right, what can we shift here? What's getting in our way that we can shift? <laughs> well, those funny-looking things came from the Andes, bung them back. All right, then let's put them back. And they go, oh, they don't like it. They're not surviving, they're dying out. Why did we bring them here? Well, it was closer. Yeah, but look, we've died out now of the... Sorry, this is not... This, this, is, not all scenario. This, this isn't happening. They're, they're angry about it, like it just happened and you're sick of it. None of this has happened no, yet. I'm just looking at how it will happen. <laughs> Leave them where they were. But you're, like... you're getting angry about things that you're speculating on now. It's absurd, Carl. Not once have I read here about your anger about, about terrorism or international, you know, political injustice. Not once have you written about that. <laughs> Only about the fact we may send animals back to the Andes. I know, but just because it, it just annoyed me, that's all. They brought them here. Some fellas getting a load of praise because they brought this weird animal into the country. And yet, it's like, well, they were, they were on the Andes for a reason. Leave them there. It was happier there. I, I mean, I feel guilty when I open a bag and a fly flies out of it, and I think, where's that come from? What bag are you opening with bat flies? By that? What bag? No, just when, like, you know, the bag I took the computer home in, a fly flew out of it, and I thought, when did that get in that bag? Where have I brought that from? And it's the same thing. It doesn't want to be somewhere else. It was where it was. And that's the same with this Palaco, or whatever. <laughs> Great news. Get $25 cash back on the purchase oh, you just God. made. Sign up it's now. It's amazing. Wow. It really is the ramblings of a madman, isn't it? Some new sea thing has been found. <laughs> <laughs> There's no headlines on the news. It wasn't found by sea experts. It was found on eBay. Someone was selling it for a fiver. I don't see the point in buying something that you don't know what it is. What do you I... mean? What do you mean? It was... It was... Someone's found some sort of shell with a thing living in it. Right. Um, they thought, oh, I've never seen one of these before. I can flog it on eBay. Someone bought it and then wanted to look after it, went to some sea expert, and they said, oh, I don't know what that is. That's, that's, that's the story. It's just Great weird how now you can stuff's being found on eBay. No, it wasn't found on eBay, though, was it? Purchase. Yeah, but that's where the specialist people sort of picked up on it. It's just weird that, I mean, I, all, all I was saying is I wouldn't want one. If you don't know how to, if it's a new creature, you don't know what what makes it happy. <laughs> when you get a kitten, you go stroke its head, loves it, right? And you can do that knowing that it's liking it. <laughs> if I had a little seashell, and you go, does it sit in water? I don't know. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You could end up doing more damage. So that's why I wouldn't want it. It's nice to have rules, and it? it's nice to know what you're doing with something. Well, as you write in the diary, it's like if an alien landed and wanted to live oh. with you. <laughs> as much fun as it might sound, it wouldn't be long before you got annoyed with it because it wouldn't eat the food you gave it. That's what I'm saying, but I couldn't have a go at it because he might not like pasta. He <laughs> <It> might not. <laughs> Everyone likes pasta. Well, that's it for another week. I hope you've enjoyed this half hour of drivel. I mean... Some of the most stupid things ever said. I mean, it's like he's got a contempt now for the world. Like yeah. He doesn't care what comes out of his head. Learn can be frustrating, <laughs> can't it? You know, you, you, maybe I'm getting you thinking, maybe on your way home today you'll be going, eh, octopus with two heads. And, and if you do that for five seconds, I've done my job. Good to have a job, innit? So, uh, for me, Vicky Gervais, goodbye. From Steve Merchant. Goodbye. And from Carl Pilkington. All right.
This is audible. Hello and welcome to uh, number four in the series of six, season three of the Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Uh, yeah, first of all, I'm sorry to do this, but me and Steve have got to bring something up that's been bugging us for a couple of weeks now, but it's, it's reached... Uh, you are so fucking lazy, Carl, at the moment. You have time off, right, you go away every weekend, so me and Steve are so precious with the, uh, you know, so many things to do, with extras and books coming out and stuff. You, we, I, I've never heard anyone whinge about going in with kidney stones. I know loads of people that have kidney stones. Oh, I They've know. Had the, yeah, yeah, no, no, you say not like that because uh, they have. They've had the operation. I know people that had their appendix out, right, an actual under-the-knife operation, yeah. and he was back at work the next day, and he had a bit of a, a sore side. But you have whinged now for weeks and weeks. Everything you say, oh, I've had this, uh, oh, I've got to go in again. But you're still well enough to go away every weekend to see your folks or your in-laws yeah, or, or a holiday. And, 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 and it's just like we are so... You know, sometimes you've got to pull together, mate. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, you say keep a diary, mm. and you said make sure you do a diary for a year. Yeah. If I didn't go and visit people and travel the world, what would I do in it? Carl, uh, I read your diary every week. All you seem to do is spend time in a cafe, having a cup of tea and a bit of breakfast. This, who are you, who are you constantly visiting? Anyway, let's not argue. You don't even people like your family, I arguing. thought. It's not my family, is it? Well, you, don't, family. you don't but like anyone. Why are you visiting? But you say I'm working that weekend. I'm working that weekend. We have to put. So I work, let's put this in first. No, you know, no, it's no, a busy fam time. Family's important, and yeah. you can't keep messing people. But this around. is all you have to do. No, what no, else are you doing? doing? What is other it, job have you got? Loads of you stuff. Know. I don't want to go into what I'm doing, but I've got loads but of stuff. But all I hear is you're well, always having meetings. I know. You're always yeah. Going from meetings. Yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 I don't know what that means. Meetings. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, no, seriously though. So you've been on your travels. You've got. You know, you've got lots to talk about, so... Yeah, I've got to go in hospital again as well, haven't I, so... What's your current state with your old... Oh, you I know. don't want to go on about it. Well, no, I mean, you you know, you've brought it up. It's you're fine, you're well enough to go away, you're well enough to go on holiday, you're well enough to visit people, you went on a train, you went to Manchester, you must be well enough, so you're well enough to do this. I went back to, uh, Bristol at the weekend, I had a bit of time off, as you oh. know, because Carl couldn't do the work. So I know, that's, that's what I mean, yeah. so we all had a nice no, well, no, I didn't. I, I, I went to Bristol when I was working. Oh, that's all right. But well, he's exactly. still visiting a place, is what I'm saying. Well, well, that's a ridiculous thing to say. That's like saying a pilot doesn't work, because he's visiting a place. No, because he doesn't visit it. No, you sit down plane. on your ass. Sometimes you hire a car, so you can't be reading or, or studying. You're driving for six hours. Yeah. I, I went there working. We went to America, we were working. I went to Bristol, I was working. Oh, shut up. Ooh. Do you know what I mean? Getting a bit uppity. The truth hurts, Stephen. <laughs> the truth does hurt, and it's interesting yeah. that he suddenly snapped at you there. I know. Because I wondered to myself, if it weren't for you, Mr Ricky Gervais, what would this man, this little round-headed man, be doing right now? Fuck all, Stephen. Fuck all. Yeah, I went back to Bristol at the weekend, and as we know, we all had a bit of time off. And, um... Uh, actually, I was quite annoyed because I, uh, I passed the pub near where my parents live, and they had a band on. You know, pubs sometimes have a band on. And the name of the band, I'm disappointed that I missed them. The name of the band, Rick, was <laughs> Loose Change. <laughs> but what I like about Loose Change is it's the least evocative name for a band, isn't it? It's, it's not amazing. sexy, it's nothing. It's got no kind of mood or feel to it at all. Loose, Loose Change. change. It's, it's just... It's uh, welcome. Rough outline. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just nothing. The checkbook stubs. <laughs> <laughs> Pocket fluff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but while I was at my parents' house, they, they often, uh, you know, they keep clippings of things, you know, if, if we've been mentioned in the papers, they like to keep a record of them and stuff, because uh, I like to show it to my grandparents, you know, and keep, a, you know, keep, keep fully abreast of things. And uh, they... I, th you know, I managed to find a couple of them. This is what I don't know if you've heard this, Carl. It's, for people who don't realise, Carl was making a couple of little three-minute TV projects recently that were on Channel Four, and in the Sunday Times, they uh, someone's written a letter about Carl to the Sunday Times. Wow! Uh, they can send in comments and views on things they've seen, read, heard. Oh, excellent! And this is what it, someone wrote to the uh, Sunday Times: <laughs> Who is Carl Pilkington? <laughs> And why have I just wasted five minutes of my life listening to some of his cretinous thoughts on Channel 4? <laughs> he asked, why are there so many dinosaurs on display in museums? Quotes, couldn't they just choose the best one and just show that? He summed it all up by deciding that we know too much. Somebody clearly doesn't know enough to know that this is a complete waste of airtime showing no wit, intellect or creativity. 
That's from Wendy Robinson in Berkshire. You can't have your critics. Do you know what I mean? You've got to have your critics. Of course you have. If everybody liked what you did, then you're not doing the right thing. <laughs> she you wasted five minutes, and they were three-minute wonders, so it must have felt <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> two-thirds as long again. But think how angry she must have been to have bothered writing this letter to the Sunday yeah. Times. Well, that's good. I mean, though. you it's really must have. It's all about getting people thinking. That's what I always say to you. As long as I'm getting people thinking about what I've said, she remembered what I said. But what what views did you put out in these short films, which you feel people perhaps should be talking about, discussing, digesting, thinking about? Uh, just stuff that was in my head that day when I was filming them. Yeah. Is it in your head now? Uh, some of it is. <laughs> re- now you've remembered me what I said. Now you what? Now you've sort of told me what I said in that one. Yeah, I remember saying that. Yeah. And, I, and I stick by it. Remembering some other stuff? Yeah. I'll tell you now, right? This, uh, yeah, if, I don't know if Wendy's, you know, listened to this. But, <laughs> Almost certainly not. But listen, right? <laughs> I was saying about the the uh, museums, right, and how they're big and everything. And they've Brilliant. got dinosaurs all over the shop. I read right. that in, the, in that museum, they've got something like... Uh, seven million bits of stuff in there, <coughs> right? Now, when I spend two hours in somewhere, just show me the good stuff. Don't be saying we've got seven million bits. Because there was a fella, who, a fella who opened it, right? I did a bit of research on the museum. A fella who opened the museum up. Uh, what was his name? It doesn't matter. OK. It doesn't matter, does it? What museum was it? It was the London one. Oh, the London one, yeah. Okay. So he's in there and he's, he's collecting all this, you know, bits of stuff. What stuff? Just whatever's knocking about that oh, time. Right, okay. it, just, it seemed like you he never searched it. He never chucked anything away. He's oh, like, right. oh, I won't put it in the bin. Pop it on the shelf. Okay, right? so yeah. So he's put everything on a shelf. Oh, in right, the museum. Yeah. Then as time. Well, went I think on, you're going into too much detail, but just give us the gist of it. No, but all I'm saying is, uh, he keeps everything, and if you keep everything, sometimes it'll be good stuff, right? Um, and a lot of the stuff was going missing, the good stuff. But people who set these museums up are just as crafty. What? The fellow who found Tutankhamen, he was pocketing all sorts of fingers and stuff in his pockets on the way out. <laughs> that had rings on them and stuff. So all I'm saying is, why is she having a go? But she's hang on, wait, that, I, what's that got to do with someone pocketing? I don't understand your because, point. Because she's sort of moaning at me going, don't have a go at the museum and the dinosaurs. But no, she, but she's having a go at your idiot. fatuous you're, point. Yeah, you're absolutely uneducated, okay. stupid I mean, I, point I, that I, you got. You got TV time to talk absolute shit. If I could uh, that's not paraphrase fault, Wendy, that's not my fault. If someone says they want me to do a little program and you can do what I want, I went and did what I did. Free but, speech. Innit? But we just gave you the chance then to defend yourself, and you just confirmed Wendy's point a thousand times over. What was all this waffle about people nicking stuff? What's that got to do with anything? Because she's having a go at me. I didn't nick. But anything. she's having a go at you for talking uh, uh, nonsense uh, that's of no consequence, which is what you just did that's then. That's all nonsense. But what was your point? Oh, all right, then well, we'll watch Wendy's little program when that goes out. Let's see what <laughs> she's got to talk about. Sick of her. So anyway, as I say, my mother saves various clippings and things which may be of interest. This was recently in the uh, Daily Mail, in one of those kind of uh, gossip columns. Uh, Ricky Gervais's cringeworthy dance routine as managerial buffoon David Bren was undoubtedly the highlight of BBC comedy The Office. Perhaps credit for the scene should not go to Gervais, however, but his lanky co-writer Stephen Merchant. <laughs> for I hear that six-foot-seven-inch Merchant has been attracting a great deal of female attention at the so-and-so pub in North London... Uh, until he took to the dance floor with Brent-esque results. Says my mole, most of the feminine throng looked away in embarrassment. Putting it kindly, he was rather ungainly, like a giant albatross hopping on stilts. (laughs) Right, now then. I'll take issue with this, because firstly... You wouldn't be attracting female attention in the first place. Rick, if I had been, I'd have phoned the mail myself. (laughs) Point A... Right, I seem to remember distinctly I was talking to one of my mates the whole night and we were discussing about the fact we were too shy to talk to girls. <laughs> so wrong there. Yeah. Point two, as you well know, if I take to the dance floor, which on this occasion I didn't, I remember distinctly not because I love to dance, 
I would not have been described as a giant albatross hopping on stilts because Carl has seen me dance, you've seen me dance, you know I'm a good mover. Yeah. I, just in the same way that people can't quite understand how Peter Crouch, the same height as me, yeah. is able to be so brilliant on the football field. Yeah. The same people look at me when I'm dancing and they go, I don't know how that big guy is able to bust some of those kind of moves. Yeah. yeah, yeah I've yeah. won two dance contests in my life. Those, yeah. those facts, those stats speak for themselves, Rick. I know, I know. I mean, you've seen me dancing. How would you describe me? I, I, uh, I, I think that you look like a... Isn't an albatross, isn't so You look like um, an upright lizard, right, give, having being given electroshock treatment. And I think that's a lot fairer, isn't it, than the albatross nonsense? Well, I... Mm. So I'm just trying to picture that, because, again, I, I... Was that a compliment? You were on my side, right? You were defending Yeah, it, 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 a cross between a giant lizard and a, 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 a stick insect. Again, because they don't sound in, 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 straight away. They don't sound like compliments, but I'm assuming oh, you're on okay. my side here. Uh, stick insect with funny glasses. Is that from what, again? I, yeah, I just I thought mm, I was thinking you would perhaps be a bit touch more supportive. But these you've not really. Carl, you've seen me dance. What 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 are your views? Uh, it's just like a bit of weird art. <laughs> I wouldn't have said an albatross, because I was looking at one of them the other day, and I don't understand what they mean by that, because they're dying out. They say, you know, uh, <laughs> they dive in the sea. Oh, it's gone. Yeah. Something happened in the brain. It went from the point we were making, via an albatross, then it just shot off. It just ping, like a pinball. Well, let's hear because it's going to be another good point. No, it's just saying how, because um, I've, I've never seen one, and they were saying, how would you feel if, if you never saw one again? And I was like... You know, I've got by this long without it. It's not bothered me. <laughs> but um, but it, was, it was just sort of saying uh, <laughs> what they do is they dive in the sea, sort of put their head under the water, see if there's any fish knocking about, grab one, get out again, right? Yeah. Go to land. I don't know if they're designed to do that. Well, obviously they are. No, because seagulls are, because you see them floating about. Now, what's happening is they're doing that, but getting caught in... Nets. Well, that's it. The net shouldn't be there. That's the point. They're totally adapted to their environment, but we came along millions and millions of years afterwards and stitched them up. It's not like people are going, well, the nets are always there. How did they evolve without getting caught in the net? We invented the net. We've only been knocking around for a few hundred thousand yeah. years. But what I'm saying is it's that thing about animals learn by mistakes by other animals. You know, like the monkeys... Uh, peeling potatoes. Right. That's never <laughs> happened. They go and put nuts in the salt water to, to salt the nut. Whatever. How does that how does that get to peeling potatoes? But, uh, because in your head they were working in a canteen. Making chips. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter what the food is. I'm just saying how they know how to sort of prepare. I that love food. the fact that you don't care what the fact is. When you're discussing facts, that's all that matters. Otherwise, on Mastermind, they just go, um, uh, who wrote Much Ado About Nothing? Dickens? Yeah, close enough, whatever, someone did. It, the fact is the, what matters. Yeah, but with that question, that's got a straightforward answer. What I'm telling you is the way that animals work. If it's a potato or a nut, it's a foodage. <laughs> and once again, I return you to my question as before. What's your point? What were you? What point were you making? I'm just saying an albatross will find. F if you're hungry, you find food or you change your diet. If you don't <laughs> eat something else, you die out. Simple. Said before. <laughs> if you want a pie, but they haven't got any pies, you have a pasty. Alter your diet. Mm. And an albatross. Drastically. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's oh, radical. radical. <laughs> yeah, you said. Completely change of a diet. No more pies. <laughs> what are you eating? Pasty. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna eat quiche anymore. I'm gonna have a tartlet. But you, you're getting more and more sort of single-minded in your... No, single-celled. Yeah. It's not, though. In your belief that everything you say has got some kind of profound implication and that, and that no one else is listening, that we're all ignorant. All right. We're all not it, listening to what you're saying. Here's another one. Go on. Here's something else to discuss. Oh, come on. This would be good. In series This would be as good as E equals MC squared. The, uh, the people aging backwards idea. Well, it's not an idea. They've done something on it, saying how... No, they haven't. A baby has been messing about with emails. <laughs> right? right. Oh, yeah, God! A 65-year-old doesn't know how to use email. So, again, my system works. Uh, so, say if you're an old person, 
you're you're not using the internet, but you shouldn't be anyway, because you should be sort of just getting used to life as an old person. When you're a baby and you're about to die, they're using the internet. I don't know what you mean. When you're a baby and you're about to die. This is if, this it, is if this was your world. Idea, if it yeah. was your world. Well, let me just ask a couple Sorry. of questions. None, that makes no sense at all. What you just uh, that makes no sense at all. I'm just saying that my theory. You may as well have hit a walk. What to saying? express that point, because they're... Yeah. I, the pong... Yeah, that would have made more sense. <laughs> See, this is why, more profound. This is, why, more resonant. this is why Wendy's having a go, though. Because you're not being open-minded. You're not thinking about... But we're being open-minded to good ideas, to sensible thought, to intellectual considerations. We're not being open-minded to this utter drivel. Yeah, but every invention is a bit... Who'd have thought the Frisbee would have caught on? <laughs> I don't think that can count as an invention, though. Of course it is. People are paying for it. Someone said, I'm going to invent something. But you can people chuck are it paying out. for carrots. But they're not an invention. Because you pay for something, it doesn't mean it's an invention. No, but a man made thing. A frisbee. It didn't grow off a tree, did it? Someone's made that and gone, I can sell this. And people are buying it. <laughs> you know, all I'm saying is things, things change, don't they? You know, the albatross is dying out. The way. Uh, like, when I walked into the flat, right, we've had hot weather, haven't we? We've had a lot of flies knocking about. Now, when I was younger, I never saw flies sort of hanging about in, in gangs. <laughs> Whereas... <laughs> I don't know what world this is! Would they have little motorbikes? No, you know, just, uh, you'd sort of see one, one would get in the house, you know, my dad would kill it or whatever, but you'd never see three. You wouldn't be going, oh, which one am I going to get first and everything. They'd, they'd come in, they'd exit out of a window or whatever. Whereas I walked in on, on a bit of activity. <laughs> There's nothing to eat here. Right? <laughs> Three flies in the flat, right? All sort of whizzing around. Right. All together, right? So I just sort of think, oh, uh, you know, let them be. Uh, they seem to be happy. Uh, you know, they, they're playing around with each other, right? Sat down, reading the paper, look up, right? It was like the, the one was trying to, like, have it away with, with one of the flies, and the other one was was a having a go as well. It, it turned out it was a little fly that didn't want any of the action, but two were attacking it. How could you possibly gauge that? Just by watching. That's how you learn, isn't it? You watch, you, you watch... But no, this is conjecture again. You had no idea what was going on there. No, I did. It, it's, it's, it's the way they were sort of jumping on it and stuff, and I was like, oh, I'm not happy with this going on, and, you know, under my roof sort of thing. <laughs> My house, my rules. But it's, but it's a nightmare because it's small. You can't control it. You don't know which one's which. You might end up sort of pushing out one that's the bad. What are you you're talking out... about? I'm just saying... Why are you getting involved? Just because creatures are changing all the time. What are you talking about? What point are you making? I'm just saying the way that flies used to be happy-go-lucky, <laughs> on their own, the sun's out, have a fly about. <laughs> Whereas nowadays, oh now, God. there was like little attacks going on. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, God, I'm But how could you tell which were the two aggressors and which oh. was the victim? How well, could this, you distinguish? This, this, was, this was the problem. I mean, all I was looking at was which one they kept attacking. And I was thinking, if I can get that one in the bedroom and then get the Sorry. other two out the window... What are you... Just breaking it up. Because <laughs> oh, what sort of a person would it be to let that go on? <laughs> talking about he has no feelings for anything he doesn't care if whole species die out that's, why are you getting involved wrong. that's where you're wrong because i think i think more than most people i think there's a lot of people who just go through the motions yeah they do if the we... same thing every day they can do a job but that's all they stick to they don't think about what them flies do carl what's that i've known do? you for i don't know four years and all you ever say is things like, why do we have jellyfish? No, I haven't mentioned the jellyfish today. But it's the same old shit. You look at some, you make up your own story, and then your conclusion annoys you, even though it's totally fatuous. Like I say, the man with the frisbee, what happens if, if he had a mate who said, rubbish that, he wouldn't have done it? I love the fact that you think the frisbee is the pinnacle of invention. Yeah. I think it's amazing. No, it's an example of something that, you know, if he was on some programme where, you you know, you said, I've invented this, did go get out, they wouldn't, have, they wouldn't give him time of day to say, right, I've made this thing, it's out of plastic, you throw it about, what, what for? Well, you just chuck it about on the beach. What's the point? It was a bit of fun, isn't it? No, I don't like it. How okay, many that was them? an argument with himself. <laughs>
No, but do you know what I mean? It's a popular little thing, and I'm just saying it's easy to put ideas down. But you've never even come up with an idea as good as the Frisbee, and that's saying something. I came up with a clippable mat that goes what? on a cup, and it's a, it's a good little thing. I haven't followed it through yet. A what? A clippable mat. What's a clippable mat? What a clippable that mat that you stick on a cup, so you, you can put your cup down on a table without having to go, oh, where's that mat? It's, it's clipped to the cup all the time. And you put the cup down wherever you want because it's got a mat on it. I think I've seen that. But why does it have no, to be clipped? No, why couldn't it just be built into the cup? Because, uh So it clips onto, you've got our special cups. It doesn't yeah. clip onto every cup. No, but just the same way that every sauce is different. You don't say, oh, I'm sick of this sauce. It doesn't fit a mug. You, you use the sauce of that. I mean, I don't use sauces. <laughs> just don't buy that sort of But isn't a sauce of what you're talking about? Uh kind of, yeah, but it's clippable. But why is the clip of, why is the clippability so important to you? So you don't have to keep finding the, the, the mat when you put the cup down, it's constantly clipped to the mat. But the why cup. does it have to be clippable? Because that suggests it's removable. Why not just have something where it's constantly attached? What's to stop you from losing that in much the same way as you lose the coasters? Do we need this, this? Do we need a well, clippable coaster? But let's just let's ask him like it's the dragon's den. Let's okay, ask him yeah. now. What? We've got money to invest yeah. on your clippable right. cup. What's now pitch problem? this idea to us. Tell it, how would you sell this well, idea you, to you us? You just said uh, what was your question then? Brilliant. So you're not listening. Let's start no, again. I am. Okay. I, I no, just... imagine you walked in. You what just is it for? In. What is it for? Is it is it is it a coaster to stop? Uh, the heat from the cup burning the varnish. Rick, let him explain. Or let's is it a saucer to stop um, well, look spills? Let's, it let's, let's have you pitch this idea to us. Just You've, you've never met us before. You were investors. Tell us. Explain this to us. Sell it to us. Right. Um, we're living in a world uh, where furniture is important to people. They spend a lot of money on it, don't they, furniture? Yeah, There's absolutely. so many furniture shops out there. Yeah. All different types of wood from all over the world. Absolutely, yeah. Right? If Good something's point. come from the Amazon, mm. you don't want a coffee stain on it. No, you don't, know. Right. But we're living in a world as well mm. where people don't use saucers. What when, do you mean when they do When you go out and buy, because people... What do you mean we're living in a world where they don't use saucers? Yeah, there's loads of saucers, yeah. Because I know people who buy cups singly. Right. Because there's only two people living in a flat, so you don't buy a big box, because in a big box of, of like, plates and that, you get things like, uh, you know... So, uh, what's what's the plate that's above a saucer but below a plate? <laughs> I never, I never... <laughs> the plate that's above a saucer but below a plate. <laughs> so it's a plate but it's below a plate. But it's a size that you sort of go, what am I doing with this? <laughs> So, uh, what would it be? A, a side plate? Uh, maybe. But a plate yeah. that you'd have alongside your regular dinner plate, right? Maybe. You put a bread roll on or something in a restaurant. Maybe. Yeah, okay. But, but you What's your point? What do no, you mean, it... I'm just, it's fascinating to me. Because this is his best attempt now okay. to try and attract investment. Do you know where the, your mats are at home? I haven't got mats, don't use them. Why not? Because uh, it, it doesn't bother me. I, I haven't got any highly polished um, uh, furniture from the Amazon. Right, Steve, have you got any sort of... I've got some coasters and I use the coasters. And do you know where they are when you need one? Well, yes, because they're always at the place where I would normally put down a mug of hot tea, i.e. Yeah. on a table or a coffee table. Right, now, do I you keep, find... If, if I had a, a highly polished table from the Amazon, I'd keep my coasters on it. Yeah, but what I'm saying now is, what happens if you get up with your cup of tea, you're a busy man, right? This yeah. is what I'm saying, we're living in a world where people are busier than Yeah, ever. go on, go on. Not everybody can sit down and enjoy a cup of tea sat in the same place. Right. You get up and you might move into another room. Um, well, you haven't got a, you haven't got a polished table in there from the Amazon, doesn't No, but you might be working on another expensive table. Oh, fine, we'll have a coaster there. That has a they? computer on. My question is this. One, does it fit all mugs? Uh, or do I have to buy a special mug to have this special Well, we can, we can work it whatever way you want. We can either look at the standard size mug and say, let's appeal to everyone, or we can... Get in, in touch with some mug company. How is it clipped? Just like little plastic clips that clip onto it. Yeah. And then you clip it off and you and you clean it. The dishwasher proof, by the way. I, yeah, I think I don't, I, no, but, they don't need that But at all. Why, why can't you just make a mug that has something mm, built, built in, in the base of the mug to prevent it from making the mark? No, I don't think It's only that. the heat that makes the mark, isn't it, really? I, I, I just want to say now, that's a pointless idea, um, and I'm out. Right, but... What about the idea that you've just suggested then, with the mug, with the saucer built in? Yeah. What about will we will we do that together? But that's not that's not your idea. That's my idea. Yeah, but without my idea, you wouldn't have had that. 
Well, but that's absurd. We're having a conversation. I've come up with an idea now. I've got the money. You, I've got the money, and I'm, I'm going to go off with that idea. Yeah, you haven't painted it anyway, and it's a rubbish idea, and you couldn't. It's paint. not rubbish because I've just thought as well that'll be good for putting biscuits on the side as well. <laughs> Okay, no, that means point. we can get rid of that plate that I don't know. By what the way, now this is broadcast, you can never patent this idea because it's out in public domain. Rick, 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 why don't we see if there's anyone out there who's willing to invest in this idea? Are you a mug manufacturer? Are you a mug designer? Are you someone who's got any interest whatsoever in this idea? Do you think it's a saleable idea? And more importantly, would it be not great to have a picture of Carl's face? On the map. Because it's perfectly round. Perfectly round. As well, and it, you'd scold him every time yeah. you. Uh, yeah. So there'd be a certain satisfaction in that. Yeah, well, if Peter Jones is listening, or that Ballantine fella, or uh, what's his name? Any uh, of the uh, big uh, investors on that show, or indeed yeah. any investors anywhere, podcast at rickygervais.com. Get in touch. Tell us how, how we can move forward with this brilliant new idea. Hmm? Pathetic. The jingle that signifies another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Got up and put the radio on. I listened to the story that the vicar read on Radio 2. Yeah, that could be good. He was saying how Jesus was 33 when he, when he died. He said he was more into the idea of doing a lot in your life than living for ages. This was linked to the news about the doctor who's come up with some stuff that he's been injecting himself and his wife with that makes you age better. I looked it up on the internet. It wasn't worth them doing it because they are already old looking. I don't know why people want to stay looking young. You can wear a bald head better if you're old, because hairs are replaced by wrinkles. That's drivel. No, it's, it's not drivel. A pointless, it's just... a pointless entry to a diary, that. It's not, because that could be a, 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 like an important bit in like world history. What? The fact that, that people, that someone's trying to make people not age. Age is good, isn't it? When you see an old person... It's been going forever. What has? People trying to age better. No, but he's talking about if you're 90... He wants people to look like they're 30. And that's not good, because how, how would the world run when that's going on? Well, I agree. But, you know, it's, when people, again, it's not a revelation. If I, if, if I like chatting to old people, because they know a lot of stuff. So if I'm sat on a train and someone's old, I'm happier talking to them about... They get up and move after about ten minutes. Well, no, no, you notice the fact that many of them are in firm and can. <laughs> yeah, they, they have to stay there and listen to this but, one. But, yeah, even that, even that means that they're getting more out of life in a way because they don't move about as much, so they have more thinking time. It is weird how that happens to you as you get closer to death. Jesus. You know, you're not working as much because you're resting and you can think back about your life and you can think, oh, I had a good one. Actually, it's not been that bad. Whereas if... But you must have started that now. Because you've been doing nothing for the past three months. Yeah, but I'm just, well, like I'm saying, it is a good thing for you to do to sort of think about what you've been doing with your days and your weeks. And, and how stuff. do you assess your life so far? With all this spare time you've had on your hands and moping around and moaning about your illness and just sitting around, right? You've been uh, introspecting, have you? Yeah. Go on then. What have you come up with? I haven't come up with anything. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, I have, I have an all right life and things are changing. Oh. Keep saying that. No, but they, but you don't know how much they are changing to the point of I don't know if I mentioned the squirrel eating Mars bars, but from that <laughs> from 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 that happening to monkeys opening bottles with lids on them to it's just it's it's mental out there. It's madness what is going on, and all I'm saying is old people need to be old people. You need oldness. You need to see old people. You need to go right. They might have a solution. They've been on the earth longer. Quick, we need an answer. How old are you? I'm 32. Well, you look 78. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying! I don't know who that conversation was with, why you got angry, and I think you made the opposite point that you were making yeah. at the beginning. If you, you're 32, you look 78. No, you were saying about it would be a problem if you were 78 and looked 32. Well, I don't know what you're saying. You came down the wrong side then. Either. You did that whole thing and you bollocked it up again in your brain. I'm just saying, either way, you need to have people who look old. Otherwise, who's in charge? <laughs> What do you mean? Right. So you say even if so, you're saying it'd be all right to make 78 year olds look 32 as long as there were some 32 year olds that look 78. As long as you've got old looking people. No, but say. Can like, I tear this page out? Because <laughs> it's worthless. What I mean is, when I went to the doctors, oh. I saw the specialist, right, mm. about the kidney stones. I was I was asking him all the straight questions. Go on. Is it life threatening? No. Uh, you know, how long am I going to be out? All the, the rest days. of it. Right now. 
He As was... it turned out, it is life threatening, and you've been out for three months whinging about the fucking thing. Strange. Now he was quite old. He looked about fifty-five, and that reassured me in a way. In a way, it didn't because he's he's one of them doctors who didn't open his eyes much, and I kind of thought, I hope you. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? What? What do you mean he didn't open his eyes much? One of those sort of doctors who's either that overworked that he's, he, he does that, you know, when he's like he's tired, so he's going right. What we're going to do is, and he's doing that with his eyes shut. He's well, this is like that. this is radio. I know, but I'm telling you so you can see. But people are meant to be listening to this. But if they can't imagine me with my eyes shut, well, tell them you got your eyes shut. Just right, say yeah. he had his eyes shut. Yeah, he had his eyes shut. Oh, had he been reading this? Yeah. <laughs> Bored, stupid, I imagine. He's just trying to get a. Oh. Well, do, do you know what I mean? I, or, I don't know if it's because he's tired or if he's that educated that some people know so much you don't even have to look at it. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about! Intelligent people. Who is so educated that they don't need to open their eyes? Well, you see it, you see <laughs> like... <laughs> uh, who's that bloke up there? Is he blind? No, he's been reading too much. <laughs> He no. doesn't open his eyes anymore, doesn't no. he? No. Old, old people who you see wearing tweed and what have you, and they're really posh and they talk, and whenever they talk, their eyes are shut. And they I open. don't know what this observation is. I don't understand why you've never seen that. I've never seen an old, educated man wearing tweed who doesn't bother open his fucking eyes. Steve, I don't you? know what you're talking about. Steve, have you seen... Do you know what I mean when people don't sort of open their eyes when they're talking to you? And it can be quite annoying, because it's like they're saying, I'm not interested about you sat there, I'm not bothered if you're listening, or I'm saying what I'm saying because I say what I say. I mean, it can be quite if, he, if he has got his eyes closed, he's probably just trying to absorb what you're saying and, and think carefully yeah, about probably. it, so anyway, he doesn't misdiagnose I'm not, you. I'm not having a go at him. Well, I'm like just what? saying he was 50 odd, and I was happy that he was there telling me. <laughs> I don't know why you were watching his eyes when he was telling you about your insides. Because you can tell a lot by people's eyes. That's what I said about jellyfish. But you know, just lines in a face tell a few stories, and I don't think we should get rid of them lines. Brilliant. Wise words. Well, that's the end of uh, show number four in this third series of the Ricky Gervais Show. So it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And of course, Carl Pilkington. All right. Hopes you've enjoyed this program. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Happy New Year. Welcome to the world's number one podcast. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Hello there. And Carl Pilkington. All right. We have had an overwhelming response from emails. Uh, to be honest, we're very grateful and thank you so much, but we've had over 4,000, which is just too many to get through. So we're going to have to uh, uh, apologise for not getting back to you. We, we, we are going to try and read them all, but um, we just can't reply. We've, uh, it, it's, we, we do this ourselves. We're three little, three little fellas. We haven't got an entourage and millions of people working for us. It's just us in a little room. But thank you so much. One in particular, remember a couple of weeks ago we asked if there's any house DJs out there, maybe they could do a dance mega mix with the words, I could eat a knob at night. Carl just said that in conversation, talking about uh, someone in a reality game show, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, who had a kangaroo penis. And he just came out with the phrase, I could eat a knob at night. Um, someone has uh, risen to the challenge. We had about 70 different songs. We're going to play our favourite uh, at the end of the show and maybe put some of the others on the website, rickygervais.com, so you can go there and um, and hear great dance tracks. They're all called I Could Eat a Knob at Night. <laughs> oh, no-one's switching off now. Everyone's guaranteed they're going to stay right to the end there so they can hear I, I Want a Bit of Knob at Night. Was it? I, I, I Could Eat a Knob at Night. I could yeah. eat a knob at night. It's funny, it was only uh, a, a while ago, you were talking about getting quoted, like Winston Churchill got quoted and, and uh, Ben Franklin got quoted, and now you may go down in history... Uh, I could eat a knob at night, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> Carl, I could eat a knob at night, Pilkington. <laughs> <laughs> um, talking of uh, all things uh, uh, nobula, um, I got a text from Carl yesterday, Steve. A text from Carl, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll just read it to you. OK, see you to Moz for a face rub at 6.30 then. No bum tubes, though. So I was intrigued, and I called Carl and said, I think you've just sent me a text by mistake. What's the explanation of that? F see you tomorrow for a face rub. Yeah. No bum tubes, though. 
Just because my mate, right, Russell. Why did he choose you? He just said, he said, you know, you, you, there's things that go on in life that you need to experience. Yeah. He said, just, just pop along. And I, I, I didn't say yes straight away. What's a face rub? You mean a facial? Like a face... Just like a, just like a posh face wash. Like just, a facial, where you lay down... You just clean your face with a flannel yeah. and that. So, so you're, you're going to have a facial s scrub, you're going to go lie down with another man and have your face... Well, no, bit. this is what I was saying to him. There's, there's a couple of questions. I didn't just say yes straight away. I questioned it. I said, well, I'm not that happy with this. No, I said, look, there's nothing weird going on here, is there? I said, it's not a house, is it? It's a proper <laughs> clinic and that. I said, yeah, it's proper. You wear a, a dressing gown and that. I said, well, I'm not that So he's already got you in the dressing gown? Yeah, well, I, I haven't agreed to that. Today I've worn a little round polar neck sort of jumper so I don't have to take it off. It's not going to get in the way of my face. I made sure I didn't wear a shirt with a collar. I'm not taking this off. They can put the dressing gown on top of this. Right. If you have to do it to look smart or whatever. I'm not taking my clothes off. Okay. I don't know if it's a woman who rubs my head. I don't know if it's a bloke or, or whatever. Well, the thing is, you get extra, don't you, for your face rub? Because your face goes all the way back over the oh. top of your head down to the back of your but, neck. But all I was so you've got a big face, haven't all, you? All I was saying to him is, I'll have the face rub, but I don't know if, if once you're in there, right. they try and sell you the old, uh, the old the, the bum tube thing. What, what's what, the bum tube? The, is that a euphemism? What are you talking about? The thing where they pop a tube in and put coffee in your belly and it cleans you out and that. I An enema? That. Yeah, that's... Yeah. A, a, a colonic yeah. irrigation. Yeah, yeah. W why would you have that? I don't. I'm not. I don't want it. I don't. I don't think. Why you not? Need to, just because I think I've said to you before about, you know, you, you don't need to be that clean inside. Do you know what I mean? I don't mind washing my face. <laughs> but at what occasion do you need where you're that cleaned out? <laughs> do you know what I mean? And well, the, the, it's always a clear tube and that, and you see all the stuff whizzing past. I don't understand why it's clear. I don't know why you've got to see what's coming out of you. Like it's you know like the generation game, making notes of what's whizzing past. Forget it. <laughs> The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Over the Christmas break, I was watching uh, some different TV. Saw an amazing documentary. It was called Tribes. This guy, and he goes and lives with different tribes around the world. These small little indigenous people. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was one. He went to he went to Papua New Guinea in Indonesia, right, Carl? He lived with the Kombai tribe. Mm. All right. Now, this Papua New Guinea is an extraordinary place because it is one of the only places left on Earth that hasn't been fully explored. There are parts of it that it's just blank on the map because they, they've never explored there. They don't know what's there. They don't know what's going on. So, firstly, that must already freak you out. Imagine that. 21st century, they have no idea what's going on down there. But do they, do they need to know if there's nothing going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, they... They don't know what's going on. There could be stuff going on. No, but there's, there's no chance that they'll go, we haven't been over there, and someone goes and there's like an Arndale stand there. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's going to be there, is it? So there's no... Well, no I'll point. tell you what is there, OK? There's these various small tribes, OK? <laughs> this guy goes, he's amazing, right? Now, the thing about these is that uh, up until the 60s, and even more recently, some of these tribes are still cannibals. They're still cannibalistic, OK? Eating people from other tribes. This is going on now? Get going on now. It's generally stopped but it still does occasionally occur all right so this guy goes to live with them right they they walk around you know obviously naked except for a little leaf just above their their genitals it's not covering the genitals it's just above the genitals do they know they could move on have they got a telly or have they have they seen a telly and gone i'm not up for that or are they just are they saying it's not the amish they haven't chosen but what this. is the difference between the amish and these people well, the Amish are a, a group of people that choose to live in that way. These people are just essentially untouched by civilization. I mean, they do have interaction with civilization, and people do come there, but they, they still live in this very, very almost prehistoric way. They go around, they have uh, homemade weapons, they, they kill pigs and hogs in the, in the, in the, uh, in the undergrowth, they, uh, they, you know, they, they live in kind of tree houses. They did buy a telly, but there was nothing on, because there isn't any uh, broadcasters. They can plug it in. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. an absolute nightmare. Yeah. But there was one guy, okay, now he uh, said that his brother was dying. This was a couple of years ago, right? His brother was dying. He said to his dying brother, what happened? Why are you dying? This guy said it was a bloke in another village. Okay, he goes over to the other village. He kills this other bloke, right? He eats him or eats bits of him. Uh, the other village gets a bit annoyed. They go, what's going on? Why did you kill this bloke? They went, he went, sorry about that, right? They said, well, you need to make it up to us. He gave him a pig. They said, the pig's not enough. They gave him five pigs. Hang on, who are they giving these pigs to? The tribe? To the tribe of the bloke who, who, who he killed, an eight. So five pigs apparently made up for the fact that they'd killed one of them. They said, well, hang on, what are you going to do with but this why, bloke's wife? Why, why were they bartering? Why didn't they just get the police in and say, what's, what's going on? 
What you know, police? What, yeah. Why didn't they call Morse? I mean, what? Yeah. What? Why didn't they call in Kojak? Because he'd have sorted it out, wouldn't he? Or, or, or who else could they have called in? Colombo would have sorted I it. I don't he? understand. What are you saying? There's two tribes. There's a number of different tribes, aren't there? In the, I've just explained that to you. There's a number of small individual tribes in this dense Papua New Guinea forest with a load of pigs. With a load of pigs. <laughs> but the the wife of the guy that he killed, Nate. They said, "What we, we we don't need her now. We don't want her." So she had to come and live with the murderer of her husband. So she's living there now, you know, happy as Larry. But could I mean what I mean is right? They're miles away from anything, but it doesn't sound like the great place to live, right? Could they not move? Could one of them go? <laughs> Do you know what? I'm sick of this. I, I'm I'm moving or whatever, and go to a proper city. How far away is this? Um, these Papa people. Um, <laughs> To, 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 to the next, to the next. They're like, like the Smurfs. They're very like the Smurfs. But how, how many miles away from a like a place with a normal life but, going on? But think about this, Carl. Firstly, oh. they don't speak the language, so they don't have any practical skills. They've got no experience of civilization. So even if they chose to go and live in one of these cities, what can they do? How can they function? They spend, you know, fifteen years just trying to figure out what you know how, how everything works. Mind you, I have had the same thought about um, Inuits. Right. If, if you if you live in a house made of ice and eat fish all day and then just stay in for six months, move. I really do. I, I mean, I don't understand why they're living there. I think there's some bacteria that has better lives than that. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be offensive. Why? <laughs> okay, how about... This is the one of the weirdest things. <laughs> this is one of the weirdest things, right? <laughs> An yeah. entire race just of people. Dismissed. No, just no, no. dismissed. I'm, 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 not, I'm not having a go, but I'm just saying I, I wouldn't fancy it, is what I mean. But they you know don't I mean? know of ice. another world. How can they imagine that they could... Oh, I'll tell you what, this is boring. I'm tired of, of hunting for food and, and eating fish from the river. I'll tell you what, I'd like a world where there's iPods and room service. I'm going to go and move to New York. They're not thinking like that, are they, Carl? Because they don't know about this other world. Which is why, in a way... Uh, Carl can't offend them because they are not listening to this podcast. I, th- v- uh, very unlikely. Very, yeah. very unlikely. You're not going to get. You're not going to get any nasty letters from uh, Eskimos <laughs> or Inuits, as they want to be called now. D- does an Eskimo ever Inuit? Do they ever Inuit. meet like a, an English person on holiday, and an English person goes choppy here, isn't it, or whatever? Well, what do you think? It's just that people go to. You know, Steve said before about places he's been to where people are still walking about with swords and that. People go to these places on holiday now. They like a little bit of danger. They like to see how the others live. Mm. So all I'm saying is we know they exist. Yeah. The Papa people, maybe people aren't going there. Uh, you know, it doesn't sound like the best place. You know, I can't imagine it having a, a tourist board or anything, right? But would they accept me if I popped over there and, you know, with Suzanne, sort out a little weekend break and that? Where, where are we talking? We're talking the, Papua New Guinea. In Papa. Well... Okay, this is this is one of the things that they they do. Okay, which is a tradition you may have to do. These uh, combi, right? They invert their penises, so they push their penises back up inside their bodies, like a sock. What for? Well, keep it's... it out of the way. Of what? Well, if you're running through the undergrowth chasing a, a, a hog, you don't want it flapping away, you know. But, but it's also become a kind of ceremonial thing. So if you were over there, you may well have to try it yourself. You, you would have to try it yourself. If you went there, you'd have to try it Definitely. yourself. But even cavemen had little pants on. Why, why haven't they... Whoa! Whoa. Uh, Slow down. Rewind. <laughs> what do you Again, mean? you've been watching the Flintstones. No, 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 it's just, you know... Is it a leopard skin pair of pants that's actually quite right. a... Go on. But, but it's a well-known fact that they wore, like, bear pants or whatever. Bear pants. <laughs> what do you mean, just, bear just, pants? Just, no, 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 listen, you are, you are a qualified uh, anthropologist, so what... Um, I, mean, I mean, that you know, you, when, whenever you see them on footage or in a museum... Footage? Yeah, or, <laughs> whenever or you see that early it's documentary shaky, footage. It? Yeah, it's black and white as well, isn't it, caveman footage? I, I, you always see them wearing a little bit of fur, fur little pants and that. So what I'm saying is, even <sighs> though, what, what year is it to these um, people in the woods... What, I mean, what, th- I don't know what this conversation is know. anymore. I, he's, he's just clutching at straws. His mind, his, uh, it, it, it's like um, a fly, his mind, isn't it? It's just buzzing round, it's trying to find a window, and that's your mind. It, it, it is just it's like... hitting against pieces of information, but they're <laughs> yeah, just bouncing yeah. off. <laughs> yeah. Dazed, <laughs> perplexed. Yeah. Oh, forget it, then. <laughs> the Ricky Gervais Show, on Guardian Unlimited. You can't believe you luck, Rick. 
Paul the Party Animal Park has been in touch. <laughs> oh, I imagine oh. the kind of New Year party he was having last oh, night. Oh, I don't, I, I don't want to think about it because it gives me a hangover just thinking about what that dude <laughs> got <laughs> what up that to. What that dude got up to. <laughs> Come on, then. Man alive. But anyway, you know, he never stops. He never stops supplying us with little tidbits. Oh, little what's, what, uh, what's PP done for us now? He just, likes, really just likes finding little odds and ends and just sending them in. And um, you remember when we used to, years ago, we used to do that thing where uh, we'd read headlines... Yeah. And sometimes the headline is all you need for the story. Yeah. And this is this this is what's great about this one. If you just give me a, a a news at ten style bong. And now the news at ten. Bong Boy waited while doctor rode unicycle. <laughs> what, what, what does that yeah, mean? well amazing. Um a hospital has apologized after a six month old boy waited two hours for treatment <laughs> while a doctor rode up and down a ward on a unicycle. Uh, Paula Dadswell has taken her son James to a local general hospital with suspected gastroenteritis. I should point out now, James was fine, it was all, it was not a problem. But she spotted the doctor peddling the unicycle, but was astonished when the same doctor later walked over to examine the child. Miss Dadswell said, We took one look at the doctor and said, You must be joking. His face went bright red. A spokeswoman for the hospital said, Of course, we are sorry if distress was inadvertently caused to the mother, and we've offered her our apologies. But let's also remember that we should try and make hospital wards less intimidating places for patients, and we regularly provide diversions that are not directly related to medical care. Many parents have commented favourably on this approach and indeed about the unicycle. What I love about that story is that, that it's the most important job in the world yeah. and the most useless. Being a doctor is saving lives. It's, it's incredible. It's so noble. Riding a unicycle is the most useless thing <laughs> yeah. you can do. It, it's, it's, that, to me, is um, plate spinning, yeah. juggling... Yeah, uh, flame, it's a, flame eating. Fla uh, well, who who goes into plate spinning? Is it like the father going, son? When when you've uh, when you've finished university, you can take over the business. But I want to be a doctor, Dad. Look, the plate's nearly, <laughs> and you're hooked, and you yeah. give it a little push, and you're there, and you're hooked. It's a, it's, a, it's a dying art. You don't see it as often as perhaps yeah, you, you once yeah, did. Dad, I want to be a doctor, but the plate's nearly <laughs> dropped, son. And are oh, unbelievable. But um, but what I can't make out from that story is whether the doctor was he was you know they he, he'd done the seven years medical training and then they yeah. said. You're working at this specific hospital. Yeah. They whipped out the unicycle. They yeah. said, you're going to need to learn that as well before we can put you on the wards. Or whether, and whether he was practising. Who knows if he was practising. Do you know what I think happened? I think the, uh, the bloke in charge of the hospital, there was two people up for the job. This fella, who was brilliant, he got yeah. first from Oxford. He was amazing. And the, the bloke in charge, his nephew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, they both scored the He's same. He did an open university course. Yeah, yeah. And they went, well, well um, you're, you're both very good, but um, who can ride a unicycle? <laughs> he whipped it out. Yeah, yeah. He went, have a go. Yeah, and he's been practising. Unbelievable. But, um, but it's also the idea that if it is indeed something which the hospital has initiated in order to cheer people up, particularly kids, um, I mean, I just, it just seems like a dangerous thing to be doing in a hospital, with all due respect. I, mean, I first, think so. You could pull out leads, wires. <laughs> Anything could happen. I know, yeah. They get you to turn your mobile phone off when you go into some ward, so uh, uh, please leave your unicycle here, surely. Do not, no, no unicycles <laughs> beyond this point. If, if you have a unicycle accident, of course, it's a great place to be. It is a good it's place, an ideal to be. space to be already. But who, who, who rides the unicycle anyway? Do you know what really annoys me? Um, we live near a park. It's a lovely park. And on a Saturday for about three hours, there's some twat hippie with braids, uh, dreadlocks, sitting there um, playing one drum. How can you play <laughs> yeah. one drum? He thinks this is brilliant. This is therapy. It's a. I want to shut the fuck up. It's nothing. That. It's not music. It's not percussion. It's not expressing anything. It's just no. annoying. Yeah. I tell you now, this is this would be my worst nightmare if you were to take me on an evening out. You what? say, Steve, we're going tonight, right? You can't get out of it. You've got to do it. It's two hours. Stomp. Oh, stomp where they put dustbins on their feet. Now, um, I, I mean, I've seen a little bit of it on the Oscars. Yeah, it's all right for t for you know thirty seconds. Well done. But two. Hours, what is that show? What is the stomp show? I don't know. I mean, Jesus Christ! After about fifteen minutes, you've had enough of that, surely? I'm assuming there's not really a story. Are they bin men? <laughs> <laughs> No, I just wondered how you how you get into that, how you start practising and go, do you know what? That sounds quite good. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're, they're big men, yeah. I was uh, shopping with Carl before Christmas and we went round sort of Piccadilly and St James's and those really beautiful shops around there. And I went in one shop, you had to um, ring a bell to enter. Yeah. And they came down and it's like a... Uh, iconoclastic sort of shop and they they found things from churches and uh, r uh, nearly all Russian 16th century pieces onwards this beautiful 
uh, uh, carvings and, and paintings and statues and everything. And I was wow by it. And this bloke clearly loved his work and he was, you know, enthusing to me about these stuff. This is from the 16th century. This is Russian. This is a... Mm. Uh, and I went, oh, it's beautiful. And as I was looking round, um, Carl, I heard Carl sidle up to the bloke and go, what's the newest thing you've got here? <laughs> yeah. Sure, that's his first thought. I mean, that is the wrong question to ask of a man who's clearly in antiques, yeah. um, proud of the fact he's got 16th century uh, kind of classic Russian stuff, to ask, what's the newest thing you've got here? Is that, I mean, what sort of question is that? Oh, I don't know, probably the doorbell. I don't know, what, what does he want to say, oh, my shirt? What, what, <gasps> what were, were you thinking? hoping for? I just was making chat with him, because it, it's the sort of place that I don't think many people go in, right, Steve? Uh, when you go up to this shop, right, <laughs> it's not sat in there, you have to ring a bell... He's getting on with his life upstairs. He lives upstairs, right? You ring the bell to say, "What? Well, come in your shop." He pops down, stands there watching you look around. So it's not, it's not a natural way to shop. Sure. Do you know what I mean? It's not nice having a bloke stood there watching you look at all this old stuff and that. So I, I was kind of making friendly chat. Yeah. And I think it's an all right question because he, he was saying there's loads of old stuff in there, and he kept going on about the old stuff. So what did you say? Well, <laughs> what's, what's the newest thing you've got? <laughs> and what was? Do you know the what he said? The other question he asked him. He said, how often do you get new stuff in? And the bloke went, um, every day. And I said to him, why did you ask that? He said, well, I was thinking, if you've got antiques and you sell it all, what's left? Like someone's going to sell all the antiques in the world because they're not making... He said, because they're not making any new stuff. What does that mean? They're not making any new stuff. But I know for a fact no one's ever going to go in there and buy the lot anyway. I mean, <laughs> I I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> I'm not at any point in my life, and I don't think it'll ever happen, will I go... I need some old Russian wood. Cause that's it was that. brilliant. No, it was, it, Steve, it, no. it was beautiful. It's amazing stuff. There's stuff. There, it's there's mm. um, um, uh, these things uh, from the 16th century of sort yeah. of like saints and monks, and they're carved. But and there's they're... loads of it. It's just all piled up. No one's interested. Oh. If I was him, I'd go. Do you know what? I'm into this, but no one else is. Close shop. <laughs> because seriously, <laughs> it's just piled up. Of, uh, piles of on piles of like old. Bits of wood with pictures on it and that. But think of, a man, just think of a man 400 years ago that carved this, that carved this, uh, you know... No, but nobody wants it, do they? I've never heard anyone say, you know, oh, look, it's my birthday coming up. I'll tell you what I'd love. What? A bit of old Russian wood. <laughs> it doesn't doesn't happen. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I've never heard anyone saying it like... I've never overheard someone saying, you don't know where the Russian shop is, do you? <laughs> <laughs> and this is in London where the rates are high. There was this thing, right, Steve? Uh, you know, again, making chat. Uh, loads of bits of wood we like. Um, them old drawings on, like... It was like a panel from a church that someone had d d okay, painted. Right, yeah. And I think it was, like, you know, from sort of, like, 1590 or something. Yeah. And it was this uh, a, a picture of this uh, this yeah. saint, wasn't it? So that... 1590. It could be from any time, really. So there's this one there, right, leaning up <laughs> against the wall. And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. most of them in there was that Stalin bloke, right? Mm. But there was this little... Right, fight. can I just stop you there? Lenin. Right, okay. all right, then. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he was on all these bits of wood and stuff. But I saw this other little face, right? Little fellow with a beard, right? <laughs> so uh, 